In front of a high school, several professionals were setting up a magic array. Here at Western Sea High School, where over a hundred grade 12 students were about to undergo a class transfer. The students sat upright, listening attentively to Principal Lu Yun's speech. Lu Yun was a man of few words. He hoped that each and every one of them would reach the height of their fellow student Su Qian Xing and become pillars of humanity. Su Qian Xing, mentioned by Principal Lu, was once a student of the high school who successfully transferred to become a revered divine holy mage. Currently, he was a prominent figure at level 80. Principal Lu often used his achievements to inspire and guide the students. As Lin gazed at the transfer array circle, which was nearing completion, his eyes flickered with a mix of seriousness and anticipation. Having been in this world for several years, he knew what kind of world it was. This world was intertwined with gaming elements, where people underwent class transfers during their last year of high school. Clearing dungeons, exploring hidden realms, joining battlefields, or slaying monsters in the wilderness. All of these activities yielded experience points, gaining experience, leveling up, mastering skills, and enhancing one's strength. Fighting against various demonic creatures, fighting to carve out a space for humanity. Countless ancestors of the human race shed blood and sacrificed their lives, which eventually led to the present way of life. The success rate of class transfers had long reached 100%. The only difference was the quality of the professions. The most popular professions in this world were undoubtedly the combat-oriented class followed by support classes, while the lifestyle classes ranked last. However, this was just a rough classification. There are also the legendary level and rare professions which were extremely rare. Here in the Western Sea City, with not a single legendary level profession emerging in the past decade. As a beam of light shot up into the sky, the transfer array circle had been fully enchanted. Lin followed the group, contemplating in his heart what profession he would transfer into. No one could accurately predict what profession they would become. Suddenly, someone tapped Lin on the shoulder. Gao Yang, wearing a smile, approached and asked what profession he wanted to transfer into. Lin glanced at him, shook his head, and didn't answer. Gao Yang continued with a smile. Come on, tell me. It's okay to share. Let me tell you, I really want to become a knight. Just imagine, with my tall and sturdy appearance, being a knight would surely be imposing. Plus, I could protect the ladies. Lin didn't like to talk much. Despite his excellent academic performance, he had few friends. Many people thought there was something wrong with him. Gao Yang exchanged a few words with him before leaving to talk to someone else. In those brief conversations, there were voices tinged with envy and bitterness. Many people felt that Lin was too aloof and arrogant because of his good grades. Gao Yang smiled and said, Actually, Lin just simply doesn't like talking. Unfortunately, no one believed this statement. Either way, Lin didn't feel the need to provide further explanation. The group arrived in front of the array circle, and Principal Lu walked up to an elderly man with great respect. Master Zhang, I appreciate your help today, he said. Master Zhang had a warm smile, appearing to be a very amiable old man. He didn't conceal his information, and everyone could see it. Zhang Qian, level 52, array grandmaster. Lin was slightly surprised to see that he was an Array Grandmaster, and his level was an impressive 52. Array Grandmasters were considered rare support class professions and were not commonly seen. Moreover, they possessed tremendous power. Soon, Principal Lu Yun brought out a list and started reading off the name of the students. The first student called was Shu Da. Shu Da responded and entered the transfer array with a hint of nervousness. As the array roared to life, Accompanied by a dazzling light, Shu Da's class transfer concluded. Lifestyle profession, farmer. Shu Da's face turned slightly pale. He hadn't expected to become a farmer. It was still a decent profession since everyone needed to eat, right? After stepping down from the array, Shu Da's close friends comforted him. The second person called hurried into the array. Again, a dazzling light enveloped the scene. Lifestyle profession, chef. The student was pleased with his profession because his father was also a chef. It could be seen as following in his father's footsteps. The third, the fourth. One person after another went up for their class transfers, 
and most of them ended up with lifestyle professions. Master Zhang and Principal Lu Yun sighed. So far, not a single rare profession had appeared. Master Zhang stood beside Principal Lu as the architect of the transfer. He was well aware of the class transfer situation. Lu called out another name. Charlotte responded promptly. Before setting off, Charlotte glanced at Lin, her eyes flashing with a hint of provocation. She and Lin were known as the two geniuses of the high school. However, in terms of academic performance, Lin always outshines Charlotte, who remained in second place. Charlotte had always held a grudge deep inside. She refused to accept defeat. Master Zhang, who had been keeping his eyes closed, suddenly opened them and glanced at Charlotte. This girl is impressive. Master Zhang detected that Charlotte's spiritual power was more than twice as strong as an average person's, indicating the potential for her to become a mage. The array activated, and a radiant light enveloped the scene. In the midst of the light, two enormous fireballs suddenly rose, bursting like fireworks. Lu Yun trembled with excitement. An anomaly! A rare profession! The appearance of the anomaly indicated the emergence of a rare profession. Rare profession. Elemental mage. Lu's excitement at this moment was overwhelming. Just a moment ago, he had been mentioning rare professions as a mere wishful thinking. Principal Lu and Master Zhang were both delighted. After Charlotte returned, a group of classmates gathered around her, bombarding her with questions. This was a main combat class profession, and moreover, it was a rare class. Lin heard his name and lifted his foot, walking towards the array. Charlotte watched Lin, her eyes filled with a sense of challenge. Principal Lu glanced at Master Zhang beside him and asked, How is this child? Master Zhang calmly replied, Academic performance and class transfer do not necessarily correlate. You knew this. Lu obviously understood, but he still held on to his expectations. The array activated, erupting in a brilliant light. The once bright sky suddenly darkened, and in the blink of an eye, dark clouds covered the heavens. Chilling winds blew in from all directions, causing the temperature to plummet. Day turned into night, as if doomsday had arrived. Lu exclaimed in astonishment, What is happening? Master Zhang fixed his gaze on the array and calmly said, An anomaly! A class transfer anomaly? Lu nearly exclaimed in surprise. Such a massive class transfer anomaly was unheard of. With that, he became agitated. With such a significant anomaly, not having a rare profession would be unacceptable. Charlotte clenched her fist. This anomaly was much greater than the one before. She felt a sense of unwillingness to admit defeat, but judging solely from the anomaly itself, she couldn't help but acknowledge its significance. Suddenly a student shouted, Look, there's a movement within the dark clouds. Everyone looked up. Within the dark clouds, flickers of lightning could be seen. Apart from the lightning, there seemed to be something else. Moreover, a crackling friction sound emanated from the dense clouds, causing discomfort in their ears. Finally, a sharp-eyed student caught sight of what was within the clouds, and he was so frightened that he fell to the ground. The dark clouds were filled with countless skeletons. As his words trailed off, the entire scene within the dark clouds was fully revealed. Thousands upon thousands of skeletons stood densely packed, and the flickering flames were the soul fires within their skull. They all slightly bowed, paying their respects to their master. One of the soars descended from the sky, and subsequently all the anomalies vanished in an instant, and everything returned to normal. Unique hidden class, Necromancer. It was not just a rare class, it was a hidden class, and it was a uniquely hidden class. This meant that there was only one of this class in the entire world. Unless Lin died, there would never be a second person with the same class. Among the students, there were those who congratulated him, those who were puzzled, those who were jealous, those who were disdainful, and those who were afraid. Despite feeling excitement about his unique and hidden class, Lin showed no outward emotion. He believed that emotions should be kept hidden. Wait a moment. Master Zhang called out to him as he passed by. Lin turned around and saluted Master Zhang. This was the first time Master Zhang had encountered such a class, and he wanted Lin to demonstrate his skills. After checking his attributes, Lin found that besides the basic attributes and level, he had two skills. 
The first skill was Summon Skeleton Warrior, with seven levels ranging from Black Iron, Bronze, Silver, Gold, Diamond, Legendary, to Divine. Currently, he could only summon a Black Iron Skeleton. The second skill was Soul Flame, which allowed him to burn the souls of his targets, with the power depending on his own spiritual strength and level. Knowing that demonstrating the Soul Flame skill would not be appropriate, Lin chose to summon a Skeleton Warrior instead. Activating the skill, a Black Vortex appeared beside Lin. Then, a Skeleton Warrior engulfed in flames of Soul Fire emerged from the Vortex. His spirit energy instantly dropped from 20 points to 10 points, consuming half of it. The Black Iron Level Skeleton Warrior had gray bones, with numerous cracks all over its body. Even the sword it held was worn and tattered, seemingly salvaged from a heap of junk. The Skeleton Warrior had attributes of 15 across the board, but it didn't possess any additional skills. With the four main attributes evenly balanced, the Skeleton Warrior had neither strengths nor weaknesses. It currently lacked any skills and could only perform basic attacks. As the Skeleton Warrior appeared, the students couldn't help but exclaim in surprise and instinctively took a few steps back. People always have a certain level of fear towards terrifying things. Master Zhang's fingertips emitted a gentle glow as he touched the Skeleton Warrior. Instantly, the eyes of the Skeleton Warrior emitted a red light, and the flames of the soul fire within it flickered intensely. Lin noticed that the system detected the Skeleton Warrior being attacked and asked if he wanted to counterattack. If no choice was made within ten seconds, it would automatically retaliate. Lin quickly recalled a piece of information in his mind and immediately commanded the skeleton warrior not to move. This surprised Master Jangi, who was level 52, while Lin was only at level 1. The fact that his summoned creature exhibited hostility towards him was unexpected. However, Master Jang held high expectations for Lin's future and encouraged him to work hard. The skeleton warrior followed behind Lin, making clicking sounds and accompanied by chilling gusts of wind adding to its eerie atmosphere. As Lin was returning, many classmates unconsciously distanced themselves from him. Only Gao Yang approached him. He expressed a desire to touch the skeleton warrior, and Lin nodded in approval. Gao Yang gathered his courage and reached out to touch the skeleton warrior. It had a touch similar to steel plates, giving off a cold sensation. It was soon Gao Yang's turn to undergo a class transition. Lin looked at the skeleton warrior and silently thought, Recall. A vortex appeared in front of him once again, and the skeleton warrior entered the vortex, disappearing from sight. The system displayed that his summoning space now showed 110 capacity. Lin carefully examined the description of the summoning space. The summoning space served as a place to store summoned creatures. Unused summoned creatures could be kept in the summoning space and summoned whenever needed. Summoned creatures called from the summoning space did not require the consumption of spiritual power. As Lin reflected on his class transition, he recalled the vision he witnessed during the process, a vision that was completely different from what others experienced. He saw a dragon, a colossal dragon. The dragon soared through the air, emitting cries of agony from time to time. In an instant, it descended to the ground and thrashed about madly. Lin observed countless skeleton warriors crawling all over the body of the dragon, numbering in the thousands. The skeleton warriors wielded their blades, continuously striking the dragon's body. Each blow inflicted terrifying wounds upon the dragon. No matter how the dragon struggled, it was futile. The transition formation erupted in a brilliant light. Gao Yang's class transition was complete. Advanced melee class, sword and shield knight. It turned out that Gao Yang had become a knight, just as he had hoped. Gao Yang excitedly ran back, and for a rare moment, Lin showed a hint of a smile and even gave Gao Yang a thumbs up. Gao Yang burst into laughter, patting Lin's shoulder. From now on, we'll tackle dungeons together. I'll stand in front of you. In that case, let me recall the phrase. Then he tapped his head and said, If someone want to kill me, he would have to step over your corpse first. Lin was speechless. He couldn't bear this guy anymore and finally spoke up. You got it in reverse. Gao Yang was taken aback and started laughing. You finally spoke up. 
I deliberately set it in reverse. Didn't you notice? Lin gave Gao Yang a disdainful look. Finally, all the students completed their class transitions. Principal Lu congratulated everyone once again, and tomorrow their newbie dungeon would be open to all students. The details of the newbie leveling dungeon were known to almost everyone. The monsters inside were concentrated between levels 1 and 8. Moreover, their numbers were few, and the difficulty was low. Charlotte stopped Lin. She wanted to challenge him to see who would achieve better results in the final exam. Lin looked at her with a puzzled expression. He nodded and bypassed Charlotte. She took it as Lin's acceptance of her challenge. Lin returned home. The house was empty, devoid of any presence. He picked up a photo frame and looked at it. The furnishings in the house were very simple, with hardly any furniture. One photo stood out prominently. The photo featured Lin, a young and beautiful woman who was his sister, and an elderly woman with gray hair who was his grandmother. There was a knock on the door from outside. Lu Yun stood there with a package. He had brought some supplies for Lin's daily needs. Lin accepted the food and thanked Principal Lu. Over the past year, Lu Yun had been sending food supplies every few days. It was a promise he made to Lin's sister. Last year, Lin Mo Han was admitted to Xia Jing Academy as the top scholar in the Western Sea City. However, at that time, Lin Mo Han didn't want to go because she wanted to stay behind and take care of her younger brother, Lin. Once she went to Xia Jing Academy, she wouldn't be able to return for at least three years. Principal Lu tried so hard to convey her to attend the academy and promised to take care of Lin personally. After waving goodbye to Principal Lu, Lin went on experimenting his new class. He opened his stat window and checked his two skills. Suddenly, a sudden anomaly occurred within the system. The system detected Lin awakening as a necromancer and initiated a binding process with the most powerful talent system. As a result, Lin was bestowed with a new talent, a comprehensive enhancement that amplified all his skill effects by five times. In addition, he gained a passive skill called Damage Transfer, which allowed him to redirect all damage he received to his summoned creatures. But both of these can be considered OP skills. The power of this talent is so strong that Lin can no longer accurately describe it in words. Lin activates his skill and summons a black iron level skeleton. A vortex appears in front of him. At first glance, this black iron level skeleton in front of him is no different from the one he summoned in the afternoon. Its appearance hasn't changed much, just like the one that came out of the garbage heap. However, its attributes have undergone a tremendous transformation. It has increased from its original value of 15 to 75. The next day arrived quickly, and Lin arrived at the entrance of the newbie dungeon. It wasn't just students from his high school who came to the newbie dungeon. Almost all students in Western Sea City who had completed their class transfers would come here. All of them know that if they formed a team, the experience would be evenly distributed. Based on the advice of the senior players, soloing was recommended for dungeons below level 10. Principal Lu walked over and said that except for Charlotte and Lin, all main combat classes needed to bring support roles for the dungeon. Someone asked, why don't Charlotte and Lin need to bring support? Principal Lu replied, Charlotte is preparing to apply to Xia Jing Academy, and as for Lin, you can ask him if he needs any support. Several support players shook their heads in disagreement. Most of those who chose support roles were girls. These girls were terrified when they saw Lin's skeletal warriors and had no intention of forming a team with him. Lin informed Principal Lu that he also intended to apply to the Xia Jiang Academy, making it clear that he did not want to form a team. Principal Lu was surprised by this revelation because one of the requirements to enter the Xia Jiang Academy was a minimum level of 12. Lin only had a week to level up from his current level to 12, which would be quite challenging. Lin didn't say much, only expressing his confidence. Before entering the dungeon, Charlotte challenged Lin, saying they would compete to see who could level up faster. Lin neither agreed nor refused, remaining non-committal. Charlotte huffed and tilted her head back, revealing her slender and graceful neck. If you don't answer, I'll take it as a yes, she declared. Lin released four skeleton warriors and commanded them to find and kill monsters. The four skeleton warriors dashed off in different directions. 
Weaker monsters were quickly slain, and notifications kept appearing as the skeleton warriors continuously found and killed big-eared bunnies. In less than half an hour, Lin reached level two. He summoned several more black iron-grade skeleton warriors and noticed that their movements formed a map. He looked around and discovered some overlooked monsters. Activating his skill, Soul Flame, he instantly killed the level two monsters. Soon, Lin reached level three and continued summoning more skeleton warriors. Even level five monsters were easily dispatched by the skeleton warriors. Lin didn't even need to lift a finger. He simply waited for the experience gains. In no time, he reached level four. Outside the dungeon, Principal Lu and Charlotte's father were chatting. They mentioned that Su Qian Xing and Lin Mo Han both reached level five in the beginner's dungeon. Charlotte should be close to that level as well. They were all aware that each person automatically exited the dungeon after 12 hours, so it's difficult to get higher level. Xia Dongyang changed the topic and mentioned Lin. He was shocked knowing Lin awakened as a necromancer. He knew dealing with the undead and the deceased inevitably evoked unsettling thoughts in most people's minds. As Lin continued to level up rapidly in the dungeon, seven hours had passed, but he had yet to encounter an eighth-level monster. However, he noticed that the skeleton warriors could only stray up to 500 meters away from him. Any monsters on the path were instantly slain by the skeleton warriors. After walking for a while, the terrain of the dungeon finally changed. The grassland came to an end, and a forest appeared ahead. Just as he entered the forest, a tree branch lashed out at him with great force. The branch, appearing like a whip, struck Lin, but it didn't cause any harm. His passive skill was in effect, transferring all the damage he received to his summoned creatures. Ahead stood a massive level eight tree. With a thought, Lin commanded one of the skeleton warriors to attack the whipwood tree. Surprisingly, it wasn't instantly slain. He ordered all the skeleton warrior continue to attack the tree and after four strikes, it fell. Looking at the dense forest with numerous level eight whipwood trees, Lin commanded the skeleton warriors to spread out and attack the trees in different areas. Their blades kept landing on the whipwood trees, four strikes each, swift and decisive. Outside the dungeon, the sky gradually darkened. Suddenly, a brilliant light emanated from the entrance of the dungeon, and everyone looked up simultaneously. Lin emerged from the light. Principal Lu asked how he managed to come out, and Lin replied softly, I beat the dungeon. Principal Lu couldn't believe his ears and eyes. Lin had reached level 7 in just 10 hours. Lin didn't provide much explanation, but simply applied to go to the outskirts of West Sea City. The shock occupied Principal Lu's mind, rendering him momentarily speechless. Seeing Principal Lu's lack of response, Lin called out to him again and waved his hand in front of his eyes. Principal Lu snapped out of his daze and instructed Lin to take a rest. Principal Lu returned to his desk, and the other principals looked at him curiously. After taking a few sips of tea, Principal Lu revealed that Lin had completed the newbie dungeon. Everyone was astonished and could hardly believe it. Lin continued to replenish his spiritual energy through meditation. By now, he had summoned a total of 24 skeleton warriors but his summoning space still had 70 vacant slots. After a while, the 12-hour time limit was up, and the students who had entered the dungeon were teleported out one by one. Many of them wore expressions of exhaustion, but even more were filled with excitement. Charlotte emerged from the dungeon as well, having reached level 5. After exiting the dungeon, Charlotte couldn't find Lynn at first. She scanned the surroundings with her beautiful eyes and finally spotted him in the distance deep in meditation. Her eyes widened, and she stood frozen in place, seemingly shocked by the revelation that Lin had reached level seven. As Xia Dongyang waved his hand and got on the car with Charlotte, her eyes couldn't help but glance towards Lin. Xia Dongyang noticed his daughter's gaze and immediately understood what she was thinking. Charlotte snorted, her eyes burning with determination. Xia Dongyang smiled, but also informed Charlotte that Lin had completed the dungeon and come out after ten hours, having defeated all the level eight monsters. On the bus, Gao Yang hugged Lin tightly and asked how he managed to reach level seven, pleading to join him in leveling up next time, in which Lin winked and said, sure, maybe later. 
The next morning, Gao Yang couldn't find Lin at the school gate. He then learned that Lin had gone to the outskirts of Western Sea City. It dawned on Gao Yang that he had been bailed by Lin, which explained why he had agreed so quickly the day before. At the Imperial Exchange District, Lin went through the identity verification process. Lin had access to the exchange, albeit with a low-level permission of only level one. Lin checked the missions available with basic trading and gathering missions and found one that involved clearing a level 14 dungeon. The dungeon difficulty was categorized as normal, nightmare, and hell, and this particular mission required nightmare level or higher completion. Lin shook his head. He was still too weak at the moment. The city gate guard held the exit permit provided by Lin and verified his information. Although the guard were puzzled by how a level 7 student was allowed to leave the city, the exit permit was genuine, and the city gate guard quickly approved the verification. The guard advised Lin to stay safe and cautious. As he walked out of the city gate, a cold wind blew against him. The sky immediately darkened, and a heavy atmosphere filled the air. Inside and outside, the city felt like two different worlds. Lin sensed the presence of goblins behind him, and summoned his skeletal soldiers to attack the level 10 goblin. Compared to his level 7 skeleton warriors, this goblin was too weak. Lin felt excited as he summoned all of his skeleton warriors and charged towards the large goblin army ahead. He clenched his fists, feeling a surge of anticipation. At this rate, reaching level 15 before the major exam shouldn't be a problem. He then recalled how his sister had already reached level 16 before her own major exam, and he wondered how she had achieved such progress. He couldn't wait to see his sister. After a while, his level increased to 10, and his talents and skills were both upgraded. He could now summon bronze-level skeleton warriors. With his greatly increased spiritual energy, Lin eagerly summoned a bronze-level skeleton warrior. The bronze-level skeleton warrior no longer had the gray color, but instead had a pale, greenish-white hue. The weapon in its hand had transformed into an axe. Its base attributes were astonishingly high, reaching 1,500. Moreover, it possessed a skill called Rampage Strike, which dealt double damage to the target and had a cooldown of 10 minutes. As Lin was about to continue summoning bronze-level skeleton warriors, the sound of a breaking wind echoed followed by several arrows flying past him. Multiple arrows flew right in front of him, and one of them struck him. His passive skill automatically redirected all the damage to the skeleton warrior, so Lin himself was unharmed. A figure dressed in black emerged from the forest, running at high speed with impressive agility. She noticed Lin and swiftly changed direction, disappearing in the blink of an eye. Judging by her attire, Lin could roughly determine the professions of her as an assassin. Then, two person appeared. They were an archer and a mage. Unable to catch the girl, they asked Lin where the person had gone. Instead of answering, Lin spoke coldly. You shot me with an arrow. Apologize. The archer looked at the arrow on the ground, realizing what had happened, and also apologized, although puzzled as to why the arrow didn't cause any harm. The mage's expression grew gloomy, clearly unhappy about the escape. He turned his gaze to the skeleton warriors, his eyes filled with disgust, and slowly raised his staff. However, the archer suddenly pulled the mage back and walked the other way. Upon seeing the retreating figures, remarked that these two individuals couldn't be too high leveled, probably around level 20 at most. If they were to attack him, Lin felt he might have to resort to killing. The bronze level effort listers in the area, as if he was mowing the lawn. However, Lin's leveling speed began to slow down. It continued until nightfall, with Lin still needing 30% more experience to reach level 11. He had no intention of going back. Time was limited, and he couldn't afford to waste it on traveling. He had to work harder than anyone else to be attend to Xia Jing Academy. Lin set up a campfire in the forest and ate his food, deep in thought. He still couldn't figure out how his sister managed to reach level 16 there must be something he overlooked. As Lin pondered and recalled the memory of his sister returning from the western outskirts with injuries all over her body, he started to piece things together. He combined his knowledge from Shin and from the outskirt. Suddenly he realized something. The Western Sea Mine Dungeon. 
Could it be that his sister teamed up with others to tackle nightmare level dungeon? This revelation sparked his curiosity and determination to uncover the truth. He decided that once he reached a higher level and acquired more strength, he would investigate the Western Sea Mine dungeon and find out what had transpired there. Perhaps that was the missing piece to understanding his sister's rapid leveling and the secrets behind her achievements. Lin clenched his fist, feeling confident in his previous guess. The skeleton warriors remained hidden in the darkness of the night, while Lin began to meditate. In the middle of the night, one of the skeleton warriors alerted him, causing Lin to snap out of his meditation. Soon, a person appeared within his line of sight. It was the same black-clad person who had escaped earlier that afternoon. The girl asked if there was any food available, and Lin handed her a sweet potato. The girl didn't show any signs of disdain and eagerly devoured the food, revealing her face by removing her mask. She began to thank him, but suddenly broke into a violent coughing fit. While still coughing, she continued to talk to Lin, who handed her a bottle of water. After she finally managed to speak clearly, she asked for his name. However, when Lin didn't answer, she suggested they both use detection spell on each other. Lin pondered for a moment and nodded, indicating his agreement. Both of them activated the detection spell simultaneously, their fingertips emitting a faint glow as they used the spell on each other. To Lin's surprise, the detection spell failed, and he didn't receive any information about the girl. The girl suddenly giggled, displaying a triumphant expression. Although this was her first time seeing of the necromancer profession, she finally knew Lin's name and level. Her words started flowing rapidly, one after another. Lin looked at her calmly and asked, Why? The girl was delighted to finally hear Lin speak and responded, Why? Lin looked at her intently and asked the question again. The girl smiled and took out a badge-like item. It was a screening badge. As long as you wear it, anyone whose level is not more than ten levels above yours will have their detection spells fail when used on you. The girl put away her badge, and Lin nodded before casting a detection spell again. This time, it succeeded. Ning Yi Yi, level 19, Shadow Assassin. A gentle breeze blew, and Ning Yi Yi's smile instantly vanished. Lin also turned to look in a certain direction. In addition to the archer and mage they had encountered earlier, there was now a knight with a giant shield. The three individuals surrounded them from different directions. Just as the girl was about to flee, an arrow shot from the darkness. Ning Yi Yi reacted swiftly, dodging to the side in an instant. The arrow exploded with a bang, splitting into two streaks of light that fell on Lin and Ning Yi Yi respectively. These were no ordinary arrows. They were marker arrows. Red marks appeared above the heads of both Lin and Ning Yi Yi. The sound of a cold laughter filled the air as the mage they had encountered before emerged from the forest. They considered Lin as part of the girl's group. The girl attempted to explain that Lin had nothing to do with her, but the three individuals clearly didn't believe her. The archer on the tree chuckled and decided to kill both of them, so no one would know about their possession of intermediate skill scrolls. Ning Yi Yi whispered, I'll hold them off. You run on your own. Lin looked at her and asked, What about you? The girl didn't want to involve Lin in the danger. As a shadow assassin, Ning Yi Yi might have been able to escape before, but now that she was marked by the archer's arrow, her stealth ability was ineffective, making it difficult for her to escape again. The mage raised his staff, preparing to attack. The staff erupted with a brilliant glow, and a massive ball of light ascended into the sky, illuminating the surroundings as bright as day. Ning Yi Yi's hand shimmered, and a blue dagger appeared in her hand, her entire body tensing up. The archer on the tree had already drawn his bow to full, ready to shoot. The knight stood with his shield, assuming a charging stance. The mage's staff was gleaming brightly. At this moment, Lin raised his finger slightly, and a skeleton warrior appeared in front of him. The mage showed a hint of disdain and strong disgust. He shouted lightly, and a gigantic fireball, about one meter in diameter, materialized out of thin air, engulfed in roaring flames, and shot toward the two of them. Ning Yi Yi's expression changed, and she immediately pulled Lin backward. But as they were retreating, Ning Yi Yi suddenly felt a heaviness in her body, and their speed suddenly slowed down. 
An invisible thread extended from the mage's staff, entangling her feet. The archer also took action. An arrow was shot, but halfway through its trajectory, it split into three. Meanwhile, the knight launched his charge, rushing towards the two of them at an astonishing speed. The girl suddenly exerted force and pushed Lin away, moving him out of the range of the attack. At that moment, two skeleton warriors appeared on either side of Ning Yi. The knight collided with the skeleton warriors, but while the skeleton warriors remained motionless, the knight was sent flying backward. The archer's triple shot landed on the skeleton warriors, creating metallic impact sounds. A mirror slowly emerged, radiating a pale blue glow, showing no signs of injury. The mage, witnessing this scene, couldn't believe it. How could a level 10 necromancer's summoned creature withstand a one-shot from his level 21 fireball? The archer and the knight were also stunned, shocked by the strength of these summoned creatures. With a grating sound, more and more skeleton warriors appeared, surrounding the three of them. A total of 44 skeleton warriors formed a tight circle around them, leaving no escape. With everyone stunned, including Ning Yi Yi, she couldn't believe her eyes. Wide-eyed and open-mouthed, she was in disbelief. She had seen Lin's skeleton warriors earlier today, and they appeared worn out and weak. How could they become so powerful? Lin, with a determined look in his eyes, walked back to Ning Yi Yi's side, his gaze filled with a murderous intent. He uttered a single word, kill. With a single thought, the skeletal warrior sprang into action. The mage's face turned pale as his hand holding the staff trembled, immediately conjuring a shield around them. He summoned an energy shield. It was the mage's signature skill. Unlike agile archers, mages were not known for their dexterity or speed. Moreover, he is now surrounded by skeletal warriors, leaving no room for escape. As the skeletal warrior raised its blade, the energy shield contorted violently. The mage's expression changed drastically, realizing that just one strike from the skeletal warrior was enough to shatter his energy shield. He can't believe that these skeletons possessed such terrifying power. What kind of attributes did they have? He didn't have much time to contemplate, as the second skeletal warrior's blade descended. The energy shield shattered upon impact, dispersing into countless twinkling stars. Out of desperation, he used resistant flame ring. The mage unleashed another skill, causing a massive ring of fire to erupt. Several nearby skeletons were instantly pushed back over ten meters by the force of the flames. Before he could even celebrate for a moment, darkness enveloped his vision. Two skeletons had already leaped above his head, leaving him no chance to employ any more skills. As the blades glinted, the mage's head soared into the sky. In just a span of two seconds, the mage met his demise. The archer, currently being pursued by the skeletal warriors, wasn't having a good time either. Witnessing the mage's death firsthand, fear filled his mind. Comparatively more agile than the mage, he continuously employed evasive skills, attempting to break free from the encirclement of the skeletal warriors. However, despite his repeated efforts, they all proved futile in the end. As the skeletal warriors closed in step by step, the space available for his maneuvers grew increasingly restricted. He didn't understand how can these skeleton warriors could get so fast. Compared to the other two, the knight seemed to be the only person who could hold his ground. The knight's body emitted a radiant glow, resembling a light bulb, as he repeatedly activated his charging skill and raced towards a distant location. This layer of light was even more resilient than the mage's energy shield, securely protecting him. Even when the skeletal warrior's blade struck his body, they were unable to inflict any harm upon him. Lin knew this was a limitless defense skill. Only a few knights could master this skill, recalling his knowledge of this skill. It was one of the knight's core abilities. Once activated, it granted an immensely powerful defense for a short period of time. The knight, relying on his limitless defense, desperately fled. A pained scream echoed from behind, and he knew that the archer had also met his demise. With both the mage and archer dead, he was thoroughly frightened. How could these skeletal warriors be so terrifying? If he had known earlier, he would not have come. It wasn't worth losing his life for a mediocre intermediate skill scroll. Lin had no intention of letting him escape. 
There's no turning back. He would need to ensure a clean kill. One of the skeletal warrior's blades emitted a red glow simultaneously. Rampage strike, dealing 200% of their own strength as damage to the target. The knight couldn't believe that a mere skeletal warrior would also use skills. The sword, shimmering with a red light, struck the knight. The bright white light surrounding the knight instantly dimmed significantly. Then came the second strike, followed by the third. One after another, the skeletal warriors ruthlessly unleashed their skills, rapidly diminishing the duration of the limitless defense. Moreover, more skeletal warriors had surrounded him, cutting off the knight's escape route. A sense of despair washed over him. After a dozen seconds, the knight, filled with unwillingness, was struck down by the skeletal warriors. Either don't do it at all, or if you do, don't hesitate. That's what his sister has told Lin, and that's exactly how Lin acted. Ning Yi Yi still hadn't processed what had happened. From the beginning of the battle until the end, it took around 20 seconds. All three of them had been killed. Meanwhile, Lin himself hadn't even moved an inch. He simply stood there commanding his army of skeletons. The skeletal warriors had returned, carrying various items in their hands. When a person dies, the contents and items of their storage space would be dropped. The skeletal warriors had picked up everything they found. The dropped items included bronze-tier weapons, a staff, a bow, a shield, and a sword. The four weapons and equipment were neatly arranged in front of them. Ning Yi Yi informed him that these are all weapons obtained from the Carmen Orc Legion's dungeon. Lin was somewhat puzzled as he had never heard of this dungeon before. Noticing Lin's confusion, Ning Yi Yi continued to explain, The Carmen Orc Legion dungeon is a level 20 dungeon located outside Shaohai City. These four bronze tier equipment pieces are of no use to him, but he can sell them for some money. Without hesitation, Lin collected all four bronze equipment pieces, and Ning Yi Yi didn't express any objection. There were also some remaining materials, such as wolf pelts, beast bones, and green sprout grass, but the quantities were not significant. Lin also didn't hesitate and collected all of them. As long as there's value, it's worth something. After collecting the weapons, equipment, and materials, only one item remained beginner skill scroll. To his surprise, it turned out to be a beginner skill scroll, which was worth about 10,000 gold and highly valuable. Lin held the scroll and pondered whether to use it himself or sell it. Ning Yi Yi asked, You haven't used a beginner skill scroll before, have you? Lin nodded, confirming that he had never used one. Ning Yi Yi noticed that Lin seemed to be considering selling it. A beginner skill scroll? It's not a high level scroll, so it's not worth much. In Ning Yi Yi's eyes, 10,000 gold coins seemed insignificant. Lin held the skill scroll and asked how to use it. Ning Yi Yi chuckled. It's simple. Just hold the scroll and say use. Lin didn't doubt her words and followed her instructions. Use, he said. The scroll remained motionless. Ning Yi Yi said, Oh, wait. You know what? Your voice wasn't loud enough. You need to say use in a louder voice. Lin looked at her but didn't make a second attempt. He may not have used a skill scroll before, but he wasn't foolish. He didn't believe for a second that the volume of his voice mattered. As Lin had suspected, he figured out the method of using the scroll directly by channeling his spiritual power into it. Ning Yi Yi looked at Lin expectantly, waiting for him to shout out the word, use. But Lin never uttered a word. Suddenly, the skill scroll erupted with a brilliant light enveloping Lin. Ning Yi Yi exclaimed in surprise, a disappointed look on her face. Lin found out how to properly use the scroll. She had intended to pull a prank on Lin, but he had discovered the correct method of usage. The skill scroll transformed into a sphere of light surrounding Lin, and an interface appeared. Acquired skill, corpse explosion. The newly acquired skill is read as follows. Corpse explosion, level 1, detonates a corpse, Dealing damage to enemies within a 1 meter radius equal to 10% of the corpse's remaining health. Corpse explosion is currently at level 1. At first glance, the skill description may not seem outstanding. The range is only 1 meter, but Lin saw something different in it. This is an AoE skill. If he were to face thousands of enemies, relying on the skeleton warriors to defeat them one by one would be too slow. It would take too much time. However, with this skill, 
All he needs to do is kill one enemy. Then, he can detonate the corpse, causing damage to the enemies within the skill's range. As more enemies are killed and more corpses are formed, he can continue to detonate the corpses, one after another. Ning Yi Yi blinked her big eyes, her face filled with curiosity, and asked if Lin have gotten a new skill. Lin nodded. Lin didn't blame Ning Yi Yi for trying to prank him earlier. Ning Yi Yi smiled happily, complimenting Lin's voice and hope he could talk more often. Lin looked at her. This woman seemed different from the girls in his school. She was lively and playful. Your voice sounds nice too. Lin rarely complimented others. Ning Yi Yi appeared delighted and took out a box, placing it directly into Lin's hands. It was an intermediate skill scroll. In the exchange market, the price of an intermediate skill scroll could reach up to one million gold coins, a hundred times the price of a beginner skill scroll. Ning Yi Yi had mentioned that the people chasing her were after this scroll. How could she just give it away like that? Ning Yi Yi sat down by the campfire and extended her hands to warm them up. With the people who were chasing her now taken care of, Ning Yi Yi felt a wave of relaxation wash over her. She had stumbled upon a stroke of luck inside the Carmen Orc Legion's camp. She found a chest that appeared randomly. By chance, Ning Yi Yi had come across it and obtained this intermediate skill scroll. Unfortunately, those few individuals had spotted her with it, leading to her being hunted down. Lin looked at Ning Yi Yi and waited for her to finish speaking before softly saying, You almost died just now. Ning Yi Yi smiled and explained that if she received a fatal injury, she would be automatically teleported away, but she still feared pain. Well, Lin realized he had been unnecessarily worried. The girl was not an ordinary girl. She had more than enough artifacts to keep her safe, so she couldn't die. Ning Yi Yi reached out her hand and asked if there was any food left. Lin took out several steamed buns, which he obtained from the earlier battle, totaling more than ten. Ning Yi Yi shook her head, indicating that she didn't want anything from those people. Lin chuckled and exchanged the buns for sweet potatoes. Ning Yi Yi happily took the sweet potato and started eating it. Watching Ning Yi Yi savoring the food, it seemed truly delicious. Ning Yi Yi continued her questioning, and Lin answered that he intended to go to Xinjiang Academy. In her eyes, with Lin's abilities, he would have no problem passing any academy entrance exams. Suddenly, Ning Yi Yi thought of something and told Lin that after he arrived at Xia Jing Academy, he must challenge the Divine Tower and aim for the highest floor possible. The rewards for the first-time challenge would be doubled, and it would earn him a substantial amount of points. In the academy, points were more valuable than gold. Ning Yi Yi seemed to be quite knowledgeable about Xia Jing Academy and passionately explained its details to Lin. As she spoke, Lin's mind started to form a rough image of Xia Jing Academy. 99% of the time, it was Ning Yi Yi doing the talking, and Lin simply listened, occasionally responding with a sentence or two. Eventually, Ning Yi Yi's voice faded away and fell asleep. Lin removed his coat and offered it to Ning Yi Yi as a makeshift blanket, while he himself began to meditate. The next day, sunlight poured in. Lin's spiritual energy was fully replenished as he woke up from his meditation. Ning Yi Yi blinked her big eyes and looked at him. With a cheerful smile, she reached out her hand, asking for the sweet potato. Lin directly handed her a piece of sweet potato, but Ning Yi Yi felt it wasn't enough, so Lin took out another piece. Almost all of the twenty something sweet potatoes he had brought with him were given to Ning Yi Yi, and he didn't keep a single one for himself. Lin waved his hand and said, There really are none left. Ning Yi Yi smiled and said, All right, I'll believe you. Holding the sweet potato, she bid farewell to Lin, expressing her wish to meet Lin again in the future, telling him to quickly level up so he can take her on a journey and take her along to level up. Ning Yi Yi left swiftly, taking the sweet potatoes and the coat that served as her makeshift blanket. After Ning Yi Yi left, Lin muttered to himself, I'll bring you along to level up in the future. The forest was permeated with a faint smell of blood. Three corpses lay on the ground. Lin gazed at the bodies and silently unleashed the skill he had just learned yesterday. Lin walked towards the three bodies and tested his newly acquired skill. Suddenly, the body exploded. 
With a loud bang, surrounding trees were blown to pieces. A massive pit appeared on the ground with a depth exceeding several meters. The power was quite substantial. Lin noticed that the damage range from the corpse explosion was a full 360 degrees in all directions. The body he just detonated belonged to the mage. He did a few more tests. Once again, there was a thunderous roar, even more powerful than before. Following yesterday's thoughts, Lin headed towards the western sea mine. After a night of meditation, his spiritual stats was fully restored, and Lin summoned four more skeletal warriors. With the skill level of summon skeletal warrior reaching level 10, the skeletal warriors transformed from black iron level to bronze level. The demand for spiritual power also increased. Now, summoning a single skeletal warrior required 70 points of spiritual stats. Lin had a total of 300 points of spiritual stats. At this point, Lin have a total of 48 skeletal warriors. Lin was already quite satisfied. He knew someday the summoning space will be maxed out, and he wasn't in a hurry. As Lin got closer to the Western Sea Mine dungeon, he started to see people gathering around. The monsters on the way to the dungeon were mostly cleared out. Soon, Lin caught sight of the entrance to the dungeon. It was a whirlpool similar to a newbie dungeon, but much larger. The whirlpool seemed to emitting a constant aura of bloodlust. At the entrance of the dungeon, many people were waving flags and shouting, searching for team members. Several people were also gathered in front of the dungeon entrance, seemingly engaged in discussion and their plans. Lin approached the entrance of the dungeon with a single skeletal warrior. He had kept the other skeletal warriors hidden. The skeletal warrior's bone friction making a sound that sent shivers down one's spine. Many people instinctively stepped back, creating a pathway for Lin. Arriving at the entrance of the dungeon, Lin checked the dungeon information. This was the real deal, and not a newbie dungeon designed for leveling up newcomers. The mine dungeon had two difficulty levels, offering normal and nightmare difficulties, with no hell difficulty available. Even in normal difficulty, the monsters were already elite creatures, several times stronger than those outside. The nightmare difficulty featured even stronger elite monsters, with an even higher level of difficulty. Typically, Normal difficulty required a three-person team, consisting of a tank, a damage dealer, and a support. The nightmare difficulty required a five-person team, with dual support and dual damage dealers. From this, one could infer the difference in difficulty. The skeletal warrior stood silently beside Lin, showing no signs of movement. Finally, someone mustered the courage to use a detection spell, and it landed on both Lin and the skeletal warrior. A red light suddenly emanated from the hollow eye sockets of the skeletal warrior, directed towards the person who cast the detection spell. This startled the person, and the detection spell yielded no results, providing no information. Lin was wearing the shielding emblem given by Ning Yi Yi. He didn't order the skeletal warrior to take action. It was just a detection spell, nothing serious. It seemed that everyone realized Lin was not an ordinary person, and started inviting him to join their teams. However, Lin declined. After information, he chose the nightmare difficulty. Lin was teleported into the dungeon. Many people were shocked to see him entering the dungeon. They couldn't believe that someone would dare to enter a dungeon on their own. Some people approached the person who had used the detection spell earlier, asking for details. The person seemed slightly embarrassed and said he didn't see any information. Outside the dungeon, Many people wore expressions of curiosity, as there had been numerous cases where overconfident individuals attempted to solo dungeons and ended up dying inside. The Western Sea Mine dungeon lived up to its name, with the terrain inside resembling an actual mine. The dungeon was filled with a heavy, oppressive atmosphere, accompanied by a strong stench of blood. Standing within a safe zone, Lin knew that venturing outside would result in immediate attacks. Lin cast a detection spell, revealing the true nature of the elite goblin monster. Its attributes were several times higher than those of ordinary creatures. A level 14 goblin with 800 strength, 400 agility, 200 spirit, and 1000 GP. It also possessed a skill called Stunning Strike, showcasing immense strength and resilience. 
Even a level 14 knight class profession wouldn't come close to matching half of its prowess. Without proper teamwork and coordination, defeating a nightmare level dungeon would be a daunting task. Yet when compared to Lin's skeletal warrior, the difference in attributes was still vast. Lin summoned the skeletal warrior from the summoning space, and in an instant, the room was filled with an army of skeletal warriors. Afterward, he stepped out of the safe zone, officially embarking on the journey through the dungeon. The goblin guard roared in excitement and charged at Lin, only to be met with the skeletal warrior's large axe. It was quickly dispatched with a few strikes, and Lin received a notification. You have slain a level 14 goblin guard and gained 4,200 experience. A tinge of excitement flashed through Lin's mind. The experience gained was about 10 times higher than that of monsters at the same level. Killing a single monster here was equivalent to killing 10 outside. Lin felt that he had found the right direction and immediately issued a command. The skeletal warriors swiftly rushed into the dungeon corridor with a clattering sound. Like an unstoppable army, they slaughtered their way through, and messages kept appearing. The screen was filled with rapid notifications, not only gaining experience, but also obtaining numerous items and materials. Experience began to increase rapidly, and the number of materials kept growing. A detailed map of the dungeon quickly formed in Lin's mind. The mine dungeon was exactly as its name suggested, a mine. Inside, there were many passages, interconnected in various directions. Just five minutes after entering the dungeon, a radiant light of leveling up appeared on Lin. He reached level 11, and upon leveling up, his spirit was fully restored. Lin immediately summoned four more skeletal warriors. He checked his own attributes and noticed that the increase in basic attributes had become more significant, with each level granting a boost of 20 attribute points instead of the previous 10. His spirit had also increased by 100 points. Lin understood that as his level increased, the subsequent attribute boosts would become even greater. This realization came to him after reviewing his attributes. The four attributes of the skeletal warriors had reached a terrifying 1700, and this overall change was within his expectations. However, the recently acquired corpse explosion skill remained at level one without any changes. Lin felt puzzled as to why the soul flame and summon skeletal warrior skills had both improved, but the corpse explosion skill remained the same. He couldn't understand why. If Ning Yi Yi were here, perhaps she would know. Lin thought of Ning Yi Yi, the adorable girl who loved pranks and could talk endlessly. Her knowledge surpassed his own by a considerable margin. Setting aside the doubts in his mind for now, he continued moving deeper into the dungeon. Suddenly, a massive creature blocked the path. A giant wolf king appeared before Lin, and the detection spell revealed it to be the Mine Wolf King, an elite boss with surprisingly high attributes. Lin encountered a boss-level monster for the first time, and it was an elite boss at that. Surprisingly, its four attributes were even higher than those of a skeletal warrior. Such a degree of strength was expected in a nightmare difficulty dungeon. The crimson eyes of the Wolf King locked onto Lin, emanating a bloodthirsty aura. However, in the end, it was just a wolf. Lin gave the command to attack, and the skeletal warriors swiftly charged towards the Mine Wolf King. The Mine Wolf King let out a fierce roar, unleashing its skills. A powerful shockwave erupted from its mouth. The leading skeletal warrior was sent flying by the impact. The remaining skeletal warriors who were unaffected by the shockwave used their skills, delivering rampage strikes. The skeletal warriors who hadn't been knocked back had already reached the Mine Wolf King and began slashing at it with their glowing red blades. The Wolf King howled in agony. Many skeletal warriors leaped high into the air, landing directly on the Wolf King's body and activating their skills with red glows. This scene closely resembled what Lin had witnessed during the day of his class transition. The skeletal warriors also had slain the mighty dragon in such a manner. The mining Wolf King went into a frenzy, rolling and repeatedly crashing its massive body against the rocky walls of the mine, attempting to shake off the skeletal warriors clinging to it. It unleashed its roar skill once again, sending the surrounding skeletal warriors flying. This time, it used all its strength, maximizing the impact of the knockback effect. 
Suddenly, the Mine Wolf King turned around and limped towards the passage. Lin was slightly taken aback, as he hadn't expected the dungeon boss to flee. The Mine Wolf King ran into the passage, howling all the way. Something seemed off about the situation. Feeling that something was amiss, Lin didn't order the skeletal warriors to pursue. Instead, he had them retreat to his side. The iron doors on both sides of the passage swung open amidst the Mine Wolf King's howls, and bloodthirsty wolves emerged from behind the doors. Under the detection spell, the attributes of these wolves were revealed. Level 14, Blood Wolves with 600 Strength, 600 Agility, 200 Spirit, and 1,000 Health. Although the individual attributes of the Blood Wolves were not particularly strong, their sheer numbers, totaling at least a hundred, were enough to send chills down one's spine. However, Lin was not afraid. Despite the large number of Mine Blood Wolves, their attributes were not high, and his skeletal warriors were more than capable of dealing with them. With a single strike, a skeletal warrior easily sliced one of the wolves, granting Lin both experience and wolf skins. A graceful smile formed on Lin's lips, and a radiant glow appeared in the palm of his hand. Corpse explosion! With a deafening roar, the bodies of the Mine Blood Wolves were detonated. Not a single wolf could withstand the amplified damage that was five times more powerful. Instant kill. Undoubtedly, it was an instant kill. In an instant, notifications flooded the screen. Within the blink of an eye, Lin's experience skyrocketed from 32% to 72%. At that moment, the Mine Wolf King hobbled back, its eyes filled with terror. Conveniently, there were several Blood Wolf corpses at its feet. Lin's gaze turned cold, and a faint light flickered in his palm. Corpse explosion. Boom! 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 Three consecutive explosions simultaneously engulfed the three corpses. Screams resounded, and the Wolf King let out a final lament. After a few staggering movements, its massive body crashed to the ground. Lin gained 15,000 experience, as well as the Wolf King's fangs and low-level monster crystals. Lin continued down the winding passage, encountering a number of goblin-like monsters along the way. With a sweeping gesture, the skeletal army charged into the mine pit. Faced with the onslaught of skeletal warriors like a tide, these enhanced elite monsters were powerless to resist. One after another, they were slain. Although the enhanced elite monsters were formidable, they also offered generous experience and abundant materials. Lin pondered that in the future, when he could solo in hell-level dungeons, the experience gained would likely be even greater. Continuing along the passage, Lin cleared out the monsters along the way. With a few rounds of nightmare difficulty, it wouldn't be a difficult task to reach level 16, or even levels 18 or 19. Lin knew he is one step closer to seeing his sister, thought of Lin Mohan, made Lin smile, a rare sight indeed. The final boss of the mine dungeon sat in the center of the mine, its massive mouth continuously inhaling and exhaling air. The sound of its breath was like thunder, reverberating through the vast mine cavern. This boss seemed completely unaware of the events happening outside. It appeared to be asleep. Lin cast a detection spell, revealing the Goblin King, a boss-level monster at level 16. Its strength and HP reached an astonishing 3,000, and it possessed three skills. This final boss, with significantly higher attributes than the skeletal warriors, was awakened by the detection spell. It slowly opened its eyes and locked its gaze onto Lin. Then, with a roar, it leaped into the air, wielding a giant cleaver and bringing it down towards Lin's head. The cleaver carried a terrifying gust of wind as it descended. Lin attempted to dodge backward but still got hit. His passive skill triggered, transferring the damage, and Lin furrowed his brow. He felt the skeletal warriors had all been injured, their bones displaying fine cracks. Shockingly, two of the skeletal warriors were of the situation. Lin smiled slightly and walked towards the entrance of the dungeon. He didn't care about the Dynasty Guild. They were just obstacles to his leveling progress. The people who were previously protesting suddenly stopped and looked at Lin. With a skeletal warrior by his side, Lin proceeded towards the dungeon entrance, the sound of bones cracking accompanying their steps. 
The professional became extremely nervous and tried to pull Lin back. The professional urged, his voice filled with concern. The mage representing the Dynasty Guild stared coldly at Lin. Behind him, several members of the guild focused their gaze on Lin. They were all above level 20. Knights, warriors, mages, archers, and support classes were among their ranks. Moreover, their equipment was exceptional, ranging from weapons to armor and accessories, all of them bronze grade. Lin stood in front of the mage and calmly said, Move out of the way. The Dynasty Guild's mage treated his words as if he had heard the most amusing joke. Lin continued, Don't stop me from entering the dungeon or I'll kill you. Lin spoke coldly. He wasn't joking at all. The mage sneered and cast a detection spell that landed on Lin. Then, a mocking laughter escaped his lips as it turned out that Lin was just a level 12 nobody. Even though they had never encountered the class of a necromancer before, the fact that he was just a level 12 nobody was undeniable. Despite the voices urging Lin to retreat, he paid no attention to any of them. His voice gradually turned cold as he spoke. One last time, step aside or die. The mage felt a chilling sensation emanating from Lin's words, causing an involuntary shiver to run down his spine. The gaze in Lin's eyes sent a shiver down his heart, leaving him wondering how could a level 12 makes him feel terrified. However, in the next moment, he snapped back to reality, raising his staff in a threatening manner. He intended to kill Lin if he took one more step. Lin looked at the mage, his lips twitching slightly. With a casual utterance of a single word, the skeletal warriors dashed forward like lightning. In the blink of an eye, the skeletal warrior appeared before the mage, raising its weapon to strike. The mage wore a smirk on his face and simultaneously activated a faint pink energy shield. The skeletal warrior's blade struck the energy shield, causing it to deform dramatically, nearly reaching the point of breaking. In that instant, the mage's face turned pale. What kind of summoned creature was this? Lin ordered the skeletal warrior to use its skills, and the skeletal warrior's blade immediately emitted a dazzling red light. Rampage strike. The mage was frightened out of his wits. Who could have anticipated that this summoned creature would also possess such a powerful skill? He felt the threat of death. Without a doubt, if this attack lands, not only would his energy shield shatter, but he would also die. Resist flame ring. The mage activated his skill in an instant. The flame ring erupted, pushing the skeletal warrior several meters away. The members behind him were also astonished. The mage shouted, What are you all waiting for? Attack! The mage felt like he had just narrowly escaped death. His face turned pale, and he shouted loudly, responded to his call, activating a charge skill. Holding up his shield, he charged forward and forcefully collided with the skeletal warrior, covering a distance of over ten meters. To everyone's surprise, the knight let out a girly scream. Among the screams, the knight was sent flying. The skeletal warrior remained unmoved. In terms of strength, the skeletal warrior was clearly superior. It charged forward once again, faithfully carrying out Lin's command. The mage quickly retreated, instructing his companions to kill Lin. The best way to deal with a summoner was not to kill the summoned creature, but to eliminate the summoner themselves. As long as the summoner died, the summoned creature would naturally disappear. Two archers simultaneously released their arrows. Several arrows flew towards Lin, yet he didn't dodge or flinch. His expression remained unchanged. A black vortex appeared in front of Lin, and two skeletal warriors rose simultaneously, blocking the incoming arrows perfectly, one on the left and one on the right. The arrows struck the skeletal warriors' weapons, producing a metallic clashing sound, but they didn't cause any damage. The two archers quickly retreated, shocked that Lin had more than one summoned creature. The mage shouted loudly, and immediately, all of the knights and warriors rushed to stand in front of him, shielding him from the skeletal warriors, with no immediate danger. The mage raised his staff and pointed it at Lin, rapidly chanting an incantation. A giant flame erupted from the ground. Several seconds later, a fire serpent shot out from his staff, heading straight towards Lin. This was a rare skill that only a level 20 mage could learn, and it was considered the strongest skill for a level 20 mage. Some of the people behind Lin were worried for him. However, Lin remained calm and still. Another vortex appeared in front of him. This time, dozens of skeletal warriors emerged, 
and the fire serpent danced upon them. With a thunderous explosion, a brilliant blaze erupted. In the midst of the flames, dozens of skeletal warriors charged forward, pouncing towards the members of the dynasty guild. The mage's face turned incredibly grim. The appearance of three skeletal warriors earlier had already surprised him, but he never expected such a large number to appear all at once. The quantity of the skeletal warriors have now exceeded their own numbers. The mage was highly experienced, yet he remained calm and composed. Commanding the members of the guild, he had them form a formation to confront the legion of skeletal warriors. No doubt the dynasty guild was truly a guild seasoned with countless battles and enriched with experience. Each of their professionals had undergone extensive combat training and possessing outstanding teamwork. They swiftly gathered, ready for action. At the forefront stood the knights, while warriors, archers, and mages took the center for maximum damage output. The support members remained at the back, rapidly bestowing buffs upon their comrades. Strength enhancement, agility boost, and mental fortification. Their speeds surged, energy shields activated, and the berserk mode activated. Not a single buff was omitted. Every possible status enhancement was applied. Confidence returned to the mage's face. At this moment, Lin raised his hand, ordering the onlookers to step back. At this point, no one dared to defy his words. Who could have imagined that he alone would confront a dozen members of the dynasty guild? Everyone immediately stepped back, creating a considerable distance. The mage suddenly caught sight of a flash of purple flames before witnessing a tragic scene. A skilled archer let out a scream. The archer's life rapidly plummeted, edge of death in an instant. Swiftly, a healing spell landed on the archer, but it failed to save him. Much to everyone's horror, the archer was dead, struck down in an instant. The mage's loud commands made the whole team grow even more tense. With dozens of skeleton warriors charging towards them, even the valiant knight was now overwhelmed. He had to endure the attacks of over ten skeleton warriors simultaneously. Activating his limitless defense, he was continuously bombarded by the rampage strikes from the skeleton warriors. Though healing spells rained down upon him, he still felt unbearable pain, fearing that he might fall at any moment. One healing spell after another was thrown his way, yet under the relentless assault of the skeleton warriors, the radiance of his limitless defense was rapidly waning. Just as the knight's limitless defense dissipated, Lin unleashed the soul flame once again. The soul flame flew towards the knight, causing the knight to wail in agony. More than ten rampage strikes struck the knight simultaneously. Even the support healer couldn't keep up, and in an instant, the knight was slain. The tank was down, leaving a gaping hole in the team's defense. The mage's face turned pale and he shouted, Retreat! He quickly darted backward, but Lin shook his head. It was too late. One of the skeleton warriors hurled the knight's lifeless body into the air. The body exploded with a deafening blast. A thunderous roar erupted. The knight's body detonated, and the mage heard only a resounding boom before there was nothing more. Complete annihilation! The bursting corpse sounded like a world-shattering thunder, obliterating everything in its wake. On the ground, only a dozen mangled corpses remained. Not a single member of the Dynasty Guild survived. Countless items were scattered on the ground. Lin paid no attention to them, wiping the blood from his face before collecting everything. He used corpse explosion again, this time leaving no trace of remains of the Dynasty Guild members. After completing these tasks, he finally entered the dungeon. The group of freelancers who had protested earlier finally dared to approach. They could hardly believe that a single person had wiped out the entire Dynasty Guild team. The onlookers knew that the Dynasty Guild wouldn't take this lying down, and they were uncertain about what to do next. One of them suggested that they should leave immediately, departing from Western Sea City and the province, far away from the Dynasty Guild's influence. His proposal was immediately accepted by everyone. With his instigation, everyone began to retreat, and in the blink of an eye, the entrance to the dungeon became devoid of people. Half an hour later, several individuals were teleported out of the dungeon. A blond man's face bore a hint of disappointment. Despite their venture into the dungeon, they still couldn't obtain the Goblin King's crystal core. Suddenly, 
A female adventurer beside him noticed that there was not a single person nearby, not even their own team members or other freelancers. They couldn't fathom what had happened. The few individuals who accompanied Hao ran, who's the son of the guild leader on this dungeon run, looked panicked. Being only at level 17, their experience paled in comparison to the mage and the others guarding the entrance. At this moment, they could only rely on Hao Ran as their backbone. After all, he was the young guild leader of the Dynasty Guild. After contemplating for a while, he finally spoke. Deploy the signal flare, hoping to get response from the mage and the other. However, in his mind, he couldn't understand why. There was no sign of battle or any traces left. One signal flare soared into the sky, bursting open to form a massive ball of light. Hao Ran realized that something must have happened to the mage and the others during the time he was inside the dungeon. He instructed everyone to follow him and leave first, as there might be danger in this area. Alone in the dungeon, Lin commanded 64 skeleton warriors relentlessly charging forward, employing the same strategy as before, swiftly gaining experience. This time, the efficiency was even higher than the previous one, and after merely an hour, Lin had reached the end of the dungeon. The 64 skeleton warriors surrounded the Goblin King, bombarding him relentlessly. In just 30 seconds, the formidable nightmare-level boss fell to the ground in utter frustration. Defeating the Goblin King, experience plus 40, 000, obtained a bronze-level weapon, the Goblin King's spellbook, and a low-level monster crystal core. As expected, this time the Goblin King's crystal core did not drop again. Instead, it turned into a low-level monster crystal core. Lin checked the properties of the Goblin King's spellbook. Goblin King's spellbook. Bronze level, plus 10 spirit, plus 10 health, 3% increase in mage skills power. Looking at the attributes, while it wasn't perfect, it would do for now. Holding the book, it seemed to have some value. In the process of slaying the Goblin King, Lin reached level 13. He quickly calculated that if he wanted to reach level 15, he would need to go through approximately three more dungeons. However, time was running short, and he could only do a maximum of five dungeon runs. At most, he could reach level 16, which was still slightly lower than his initial expectations. But level 16 would be sufficient for the entrance exam at Xia Jing Academy. Lin exited the dungeon. Outside the dungeon, it was eerily quiet, unusually peaceful. Lin pondered for a moment and essentially understood the cause and effect of what had happened. Leaving was probably the best choice for those freelancers. Surveying his surroundings, he didn't linger either. While waiting for the dungeon cool down, the next day, another team finally arrived at the entrance of the dungeon. Charlotte had also reached level 10, and the skeleton warriors around Lin were quite conspicuous. She was well aware that Lin was the only one in the world with such summons. Charlotte looked at Lin and understood that he's going to solo it. She had just reached level 10 today and came straight to the dungeon. She never expected that Lin would be able to solo it. Once again, Lin was one step faster than her. In the nightmare level dungeon, Lin plowed through the enemies. Now, a legion of 72 skeleton warriors had been assembled. Just 45 minutes later, Lin encountered an old friend, the Goblin King who woke up on the great swords of the skeleton warriors. By the time it stood up, more than half of its health was already depleted. Flames erupted from its mouth, but was interrupted by the soul flame, interrupting its skills. In just 30 seconds, the Goblin King won in utter frustration. After defeating the Goblin King, gained experience 40,000, and the loot dropped as before. Lin glanced at the items and stored them in his storage space. The Goblin King's eyes carried a mixture of unwillingness and frustration. That gaze seemed to suggest that it recognized Lin. Lin waved his hand, indicating that it didn't matter who killed him. At least Lin gave him a quick death. In truth, he said he didn't want to kill the Goblin King either, but there was no other way. He needed to level up. Lin softly spoke to the Goblin King regardless of whether it understood or not. Another twelve hours passed, and Lin returned once again to see his old friend, after slaying the Goblin King. Lin also reached level 14, 
and the number of skeleton warriors increased to 76. While waiting outside the dungeon for the cool down, he encountered an old classmate. Hearing a familiar voice, he opened his eyes and saw Charlotte. Dust smudged her delicate face, and she had injuries, clearly having just experienced a battle as she had just come out of the dungeon. She stared at Lin, her face full of dissatisfaction. She asked him what level he was, and Lin calmly replied that he was level 14. Charlotte couldn't believe it. How could Lin have leveled up so quickly? She had teamed up with others and repeatedly cleared the Western Sea Mine dungeon on normal difficulty twice, and it took her from level 10 to 11. Back-to-back -back dungeons had left her completely exhausted. She knew Lin could solo dungeons, but he couldn't possibly level up this fast. Charlotte couldn't have imagined that Lin was running nightmare-level dungeons. Her sense of dissatisfaction towards him only grew stronger. She huffed. I won't admit defeat. Saying so, she turned and left. Lin watched her, not knowing what to say. Suddenly, he saw Charlotte and a few others enter the dungeon. Lin witnessed something incredible. Dungeons had cooldown periods, but Charlotte had just come out. How could she go back in so quickly? He had tried both normal and nightmare difficulties, and dungeons always had cooldowns. Yet Charlotte could re-enter repeatedly. An hour later, she completed another dungeon run. After coming out of the dungeon, Charlotte didn't forget to glance back at Lynn. He could see her exhaustion from her expression, the kind of fatigue that resulted from continuous battles. Shortly after, in just a little over ten minutes, Charlotte found another team and went into the dungeon again. Half an hour later, exhausted, she exited from the dungeon. She was so tired that she didn't even want to move a finger. Charlotte, with her weariness, sat down beside Lynn. Lynn asked her why she was pushing herself so hard, and Charlotte replied with annoyance, she can't believe that Lynn has the nerve to ask her why. For years, she is always second behind Lynn. She must surpass Lynn. Lynn never to hold such deep resentment. If he had known, he would have given her an easy time during a certain exam and let her achieve first place too. Charlotte looked up at the sky. She also wanted to get into Xia Jing Academy. Level 15 would be secure, but level 16 would guarantee her admission. Lin recommended her to run nightmare-level dungeons to level up faster. Charlotte stared at Lin with her big eyes, thinking he was joking or perhaps teasing her. Nightmare dungeons required elite teams, and those people were all 16 or 17 level professionals. Nobody would take a level 12 like her. Charlotte gave Lin a disdainful look, as if saying, do you even understand anything at all? Hearing Lin's silence, Charlotte continued, that's why she better run several more normal level dungeons. She should be able to get to level 14, and with some effort, level 15 might be possible. Finally, Lin spoke up, finally asking how Charlotte was able to bypass the dungeon cooldown. Charlotte turned into a surprised Pikachu face, not expecting that there were things Lin didn't know. Lin didn't speak, only silently watching Charlotte for her answer. Seeming to have found something fun, Charlotte had a mischievous grin on her face, teasing Lin to say something nice. Then she would tell him. Lin turned his head away, closing his eyes. Seeing this, she pouted, showing him her cool-down amulet. Lin quickly recalled that this item was not something taught in school. Charlotte said that the cool-down amulet could offset the dungeon cool-down time, allowing people to enter the dungeon repeatedly. The amulet looked like a stopwatch. Under the detection spell, Lin obtained the item information, primary cooldown amulet. Available usage, seven tenths. Introduction. This item can offset the dungeon's cooldown time, only effective for dungeons below level 20. This was the first time Lin had heard of this item. Lin asked if this item was expensive. Charlotte didn't know, because it was given to her by her father. But she remembered her dad's expression. He seemed a bit distressed when handing it over to her. Charlotte's family was very wealthy, with many successful companies under their names, and very well known in the Western Sea City. If someone like her father would find something expensive, the item itself was obviously valuable. Charlotte scratched her hair. She had to use up all seven dungeon reset chances within two days, and she felt like she might be exhausted to death. Seeing her troubled expression, Lynn thought for a moment, offering to carry her through the dungeon. 
He guaranteed that Charlotte could level up to 15 without lifting a finger. Charlotte suddenly remembered this stern guy beside her could solo dungeons. Charlotte quickly made a decision, willing to share the amulet with him. Lin knew even though the experience gained each time would be less, the fact that there were more entries which will result in a greater overall gain. It was a win-win situation, and Charlotte happily agreed. Lin told Charlotte to rest first, and they would start running the dungeon in two hours. Charlotte stretched lazily, preparing to nap. She quickly fell asleep, drifting off within moments. Sleeping so defenselessly in the wilderness was quite dangerous. However, Charlotte slept peacefully, because Lynn was by her side. Charlotte curled up, sleeping soundly like a kitten with a small smile at the corner of her mouth. Two hours later, Lynn's dungeon cooldown ended. Charlotte got up, stretching languidly, accompanying Lynn into the dungeon with a skeletal warrior on their side. Charlotte used the primary cooldown amulet, making her dungeon cooldown time disappear. Lynn started the dungeon, then selected the nightmare level difficulty. Charlotte's face changed drastically, thinking that Lynn had chosen the wrong level. Before her words fell, the two had already disappeared at the entrance of the dungeon. The heavy, oppressive atmosphere made it hard for Charlotte to breathe. She clung tightly to Lynn, staring at Lynn in fear. Lynn turned his head back to look at her, asking if she was scared. Bracing herself, Charlotte declared she wasn't scared, but just looking at the terrifying attributes of the monsters made her teeth chatter. Lynn told her that all she had to do was follow him. A large number of skeleton warriors appeared in the room. An unwillingness rose in her heart, and she quickly caught up with Lynn. They ran through the long mine tunnel, seeing the mine wolf king boss. The nightmare level wolf king was twice larger than the normal level wolf king. A skeleton warrior slain a nearby elite monster and then threw the elite monster's corpse into the air toward the Wolf King. At the same time, Lin also raised his hand. Corpse explosion! A huge explosion rang out and the terrifying sound startled Charlotte. Experience rapidly increased and a swarm of notifications surged in. Several more loud explosions followed. The Wolf King, who was unimaginably terrifying in her eyes, fell to the ground with a howl. The Wolf King that would usually take a team of three twenty minutes to kill had been vanquished instantly within less than a second. She then realized that this was not a normal level, but a nightmare-level dungeon. When Charlotte learned that Lynn had started soloing nightmare-level dungeons from level 10, she finally understood why Lynn could level up so quickly. From the moment they entered the dungeon till now, it had only been around ten minutes, and they were already about to face the final boss. The enormous goblin king stood before them. Then, the skeleton warriors charged up like bears to a beehive, swarming the goblin king. With a dozen ear-splitting sounds, everything returned to calm. A level-up glow appeared around Lin. He leveled up to 15. Charlotte. Looking at the item drop, it was a shame it wasn't staff. Hearing this, suddenly a black shadow flew towards her. Charlotte instinctively reached out and caught it. Lin handed the Goblin King's staff to Charlotte. Seeing that Lin hadn't used any weapons from start to finish, Charlotte knew in her heart that Lin didn't care about attributes from these bronze-level gears. Lin didn't know what Charlotte was thinking. He was currently checking the changes in his attributes after leveling up. He quickly calculated that he could reach level 16 after running the dungeon five more times. Looking at the Goblin King lying on the ground, he touched it and apologized saying he would kill it five more times. Seeing Lin actually talking to the Goblin King, Charlotte found it very strange. The boss obviously couldn't understand him. For some reason, Charlotte thought of the scene where Lin had just apologized to the boss, and she suddenly found Lin somewhat endearing and cute. Upon leaving the dungeon, Charlotte immediately used the primary cool-down charm. Only a dozen seconds later, they entered the nightmare-level Western Sea Mine dungeon again. The second time they entered, Charlotte seemed like a completely different person. As she ran with Lynn, she was in a state of excitement. The excitement overflowing on her face made Lynn feel a bit strange. The third time, fourth time, and fifth time, quickly, they have used up all of the entries. Charlotte successfully leveled up to 14. There was still a day and a half left before the final exam. They could run the dungeon two more times, and by then, she would definitely reach level 15.
Charlotte temporarily lost her competitive mindset towards Lin. She knew that they could definitely enter the Xia Jing Academy together. Charlotte suddenly asked if Lin was interested in competing for the top position in the province. Charlotte explained that if Lin could become the top place in the province, he could earn a lot of points. Most importantly, there was an opportunity to join the Creator Academy. The Creator Academy is the strongest academy within the empire. While the Xia Jing Academy recruits prodigies, the Creator Academy is for the top-ranking individuals among those prodigies. Charlotte looked at Lin with her brilliant eyes. She genuinely thought Lin had a chance. Lin spoke softly. He was determined to go to the Xia Jing Academy where his sister was. If given the opportunity, he would also try to enter the Creator Academy at a future date. Suddenly, Charlotte saw a blonde young man behind Lin. She recognized him at a glance. It was Gao Yang. He was at the entrance of the dungeon, seemingly looking for a team. Gao Yang was already at level 11, but unfortunately at level 11, knights just couldn't tank the monsters. As expected, after searching for a while, Gao Yang couldn't find a team and looked disappointed. Lin was ready to take Gao Yang to grind the dungeon together. Charlotte chuckled and followed him. In an office, a chubby middle-aged man was shouting at a young man, blaming him for having the audacity to block the dungeons and preventing others to join. He was breaking the rules and possibly offending both the Empire and the Profession Association by doing this. The middle-aged man rubbed his brow. After all, this was his son. He instructed the young man to stay at home for the next few days and wait for the final exam. The young man asked about the missing guild members, and the chubby guild president replied that he had already sent people to investigate. The president sneered. It seemed that someone dared to challenge his dynasty guild. In front of the dungeon, Charlotte called Gao Yang over. Gao Yang's eyes were rolling rapidly, revealing a profound and meaningful smile. Charlotte's Sundere personality was well known. Only when she was with Lin would she tone it down a bit. She raised her fist and made a threatening gesture. Gao Yang was startled, saying he was just joking. Charlotte told him to follow them to grind the dungeon together. Gao Yang let out an excited howl, clasped his hands together and thanked them both. Gao Yang's expressions and actions were extremely exaggerated. Charlotte clenched her fist and said if he continued like this, she wouldn't take him. Gao Yang immediately surrendered, instantly becoming serious. But seeing him like this made Charlotte wants to punch him even more. Charlotte snorted, and a fireball appeared in the palm of her hand telling him to act natural. If Gao Yang dared to say anything more, she would definitely throw this fireball at his face. When Gao Yang learned that the two had a ten-hour cooldown, he then decided to go grind some wild monsters and let the two rest. Before he left, he winked at Lin, cheered him on to conquer Charlotte tonight, and then ran off as fast as he could. Charlotte stomped her foot in anger and threw the fireball at him. The fireball landed on the ground, but the sparks caught on Gao Yang, and he cried out loudly. Covering his butt, he disappeared in the blink of an eye. Ten hours later, Gao Yang joined the team, and they entered the nightmare level dungeon. As soon as he entered the dungeon, Gao Yang was the first to be scared and paralyzed on the ground. Just like Charlotte before, he thought that Lin had selected the wrong difficulty. Charlotte snorted and told him to talk less and just follow them. Gao Yang showed a variety of expressions, such as puzzlement, panic, and fear. Ten minutes later, Gao Yang was still gaping at the sight of the dead boss. He wiped the corner of his mouth and suddenly hugged Lin's thigh, saying that he wanted Lin to carry him every day, and he could dress up in skirts and cheerleader outfits to cheer Lin on. Charlotte helplessly remarked that Gao Yang had no backbone and lacked the spirit of a knight. Gao Yang didn't care. With Lin's presence, who needs to be a knight? Lin shook his head and then calculated in his heart. After one more run, he would reach level 16, Charlotte would reach level 15, and Gao Yang would reach level 12. As for Gao Yang, he wasn't planning to go to Xia Jing Academy. His goal was another higher-level academy in the province that wasn't as competitive. The setting sun cast long shadows over everything. On the southern city wall of Western Sea City, several principals stood together, looking at the wild area outside the city wall. 
Tomorrow was the day of the final exam. They didn't know how well these children would do. An elderly principal asked Principal Liu about the two prodigies from his school, wondering if they were also preparing for the Xia Jing Academy. Principal Liu looked unblinkingly into the distance and nodded. He knew that the competition for Xia Jing Academy was the most intense. According to previous year's standards, only those at level 15 had a decent chance, while those at level 16 could guarantee their admission. He sighed, recalling over the years, only Su Qian Xing and Lin's sister from their city, level 16 before the final exam. He wondered if these two youngsters this year had a chance. Finally, a few students appeared in their line of sight. Under the detection spell, a level 12 gladiator named John came into view, followed by a level 13 female archer named Bright. One by one, the students returned, while the principals continued to use detection spells on the city wall. This time, every year was actually a pre-exam competition among the principals to see whose students were the most outstanding. As the sky darkened, Principal Liu began to feel anxious. Charlotte, Lin, and Gao Yang hadn't returned yet. Finally, just before the night fully set in, Principal Liu saw three figures in the distance. A smile immediately appeared on his face. The result wasn't important, as long as they returned safely. Detection spells flew out one after another. Gao Yang was at level 12, and Charlotte was at level 15, causing the principals to express surprise one after another. The last one, Lin, was at level 16, and all of the principals gasped in surprise. Lin had really reached level 16, one level higher than Charlotte. Seeing Gao Yang's shield and Charlotte's magic staff, they then understood that these children had cleared many dungeons. Principal Liu was delighted and let the three of them get on the bus first, and he was in a great mood. After all of the students have returned, he had won out in front of the other principals. Moreover, perhaps this time both Lin and Charlotte could be admitted to Xia Jing Academy, which would be an extremely honorable achievement for Western Sea City and the high school. As night fell, Lin continued his meditation. He followed his own thoughts and didn't place too much emphasis on the final exam. He was confident he would definitely get into Xia Jing Academy. If he had a chance, he would also try to strive for the top spot in the province. The next morning, Lin woke up on time. Exactly 100 skeleton warriors were quietly waiting in the summoning space. Arriving at the school, many classmates had already arrived. Gao Yang waved vigorously at Lin, and after a while, Charlotte also arrived. Charlotte was much more popular than Lin, and the students flocked around her. But contrary to her usual demeanor, Charlotte came over to Lin and asked him how he was feeling. Lin nodded slightly in response. Charlotte smiled and hoped to see Lin at Xia Jing Academy. After everyone had arrived, Principal Liu came over and gave each person a teleportation stone. The teleportation stone would take everyone to the exam site. Principal Liu once again reminded the students to pay attention to their safety. The students activated their teleportation stones one by one, and with a stream of light, each person disappeared. The exam site was extremely spacious, like a huge square. There were probably tens of thousands of people. The light of teleportation never stopped. The examinees from Western Sea City were all distributed in the same area. Under the gaze of everyone, a towering gate descended from the sky. The trial tower was activated, and a solemn voice resounded across the entire square. It started explaining the exam rules. The stern voice wouldn't let students speak or ask questions. Violators would be directly disqualified from the exam. A few were whispering. At this time, the trial tower suddenly shot out a few rays of light that landed on these few students. These students then instantly disappeared. Gao Yang immediately covered his mouth. The rules were so strict. At this moment, the entire venue was exceptionally quiet. You could hear a pin drop. Even breathing became careful and cautious. The stern voice spoke up again. The trial tower would arrange different exams according to professions, combat types would have combat exams, and support professions would have non-combat exams. After passing the basic exam, each profession will have the right to choose the difficulty level. Various difficulties and results will grant points. Apart from personal equipment, 
No other items can be used. The stern voice detailed the rules of the exam. Everyone queued up to enter the trial tower one by one. Lin followed the crowd into the tower. At the top of the trial tower, there were several stern-faced and imposing individuals. They were the examiners in charge of this year's final exam in the province. Seeing the rare profession of necromancer, according to the information, it was a type of summoning mage. The person in charge was preparing to set monsters two levels higher than Lin, according to the rules for rare mages. A monster appeared before Lin. This monster had a wolf's head but was wearing a- It was even holding a magic wand in its hand. Lin found that the detection spell was ineffective here. Apart from the name of the monster, there was no more information. A countdown appeared on the screen. Lin was prepared. Lin raised his left hand, and when the countdown ended, the soul flame fell on the head of the wolf beast man mage. With a scream, the wolf beast man mage fell straight down. At this time, on the top floor of the tower, the examiners all showed shocked expressions, speechless to see that Lin's enemy was defeated in 0.1 seconds. Inside the trial tower's surveillance room, at the very top of the tower, several examiners wore expressions of astonishment. At this very moment, an elderly man in robe walked into the room. This was Elder Ning. The examiners immediately bowed in greeting to the elder. Elder Ning heard there was a unique profession and wanted to witness him in action. On the screen was the live footage of Lin. The examiners quickly relayed the events that had just transpired. They were preparing to increase the difficulty level, conducting the second test based on the legendary difficulty. However, one of the examiners raised an objection, feeling that this wasn't fair to Lin. Elder Ning chuckled, saying, In the past, there have been professionals who have slain monsters instantly as well. For this test, they will deem Lin as the top scorer with and reward him the initial 100 points. If Lin passes the second test, they'll grant an additional 1,000 points. Elder Ning was prepared to provide these points from his own pocket. After waiting for a short while, another monster materialized before Lin. The announcer once again instructed Lin to prepare for the second test. The rule was simple, defeat the monster before him. Despite this being the second test, Lin didn't find it strange. He believed this was just the normal rule of the trial. As the countdown ended, he once again unleashed his soul flame. The mage monster before him let out a harrowing scream and was instantly obliterated. Another instant kill. The examiners all turned to look at Elder Ning simultaneously. Elder Ning simply smiled, telling them to proceed with the second round of the examination. As the first round test concluded, the authoritative voice echoed in the ears of all the examinees, informing them that out of over 10,000 combat class students, only half had passed the first round. The scores were then announced. Without a doubt, Lin was in first place. A girl named May was second, while Charlotte ranked third. Richard from the Dynasty Guild secured fourth place with a time of 5.5 seconds. Upon seeing these rankings, Richard's anger reached its peak. He couldn't believe he hadn't even made it into the top three. Glancing at Lin's 0.1 second score, he was convinced there had been a system error. That voice resounded once more, announcing the starting of second round of the examination. The voice emphasized the potential dangers of this round. There might be casualties, and all candidates must judge their abilities wisely. If they face danger, they may withdraw during the test. The second round was structured like a dungeon raid, divided into three difficulty levels, normal, nightmare, and hell, with different points awarded for each level. Lin quickly discovered that the goal of the second round was to see who could slay the most monsters within 30 minutes. Without a second thought, Richard chose the hell difficulty. In his eyes, killing a monster in hell difficulty was equivalent to defeating five in the normal difficulty. He summoned his weapon, revealing his class as a berserker. Charlotte pondered for a moment and decided on the normal difficulty. As an elemental mage, she wasn't adept at close combat, so she aimed to win by quantity over quality. Inside the surveillance room, the examiners were commenting on each candidate's choices. May, who was in second place and also was a shadow hunter, which was a rare assassin-type class, also opted for hell difficulty. By now, most of the noteworthy candidates had made their choices, 
with only Lin remaining. Every examiner was eager to witness Lin's choice and his performance. After hearing the rules, Lin formed his own judgment. This was a test on individuals' stamina. Engaging in continuous combat for 30 minutes would strain any class, though Lin felt he was an exception. Lin chose hell difficulty. Outside the examination area, all the school principals from province had gathered. Every principal looked on enviously at Principal Lu. Principal Lu was visibly ecstatic after seeing Lin's performance. Once all the candidates had made their selections and the countdown ended, the second round of the examination began. In an instant, Lin was transported into a separate space. A beast clad in armor emerged from the ground, letting out an enraged roar. It was an elite orc warrior, with all its attributes in triple digits. Lin glanced at its seemingly pitiful stats, shaking his head, feeling it was too weak. It was much weaker than the nightmare-class mobs from the Western Sea Mine dungeon. He also understood that this was just a test. If the monsters were too strong, there would be a large-scale elimination. Lin summoned two skeletal warriors, each with an impressive four stats, all 2,500. They charged towards the pitiable elite orc warrior and killed it in less than one second. After each monster was defeated, it took five seconds for another to spawn. The examiners in the monitoring room were left dumbfounded. They couldn't believe that Lin's summoned creatures were so powerful and that he had two of them. After witnessing several of these instant kills, the examiners had grown numb to the sight. Monsters would spawn and die in an instant. The examiners no longer wanted to watch, turning their attention to the other participants. Richard, with redness in his eyes, activated his berserk mode, swung his massive sword non-stop. Charlotte held her staff, casting large fireball spells. Turning attention back to Lynn, he was seen comfortably settled in a corner, eating a sweet potato which he pulled out from his pocket. Some examiners noted this down, while others eyed Lin's sweet potato, feeling a pang of hunger. Elder Ning had been silent since the beginning of this round, watching Lin intently. He was deeply intrigued by Lin. As the thirty minutes quickly elapsed and the test concluded, Richard, panting heavily, slumped to the ground. He had defeated fifty monsters and believed he was in the lead. After half of the participants were eliminated in the first round, another half dropped out in the second round, either due to failure or voluntary withdrawal. Eagerly awaiting the results, Richard's anticipation peaked when the scores were announced. To his astonishment, he ranked fourth once again, while Lin had scored a staggering 1605 points. Jumping to his feet, he quickly calculated in his head. In the hell difficulty, each monster was worth five points, so the maximum points one could earn in a minute was 60, making the limit for 30 minutes 1,800 points. With a score like Lin's, it meant he had killed 301 monsters, and he would have killed all of the monster instantly. This was impossible. Outside the examination hall, Principal Lu trembled uncontrollably, his cup quaking in his hand, spilling its contents. Even in the past, where the two prodigy from their province, Su Qian Xing and Lin Mohan, had only scored 700 and 650 points respectively, Principal Lu was at a loss for words. Soon, the third round of the examination began. This time, the candidates would face a boss-level monster. There were also three levels of difficulty. Without giving it a second thought, Lin opted for the Hell difficulty. He was up against the boss-level orc captain. Observing the monster's stats, Lin felt it was somewhat underwhelming. Even though it was the Hell difficulty, the boss seemed to have been significantly weakened. He also realized that it would be unlikely for the examination to present a genuine Hell-level boss as it would inevitably lead to student casualties. The same location, the same format, but a different opponent. Lin once again summoned two skeletal warriors. Feeling a tinge of disappointment, he found the test too simple. Richard engaged the boss head-on, recklessly clashing with it. Charlotte, on the other hand, continuously dodged the orc captain's attacks while retaliating with her fireball. May utilized a stealth ability, positioning herself behind the boss, waiting for the right moment to strike. Back to Lin, his two skeletal warriors unleashed a rampage strike. Their weapons glowed red, and with a strike from each, they finished off the boss with ease. 
The examiners engaged in discussion, realizing they still hadn't gauged Lin's true strength. They could only wait for the fifth round of tests. Some believed that the fifth round would surely reveal his genuine capabilities. Listening to the examiner's discussions, Elder Ning simply kept stroking his beard, with most of his attention focused on Lin. The results were once again displayed. Unsurprisingly, Lin remained in the top position. He quickly scanned for Gao Yang's position. Although he was only ranked 670th, the score was still commendable. Lin was delighted to see that Gao Yang was not eliminated. The fourth round of the examination started shortly after. The voice of the examiner echoed once more, informing the candidates that the difficulty of this test would increase further. They were given the option to withdraw. With their current scores, admission into a top 100 academy in the kingdom was already assured. Yet no one chose to bow out. A golden light shone down, enveloping everyone, restoring them to their peak condition. The rules of the examination were that each candidate would face ten waves of monster attacks, with each wave consisting of ten monsters, amounting to a total of one hundred monsters. There would be a one-minute interval between each wave, and they would continuously appearing. The final wave would be led by a boss-level monster. Shortly after, the first wave of monsters appeared before the examinees. Several examiners were intently watching Lin from the monitoring room, curious about how he would handle the situation this time. Elder Ning just smiled, saying this challenge wouldn't faze him either. Before their eyes, Lin summoned yet another skeletal warriors, while clutching the soul flames in his hands. The fourth round of exams officially began. Lin summoned an extra skeleton warrior and, paired with Soul Flame, effortlessly defeated all the monsters in the first batch. The examiners were shocked to see Lin was able to summon another skeletal warrior. Some of them were furious because Lin hadn't summoned it from the start and had been hiding it. Elder Ning had an I knew it'll look on his face. Lin yawned, feeling that this so called entrance exam lacked challenge. It was far less exciting than his first time entering the Western Sea Mine dungeon. He found another spot to sit and began eating his sweet potatoes. The examiners grew more and more annoyed and decided to observe others first. Charlotte was using AOE skills to hold off and gradually wear down the monsters, while Richard maintained his bold and broad combat style. A giant two-handed sword danced in the air, producing a whooshing sound, swung in all directions. Watching Lin was extremely boring because there were never actions. Wave after wave, most of the candidates gave up. They couldn't keep up with the overwhelming number of monsters which later trapped them. They were teleported outside the trial tower one after another. Watching the live broadcast, Gao Yang was incredibly excited. Gao Yang persisted until the sixth wave before choosing to give up. Outside, he told the other candidates about how Lin had taken him to solo a nightmare-level dungeon. He spoke incessantly, but no one believed him, thinking that Gao Yang was speaking nonsense. As more and more students were eliminated, only five remained. These were the top four from before, along with a level 15 paladin from a prestigious family. He was well-versed in the examination rules. Since he knew the last two rounds of the examination were crucial for scoring points, he had laid low up to this point and began to make his move now. Richard let out a roar and activated his Mayhem Berserker skill. This ability could boost a Berserker's strength and health by five times for five minutes, but would reduce agility. After the skill wears off, there would be a 30-minute period of fatigue. In his Berserk state, Richard went on a monster-slaying spree. Lin waited for a minute, and finally, the last wave of monsters spawned. But there was no difference from the previous waves. Under the gang banging of the skeleton warriors, the boss fell. The fourth round ended with only five students passing. The examiner's voice echoed throughout, reaching the ears of everyone, both inside and outside the tower. When the rankings were announced, there was no change. Seeing that only five had passed the fourth round, the eliminated students could hardly imagine the difficulty of the last test. Richard, already weakened from the after-effects of his skill, struggled to stand, leaning heavily on his greatsword. Charlotte took a deep breath, thinking, With a top-five rank, she should be able to enter Xia Jing Academy. May looked solemn. Her eyes were set on the Xia Jing Academy. 
The examiner's voice rang out again. He could see that everyone had the same goal, but he told the remaining five that getting into Xia Jing Academy wasn't easy. There was still one final test, and if their performance wasn't up to par, they'd be eliminated just the same. Next, the examiner began explaining the rules for the last test, and the five remaining students listened attentively. They would be teleported to a battling realm where a never-ending stream of various monsters would spawn. Not only they were vast in numbers, but they also included elites, leaders, and even boss-level monsters. The faster they kill, the quicker the monsters would respawn. As time progressed, the difficulty would increase, and with higher difficulty came higher points. Unlike before, there would be no live broadcast from this realm, and nobody could see what was happening inside. Examiners could only see the point changes. After explaining, the five were teleported into the battling realm. The scoring rules appeared in front of each person. There were five stages, and with each stage, the monster level would increase by one, while the points for killing a mob would double. The landscape was vast, resembling a huge plain. The ground was pitch black and reeked of blood. There were countless rugged stones, some of which were several meters high. Lin could feel that an unimaginable great battle had once taken place here. The sound of footsteps rang out, and a group of monsters came into view. They had already spotted Lin. The monsters roared in unison and charged toward him. Level 15 Lizard Man Warriors. Lin noticed that he couldn't discern the monsters' attributes and could only see their levels. The roars echoed through the battle space, drawing the attention of other lizard men. As they entered Lin's line of sight, the three skeleton warriors beside him sprang into action, rushing at the lizard men. With a swing of their swords, they surprisingly didn't deliver an instant kill. A sliver of health remained, which caught Lin slightly off guard. The lizard men must have a high HP, but their counterattack didn't deal much damage to the skeleton warriors, indicating they had low damage and strength. The second strike slashed at the lizard man, successfully finishing him off. The skeleton warrior tossed the corpse of the lizard man toward the group charging at Lin. Lin utilized his corpse explosion skill, and in an instant, in the monitoring room, the examiners noticed Lin's points suddenly jump by 500. They exchanged puzzled looks, wondering what had just happened. Lin then remained stationary, waiting for the remaining lizard men. He intended to use the same tactic again, but the next second, Lin was taken aback to find that the corpses had disappeared. The corpses seemed to have sunk into the pitch black earth, vanishing from sight. The duration the corpses remained was extremely short, lasting no more than 10 seconds. This forced him to change his strategy. He summoned even more skeleton warriors, using them to lure the rest of the lizard men together. Just like kiting mobs in video games, he gradually clustered them. Nearly a hundred lizard man warriors had gathered together. A skeleton warrior killed the nearest lizard man, then a thunderous boom erupted. Lin used his corpse explosion skill multiple times. The dark ground shook incessantly. All of the lizard man warriors were annihilated. Lin's points also shot up to 8,605 points, which even made Elder Ning completely speechless. Seeing Lin's points skyrocketed, he couldn't fathom what Lin had done inside to instantly kill hundreds of monsters. Lin patiently waited for the second wave of monsters to appear. He thought he would have to wait for a while, but suddenly, the sky turned a bright red. Dozens of fireballs, each with a diameter of about a meter, plummeted down like meteorites. He didn't have the time to dodge, so he ordered the skeleton warriors to leap into the air, stacking on top of one another to form a shield-like defense. The meteor-like fireballs slammed into the skeleton warriors, causing sparks to explode in every direction. Fortunately, they didn't hit Lin directly. Although he had a damage transfer skill in place, Lin's own defense and HP were quite low. Transferring the damage might have resulted in the total annihilation of his skeleton warriors. Standing behind the skeletal defense line, Lin's gaze fixed on the approaching horde of creatures. On a higher platform, a group of level 16 lizard man mages wielded their staffs, launching a rain of fire attacks. These creatures had appeared silently, without any prior indication. Lin gazed towards the new group of monsters, and a slight grin appeared on his face. Countless warriors of the lizard men tribe were charging forward, weapons raised. 
These monsters appeared without a sound, without any warning. Lin, however, was unfazed. How they appeared didn't matter. All he cares about are the juicy points they give. Lizard man mages in their rear using spells, the sky raining fire meteors continuously. Lin directed his skeletal warriors to charge at the lizard men warriors. A crimson glow emanated from each skeletal warrior's weapon. With their rampage strikes, not a single lizard man could withstand more than two slashes. Lin raised his hands and used corpse explosion. A thunderous boom echoed. Explosions of corpses wildly spread. The lizard man warriors fell one by one. In mere moments, hundreds of lizard man warriors were annihilated, and Lin's score increased by 6,000. Inside the monitoring room, the examiners were shocked by the sudden point increase. It was clear that Lin possessed an overpowered area of effect skill. Several examiners whispered amongst themselves, suggesting that Lin's class might have surpassed the legendary tier. Another person shook their head, indicating they should reserve judgment for now, especially since Lin's level was still relatively low. Inside the arena, a new wave of monsters appeared. The ground trembled as if an earthquake was occurring. The corpses vanished as if swallowed by the ground. The skig grew even murkier and more ominous. Suddenly, a vast number of monsters appeared from all directions. The monsters appeared from everywhere, groups of five, forming small squads of lizard man archers and fighters. At least 40 squads spread out around the perimeter. From a distance, it appeared as though Lin was completely surrounded. Lin realized this was the start of the second phase. Not only had the monsters increased in level, but their numbers had also doubled. At this moment, Lin was pondering a different, given the other classes would have a tough time passing through the second stage. Even if they managed to do so, it would consume a significant amount of time. The second stage was far more challenging. With just a one-level increase and a doubling in the number of monsters, these two changes alone exponentially raised the difficulty. With the addition of Lizardman archers, who were widely regarded as the counter of mages, this change would deter most mage-type professionals. Lin's suspicions were correct. Inside the monitoring room, discussions revolved around the fact that in the history of their empire's final examination, very few had ever cleared the second stage. The battling realm had five phases in total. The current record was clearing the third phase, and this record was set over a century ago. Since then, no one had ever broken this record. The examiners were all speculating, wondering if Lin could shatter the old record. Many had great faith in him, but they were clueless about the exact events happening inside. All they could do was keep their eyes glued to the leaderboard. At this very moment, the leaderboard updated again. Lin's total points had soared to 34,000. They soon realized that Lin had entered the second stage and subsequently eliminated over 200 monsters. One examiner remarked, These second stage monsters only increased by one level. They pose no threat to Lin saying Lin was practically farming points. If he had the authority, he'd up the difficulty. Another examiner chimed in. He wanted to toss in a few dozen bosses for Lin to take on. Now that'd be entertaining. In the capital of the empire, below stood the renowned Jia Jing City, a colossal door hovering midair. Normally, this tower remained hidden. Its appearance signified the examination day of the empire. This was the trial tower's true form. Suddenly, the sky darkened and the temperature dropped sharply, nightfall seemed to descend instantly, as a malevolent black beam shot from the heavens, speeding towards the trial tower. A massive golden ethereal hand manifested in the air, attempting to block the sinister beam. A mocking laughter emanated from within the beam as its dark glow intensified. A cold voice chuckled twice, proclaiming, You cannot stop me. In the center of the darkness, a massive demonic skull appeared. The skull sported two horns and sharp fangs, looking exactly like the depiction of demons described in books. The dark beam collided with the massive golden hand, both disappearing without a trace or sound. Suddenly the sinister beam split into one part clashed with the golden light. The other dramatically increased its speed and in an instant swiftly entered the trial tower. Once again a giant hand materialized in the sky, firmly grasping the demonic skull. The demon head laughed, proclaiming that it was just a clone, but as for the little one inside the trial tower, before he could finish his sentence. With a loud bang, the demonic skull was crushed to pieces. 
Three people appeared beside the trial tower, hovering in midair. They hadn't expected that the bastards from the abyss would launch a surprise attack. One of them made contact with the trial tower to gauge the situation inside. They discovered that something had sneaked in. They realized that the abyss's target was the examinees within the battling realm. When asked how long it would take to eliminate the threat, one of them responded, An hour. Meanwhile, inside the trial tower's battling realm, all the students were fervently battling monsters. Suddenly, all of the monsters vanished. Immediately after, the landscape transformed. The atmosphere became even more oppressive in an instant. Lin immediately gathered his skeletal warriors, shielding himself. Suddenly, he heard a familiar voice calling out to him. Turning around, he saw Charlotte. It was unexpected for Lin to encounter another person in the battling realm. Both of them were clueless about the ongoing situation. Charlotte mentioned that she was fighting monsters when they abruptly vanished. At first, she was somewhat startled, but with Lin by her side, everything seemed less terrifying. Following that, Streaks of light began to pierce the pitch-black battling realm. One after another, examinees appeared within. Then, a figure emerged. Following him, a voice echoed, belonging to a tall figure with white hair. He introduced himself as Bai Yi Wan. Upon hearing this name, everyone's eyes widened in shock. Bai Yi Wan was one of the top powerhouses in the empire, revered by many as the White Divine. His voice instantly caused a powerful resonance within the battling realm. Not only did White Divine's voice reverberate in the battling realm, but it also echoed throughout every examination site. In the monitoring room, Elder Ning's expression shifted slightly, unsure why the White Divine would make an appearance. White Divine's voice rang out again. Demons from the abyssal world have invaded the battling realm. White Divine and others were currently repairing the rules of the battling realm and the process would take about an hour. These abyssal demons were targeting the examinees. In the upcoming hour, everyone needed to protect themselves. He believed that as long as everyone united, the invaders from the abyss would be powerless against them. Finally, he proclaimed, We, the people of the great empire, fear no battle and face death unflinchingly. His words, filled with intense emotion, resonated powerfully. The examinees, all young and full of vigor, were filled with heightened spirits. Emotions ran high, and shouts of determination erupted from the crowd. Even Charlotte swept up in the fervor, wanted to join in the shouting. However, seeing the still silent Lin, she restrained herself, lowering the hand she had raised. Lin started to think rationally. The teachings from his youth had always emphasized the terror of the abyss. It was a realm filled with countless monsters, innumerable demons, numerous dungeons, and abundant treasures. Rumors had it that even the weakest monster within the abyss was of level 70. Elder Ning thought to himself, how could something like this happen? He appeared much calmer than the other examiners, some of whom showed clear signs of panic. The attack from the abyss was deliberate, targeting the prodigies participating in the fifth round of the final examination. Those who could enter the battling realm were all future prodigies, representing the future of the empire. This move by the abyss was undoubtedly insidious. Suddenly, Elder Ning spoke, causing the other examiners to fall silent. His sharp gaze scanned the room, commanding them to inform those outside not to panic and to trust in the White Divine. Everyone chose to believe in the White Divine, and they began to pray for the examinees within the battling realm. The atmosphere inside the battling realm became even more oppressive. Suddenly, a crimson moon appeared in the sky. Some recognized it immediately. It was the blood moon of the abyss. Clearly, the abyss was making its move. Within mere minutes of White Divine finishing his speech, every student was battle ready. This was the exam area just for the combat professionals. Thus, there isn't any support professionals. The students organized themselves in a battle formation. Knights stood at the forefront followed by mages, and then archers. An icy voice echoed, looking over the young students, truly the future of the empire. He then claimed that sadly, all of them will die. The voice proclaimed that an hour was more than enough to slaughter them, lamenting only that they couldn't bring back their succulent flesh. This chilling voice, accompanied by the crimson-red moonlight, 
sent shivers down many spines. A flash of disgust crossed Lin's face. Suddenly, someone screamed. Under the moonlight, a gigantic figure appeared within far. Detection spells were instantly launched toward it, raising gusts of wind. Level 19 Lizard Man Warrior, Abyssal Corruption. Someone hastily recalled that the battling realm had a level cap, with 19 being the highest. Before they could finish their thought, they were silenced, as numerous figures appeared behind the initial giant, within moments, at least a hundred in number slowly moving towards them. All were level 19 creatures, entirely corrupted by the abyssal power. Each monster stood at a towering three meters, exuding a terrifying aura. They collectively advanced toward the students, causing the ground to tremble with each step. Under the moonlight, the monstrous figures looked more grotesque and terrifying than ever. Charlotte's face turned pale with fear, and she instinctively moved closer to Lynn. It seemed that Lynn provided her with a sense of security. After all, these students were merely 18 years old and had never experienced a real battlefield. When had they ever seen so many terrifying creatures? One by one, their legs trembled with fear. Much of their earlier bravery had been drained away. Lin looked at the monsters carefully. These weren't ordinary monsters, but he believed he could handle them. A thought crossed his mind. If these creatures were corrupted by the abyssal power and had mutated, could they grant experience points too? The group of massive lizard men was slowly approaching. They weren't in a rush, but inching closer as if taking their time, savoring the moment. It seemed to be toying with them, not eager to finish them off at once. The chilling voice of a demon echoed once more. The voice taunted and mocked the students without end, sarcastically repeating White Divine's earlier words. Unity can overcome? He said there are just a hundred of these monsters, almost the same numbers as the students, asking if the students want a one-on-one -on -one or a group brawl. The demon then burst into malevolent laughter, its voice further shattering the spirits of the people. As the monster approached, the students retreated in fear. Richard's face had gone deathly pale, his legs shaking as he stepped back. Just the sight of these creatures had drained him of the courage to even draw his weapon. The paladin, Feng, gripped his sword, and although he looked unnerved, he didn't retreat an inch. Mei was the same, clutching her claws ready to fight to the death. There were also many other brave students like them, getting into their battle stances. Lin took a step forward with skeletal warriors leading the charge, and Lin following closely behind. Charlotte, with a face full of anxiety, asked Lin what he was doing. Stomping her foot in frustration, Charlotte followed him. Lin demanded that she go back, but Charlotte refused. Lin didn't say anything else. Lin's sudden movement caught many people's attention. Seeing the army of skeletal warriors that Lin had summoned, they were torn on whether to follow. In the end, only about a dozen people followed after Lin. Fung and Mei were among them. All were prepared to lay down their lives. The demon from the abyss sneered, Ah, finally some come to offer their lives. The demon gave an offer, to spare their lives if they become the demon's slaves. Lin ignored the demon's words. He suddenly halted making the demon believe that Lin has agreed to his offer. The voice of the demon echoed again, suggesting the gates of the abyss were always open for him. At this moment, a faint smile could be seen on Lin's face. The maximum range of his corpse explosion skill was 100 meters, with 50 meters being the median. It was a distance both safe and adequate. Everyone looked at Lin with confusion. Lin estimated the distance and thought it was sufficient. A pale blue glow appeared in his hand, and Lin whispered, pointing forward with his finger. Whoosh! A legion of skeletal warriors rose from the ground a full 100 skeletal warriors. To everyone's astonishment, the skeletal warriors charged at the corrupted lizard men warriors like bolts of lightning. May noticed the speed of the skeletal warriors was incredibly fast. As a shadow hunter, she was known for her agility. But compared to the skeletal warriors, she realized her speed was far inferior to the skeletal warriors. In the blink of an eye, the skeletal warriors have engaged in a furious fight with the corrupted lizard men warriors. A thought passed through Lin's mind, and dazzling red lights radiated from the blades held by the skeletal warriors. 
Several skeletal warriors simultaneously used their rampage strikes on a single corrupted lizard man warrior. Streaks of red light descended, and the corrupted orc warrior's health was depleting rapidly. Corrupted by the abyssal power, these lizard men warriors had become incredibly strong. But then, the lizard men warriors retaliated. Their massive blades slammed down on the skeletal warriors. Lin could feel his skeletal warriors getting slightly injured one after another. He quickly assessed the attributes of these monsters. The two parties continue exchanging blows. The blades in the hands of the skeletal warriors never ceased, continuously striking the corrupted lizard men warriors. Ignoring their injuries, several skeletal warriors focused their full force on a single lizard men warrior. Seconds later, one of the lizard men warriors fell to the ground. The system displayed, You have slain level 19 corrupted lizard men warrior. Experience plus 8,000. Lin realized his initial guess was correct. The experience was somewhat minimal, but something was better than nothing. He then raised his hands, and a red glow appeared from the palm of his hand. Boom! An unexpected explosion echoed, followed by a scene that left the students in disbelief. The seemingly powerful lizard men warriors were falling like weeds under a scythe. Countless explosion sounds, shaking the earth, and within several seconds, all the lizard men warriors lay dead. The damage caused by a corpse explosion is calculated based on the maximum health of the corpse. The higher the health points of the corpse, the greater the explosive power. The examinees looked at Lin in disbelief. Everyone was dumbstruck. One by one, they trembled with excitement. Richard knelt on the ground, unable to believe how powerful Lin truly was. Not only did the examinees were in shock, but even the abyssal demon couldn't accept it. He shouted, Impossible! This can't be! The demon was furious, threatening to kill Lin. Amidst the shrieks, the crimson moonlight suddenly burst forth a more powerful radiance. Another batch of monsters appeared from all directions. This time, the monsters spread out widely. As soon as they appeared, they charged towards the group of students. Lin looked up at the crimson moon. A dark silhouette seemingly appeared on the blood moon. Lin gave a command to the skeletal warrior. Several skeletal S suddenly lifted the corpse of a lizard men warrior, hurling it towards the blood moon. Following closely, Lin leaped towards the blood moon like a sharp arrow. The abyssal demon panicked, his voice trembling. Lin didn't speak, just coldly stared with murderous intent in his eyes. As the lizard man's corpse approached the shadow on the blood moon, Lin detonated it. With a deafening roar, Lin then unleashed the soul flame. The abyssal demon let out a painful scream, but he didn't die. Another flame appeared above the shadow, eliciting another scream from it. The demon demanded to know Lin's profession, questioning why he could scorch its soul. Lin remained silent, continuously unleashing the soul flame. The shadow, although still screaming, had become extremely weak. Outside the trial tower. Three powerful figures watched the tower with grave expressions. The exclamation from the elderly man broke the tense silence, indicating a significant decrease in the interference from the abyssal energy. White Divine, with his anifying, feared that all students inside the tower might have perished. However, the elder's words provided some relief to the White Divine. The students were still alive, but it seemed the abyssal demon had been injured. This was puzzling for the White Divine. With the demon manipulating the rules of the battling realm, how could a group of students injure it? Inside the battling realm, the madness of the abyssal demon was evident. Its focus shifted entirely to Lin, ordering all of the corrupted lizard men warriors to change their targets, homing in on Lin. But Lin remained unflustered. He was aware that his corpse explosion skill had evolved to the next level, making it even more powerful. He stared coldly at the charging monsters, his skeletal army standing firm, ready for the imminent confrontation. The frenzied demon continued its roars from the blood moon, its voice brimming with malice and insanity. It seemed to have forgotten its primary objective and only wanted to kill Lin. In the battling realm, a vast number of lizard man warriors abandoned their initial targets, setting their sights on Lin instead. The shadow screamed atop the blood moon. Countless lizard man warriors, tainted by the abyssal power, charged towards Lin. The onlookers stared unblinkingly. A faint smirk graced Lin's lips. He was glowing, 
indicated that he has leveled up. Lin's sudden level up caught the attention of many. Only then did they realize that slaying these monsters tainted by abyssal power yielded experience. They found it hard to believe that Lin was using these powerful monsters to level. They also felt fortunate to have Lin on their side. Without him, they would have been doomed. With a mere thought, the corpses of five lizard man warriors were thrown into the sky. The shadow on the blood moon seemed to understand this was it. Surprisingly, it didn't roar in anger or scream. Instead, it let out a chilling laugh. He called out Lin's name and said he would remember Lin's name. He claimed that when Lin ventures into the abyss, this king will ensure Lin receives a warm welcome. Lin did not respond, rather ignoring him. Corpses rocketed towards the blood moon, followed by a massive explosion. Amidst the deafening blast, the shadow let out a final scream before being obliterated. The blood moon shattered like broken glass, disappearing without a trace. And just like that, the battling realm returned to its usual state. Outside the trial tower, the elderly man once again wore an expression of shock. He said that the abyssal power has been eradicated and the battling realm has returned to normal. He followed up by the students were safe and there weren't any casualties. White Divine was slightly confused. Things had turned out in a manner entirely different from what he had expected. Very few things could surprise him now. White Divine yearned to know what exactly had transpired within the battling realm. Before that, he wanted to make sure all of the kids exited the battling realm and returned home safely. Inside the battling realm, the blood moon vanished and the ground gradually reverted to normal. Charlotte whispered, asking Lynn if everything was over. Her face was slightly pale, still shaken from earlier. If it weren't for Lynn, she believed she might already be dead. Lynn nodded in response, telling her it was over. Although he didn't offer any comforting words, that simple answer was enough to set Charlotte's heart at ease. Within the realm, the other students were still in a state of shock. Earlier, when the Lizard Man warriors were hunting them down, they had run for their lives, utterly powerless against the onslaught. Thankfully, there was Lin. White Divine's voice echoed once more. He announced that the power of the Abyss had vanished and the battling realm had returned to normal the students would be transported back to their original examination area. Lynn appeared at the entrance of the trial tower, along with Charlotte, May, Richard, and Fung. Their scores were distinct from the other students and would be assigned by the Empire's higher-ups directly. Although Elder Ning was clueless about what had transpired within the battling realm, he was eager to see what evaluation Lynn would receive. Many of the top powerhouses of the Empire began retracing the events inside the battling realm. From the moment Lin and the others entered the trail tower, their every action was under scrutiny. Through this retrospection, what happened inside became clear. They realized that it was Lin who turned the tide. Many have acknowledged Lin's necromancer class was extremely powerful, and throughout the entire exam and after encountering the demon from the abyss, Lin remained calm and composed. Many of them now see Lin as someone with the potential to become a top-tier powerhouse in the future. Words of high praise flowed freely, all directed at Lin. They were uncertain about how to score him. One powerhouse with a temper snapped, questioning the worth of those who fled, labeling them as cowards who would likely desert the battlefield in real wars. Yet another defended, noting they were still mere teenagers. In the past, these students were the pride of their respective schools. Each one, being top of their province, has unique talents and classes in their own right. However, this year, due to Lin's presence, their performance seemed overshadowed. As everyone waited, the final scores were finally announced. A massive screen shimmered in the sky. At the top of the screen it wrote, Lin, evaluation score, excellent. The entire arena was in an uproar. Principal Lu jumped in excitement, his face flushed as though he was about to have a stroke. Number one, top scorer of the province. Principal Lu's fingers trembled with overwhelming excitement. His student had clinched the top position in the province. For Principal Lu, this was an immense honor. Other principals congratulated him from the sidelines. Charlotte smiled, congratulating Lin, saying Lin got the top score in the province. At this moment, the usual competitive spark was absent from Charlotte's eyes. 
She had no urge to compete or compare with Lynn. Lynn responded with a smile. Thank you. Charlotte looked at him in surprise. She couldn't believe that Lynn could smile. Charlotte complimented Lynn looks quite good when he smiles. She wondered why Lynn doesn't smile more often. She seemed as if she had stumbled upon a discovery. Soon, the score for the second place was revealed. Charlotte, evaluation score, excellent. With Lynn's spectacular achievement leading the way, Charlotte's points didn't stir as much commotion. But Principal Lou's excitement surged once more. The principals nearby cast envious glances his way. Not only did the top scorer belong to Principal Lou's school, but the second place did as well. The envy was palpable. Soon, all the other students' names became appearing on the screen. Fung, evaluation score, excellent. May, evaluation score, excellent. Richard, evaluation score, poor. Richard's face paled, taken aback by his evaluation. This evaluation effectively shattered his hopes for a place in Xia Jing Academy. Why? Why was he graded poor? He screamed out loud. This isn't fair. You're all biased. Unable to hold back any longer, Richard shouted in fury. Suddenly, a beam of light enveloped him, and he disappeared instantly. A deep voice said, Richard has violated the exam rules. Expelled. One by one, the rankings were announced. Gao Yang also jumped up in excitement. Amid the applause, the voice of the examiner echoed again. The Empire has issued a decree. Lin is the top scorer of this year's final examination nationwide. Principal Liu leaped up once again, a blaze shooting from the towing to the Xia Jing Academy to see his sister. Suddenly, there was a knock at the door. Given the quietness of the night, it was an unexpected visitor. When he opened the door, he saw Principal Liu, but there was also another person with him, someone Lin didn't recognize. Upon seeing this stranger, Lin felt a chill run down his spine. The newcomer exuded a terrifying aura, so powerful that Lin found it hard to breathe. However, he didn't hesitate. His skeletal warrior materialized in front of him, shielding him from any potential harm. The mysterious visitor complimented Lin on his quick reflexes. While Lin couldn't see the visitor's face, he recognized the voice. The tension he felt immediately dissipated. With reverence, Lin bowed to the visitor and greeted White Divine. White Divine laughed, quite pleased with Lin's response. He had seen Lin in the battling realm. Now, face to face, White Divine was even more impressed with him. Lin was calm and composed. Every instinctual reaction he displayed earned him full marks in White Divine's eyes. White Divine's gaze swept across the room, noting its simple furnishings. Many parts of the house looked worn out. Lin invited the duo into the room and poured tea for both of them. Principal Liu explained Lin's sister went to the Xia Jing Academy last year, leaving him to live alone. For such a household to produce two prodigies was indeed rare. White Divine praised as he looked at Lin. On their way here, he had already heard from Principal Liu about Lin, learning that he was a man of few words. Seeing him now, it truly was so. He thought perhaps it was this very nature that granted him a calmness surpassing his peers. White Divine glanced at the skeletal warrior. At his level, there was no need to deliberately use detection spells. He could see through the skeletal warrior. He said the attribute of 250 looked rather underwhelming. He couldn't understand how Lin had achieved such feats in the battling realm. Hearing White Divine's words, a realization suddenly dawned on Lin. He noticed that his talent bonus couldn't be perceived by others. What others saw were only the basic attributes of the skeletal warrior. White Divine continued asking, What talent has Lin awakened? Lin replied softly, saying his talent is amplification, amplifying all skills. White Divine nodded. It's evident from Lin's performance in the battling realm. White Divine didn't press further. Instead, he shifted the topic. He is here for two reasons. First, to reward Lin. Normally, this reward would be given after Lin has entered the academy, but since he is here, White Divine brought it with him. The second is to take him directly to the academy. White Divine said, There's a trial in two days, and he hoped Lin can participate. White Divine got straight to the point. When Lin inquired about the nature of the trial, White Divine explained, It's an internal trial within our Xia Jing Academy. 
Only the in-house students participate. He can provide more details only if Lin agrees to join. Lin felt something unusual. By saying he hoped Lin would participate, it indicated that the trial wasn't mandatory. The decision to participate was ultimately up to him. Lin pondered over White Divine's words. No matter the circumstance, he would always be cautious and analyze situations calmly. White Divine revealed a pleased smile, saying Lin is very cautious, which is commendable. He can't disclose too much about the trial. What White Divine can tell Lin is that this opportunity is extremely rare. Originally, Lin didn't qualify to participate. It's a personal favor White Divine offering to Lin. After listening to White Divine's words, Lin quickly made a decision. He will participate. Since the White Divine had personally come to invite Lin, not participating would be tantamount to disrespecting him. White Divine's hand shimmered with light, and several items appeared. The first reward was 100,000 points, which was the national top scorer's reward given by the Empire. Added to the points he obtained from the final examination, Lin now had over 130,000 points. White Divine handed a card to Lin which had all the points stored inside. The second reward is also an achievement as the national top scorer. One basic skill scroll and one intermediate skill scroll. The third reward is based on Lin's performance in the battling realm. An additional reward just for Lin. An entry qualification for the Divine Tower. As for the specifics about the Divine Tower, Lin will naturally learn once he gets to the Xia Jing Academy. White Divine didn't elaborate further. Lin quickly gathered his things and followed White Divine outside. A rune flew out, transforming into a teleportation array. Both Lin and White Divine stepped into the array, disappearing in a brilliant flash of light. Principal Lu sighed. The streets at night were incredibly quiet. No one would know that this seemingly worn-out house had produced two students of the Xia Jing Academy in two consecutive years, one of whom was even the national top scorer. Principal Lu's eyes, filled with hope, gazed in the direction of Xia Jing. Give it your best, child, he said. His words were filled with warmth and hope. Soon they arrived at Xia Jing Academy. A massive stone gate came into view. White Divine commented, This gate serves as both an entrance and a weapon. White Divine led Lin to the student residence where someone was already waiting. Upon seeing White Divine, the person quickly approached and respectfully greeted him. Being able to have White divinely personally welcome Lin was considered a great honor. In the entire empire, very few could enjoy such treatment. Lin's expression was calm, and his tone equally so. With just a few simple words, White divine left Lin with the student. Politely, the student inquired about a few basic information. Lin nodded. Yes. His tone remained neutral. The student felt slightly awkward. The Xia Jing Academy was not only large in terms of academic buildings, but also had an expansive residential area. He explained that there were several choices for student residents. Dormitories for four, two, or just one. Dormitories for four and two can be paid in gold coins or points, and others can only be paid in points. There are also options for detached villas, and villas with their practice rooms. The costs for the different accommodations varied significantly. After the student's detailed explanation, Lin learned a lot. The student suggested that Lin should save his points, as there would be many occasions in the future when he would need them. Lin understood that he should be more frugal with his spending. However, he neither had any gold coins, nor did he wish to share a room with someone else. Hence, he chose the single dormitory. The student sighed, thinking in his mind, The whims of the wealthy. Lin will feel thrifty now but Lin will regret it when he realizes how hard it is to earn points. When they arrived at Lin's room, the man asked Lin to hand over his identity card, as he needed to verify. The student held a device, swiping Lin's card through it, and then Lin provided fingerprint confirmation. With a beep, points were deducted. The student's eyes widened in shock, letting out a surprised yelp. He couldn't believe Lin had so many points. The student rambled on and on, and just before leaving, he suddenly reminded Lin to remember to buy a communicator tomorrow, as it'll be quite inconvenient without one. The single-room dormitory wasn't spacious, but was neatly and simply arranged. Sitting on the bed, Lin began to meditate, restoring his spiritual energy. 
The night at Xia Jing Academy wasn't as quiet as one might expect. Looking out of the window to see the rest of the academy, Lin could see wave after wave of energy fluctuations. They never seemed to cease. One wave followed by another, incessantly. The next day, someone knocked on the dormitory door. Lin's eyes revealed both surprise and delight. It was Ning Yi Yi, whom he hadn't seen in days, standing lively at the door. She said with a smile, What's the matter? Don't recognize me anymore? Lin gave a slight smile. Of course he did. Ning Yi Yi giggled and motioned for Lin to join her for breakfast. Close to the residential area was the academy's cafeteria. Even early in the morning it was bustling with diners. Ning Yi Yi quickly grabbed a tray of food. When it was time to pay, Lin presented his card. When noticing Lin was paying using points, Ning Yi Yi told Lin he could use gold coins here. Whenever Lin can use gold coins, he definitely shouldn't use points. Lin whispered, saying he didn't have any gold coins. Ning Yi Yi slapped her forehead. If Lin didn't have coins, he should just say so. Ning Yi Yi had plenty and didn't want Lin to waste his points. Lin just smiled, saying, it's okay. Ning Yi Yi sighed with relief. Thank goodness it was just five points. When Ning Yi Yi saw Lin's remaining points, she was so shocked she nearly dropped her steamed bun. After they finished eating, she still couldn't help but remind him not to spend points recklessly, no matter how many he had. Lin pulled out the Goblin King's crystal core and presented it to Ning Yi Yi. Holding the core, which sparkled like a ruby, Ning Yi Yi's eyes radiated joy. She asked Lin if he knew its value. Lin wasn't quite sure, but Ning Yi Yi explained that it was the core material for the Goblin King's ring, worth at least a million gold coins. Lin didn't seem to mind. Ning Yi Yi had previously given him a valuable skill scroll as well. Seeing how much Ning Yi Yi cherished the Goblin King's crystal core and accepted it, Lin smiled softly. Ning Yi Yi took Lin on a tour of different parts of the academy, and finally, they headed to the administrative office to complete Lin's enrollment. Lin inquired about his sister's records. While there was an enrollment entry, the details were blank. When he asked why he couldn't find any information on his sister, Ning Yi Yi speculated she might be on a confidential mission for the Academy, or possibly joined the Creator Academy. Listening to Ning Yi Yi's explanation, Lin was reassured. Ning Yi Yi, with a comforting smile, said it was time for the real business. They entered a classroom filled with students. A young female student approached Ning Yi Yi upon seeing her. Ning Yi Yi introduced Lin, mentioning he was this year's top national scorer. The female student shook hands with Lin and introduced herself as Tao Tao, a level 23 elf knight. Lin introduced himself as a level 17 necromancer. Suddenly, someone tapped their magic staff and disdainfully looked at Lin, his voice laden with arrogance and conceit. A man clutching a staff spoke in a voice tinged with arrogance and insolence. Clearly, he showed disdain towards Lin. Ning Yi Yi showed a hint of anger, reminding him to watch his mouth as Lin was the nation's top scorer this year. This man's name was Jacob. He scoffed, claiming that compared to their hidden dragon squad, a top scorer was nothing. He laughed, recalling past top scorers they'd met, saying most of them were all worthless trash. Overflowing with arrogance, he didn't take Lin seriously, let alone the title of the nation's top scorer. Ignoring Ning Yi Yi's comments, he provocatively stared at Lin, he was aware that Lin was introduced by Lord White Divine. However, he warned Lin not to think that just because he had connections with Lord White Divine, he could do as he pleased. Jacob reminded Lin that here in the Hidden Dragon Squad, only power spoke. He added that they could accommodate Lin for the trial, but he instructed Lin to remain silent throughout. If Lin hindered them, Jacob would not hesitate to give him a beating. Lin had a feeling that this guy's arrogance was over the top. He had seen arrogant people before, but this man was genuinely off his rocker. Brain dead? Lin suddenly voiced out. Jacob's face changed instantly, and he asked what Lin just said to him. The staff in his hand immediately emitted a fiery blaze as a surge of immense energy emanated. Ning Yi Yi swiftly stepped in front of Lin, and at this moment, Tao Tao also stood between them, blocking Jacob and urging him to stand down. As Tao Tao stood firm, Jacob gradually calmed down, and the flames on his staff extinguished. 
Shooting Lin a fierce glare, he moved to the side and stayed silent. Turning to Lin, Tao Tao informed him they would set off at nine o'clock the next morning. The details of the trial would only be disclosed then. Lin nodded. Ning Yi Yi took hold of Lin's arm and led him away, intending to shop for some essentials. Watching the pair leave, Tao Tao turned to Jacob and admonished him not to let personal grudges affect the trial. She also reminded him that Lin was introduced by Lord White Divine. Jacob gazed at their retreating figures, merely curious about the newbie who was to replace his brother's position. Tao Tao sighed, telling him that Lin was the nation's top scorer. While that title might not mean much to them, there's bound to be something special about him to be personally introduced by Lord White Divine. Furthermore, Lin's rare class was one they had never seen before. Jacob responded with disdain. New classes pop up every few years, and most turn out to be trash. As Ning Yi Yi led Lin towards the Imperial Exchange, she advised him not to engage in petty feuds with people like Jacob. Lin wasn't really bothered. Upon reaching the Imperial Exchange, Lin quickly sold off the items he had acquired from the Western Sea Mine Dungeon. Meanwhile, Ning Yi Yi helped him purchase some potions and a communicator. Shaped like a wristwatch and convenient to wear, it was a must-have for every student. After setting up their communicators, they exchanged numbers. Ning Yi Yi waved her tiny hand playfully, laughing as she remarked that she could now bother Lin anytime and anywhere. Lin watched Ning Yi Yi, who fluttered about like a beautiful butterfly and couldn't help but let out a light smile. As evening approached, they bid each other farewell and agreed to meet the next day. According to Ning Yi Yi, the other participant in the trial was originally Jacob's younger brother. However, due to Lord White Divine's intervention, Jacob's brother's spot was taken by Lin. This was the reason behind Jacob's evident anger towards him. But Lin didn't give Jacob much thought. In Lin's eyes, Jacob was nothing more than a trivial clown, hardly worth mentioning. Upon returning to his dormitory, Lin opened his backpack and retrieved the novice skill scroll. He needed to make additional preparations for the upcoming trial. As he activated the skill scroll, a sphere of light enveloped him. Lin acquired a new skill. Obtained skill, Slow Curse. The description was, Slow Curse Level 1. Curses enemies within a 5-meter radius, reducing their speed by 5% for one minute. Lin calculated in his head, with his special talent, the curse's range would be expanded from 5 meters to 50 meters, and its slowing effect surged from 5% to a staggering 50%. Furthermore, its duration was extended to 10 minutes. This 50% reduction impacted both attack and movement speeds. With this, Lin could effectively have the combat capability of his enemies. Lin reflected on his set of skills, which could now be categorized into summoning, AoE attack, and debuffs. He hoped to acquire more skills in the future. After analyzing his skills, he entered a meditative state, rapidly rejuvenating his spiritual energy. The next day arrived swiftly. His communicator rang with a melodious tune, and he received a call from Ning Yi Yi. As soon as he answered, Ning Yi Yi's quirky voice invited him for breakfast before assembling. Upon returning to the classroom, Tao Tao and a few others from the Hidden Dragon Squad were already waiting. Jacob glared disdainfully at Lin, warning Lin to not lag behind. Ning Yi Yi retorted coldly, telling Jacob that he should be the one to not lag behind. Tao Tao, clearly exasperated, told them that regardless of any personal grudges or thoughts, they should be set aside until after the trial, emphasizing the trial's significance and the importance of not making any mistakes. As the team leader, it was her responsibility to ensure the team united. She first asked everyone to introduce themselves again, including their job. The first girl was named Emma, level 20, with the job class of Elven Elder. The second was a tall man named Oliver, also level 20, with the job class of Prophet. Both the Prophet and Elven Elder were rare supportive job classes. Under Tao Tao's gaze, Jacob reluctantly introduced himself. Jacob, level 21. Warlock. Just like the elemental mage, warlocks were part of the mage profession and were also considered a rare class. Then there was Tao Tao, a level 23 elf knight, Lin, a level 17 necromancer, and Ning Yi Yi, a level 19 shadow assassin. 
Tao Tao's gaze swept over everyone in the room. With a serious tone, she declared, In this trial, they must unite. If anyone dares to lag behind during the test, don't blame her for being ruthless. Tao Tao's expression was stern as she lifted the teleportation stone. Suddenly, a colossal teleportation circle appeared under their feet, and in an instant, the massive silhouette of the divine tower emerged. Lin was slightly taken aback. He hadn't expected the divine tower to materialize in the sky like that. They were teleported once more, arriving at the trial site, and their feet touched solid ground. As their vision quickly adjusted, the blinding sunlight bathed them. They had arrived at Mermaid Island. In front of each person floated a glowing stone. This was the quest stone. Tao Tao instructed everyone to touch their respective quest stones to activate the trial quest. Lin also reached out. The moment he touched the quest stone, he understood the purpose of this trial. In the center of Mermaid Island, there existed a dungeon, the Mermaid's Tear Dungeon. Their mission was to venture into the heart of Mermaid Island and enter the Mermaid's Tear Dungeon. Their objective? Defeat the final boss within and obtain the Mermaid's Tear from it. There were three critical points to this trial. Firstly, each team can have a maximum of six members, with an average level of 20. The mission item would only drop at nightmare difficulty, and only three quest items would be available. Clearly, only the top three teams would be able to complete this trial. Lin didn't understand the need for secrecy. In the end, isn't it just clearing a dungeon? Tao Tao, having read the quest, looked somewhat serious. She hadn't expected this trial to be centered on Mermaid Island. Having experienced numerous trials and amassed vast experience, Ning Yi Yi asked her to elaborate. Tao Tao began explaining that the mermaid's tear could be used to forge a special kind of equipment. The location of Mermaid Island wasn't within their empire's territory, and only three tears would drop each year. Hence, every year, other than their own empire, professionals from other nations would also venture to Mermaid Island. For this mission, the Academy had sent ten teams, with them being the second team. They had to compete not only against fellow students from their own academy, but also against professionals from other nations. Tao Tao outlined the entire situation. When asked about what to do if they encountered teams from other nations, Tao Tao explained that in the past, the most one could do was to guard the entrance to the dungeon to prevent others from entering. However, they shouldn't be careless as deaths have occurred before. As the conversation continued, Ning Yi Yi unconsciously glanced at Lin, remembering their first encounter. Lin comforted her, saying that they wouldn't encounter such situations. Taking a deep breath, Tao Tao instructed everyone to prepare to enter the dungeon. First, they needed to cast buffs on everyone. Oliver responded immediately, beginning to use his skills. Auras of light instantly enveloped everyone. Strength amplification, agility boost, defense enhancement, magic activation. With these buffs, everyone's attributes saw a significant increase. Lin could feel the enhancements coursing through him. Strength, agility, vitality, and spirit. All these major attributes increased by 30%. Mage skill power also increased by 20%. All these statuses would last for an hour. After the buff, the entire team's combat power surged dramatically. The Prophet was an incredibly potent support class. However, when compared to Lin's innate talents, the boost from the Prophet's buffs seemed relatively minor. An idea suddenly struck him. What would happen if the Prophet's buffs were applied to the skeletal warrior? With a mere thought from Lin, a skeletal warrior immediately materialized beside him. The sudden appearance of the skeletal warrior startled several members of the team. Accompanied by a chilly wind, the flames inside the skeletal warrior's eye socket flickered, and a gleaming cold blade was held firmly in its hand. Emma let out a shriek, immediately hiding behind Ning Yi Yi. Oliver was also taken aback. Lin turned to Oliver, asking him to buff the skeletal warrior. However, Oliver found that his spell couldn't be applied to the skeletal warrior. The aura that appeared around the skeletal warrior immediately dissipated. Lin didn't show any disappointment. Perhaps it was due to his overpowering innate talent that overshadowed other buff skills like Oliver's. Can't even apply any buffs. The useless summoned creature is just as trash as its master. 
Jacob remarked disdainfully. Lin turned to look at him, his eyes icy cold. The skeletal warrior's eyes emitted a menacing red glow as it too turned to glare at Jacob. The flames in its eye sockets pulsed intensely, and a chilling wind blew. Jacob instantly felt his hair stand on end, and he unconsciously took a step back as a flame emerged from the staff in his hand. Reacting swiftly, Tao Tao stepped in between the two, telling the two to stop. Lin nodded and turned away. Jacob took a deep breath, struggling to regain his composure. When the skeletal warrior had looked at him earlier, he truly felt as if his life was in danger, thinking he was about to meet his end. As a roar resounded through the air, the trial began. Everyone charged onto the island simultaneously. There were ponds and swamps everywhere, and many creatures could be seen lurking within. These creatures were half human and half fish, their bodies covered in scales. They did not resemble the beautiful and adorable mermaids from Tales, but rather ugly murlocs. Amidst the ripple of the water, a murloc suddenly shot out from a pond and charged directly at them. The attributes of this murloc warrior weren't particularly high. Before the creature could reach them, Tao Tao had already raised her shield and charged at the murloc. At that moment, a fireball flew out, landing precisely on the murloc warrior. With a boom, the creature was instantly engulfed in flames. Shadows danced behind it as seemingly out of nowhere, Ning Yi Yi appeared behind it. Her dagger, emitting a faint glow, stabbed it from behind, ending its life. Lin received a notification that the murloc warrior had been slain. Everyone in the party has gained 1,500 experience points. Having quickly dealt with the murloc creature, the team continued to advance. They encountered several waves of monsters along the way. The closer they got to the mountain peak, the more numerous the monsters became. Now, they were even encountering level 21 monsters, which took a bit more effort to defeat. At this pace, it would take them at least three hours to reach the center of the island. They're moving too slowly, Tao Tao commented. From now on, when they encounter monsters, Emma will be in charge of crowd control. If they can avoid a fight, they will. Tao Tao decided to bypass the monsters to speed up their progress. The team quickened their pace. When they next encountered monsters, Emma immediately used her skills to control them. However, 20 minutes later, they were still falling behind. Other teams had already reached the base of the mountain, and the area was swarming with murloc creatures, making them difficult to avoid. The teams had already arrived at the base of the mountain, clearing out the creatures there in preparation to ascend. Tao Tao was ready to rush in, but Emma interjected, The monsters here are level 22, higher than my level. She is not confident that she can control these creatures, especially with their overwhelming numbers. Tao Tao furrowed her brow. If they were to clear everything in their path, it would take at least an hour, and they would be left far behind. But if they rushed straight through without Emma's crowd control, it would be difficult. There was a risk they'd be surrounded by the Murlocs creatures putting the entire team in danger. For a moment, Tao Tao was caught in a dilemma. Lin looked at the path ahead. He had already found a closer route. Stepping forward, he declared that he would handle it. Jacob scoffed almost instinctively. You? What can a level 17 guy like you do? Throughout the journey, Lin didn't lift a finger and merely followed behind. Ning Yi Yi huffed and told Jacob to shut up. Tao Tao shot Jacob a glare signaling him to remain silent. She turned to Lin and asked him about his plan. Lin responded he would use a skeleton warrior to distract the murloc creatures and lure them away. Tao Tao's eyes lit up. She suddenly remembered that Lin was a necromancer. Using summoned creatures to lure the murlocs was indeed a great idea. With a thought, Lin sent the skeleton warrior charging forward, causing Tao Tao's eyes to widen in shock. The speed of the skeleton warrior was beyond her expectations. In the blink of an eye, it had covered several tens of meters, appearing right before a group of murloc creatures. The murloc creatures let out sharp cries, immediately charging at the skeleton warrior. The skeleton warrior paid them no mind, turning around and sprinting away. Drawing a horde of monsters with him, it ran farther and farther. With the path now clear, the team rapidly advanced. In just a few minutes, they had reached the bottom of the mountain. By this time, there were already over a hundred monsters trailing behind the skeleton warrior. 
Under Lin's control, the skeleton warrior kept running further into the distance. Then, suddenly, the skeleton warrior vanished. Lin had recalled it to the summoning space. The murloc creatures lost their target all at once, each looking around in confusion. Everyone breathed a sigh of relief. Ning Yi Yi giggled, saying, that was amazing. Oliver and Emma also looked at Lin with admiration. They owed him big time for this. Jacob said coldly, why didn't you do that from the beginning? We could have been on the mountain by now. Lin turned his head, looking at him as if he were an idiot. With a chilling gaze, he told Jacob, that was the last time. Jacob looked disdainful, but suddenly, a scream echoed from the mountaintop. Everyone looked up to see a massive number of murloc creatures charging down the mountain. The teams that had previously ascended the mountain were now rapidly retreating back down. Tao Tao's expression changed dramatically, ordering everyone to fall back. The team quickly retreated, distancing themselves from the bottom of the mountain. Hundreds of murlocs rushed down from the mountaintop, completely blocking the way up. Someone deliberately lured the murlocs over, and this person wasn't from their academy or their empire. It was a professional from another nation. Turned out, it was an Onmyoji class. The Onmyoji took out two talismans and threw them out, one to the left and one to the right. The talismans exploded in the air, and two enormous creatures appeared. Just like the skeleton warriors, they attracted the monsters from the pond at the bottom of the mountain. The Onmyoji sat atop his shikigami, floating in the air, laughing heartily. Tao Tao looked at Lin, and with an okay look from Lin, a skeleton warrior was already on its way. The appearance of the skeleton warrior immediately caught the attention of the horde. A swarm of murlocs screeched and chased after the skeleton warrior. In an instant, a third of the surrounding murlocs were drawn away. With the sound of cracking bones, another skeleton warrior ran forward. The second skeleton warrior employed the same tactic and drew away another batch of creatures. The creatures at the base of the mountain were almost all lured away, leaving only those on the mountain path. Even with these remaining creatures, clearing them out would be much faster than before. The surrounding students from their academy saw the scene, and many praised Lin. At that moment, a third skeleton appeared and everyone shouted with excitement. The Anmyoji, who was just riding on his Shikigami, had clearly drawn so many creatures that the path was completely blocked. To clear these creatures, it would take several hours at least. He didn't expect the students from the Hidden Dragon Squad to reach the mountain so quickly. It surpassed his predictions. He rushed towards the top of the mountains where numerous archers ambushed from the mountaintop with a command from him. All of the archers unleashed arrows that exploded in the air and rained down like a storm. The archers of the Sakura Empire suddenly launched their attack, seeing the ambush and rain of arrows. The mages summoned a magical barrier while knights activated their defensive skills. In front of Lin, two skeletons appeared, shielding both him and Ning Yi Yi. After the first wave of confrontation, neither side claimed victory. Their formation was chaotic and they had been ambushed. The scene was utter chaos. Lin had yet to make a move. He was worried that if the skeleton warrior slashed someone, they might end up dead. Causing a death would be problematic. The seemingly intense battle had resulted only in minor injuries. Jacob suddenly spoke up. Captain, I want to join another team. Tao Tao looked surprised. She hadn't expected Jacob to say such a thing. Jacob pointed at Lin. Either he goes or I do. Not just Tao Tao, but Oliver and Emma also showed expressions of surprise. They hadn't expected Jacob to use this as a threat, especially now when they were already at the entrance of the dungeon. Oliver spoke in a deep voice, telling Jacob was going too far. Emma chimed in, saying if it weren't for Lynn luring those creatures away, they wouldn't have made it up here. Jacob, ignoring everyone else, reiterated, Captain, your call. Tao Tao glanced at Lynn and then at Jacob. She highly disapproved of Jacob's behavior. Yet deep down, Jacob believed that the captain would surely choose to keep him. Every other team was looking for mages, and without one, they couldn't able to continue. Jacob waited for a response with an ugly smirk on his face. Tao Tao made her decision. Her gaze settled on Jacob, telling Jacob to leave the team. Jacob, full of confidence until that point, 
thought Tao Tao would surely pick him. He hadn't expected this outcome at all. He was stunned and lost for words. Tao Tao's gaze settled on Jacob, and she calmly told Jacob that he should leave the group. Just moments ago, Jacob looked confident. He was certain that Tao Tao would surely choose him. Yet against his expectations, she responded with words that left him speechless. He wondered if he had misheard. He questioned Tao Tao whether she didn't want to enter the Creation Academy. He then warned the party that if he left the team, everyone's trial would end on the spot. Tao Tao looked at him. Everyone here wants to enter the Creation Academy, including herself. But perhaps Jacob had forgotten her profession. Tao Tao was an elven knight. Knights have their own creed. Without Lin, they would never made it up this far. Asking Lin to step down was something she couldn't bring herself to do. Jacob sneered coldly, warning Tao Tao to not regret her decision before leaving the group. Lin slowly stood up, suggesting that everyone get ready to enter the dungeon. Tao Tao was taken aback. What is going on? What does Lin mean by preparing to enter the dungeon? Lin surely knew both sides are still fighting over the entrance, and nobody from either side could approach the dungeon. As Lin stood up, Ning Yi Yi followed suit. Ning Yi Yi giggled while trying to pull Tao Tao up. Tao Tao looked puzzled. She questioned how could they enter. Oliver and Emma were equally perplexed, but got up to follow Lin. Lin walked towards the dungeon entrance with Ning Yi Yi hopping and skipping behind. She seemed to have unwavering faith in Lin. Tao Tao tells herself, if things go south, they can just come back. With her around, they were at least safe. The Sakura Empire probably wouldn't dare to kill anyone. The group of five suddenly approached the dungeon, immediately drawing the attention of the people from the Sakura Empire. They began to shout and curse, warning the group not to take another step. Professionals from the Sakura Empire yelled out, with their swords drawn and weapons raised high. In an instant, everyone had their weapons at the ready. Lin, however, wasn't bothered continuing to walk towards the dungeon. Tao Tao's heart raced. Holding her shield up, Oliver and Emma were also extremely tense. Only Ning Yi Yi seemed unfazed, saying, Don't worry, it'll be fine. Everyone from the Hidden Dragon Squad recognized Lin. He was the summoner who had diverted the murlocs for them earlier. Had it not been for Lin's summoned creature earlier, they wouldn't have made it here. Although they weren't sure what Lin planned to do, the majority chose to protect him, weapons, preparing for another battle. Jacob sneered, Idiots! Are you all seeking death? Seeing Lin disregard the warnings, the Sakura Empire launched their attacks. Tao Tao raised her shield without hesitation, ready to defend her party members. At that very moment, Lin pointed forward. Whoosh! Dozens of skeletal warriors instantly appeared around him. Over a dozen skeletal warriors formed a protective circle, safeguarding the group and deflecting all incoming attacks. Everyone was stunned. They couldn't believe Lin could summon so many skeletal warriors and that the enemy's attacks felt so harmless against them. The group of five ignored the relentless assaults from the Sakura Empire's professionals. As Lin and the party moved closer to the dungeon step by step, the professionals from the Sakura Empire charged at them again. Yet, Lin ignored them and calmly chose the nightmare level difficulty. The five suddenly disappeared at the entrance of the dungeon along with the skeletal warriors. Tao Tao looked at Lin, finally breathing a sigh of relief. But without a damage dealer, what were they to do now? Ning Yi Yi giggled, telling her to just trust in Lin. His skeletal warriors are very powerful. At this point, they had no choice but to take Ning Yi Yi's word for it. Tao Tao said she would try to block the mobs and asked Emma to handle the healing. Emma patted her chest, reassuring her, while Oliver began to apply buffs. But by then, Lin was already moving forward. As everyone was still preparing, they suddenly saw a system notification. Defeated level 21 elite Murloc warrior, XP gained 10,000. Obtained 10 fish scales. Oliver and Emma, who were still in the process of buffing, were startled by the sudden notification. Then, turning their heads, they saw a fallen elite Murloc warrior lying in a pond ahead. Tao Tao's eyes widened, looking at Lin with disbelief. She was the only one who had seen what happened. Monsters in the Nightmare Dungeon 
even with the perfect team setup, would take them several minutes to defeat. Yet she saw a few skeletal warriors go up, and with a few strikes, the monster was dead, almost instantly. Tao Tao was still processing what had happened. Ning Yi Yi, however, laughed as she reiterated how Lin's skeletal warriors are amazing and followed suit. Oliver shouted, I haven't finished buffing! Tao Tao shook her head, never mind that now, urging everyone to hurry up and follow. The skeletal warriors relentlessly unleashed their rampage strikes at the forefront, instantly slaying any monster that came in their path. Tao Tao had never imagined that clearing a dungeon could be this effortless. Every time they embarked on a dungeon, she was the most fatigued. Being a knight, she had to stand in the front lines, constantly vigilant of each attack from the monsters. She had to hold the monster's aggro firmly while also ensuring her teammates were protected. Unlike now, where all she had to do was follow from behind and essentially do nothing. Oliver and Emma shared the same sentiments. After walking through the corridor for quite some time, they finally reached its end. A vast cavern appeared before them. Suddenly, Ning Yi Yi spotted a dark shadow in the water and cast a detection spell. It was the queen's pet snake, Elite Boss. A 30-meter-long python appeared its stats astoundingly high, far surpassing the goblin king that Lin had encountered previously. It even matches the stats of the skeletal warriors. Without hesitation, Tao Tao looked to Lin, indicating she'd take the aggro of the monster. But Lin stopped her, saying there was no need. While none of them made a move, the skeletal warriors had already charged forth. Lin still didn't summon more skeletal warriors. In his eyes, the existing skeletal warriors were more than sufficient. One after another, the skeletal warriors leaped towards the colossal python. The python surged upwards, its massive tail sending several skeletal warriors flying. This was the python's first skill, whiplash. The python's agility was unexpectedly impressive. No skeletal warriors could land a hit on it. The python swiftly slithered around the cave, its massive tail constantly whipping and sending the skeletal warriors flying. Tao Tao was growing anxious as she watched, but Lin reassured her. A soft glow emitted from his palm as he gently pointed towards the python. It was Lin's newly acquired skill, the slow curse. Suddenly, as if a massive red chain appeared on the python's body. In an instant, the python's speed was reduced by half. This time, the skeletal warriors easily captured the python. The swords and axes in their hands descended furiously, slashing hard against the python's scales. The python cried out in pain repeatedly. Tao Tao instantly recognized it as a curse skill, to which Lin nodded in confirmation. Powerful summoning creatures and curse debuff skills. What kind of profession is a necromancer really? Tao Tao wondered to herself. Deprived of its speed advantage, the python was now forced into head-on combat with the skeletal warriors. Suddenly, the python initiated another skill, Death Coil. While a few skeletal warriors were tightly constricted, bone-cracking sounds could be heard far away, but they weren't severely damaged. The python then spat out venom, which splashed onto the skeletal warriors. However, the venom was ineffective against undead creatures. The python tried everything but remained helpless against the skeletal warriors. Minutes later, one of the skeletal warriors pierced through the python's head. The python let out a piercing screech and had a look of defiance as it slowly collapsed. System of Level 23 Queen's Pet Snake. Experience gained 50,000. Acquired Silver Grade Armor, Snake Skin Armor. Acquired Intermediate Monster Core. Tao Tao stared at the system notifications then incredulously turned to Lin. Is it over already? What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? Lin nodded in agreement, but Tao Tao and the others were still in a daze, taking a moment to understand the situation. Ning Yi Yi's laughter radiated with joy. The more impressive Lin is, the happier she becomes. She urged everyone to snap out of their daydream and catch up with Lin. When Tao Tao and the group finally came to their senses, they hurriedly followed suit. The cave reeked of fishy smell, making the girls cover their noses as they moved deeper. On the other side of the cave, a captivating scene appeared before their eyes. Ahead lay a magnificent palace. It was the Mermaid Queen's palace. 
The atmosphere here was drastically different than the cave. It was much pristine and orderly. From where they stood, all the way to the palace's entrance, squads of murloc guards could be seen patrolling. Each squad consisted of three elite murloc soldiers. These murloc soldiers were clad in armor and wielded weapons. Ning Yi Yi quickly counted them, realizing there were 60 squads in total, amounting to a force of 180 elite murloc soldiers. Tao Tao recalled in the past, their tactic was to carefully target monsters lurking in the corners, luring them bit by bit for a thorough cleanup. It was a slow and strenuous process, but it was safer that way. Now, everyone turned their gaze to Lin. Ning Yi Yi inquired, with so many monsters, what should they do? However, seeing the horde, Lin was secretly thrilled. The more monsters, the better. He pointed forward, and suddenly, all the skeletal warriors surged forth. Their sudden appearance immediately drew the attention of the murlocs. At that moment, a detection spell was cast, revealing the attributes of these murlocs. While the elite murloc soldiers had impressive strength and vitality, compared to the skeletal warriors, they were still weak. Soon, large numbers of the elite murloc were rounded up by the skeletons. The skeletal warriors unleashed their rampage strike, and the murloc soldiers retaliated with their abilities. When their skills clashed, it was no surprise that the skeletal warriors emerged victorious. Cover your ears, Lin whispered to Ning Yi Yi, who quickly did so. Tao Tao and the others were still clueless about what was happening when a thunderous explosion nearly knocked them off their feet. Then came several more deafening explosions echoed. It was Lin's corpse explosion. After a series of thundering explosions, Tao Tao and the group were left in shock by the rapid system notifications that flashed before them. All of the elite murloc soldiers had perished, granting them a vast amount of experience and loot. It was the first time Tao Tao and the others had experienced the thrilling sensation of rapidly gaining experience points. They were all visibly exhilarated. At that moment, amidst the sounds of explosions, the grand entrance of the Mermaid Queen's palace slowly opened. Along with the brilliance emanating light from inside, out appeared the Mermaid Queen herself. Despite her towering presence, the beautiful Mermaid Queen retained an elegant presence. Ning Yi Yi found herself locking eyes with the Queen, her pupils losing focus. Unconsciously, she began to drift towards the Mermaid Queen. Lin quickly grabbed her and pulled her back. But it wasn't just Ning Yi Yi. Tao Tao was also affected. A skeletal warrior blocked Tao Tao's path. Two more skeletal warriors simultaneously blocked the path of Emma and Oliver. Only Lin and Oliver seemed unaffected. Emma, gritting her teeth through the pain, exclaimed, It's a temptation spell! Swiftly, she cast a skill, and streaks of light enveloped the party. Regaining her senses, Ning Yi Yi blurted out, What happened to her? Tao Tao shivered, her eyes refocusing, questioning, What just happened? Emma turned to the Mermaid Queen telling them that the Mermaid Queen had a passive temptation spell. Only Lin and Oliver were not affected. Had it not been for Lin, they would have walked straight to her and been wiped out. Lin, Oliver, possessing strong, high spiritual attributes, remained immune to the Mermaid Queen's temptation spell. The Mermaid Queen glanced at her fallen elite Murloc soldiers and suddenly let out a piercing scream. The once beautiful Mermaid Queen transformed into a terrifying visage. Her screams stirred tumultuous waves, and a fierce wind began to howl. Tao Tao observed the Mermaid Queen's insane attributes. In a conventional raid, defeating her could take hours, if not longer. However, right now, she couldn't even begin to predict what would happen next. Lin has completely shattered her established understanding of any professionals. The skeletal warriors struggled against the raging winds. Tao Tao wasn't sure how long the skeletal warriors could hold. The scene reminded her of a pack of wolves surrounding a mighty lion. The Mermaid Queen, wielding her trident, launched relentless attacks on the skeletal warriors. From the surging waves, several skeletal warriors sustained severe injuries. One, struck directly by the trident, was instantly slain. Tao Tao gripped her shield tightly, feeling that her turn to join the fight was soon. She asked Oliver to grant her a buff, then turned to the others telling them to prepare for battle once Lin's skeletal warriors couldn't hold out any longer. Lin said softly, No need. 
A soft glow emanated from his palm. He used his skill, slow curse. A red chain appeared on the mermaid queen, reducing her speed by half. Sensing the curse, she let out another ear-piercing scream. This time, her tidal surge skill was stronger than ever. A radiant azure light illuminated the palace as massive waves swept in, scattering the surrounding skeletal warriors instantly. Tao Tao looked towards Lin, suggesting he call back his skeletal warriors so they could step in. Lin recalled the injured ones, then pointed a finger. A chilling wind howled, revealing a sea of darkness in front. He unleashed the remaining 87 skeletal warriors. As soon as they appeared, they charged towards the Mermaid Queen. There are so many of them. How can there be so many summoned creatures? Oliver and Emma began to question. Only then did they realize that Lin hadn't deployed all his summoned creatures earlier. He had only dispatched a fraction of them. Ning Yi Yi looked at Lin, thinking to herself, Lin has grown stronger, much stronger. Nearly a hundred skeletal warriors launched an onslaught on the Mermaid Queen. They relentlessly cast rampage strikes, battering her repeatedly. The Mermaid Queen suffered deep cuts and wounds, her screams echoing constantly. Her trident whirled frantically, and she darted around erratically. Under the effect of the slow curse, her speed was halved, making it impossible to shake off the skeletal warriors. Suddenly, her scream pierced the air. The Mermaid Queen activated her skill once again. This time, it was the Queen's Lament. Emma hurriedly used the skill, hoping to cancel out the Mermaid Queen's skill, but this time it did not have any effect. Her level was too low to counter the Mermaid Queen. However, Lin assured her it was fine. Lin knew that the skeletal warriors lacked emotions and fear, and the skill does not affect them. The blades and axes of the skeletal warriors never ceased their assault. Finally, with one last scream of anguish, the Mermaid Queen fell to the ground. Experience gained 80,000. Obtained Silver Tier Weapon. Mermaid Queen's Sword. Obtained Silver Tier Weapon. Mermaid Queen's Staff. Obtained Mermaid's Tear. The description of the Mermaid Queen's Sword was a level 20 Silver Tier Weapon. It granted 50 Strength and 50 Vitality, and it also increased the power of Warrior-type skills by 10%. Mermaid Queen's Staff was also a level 20 Silver Tier Weapon, granting 50 Spirits and 50 Vitality, and increasing the power of mage-type skills by 10%. Ning Yi Yi jumped in excitement. They had completed their trial mission. They were one step closer to the Creation Academy. Tao Tao smiled and said, As long as they complete a few more trial missions and level up a bit more, they will be able to enter the Creation Academy. She then followed up saying they owe a lot to Lin this time. Without him, they probably wouldn't have been able to complete the trial. Emma agreed and then whispered while saying Jacob was the absolute worst. Oliver said, don't even mention that guy. They should never team up with someone like him in the future. Tao Tao gritted her teeth. She despised people like Jacob the most. Lin quickly calculated the time. He turned to Ning Yi Yi and asked if she had any cooldown amulets. Ning Yi Yi's eyes sparkled, instantly understanding Lin's intention. Everyone else also looked at Lin and understood his train of thought. Outside the dungeon, the two empires remained in a standoff. Almost an hour had just passed, and another conflict had erupted between the two empires. Neither side had the upper hand. Suddenly, five figures emerged from the dungeon entrance. The people from the Sakura kingdom were shocked at first, then started sneering upon seeing them, saying things like, Only half an hour and they're out? Looks like they couldn't handle it and ran away. Another remarked, those skeletons are only good as meat shields. In their eyes, the skeletal warriors were merely a tad tankier and had a number advantage, nothing more. The members of the Sakura Empire were quick to mock and scoff. They never would have believed that Lin and his group had cleared the dungeon. On the other hand, the people from the Divine Empire and the Hidden Dragon Squad let out a sigh of relief upon seeing Lin and his party members return safely. Everyone began comforting them, saying, it's okay. What's important is they came back safely. Jacob scoffed. Lucky you guys even made it out alive, insisting on leading the group into the dungeon and look what happened. Failed, didn't you? No one paid attention to Jacob. Tao Tao scanned the surroundings and noticed that nobody else had entered the dungeon. She instructed her party to be on guard, prompting Oliver and Emma to draw their weapons and stand in front of the dungeon entrance. 
Tao Tao turned to Ning Yi Yi and signaled her to do as they had planned. Ning Yi Yi pulled out the cool-down amulet from her bag, nodding to Tao Tao, telling her they were ready to go. Under the watchful eyes of all, Ning Yi Yi took out a cool-down amulet and activated it. In a faint glow, the dungeon's cool-down timer was reset to zero. The duo quickly entered the dungeon again. Tao Tao, Oliver, and Emma cheered them on and then retreated back into the ranks of the Divine Empire. When everyone saw Ning Yi Yi using the cool-down amulet, they quickly realized that her identity was no ordinary one. Acquiring a basic cool-down amulets was no easy task. It was a sought-after item that would cost a fortune to purchase it. The more observant among them noticed that the two had chosen the dungeon's nightmare difficulty. Tao Tao gazed towards the dungeon entrance, hoping that the duo would be successful. Emma chuckled. They had all witnessed Lin's capabilities, reassuring Tao Tao that they'll definitely be all right. Tao Tao smiled and stowed away her shield. Inside the dungeon, Ning Yi Yi's face beamed brightly, making even the dungeon's foul smell seem less intolerable. She had previously asked Lin to bring her along for a dungeon run to level up before they parted last time, and she hadn't expected the wish to come true so soon. Lin smiled, saying that if he promised something, he would make sure to deliver. Ning Yi Yi's smile grew even brighter as she responded, then Lin have to keep bringing her along in the future, and not just this one time. Lin agreed. The two pressed on, with Ning Yi Yi's cool-down amulet still having five uses left. If she were to bring along the rest of the party members, they could only go through one more round. However, if it were just Ning Yi Yi and Lin, they could go through two more rounds. After discussing, they decided that only Lin and Ning Yi Yi would tackle the dungeon. They were determined to seize this opportunity and obtain all three mermaids' tears. With the experience from their previous venture, Lin didn't waste time fighting mobs one by one. He summoned skeletal warriors, allowing them to attack freely, advancing along the corridor. Minutes later, all the elite murloc soldiers in the passage were defeated. They soon of the mermaid queen. A 30-meter python leaped out of the water. Drawing from his prior experience, Lin swiftly cast a slowing curse on the python, and dozens of skeletal warriors simultaneously launched their attacks on it. The python was defeated before it could even react, letting out a mournful cry as it collapsed. System notification. Defeated, the level 23 pet snake of the Mermaid Queen. Experience gained 125,000. Acquired silver tier armor, snakeskin light armor. Acquired an intermediate monster core. The last time they fought this far, it took them a long time to progress by defeating monsters one by one. This time, it only took five minutes. Ning Yi Yi smiled, and her eyes turned to the shape of crescent moons, praising Lin for becoming even stronger. The duo pressed on towards the Mermaid Queen's palace, soon arriving outside. Many elite murloc soldiers patrolled outside the palace. Skeletal warriors quickly dashed forth, swiftly eliminating the mobs. The Mermaid Queen then made her appearance, with a shimmering blue glow as her palace gates opened again. The beautiful Mermaid Queen emerged from within. Having had the experience before, Ning Yi Yi quickly ducked behind Lin, knowing not to make direct eye contact to avoid getting seduced by the Mermaid Queen. With Lin acting as a shield, she was safe. Ning Yi Yi playfully shouted, Go Lin! I choose you! Prompting a chuckle and a shake of the head from Lin. This time, armed with prior knowledge and being well prepared, Lin used his skill, slowing curse. Under the massive chains, the Mermaid Queen's speed significantly decreased. The skeletal warriors simultaneously hurled several dead murloc soldiers toward the Mermaid Queen. Then he used skill, corpse explosion, a conventional and somewhat cliched move, but highly effective. During a series of explosions, the Mermaid Queen let out a cry and fell, not even having a chance to use her skills. System notification, defeated the Mermaid Queen, experience gained 200,000, acquired silver tier weapon, Mermaid Queen's dagger, acquired silver tier weapon, Mermaid Queen's spellbook, received Mermaid's tear. At the same time, Ning Yi Yi leveled up, which elated Ning Yi Yi clapping her hands, urging for another round, hoping to secure all three Mermaid's tears. After exiting the dungeon, Lin looked at Ning Yi Yi. He recalled that when he first met her, 
she was at level 19, while he was only at level 10. After all this time, Ning Yi Yi had remained at level 19, only just becoming level 20. It seemed that Ning Yi Yi wasn't too interested in grinding levels. Ning Yi Yi greeted Tao Tao, Emma, and Oliver, then used her cooldown amulet for the second time. A few seconds later, the duo entered the dungeon again. The onlooking crowd from the Sakura Empire was puzzled. Why did they come out as soon as they went in? It had only been about ten minutes, not even enough time to defeat a single mob. Some even scoffed, saying it's just rich folks. Only know how to waste. They squandered such a precious cooldown amulet. Perhaps even if they racked their brains, they would never realize that the duo was currently conquering the mermaid dungeon at nightmare difficulty. Only Tao Tao and the party members knew what was really going on. The trio exchanged glances, their eyes filled with astonishment. They were, of course, well aware of Lin's capability to solo the mermaid dungeon, but they couldn't have imagined it would be cleared in just ten minutes. Inside the dungeon, Ning Yi Yi kept glancing at the timer on their communicator, curious about how long it would take this time, and wondered if they could surpass their previous record. Lin couldn't help but chuckle at her antics. While others treated the trials as missions, Ning Yi Yi seemed to treat them as a game. After defeating the Mermaid Queen, the final timer read 8 minutes and 58 seconds, even faster than their last attempt. With the third mermaid tear in their possession, the duo left the dungeon. When the two of them exited this time, they didn't re-enter the dungeon. People from the Sakura Empire were loudly shouting, each one of them showing disdain. They ceaselessly mocked them, and in their eyes, envy was more predominant. They seemed eager to snatch away the cooldown amulet in Ning Yi Yi's hands. Lin and Ning Yi Yi ignored them, simply heading towards the trio. After Lin and Ning Yi Yi returned, they rejoined the party. Suddenly, someone pointed at the dungeon entrance, shouting, The dungeon gate has disappeared! The announcement was like a bolt from the blue, causing everyone to turn their heads. The entrance of the dungeon began to tremble, and after a few shakes, the vortex at the entrance vanished entirely. Everyone knew that the dungeon would only disappear once all three mermaid tears were obtained. What on earth had happened? Suddenly, some remembered that Lin's team had just entered three times, could it be them? Regardless of the possibilities, the dungeon vanished in front of their eyes. They knew it was impossible to get the mermaid tears again. Since the trial is complete, Lin advised his party to leave. Captain Tao Tao nodded in agreement. Regardless of what had happened, the people of the Sakura Empire naturally couldn't let Lin's team of five go. The mermaid tears must have been obtained by them. They demanded Lin's party to hand them over. People from the Sakura Empire were furious, and everyone surged forward aggressively. The people from the Divine Empire were also puzzled. Some looked towards the team of five, asking if they really had the tears. Tao Tao didn't deny it, affirming that the mermaid tears were indeed in her possession. Everyone took a sharp intake of breath. This confirmed that they had indeed cleared the dungeon. Doubt was evident in nearly everyone's eyes. But regardless of their confusion, their priority was to unite against the common enemy. They quickly formed a battle formation and charged towards the people of the Sakura Empire. Suddenly, a loud rumble echoed in the sky. A person from the Sakura Empire appeared in front of Lin, with two massive shikigamis hovering in the air. The Onmyoji revealed himself. He sat atop one of the shikigamis, and solely from the looks, it was evident that he was very powerful. Tao Tao appeared slightly tense, recognizing that this profession was unique to the Sakura Empire. It was the legendary class on Miyoji, which can summon powerful Shikigamis. It won't be easy to handle. Just as Tao Tao was about to rush forward, Lin had already made his move. A flash of flames erupted in the palm of his hand. Skill, soul flame. One of the Shikigamis had a flame appearing above its head. In the blink of an eye, the flame penetrated the Shikigami. The Shikigami let out a deafening, earth-shaking scream. The Onmyoji's expression shifted instantly. Without hesitation, he activated his skill and coldly glared at Lin, saying, You are seeking death! A surge of dark mist rapidly emanated from within him, spreading outwards. Accompanied by an ancient and deep chant, another terrifying Shikigami appeared in the sky. 
Standing much larger than the previous Shikigami, this Shikigami wore armor, had a serpent's head on a humanoid body, and wielded a massive axe. As soon as it appeared, it lunged towards Lin. The attacks from the hidden dragon squad seemed ineffective against it. The Anmyoji sneered. With their level of attacks, they could at best just tickle his Shikigami. Several skeletal warriors simultaneously leaped high into the air, confronting the descending giant axe Shikigami. All at once, they used the skill Rampage Strike. Their great sword gleamed with a red glow. With an impressive strength of 2,700, these skeletal warriors, in an unexpected turn of events, swiftly vanquished what seemed like a powerful Shikigami, causing it to turn into a wisp of blue smoke and disperse into the air. Lin was slightly taken aback. How could it be so weak? A Shikigami that looked so mighty was surprisingly fragile. The others were also dumbfounded. Their attacks had seemed ineffective, yet Lin's skeletons managed to cut down the seemingly powerful Shikigami in just a few strikes. Was the Shikigami truly that weak, or were the skeletons simply too strong? After the Shikigami was defeated, the Anmyoji, who was its master, suffered a backlash. His face turned pale, and he spat out a mouthful of blood. At this moment, a beam of flame appeared again in Lin's hand. The Shikigami, which was already wailing in pain, was struck by the soul flame once again. Two skeletal warriors silently appeared by its side, their blades cutting through the Shikigami. Seeing another two skeletal warriors charging at him, the Anmyoji screamed again and hurriedly urged the Shikigami he was sitting on to escape quickly. The look in his eyes when he looked at Lin was filled with both resentment and fear. Everyone was shocked by this scene. During the chaotic battle, both sides halted. The people of the Sakura Empire looked at Lin with nothing but fear. They couldn't believe that his skeletons were so powerful, easily cutting down the strongest Shikigami from their side. They began to question profession. The Anmyoji knew that Lin was a level 17 necromancer. He thought that Lin must have awakened some unique talent. Being so powerful only at level 17, it only suggested that this necromancer profession was much more powerful than anyone had imagined. He had to bring this intelligence back. The Divine Empire had a new powerful professional among their ranks. With that thought, he rode away on his Shikigami without looking back abandoning his party and the people. Several more skeletal warriors emerged from the ground, lining up and standing in the center of the field. They emitted a pale blue-white glow from head to toe and the great swords in their hands gleamed with a chilling light. The flames in their eye socket flickered continuously, with gusts of cold wind blowing. Step by step, they approached the professionals of the Sakura Empire. Seeing even the most powerful professional among them fleeing, the rest didn't dare to stay. One person started to flee, followed by a whole group. With everyone screaming and running away, the Sakura Empire's formation completely collapsed. The professionals from the Divine Empire, laughing and talking among themselves. Those guys from Sakura Nation are so funny, they got scared and ran away. Seeing them flee in such a panicked state was truly hilarious. With so many professionals, they were scared away by a few skeletons. They're utterly useless. Another pointed out that these skeletons can even tackle nightmare-level dungeons. If it really came down to a fight, wouldn't those from the Sakura Empire just be serving themselves up? Of course, they had to run, or they'd be dead. Many looked towards Lin while discussing. Lin's actions speak louder than words. The image of Lin swiftly killing the Shikigami just a while ago remained vivid in their minds. Everyone seemed relaxed, except for Jacob. His gaze, now and then shifting to Lin, was filled with resentment and regret. Had he not pressured Tao Tao or threatened the party before, he too would have been one of those who completed the trial. Then, he shook his head. In his heart, he felt he had done nothing wrong. His hatred towards Lin was overwhelming. Staring at Lin's back, he thought, Just you wait. After the party returned to the trial stone and completed the trial, they were enveloped by a shining light. They soon found themselves in front of the virtual shadow of Divine Tower. A few seconds later, a majestic deep voice echoed, Trial mission is over. Begin the return. Each person was swiftly teleported back. In just over ten seconds, they were back at the academy. 
Once in the classroom, Ning Yi Yi, exhausted, collapsed onto her desk. Tao Tao, with a smile on her face, relaxed after returning. Gratefully, Tao Tao approached Lin to thank him for his help during the trial. It was incredibly crucial for her. Lin simply implied that no thanks were needed. Ning Yi Yi chimed in saying Tao Tao was being too formal with Lin, saying, Lin may not talk much, but he's genuinely kind-hearted. Even though she hadn't spent much time with Lin, Ning Yi Yi had an unwavering trust in him. Tao Tao smiled warmly as she looked at the two. Suddenly, Lin's communicator buzzed with a new message. It was from White Divine, summoning him to the administration office. A few minutes later, Lin arrived to find White Divine sitting, waiting for him. White Divine gave a hearty laugh, waving Lin over, mentioning he had seen the video recording of the trial. He complimented Lin on his excellent performance. Uncertain about why White Divine had called him, Lin simply responded he had done what was expected of him. White Divine's smile widened, unfazed in victory and defeat, such is the temperament of top warriors. White Divine was pleased with Lin and proceeded to ask if Lin knew the purpose of the mermaid's tear. Lin shook his head. He was mostly clueless. He still had no idea about the significance of the mermaid's tear, despite it being the objective of the trial. White Divine explained that very few were aware of its use in the trial, considering most were underleveled for the item rendering it useless for most. The mermaid's tear, he revealed, was crucial for the successful awakening of talents during the second phase at level 40. Items that could aid in such awakenings were exceedingly rare. Even though the mermaid's tear was a lower grade item, it's still very valuable. This time, Sakura Empire had figured out the location and time of the appearance of Mermaid Island, almost leading to the trial's failure. Thankfully, with Lin here, they secured the mermaid tear for their empire. White Divine then asked Lin what he wanted as a reward. Remembering that he couldn't access information about his sister, Lin asked White Divine if he could help him find someone. White Divine chuckled, anticipating Lin's request. He explained that Lin's sister, Lin Mohan, had joined the Creator's Academy at the beginning of the year, which is why Lin could only see blank records. All students who join the Creator's Academy have blank profiles, and this revelation left Lin somewhat shocked. His sister had joined the Creator's Academy. He recalls Tao Tao's ultimate dream was to be a part of that academy. Ning Yi Yi and Charlotte also told him that once he gets the opportunity, he should join the Creator's Academy. In his mind, the Academy always held an aura of mystique. To his surprise, his sister had already joined the Academy, despite being in the school for less than a year. He wondered what prompted his sister to join the Creator Academy. Even people like Tao Tao, who were a part of the elite Hidden Dragon Squad, couldn't even get into the Academy. White Divine seemed to sense the questions in Lin's heart. However, due to regulations, he couldn't disclose information about students of the Creator's Academy. Before Lin joined the Academy, he would not be able to see his sister. Without hesitation, Lin asked, What's the requirement to join the Creator's Academy? White Divine, having anticipated this question, quickly fiddled with his communicator. Moments later, Lin's device chimed, indicating a new message. About Lin's sister's matter, White Divine felt he should have been informed already so this didn't count as a reward. Lin could ask for another one. After some thought, Lin spoke. He would like a cool-down amulet. Lin knew how rare and invaluable these were, practically unobtainable in the open market. And for him, it would be incredibly useful. White Divine laughed heartily, thumping the table. Even a basic cool-down amulet was an extremely valuable possession. Although Lin had done well during the trial, a single trial was not enough to earn such a reward. Instead, White Divine offered Lin another task. If completed, he would secure the amulet for him. Lin accepted without hesitation. With a basic cooldown amulet, he could repeatedly challenge dungeons in a short amount of time, significantly boosting his leveling speed. White Divine advised Lin to reach level 20 before taking on this new task. If he was in a hurry, he suggested Lin level up at the Academy's Dungeon Hall. White Divine handed him a teleportation stone, mentioning it was an exclusive pass to the Dungeon Hall, not something every student possessed. Without uttering a word, 
Lin immediately used the teleportation stone, much to White Divine's surprise. Arriving at the dungeon hall, Lin was met with a cacophony of voices, a stark contrast to the solemn atmosphere he had expected. Students were actively recruiting members for their teams, some recruiting level 25 mages, others were in need of level 30 knights, and a few were on the lookout for support and healers. It seemed the dungeon hall was more a bustling marketplace than a place of solemnity. Many students sat on the floor, holding signs detailing their requirements, eagerly seeking out the perfect team members. Lin opened the communicator and read the requirements sent by White Divine for joining the Creator's Academy. The first requirement was to reach level 30. From the information disclosed by White Divine, Lin's sister had joined the Creator's Academy less than four months after entering the Xia Jing Academy. That means Lin's sister had leveled up from 16 to 30 in just a few months. Normally, leveling from 20 to 30 would take about a year. Lin couldn't understand how his sister managed to level up, but he is happy to see his sister becoming even stronger. After reading the level requirement, Lin continued to the second requirement, which was to pass the level 30 dungeon, Abyssal Frontier, with Hell difficulty, which seemed somewhat challenging. Lin knew the Hell difficulty was much harder than the Nightmare level, but this got him wondering, once he reached level 30, could he solo it? The third requirement was to attain 1,000 contribution points. But how could one acquire these contribution points? They seemed to be different from the previous points used to purchase goods and services in the academy. Suddenly, a gentle voice came from behind Lin. He turned to see a young female student standing there. She seemed a bit shy, took a deep breath, mustered up courage, and asked Lin if it was his first time in the dungeon hall. Lin nodded. She introduced herself briefly as Harmony, offering to explain everything inside the dungeon hall to Lin. Lin knew there was no such thing as a free lunch, especially in Xia Jing Academy. It seems this girl wanted to earn points as a side hustle. Lin asked how much, and she immediately said, 100 points will do. She seemed somewhat nervous, almost wanting to lower the price a bit. But 100 points weren't much for Lin, so he transferred the points to Harmony. Receiving the points, Harmony let out a sigh of relief, showed a sweet smile, and thanked Lin. Harmony began to introduce the dungeon hall. The main function of the dungeon hall was to grant the students the opportunity to various dungeons. Inside it, there were two dungeons below level 20, 18 dungeons between levels 20 to 30, 20 dungeons between levels 30 to 40, and the remaining 52 dungeons between levels 40 and 70. Additionally, there were two large dungeons for over 40 people raid party, and one extra large dungeon for over 100 people raid party, making a total of 95 dungeons. She then led Lin to a crystal ball, where each dungeon had corresponding clearance records, and setting new records would yield rewards. The center of the hall was the mission and team recruitment center. Here, professionals could complete missions to earn points or join teams and recruit members. For Lin, even without Harmony's help, he would have figured out all this information sooner or later. However, having someone explain saved him considerable time. Harmony, paid for her services, explained very meticulously. Through Harmony's explanations, Lin understood the specific rules inside the dungeon hall and the various functions. Finally, Harmony asked Lin if he had any more questions. Lin's only question was about how to obtain contribution points. Harmony explained that there weren't many ways to earn them. Participating in trials organized by the Academy was one way, and completing the Academy's assigned missions was another. In the mission center located in the dungeon hall, some missions were posted by the Academy, and completing them would earn contribution points. However, such missions were in high demand, and usually completed soon after being posted. Lin checked the mission center, and indeed, Several tasks were assigned by the Academy. However, the contribution points awarded for completing the tasks were minimal. They were usually two or three points, and the highest one was only ten points. Considering he needed one thousand points to join the Creator's Academy, this could take a long time. Just at that moment, Lin's communicator rang. He saw a message informing him that he had received fifty contribution points. Another message was from Oliver. And after connecting, an excited voice came through. 
Oliver delivered the news that had earned 20 contribution points, and Tao Tao had earned 30 contribution points, which had made her very ecstatic. Upon hearing Lin received 50 points, Oliver said that Lin indeed deserved the highest points. He thanked Lin again and said that if there were more trial missions, he would definitely want to team up with Lin. He jokingly said he wanted to cling to Lin and be carried by Lin forever. Oliver excitedly spoke a lot before ending the call. Harmony was already stunned on the side. To think one could get 50 contribution points from a single trial mission was unimaginable. Contribution points were extremely hard to come by. It wasn't just Harmony. The several people nearby were also stunned. What kind of trial mission could award 50 contribution points? They had also done trial missions before, usually receiving around 5 or 10 points. Perhaps with exceptionally outstanding performance, one might get 20 points. Receiving 50 points at once was unheard of, unless it was those high-level trial missions after the Second Awakening. Some people felt Lin was bluffing, since, after all, Lin didn't seem to be of a high level. They thought the two were just boasting. Lin didn't mind the whispers around him and thanked Harmony. Harmony quickly shook her head to say, You're welcome, and then wished him luck. Lin went to the crystal ball and examined the dungeon requirements. Entry was for levels between 15 and 19. Entering the dungeon cost 10 points, and refreshing the dungeon cooldown cost 40 points. The current dungeon record was 58 minutes, and no one had broken it in three years. The second place record was 1 hour 17 minutes, almost 20 minutes slower. Lin paid the 10 points and chose to teleport into the dungeon at nightmare difficulty. Seeing Lin enter a low-level dungeon, the crowd in the dungeon hall instantly erupted into chatter. Some had actually thought Lin was a high-level pro, but it turned out he was just a noob under level 20. Recalling the 50 contribution points they just heard about, they all laughed, assuming he was indeed bragging. However, some people saw Lin chose nightmare level and was going alone and thought to themselves that Lin would get scared and leave after just a few minutes. However, Harmony felt that Lin wasn't talking nonsense. Upon entering the dungeon, Lin found himself in an ancient forest. The forest seemed ominous, and from within, the roars of beasts would occasionally be heard. The trees were of strange shapes. Lin summoned a large number of skeletal warriors and checked his level. He was still about 70% short of the experience needed for level 18. The summoned skeletal warriors went on to find and kill monsters on their own, rushing into the mutated forest with the unique sound of crackling bones. They dashed and crashed like tigers among sheep. Soon, Lin received system notifications, killing mutated bears and gaining 6,000 experience and five beast skins. Notifications soon flooded his screen. His experience steadily increased. Lin continued deeper into the forest, letting skeletal warriors clear the weaker mobs along the way, while he planned to go directly for the dungeon's boss. Soon, he came across a sizable pond, within which a huge shadow seemed to be lurking. A monstrous, turtle-like creature with a colossal body crawled out from the water. It had a heavy shell covering its entire body, resembling spike armor. Its mouth opened to reveal a row of sharp fangs. Lin detected that this was a mutated turtle. This boss had 4,000 strength and 7,000 vitality, and its vitality was exceptionally high, surpassing the skeletal warriors, even higher than a level 24 mermaid queen. Such high vitality signified tremendous HP and defense. While Lin was checking the attributes of the mutated turtle, the skeletal warriors had already surrounded it. Swords fell on the turtle shell, making iron striking sounds. The turtle bit the skeletal warriors fiercely with its teeth, and its long tail whipped them like a whip. The difference in sizes between them was immense, and when the skeletal warriors were hit by its tail, they were sent flying, even though they didn't suffer much damage, the massive force still had a noticeable effect. The boss used a skill super defense, and a vortex shield appeared around it, further increasing its vitality stats. The skeletal warriors jumped on it, continually striking the turtle shell with their swords. The attacks caused merely any damage. Even using a rampage strike couldn't break its defense. Lin finally understood why the record for this dungeon hadn't been broken for three years. Lin suddenly realized where the problem lay. If physical damage couldn't harm the boss, 
then he would use magical attacks. Flames suddenly appeared in the palm of his hand. Skill. Soul flame. A flame also appeared above the mutated turtle's head. The flame swiftly penetrated into its body. The previously immobile mutated turtle started to struggle intensely, bursting into earth-shattering screams. Lin ordered the skeletal warriors to overturn the turtle. Seizing the opportunity, red light emitted from the swords of the skeletal warriors, and their rampage strike skill was activated. They attacked its stomach simultaneously. Soon, the skeletal warriors finally killed the boss. System notification. Killed mutated turtle. Experience gained 150,000, while receiving two bronze-level gears and a low-level monster core. Lin collected the dropped items and checked his experience, realizing that his experience had increased by 35% from this dungeon. He figured that if he ran it once more, he should be able to level up. The moment Lin successfully killed the mutated turtle, a bell suddenly rang out through the dungeon hall, the sound echoing throughout the entire hall. People started pouring in. Everyone surrounded the crystal ball, which was radiating a brilliant light, capturing everyone's gaze. A brand new record had appeared on it. Everyone in the hall was shocked. They couldn't believe that the record for the mutated forest was cleared by a level 17 individual, and it only took 35 minutes. Among the murmurs, Lin appeared at the entrance of the dungeon. Lin also received a notification. Because he refreshed the dungeon record, he earned 1,000 points and 5 contribution points. While noting that this reward was a one-time reward for each dungeon, however, Lin was still very pleased to receive contribution points. Everyone looked at Lin, who was standing at the entrance of the dungeon. They didn't know what to say. Those who initially doubted him also swallowed their words, wondering how he managed to clear it solo and break the record. Lin looking at another dungeon, the Spider Lair, it was a level 20 dungeon, and entry required levels 18 to 20. Lin felt a bit regretful. This meant he would need to clear the mutated forest once more. Lin was surrounded by a group of people, all chattering and whispering. Seeing Lin walk back from the entrance of the spider lair, someone immediately realized that the spider lair required level 18, and Lin was only level 17. Lin once again approached the entrance of the mutated forest and chose to pay points to remove the cooldown time. He chose the nightmare level again, and about 20 minutes later, Lin appeared at the dungeon entrance, and this time he had finally reached level 18. When everyone surrounded the crystal ball, they discovered that Lin had broken his own record again, but this time he cleared it in just 24 minutes and 32 seconds. The onlookers were perplexed about how Lin managed to achieve this. The previous record was set by a perfectly coordinated five-person party and had stood unbroken for three years. Yet, unexpectedly, a newcomer had shattered it by soloing. Among the discussions from the crowd, Lin had already proceeded to the adjacent dungeon. Level 20 dungeon, Spider Lair. The record for this dungeon was one hour and 12 minutes. Looking at the dungeon record, which similarly hadn't been broken in three years, Lin wondered if it had been set by the same five people. Regardless, he was in great need of contribution points, so he would have to break their record once more. He chose Nightmare Difficulty and entered the dungeon. The spider lair was exceptionally dim. Lin held the soul flame for some extra light. Lin managed to get a rough glimpse of his surroundings. The area was surrounded by rock walls with small holes filled in them and many spider webs above. The sound of the wind carried the noise of spiders crawling. Lin summoned the skeletal warriors and then commanded them to search along the passage. Through the skeletal warrior, Lin obtained a lot of information. The environment inside the spider lair was very complicated and extremely tortuous. The skeletal warriors spread out, running through the caves. A map, continuously expanding and generating, appeared in Lin's mind. The whole lair was full of countless caves, each connected to another. Some caves even had several exits. Like a gigantic maze, the skeletal warriors also gradually encountered enemies and were attacked almost every few steps they took. This would delay Lin's advance for quite a while. Lin moved deeper into the cave along the path that had already been cleared. Seeing the small spiders above his head, although they had very low attributes, they were everywhere. The soul flame, 
constantly burning in Lin's palm, was released towards the charging small spiders. The flame fell onto the group of small spiders, instantly killing hundreds of them. Lin was swamped with hundreds of notifications. Each small spider only gave 500 experiences, but in total, the experience was equivalent to 20 elite monsters of the same level. Then, turning his head, he saw a skeletal warrior covered with small spiders. The small spiders were biting the skeletal warrior with their teeth. The skeletal warrior started taking damage. The damage wasn't high, but it was fast. The HP of the skeletal warrior was slowly decreasing. Lin planned to recall this skeletal warrior back to the summoning space. However, he found that he could not recall it because the small spiders were crawling on it. Lin decided to use corpse explosion to deal with these small spiders. During the intense explosion, the small spiders on the skeletal warrior were wiped out completely. Lin, using corpse explosion to advance, saw his experience soaring in rocket speed. Realizing that this place is a good spot for a grinding experience, it can't be wasted. Breaking the record is no longer the priority for this run. Leveling up is the first concern. Ten minutes later, Lin found the boss of this dungeon, a level 21 Spider King. Compared to the previous mutated turtle, this boss had more strength and faster but had lower vitality. The giant spider was at least 10 meters tall. Eight spider legs spread out like giant pillars. Lin held the soul flame with a hundred skeletal warriors ready to attack behind him. Outside the dungeon hall, time passed second by second. People began to doubt whether Lin could really solo clear the spider's lair. An hour later, Lin still had not come out. Inside the dungeon, Lin glanced at his experience, and it had already reached 80% of level 18. One run of the dungeon had increased his experience by 80%. Since it was his first time, he completed it under unfamiliar conditions. He was delayed too much by the small spiders, and finally cleared it in one hour and 32 minutes, but didn't break the record. After killing the Spider King, he gained 190,000 experience points and a silver-grade spider dagger. Harmony looked at the time. It had been an hour and a half, and Lin had not yet come out. She was worried that something might have happened to him, but Lin appeared at the dungeon entrance. Harmony was glad to see Lin and asked him if he had cleared the dungeon, then quickly comforted him, saying it was okay even if he didn't, as there were too many spiders in that dungeon and it would be tough for one person to clear it. Lin replied that he did clear it. Harmony saw Lin was unharmed, and having cleared the dungeon, she was slightly shocked, but also breathed a sigh of relief. Seeing how he handled it with ease, it seemed this was not his limit. Lin happened to have a question to ask Harmony. He asked her if she knew which dungeons gave more experience. Harmony thought for a while and said that among dungeons below level 25, Spider's Lair gives the most experience. Lin calculated in his mind. The experience in Spider's Lair was triple that of the mutated forest, but the clearing time was somewhat long. However, the time he spends on this Spider's Lair run would be enough to clear the mutated forest four times. However, if Lin continues to grind in the mutated forest, he would need to refresh the cooldown time, which would consume points. Lin asks, Is there any dungeon that's quick to grind and has high experience? Harmony thinks for a while. Suddenly, she suggests that Lin could team up with others to go to the Tyrant Desert, one of the large-scale dungeons. The Tyrant Desert dungeon is a level 25 large-scale dungeon, but since 40 people can party up, the minimum entry level was level 20. Also, many high-level professionals choose to carry lower-level folks to earn points. Lin started to brainstorm. The task White Divine assigned to him also requires level 20. He wonders, once he reaches level 20, he can solo this large-scale dungeon. Lin thanks Harmony again, and then turns around to continue entering the spider lair. His priority is to level up to 20 quickly. He uses points to refresh the dungeon entry and sees thousands of little spiders inside. Lin summons his skeletal warriors and begins to grind. White Divine and some upper echelons watching the replay. White Divine begins to explain Lin's accomplishments. A tall and robust white-haired old man named Meng Anwen, stroking his beard, gives Lin very high praise. He doesn't like the people from the Sakura Empire very much, so seeing them getting their ass kicked made him quite pleased. A middle-aged man, 
Hong Shan, is the principal of the Hidden Dragon Squad. He is not pleased that his squad is being outperformed by a newcomer who just finished the exam and hasn't even attended a single class yet. Meng Anshan asks White Divine what he thinks of Lin's talent. White Divine says Lin has amplifying talents, but as to how much specifically, White Divine says it is Lin's private and secret matter, which Lin should keep to himself. Meng Anshan is very pleased with Lin's performance in this trial, and White Divine also believes Lin has a promising future, not to mention his sister has already joined the Creator's Academy. From their conversation, it appears Lin's sister is being taught by someone they both respect highly. They both smiled and discussed that the people trained by that person have all ended up being the most elite members of the human race, and that person has very high standards. Nonetheless, they all think Lin will also catch his eye. The people in the room have high hopes for this pair of siblings. Returning to the spider lair, over a hundred skeletal warriors are attacking the spider king. This time Lin didn't choose to kill all the spiders, but he cleared the level much faster. As he expected, the bells in the hall ring and everyone discusses whether the newcomer has broken another record. People are getting more and more interested in Lin's profession, thinking that he might have talents in addition to his necromancer profession. Jacob also arrives at the hall. Talent profession? He just got lucky. A jealous voice resounds. Looking in the direction of the voice, hundreds of eyes fall on Jacob. Someone raises a question. Why would he say that? Jacob answered with disdain. He is just a normal student who just finished the exam, relying on some connections with White Divine, who knows what powerful treasure he got. Otherwise, how could a person alone clear the nightmare dungeon? He gave a thumbs down. As soon as he finishes speaking, someone immediately retorted, What's wrong with being a normal student? Can't normal students break records? Some recognize Jacob as from the Hidden Dragon Squad, and scorning the normal students, saying the Hidden Dragon Squad are just people who started early, they all have a long road to go, and who knows who will be powerful in the future. Jacob's words immediately cause arguments among the students. The normal students explode in anger. These normal students, who have gained approval from the academy, enter the dungeon hall. They are all considered outstanding students. No one likes to be looked down upon. At this moment, Lin appears in front of the dungeon entrance. The sound of intense arguments reached his ears, and for a moment he was confused, not knowing what had happened. Looking at Lin's record, 47 minutes, almost half an hour faster than the previous record. Someone immediately informs Lin that someone is slandering him, pointing at Jacob. Lin followed the finger and looked at Jacob. Oh, it's this clown again. Lin questioned. What is it with Jacob again? Jacob is somewhat panicked but says that Lin is nothing without White Divine's backing. Even as a national top scorer, Lin is worthless in his eyes. Lin finally understands what's going on. He looks at Jacob with a hint of murderous intent in his eyes, telling him he has tolerated him enough times. Jacob is taken aback by Lin's gaze but still acting tough, saying, who do you think you are, thinking I would fear you? Looking at Lin's eyes, he couldn't help but shudder. Jacob thinks to himself that Lin's eyes are frightening as if he has killed someone before. Lin ignores him, turns around, and re-enters the spider lair dungeon. Jacob is nothing but a clown to him. He doesn't plan to waste his time on him. Lin stepped into the spider lair dungeon once again. Lin silently observed his level and current experience. He was on the verge of leveling up and would require just one more run to level up. After defeating the Spider King, Lin finally reached level 20. However, considering the requirement to join the Creator's Academy was level 30, he felt he still had a long way to go. Reaching level 20 was just the beginning. Leveling up would only get tougher. Lin wondered if his abilities would evolve again, remembering the transformations at level 10. A quick glance at his skills and attributes confirmed his expanded summoning space of 200. Yet, Soul Flame, Corpse Explosion, and Slow Curse remained mostly unchanged. However, a newfound excitement bubbled within him as he could now summon Silver Skeletal Warriors. Upon reaching level 20, the Skeletal Warriors had upgraded from Bronze Level to Silver Level. Lin immediately summoned a silver level skeletal warrior, only to find that it now required 500 spirit points. 
Suddenly, a silver-armored skeletal warrior stood before him. It was slightly bigger than the bronze level and radiated a silvery gloss. The large sword in its hand had also become sharper, no longer rusty and ragged as before. The attributes of the silver level skeletal warrior were exceptionally high, with all four attributes astonishingly reaching 4,000. Its attribute could even compare to the most dungeon boss at Lin's level. Lin was also surprised to see its skills had also upgraded. Now the rampage strike could inflict 300% damage to the target. Lin sat down and started brainstorming. If summoning one silver level skeletal warrior requires 500 spirit points, Lin wondered how long it would take to fill his entire summoning space. Reflecting on his somewhat outdated gear, Lin decided to acquire some new equipment. He also planned to sell the gear and equipment he obtained in exchange for some skill scrolls. Lin strode out of the dungeon, causing the bell to echo through the hall. The onlookers were frozen, their eyes glued to the screen displaying Lin's achievements. Leveling up from 17 to 20 in a single day? Soloing two dungeons and smashing records? Impossible! The whispers buzzed around. Lin, oblivious to the astonished murmurs, teleported out and continued his walk towards the bustling exchange area. Reaching the trading post, Lin unloaded his backpack filled with shimmering silver and bronze equipment. The clerk's jaw dropped, and he was surprised to see a level 20 student with a treasure trove of equipment. Lin's plan was straightforward. Sell the gear for gold coins, then buy every basic skill scroll he could get his hands on. The clerk hesitantly inquired if Lin was sure to sell all silver equipment. Didn't he need this silver equipment himself? Lin had just reached level 20. He was precisely at the right level to use silver equipment. Lin shook his head, thought to himself, he indeed needed new equipment, but these ordinary silver ones were of little use to him at the moment. The staff member shared that the academy had a special store where treasures traded for points outshone those sold for mere gold coins. Lin's curiosity was piqued, and he followed the staff member into the room. The staff told Lin to browse slowly while he went to sell Lin's equipment. A longsword caught Lin's attention. It was made by a craftsman named Zhang Ti, and to Lin's surprise, it was part of a gear set, seemingly a spiritual set as well. It had no skill bonuses, only the attribute of plus 400 spirits. Among silver-grade weapons, the spirit longsword was somewhat unconventional. For instance, a top-grade silver staff would increase spirit by 200 and amplify mage skills by 15%, offering more practical utility than this spirit sword. Most mages wouldn't choose it. Although the equipment here was excellent, a full set would likely cost tens of thousands of points, which ordinary first-year students couldn't afford. Moving to the next shelf, Lin silently spotted a piece of mage armor called Spirit Robe, and a spirit ring both included 200 spirit points, but no skill bonuses. Checking the crafter's name, it was made by the same person and was part of the same gear set. Then, Lin checked the set bonus. The spirit three-piece set further increased spirit by another 800 points when worn together. For other mages, this set wasn't appealing, but useful to Lin as it maximized spirit attribute. Just as Lin was lost in thoughts, pondering the purchase, a sudden uproar echoed behind him, their eyes fixed on a piece of equipment in the center. The murmurs and exclamations painted the air with a hue of curiosity and disdain. Lin strained his ears. Can you believe it? Someone scoffed. A useless piece of gear with not a single attribute, and they dare to price it at 50,000 points. The surrounding crowd nodded in agreement, their faces mirrored disbelief and scorn. And who, in their right mind, would throw away points on such a worthless thing? Another voice chimed in, lacing the air with chuckles and whispers. Lin meandered toward the commotion, his eyes catching sight of a scythe weapon, its presence dominating the wall. Its handle was a deep, ominous black, contrasting sharply with the azure blade. With a staggering price of 50,000 points, it was a treasure seemingly out of reach for most students in the academy. He closely read the weapon's details. It was the Scythe of Thanatos, a growth-type weapon usable from level 1 and one of the necromancy set. While this weapon had no attributes, it came with three skills. Skill Reaper, the Scythe of Thanatos would gain experience as it absorbed souls from the abyssal creatures. 
The second skill, Whisperer of the Deceased, which could summon the Spirit General. The third skill, Spirit General, Army Formation, allows the Spirit General to inspire and arrange the allied undead summons into battle formations. There was a fourth skill, but was currently locked. Lin's gaze was ensnared by the scythe, his heart thrumming with unspoken excitement. An uncontrollable surge of emotion and desire wells up in his heart. He cannot take his eyes off, observing every detail of this weapon intently, as if he is already holding this weapon in his hands. It seems like this is the arrangement of destiny. This scythe seemed like it was inherently tied to his profession, like it was a weapon exclusively meant for him. In the eyes of others, this attributeless weapon was trash, but perhaps in his hands, this weapon had a new meaning. He thought back to the abyssal demons he had encountered before, and if he could slay them and absorb their souls to level up the weapon. It was exactly what he wanted. The staff had just converted Lin's trove of silver equipment into a cascade of basic skill scrolls. Lin pulled out his card, informing the staff he wanted to buy the scythe on the wall. The staff blinked in disbelief, his voice laced with concern, questioning if Lin was certain about the purchase. He thought Lin had misread the price. Lin shook his head, assured him he hadn't, preparing to pay by card. After swiping, the staff realized that Lin had 130,000 points on his card, more than enough to purchase this scythe. Lin, cradling the scythe, exited the exchange under the watchful, bewildered eyes of the staff. This scythe, who knew how long it had waited in the exchange, had finally found its master. Returning to his dorm, Lin first stowed away the scythe. There was no opportunity to seek abyssal demons for now. He planned to awaken some new skills with the scrolls first. Lin silently took out a basic skill scroll, subsequently activating it. The scroll transformed into a sphere of light, enveloping Lin. Moments later, the light dispersed. The first scroll had failed as an expected outcome since it wasn't a guaranteed thing. Lin picked up another scroll, and the sphere of light illuminated once more transforming into a streak of radiance that burrowed into his body. Acquired skill, skeleton armor. Its description was as follows. Skeletal armor summons a skeletal armor providing 100 points of vitality and defense and simultaneously increases both the user and summoned creature's resistance to elemental attacks by 10% for a duration of five minutes. This skill can also be applied to others. This was a defensive skill compensating for Lin's only weakness. Under the talent amplification, this skill could grant Lin 1,000 points of vitality and defense and resistance to elemental attacks by 50%. Lin silently raised his palm and used the newly acquired skill, and not long after a layer of white armor composed of bones covered his body. Lin could move freely, the armor did not hinder his movements. Moreover, the armor was as light as a feather. If he didn't see it with his own eyes, he wouldn't even feel it. After a brief test, a smile appeared at the corner of Lin's lips. He was happy with the new skill. He then activated other skill scrolls again. Most of them failed. As more skills he obtained, the failure rate of the skill scrolls also increased. Soon, another sphere of light enveloped Lin just like before. Skill acquired. Summon Skeletal Mage. The skill simply read as Summon Skeletal Mage summons a black iron level skeletal mage. Lin immediately used the skill. A small black vortex appeared beside Lin, and subsequently, a skeletal mage walked out. The black iron level skeletal mage was tattered all over, reminding Lin the first time he had summoned his first skeletal warrior. Lin checked the skeletal mage's attributes. The base attributes were not high, and after talent amplification, besides 300 points in spirit, other attributes were only 100, but it also had a skill, Bursting Flame. The skill inflicts fire elemental damage to the target. The damage is determined by the Skeletal Mage's spirit points. The Black Iron Skeletal Mage, only at level 1, didn't seem impressive, but it provided Lin's skeletal army with a means of long-range attack. As long as he could level up this skill, the Skeletal Mage would become increasingly powerful. Finally, Lin had used up all the basic skill scrolls. Although he only acquired two skills, he was quite pleased. He once again entered meditation to recover. Early next morning, Lin decided it was the moment to seek White Divine and inquire about the mission. 
Upon arriving at White Divine's office, White Divine inquired if there was anything Lin needed. Lin calmly replied that he had reached level 20. White Divine, who was enjoying his early morning tea, showed a slight surprise. White Divine was quite surprised to hear Lin reaching level 20 in just one day. This was even faster than White Divine back in his days. White Divine smiled, thinking to himself that these two siblings are truly something else. White Divine stayed silent for a while. Then with a smile, he said the mission was quite simple. He needed Lin to retrieve something for him. White Divine told Lin that within the dungeon hall, there was a large 40-person dungeon raid named the Tyrant Desert. Lin's task was to enter the Tyrant Desert and bring back the heart of the Tyrant. The Tyrant Desert was a large-scale, level 25 dungeon, allowing up to 40 people to team up, and Lin should understand the difficulty himself. White Divine gave Lin three days to bring back the heart of the Tyrant. If successful, White Divine promised to arrange a primary cooldown amulet for Lin. Lin nodded, saying he understood the task. Before entering the dungeon hall, he had a strong urge for the cooldown amulet. But now, he could simply spend some points in the dungeon hall to reset the cooldown time, so it seemed that there was no need for the cooldown amulet. White Divine noticed the look in Lin's eyes and couldn't help but reveal a mysterious smile as if he saw through Lin's thoughts. White Divine patiently explained to Lin that the function of the cooldown amulet was immense, something the dungeon hall couldn't compare with. Although there were many dungeons in the dungeon hall, they weren't the best ones, and there were no top-level dungeons. Some top-level dungeons even had a cooldown time of up to a month. That's when the cooldown amulet would come in handy. Lin felt that a primary cooldown amulet probably couldn't be used in top-level dungeons. But White Divine said that all advanced cooldown amulet is upgraded from the lowest tier ones. Once Lin completes the mission, not only he will give Lin a primary cooldown amulet, but also teach him the method to upgrade the cooldown amulet. Lin hadn't expected that cooling amulets could be upgraded, but he was looking forward to it. Lin accepted the task. Before leaving, White Divine patted Lin's shoulder explaining that he was given three days because the Academy would be holding the opening ceremony in three days, and White Divine hoped that Lin would not be late. Lin nodded, bowed, and said his farewells, and then left the room. Meng Anwen came out from behind the door and looked at White Divine, noticing that he seemed very interested in this youngster. White Divine, with a smile, told Meng Anwen that he was more and more satisfied as he observed Lin. This young man was calm and composed, exactly to his liking. He then informed Meng Anwen about the task he had given to Lin. Meng Anwen thought that, given Lin's character, he would likely not spend time forming a 40-member raid party and would surely go solo. Just thinking of a level 20 student soloing a large-scale dungeon made the corners of Meng Anwen's mouth twitch slightly, remembering that White Divine had done the same when he was young. He then laughed and mentioned that White Divine, at level 30, entered the Tyrant Desert alone and rolled out from it in a very embarrassing manner. White Divine coughed awkwardly a couple of times and looked out of the window again, stating that Lin was much stronger than he was back in his day. At the grand entrance of the dungeon hall, the atmosphere was still lively and bustling. The arrival of Lin immediately drew the attention of many. As he walked toward the crystal ball, all the students inside the dungeon hall were wondering which dungeon Lin was going to challenge next. Lin slowly approached the entrance to the Tyrant Desert Dungeon and noticed that the current dungeon record was held by the Flying Dragon 40-member squad. It was completed in 16 hours, 45 minutes, and 18 seconds, four years ago. Lin knew that the Flying Dragon squad should be on the same level as the Hidden Dragon squad. At this moment, Harmony approached Lin from behind. Lin greeted her, and Harmony asked if he was looking at the information for the Tyrant Desert Dungeon. Harmony looked at Lin and thought, Lin had already fought in so many dungeons yesterday. Why doesn't Lin take a break? Lin had some questions in his mind and told Harmony that he needed the Heart of the Tyrant, an item found in the Tyrant Desert Dungeon. Harmony explained in detail, that the heart of the tyrant is an item that only drops from the final boss in the tyrant desert dungeon.
It is the primary ingredient for crafting the boss jewelry, the tyrant necklace. The heart of the tyrant only drops once a year, and it had already been two years since the last one dropped. Harmony looked at Lin again, asking if he was really going to challenge the tyrant desert. Lin was just at level 20, and where were his teammates? A few seconds later, she covered her mouth in surprise. Could Lin possibly be planning to tackle the large-scale dungeon solo? Harmony spoke with concern. Informing Lin that this dungeon is extremely difficult, Harmony knew Lin was strong, but she also didn't want to see him get hurt. Lin sincerely thanked Harmony. Generally, people wouldn't share so much. Lin smiled and told her not to worry. As he was about to enter, a haughty voice suddenly sounded from behind, telling them not to block the way. Lin, with quick reflexes, pulled Harmony aside. A knight in full armor with a menacing look walked over. If not for Lin's swift action, he might have bumped into Harmony. Many people followed behind him. The leading knight was very tall, and most of the people were clad in golden-tier equipment. He ignored Lin and Harmony walking straight in front of the entrance, and then proudly raised his hands, loudly telling his party members and everyone present in the dungeon hall that they, the Hundred Mile Squad, were going to conquer the Tyrant Desert Dungeon today and were sure to set a new record. Dozens echoed loudly, and their morale was high. The knight told his team to get ready and that no mistakes were allowed. Lin watched them, thinking that he had to act quickly. Then, he walked into the dungeon entrance. Suddenly, the entire dungeon hall burst into excitement. Very few believed that Lin could solo the dungeon. Most thought it was a bit risky. The leading knight noticed Lin and looked at him disdainfully. A level 20 dares to enter the tyrant desert? Clearly a fool who knows nothing about large-scale dungeons. As the people in the dungeon hall focused their attention on the newbie rather than on them, there was a moment when all the members of the Hundred Mile Squad felt somewhat embarrassed. Noticing the shift in morale, the knight knew he couldn't wait any longer. He shouted loudly, Ignore that reckless newbie! Everyone, prepare to enter the dungeon! Inside the dungeon, hot winds blew, whipping up vast clouds of yellow sand. The burning sun overhead, with scorching sunlight, and the continuously rising temperature all indicated the harshness of the environment. Considering this was a large-scale dungeon, and the record stood at almost 17 hours, Lin surmised its map must be immensely large. With the sun directly overhead not moving a single bit, offering no directional guidance, Lin couldn't discern his location. He had no choice but to find his own way. Without wasting any time, hordes of skeletal warriors began to rise from the ground, sprinting in all directions. A map simultaneously formed in his mind. Seizing this moment, Lin calculated that entering a large dungeon required 500 points and a reset required 2,000 points. His remaining 80,000 or so points wouldn't last long at this rate. As he contemplated this, a warning from one of the skeletal warriors jolted him. The skeletal warrior has encountered an enemy. Out of the desert sands, a withered branch suddenly sprang up and entangled a skeletal warrior. Following that, a massive tree burst out from the sand. The tree stood tall at ten meters, with innumerable dry branches. As soon as it emerged, it began whipping the skeletal warriors furiously. It was a level 25 super-enhanced elite monster, the Desert Ghost Tree, with exceptionally high attributes. Lin marveled at its stats, thinking that the large-scale dungeons truly stood out, where even a regular monster could rival boss-level monsters in other dungeons. If it weren't for the recently upgraded silver-level skeletal warriors, dealing with the tree would have been somewhat strenuous. Several silver-level skeletal warriors were incessantly chopping away. Soon, a system prompt appeared. Killed level 25 Desert Ghost Tree, XP gained 300,000. Not only were its attributes boss level, but so were the experience points it gave. If killing one granted 300,000 experience points, what about all the other monsters inside the dungeon? Lin might have just stumped onto a true heaven of experience. Lin, after all, didn't know how dangerous this dungeon really was. For safety's sake, Lin summoned skeletal armor and the scythe of Thanatos. He ordered the skeletal warriors to continue exploring in all directions while he followed the paths they had traversed. Two hours later, standing on a sand dune, 
Lin saw an oasis. The appearance of an oasis in the desert inevitably signified danger. This could very likely be where most of the monsters congregated. Just as a skeletal warrior rushed to the edge of the oasis, a multitude of scorpion-like creatures suddenly leaped out of the sand. Each giant scorpion was over two meters tall, and including the tail, exceeded five meters in length. Their tails bore massive venomous stingers, making them appear very ferocious and horrifying. Lin remained completely calm, standing on the dune and commanding his skeletal warriors. Employing a detection spell, he found these were level 25 giant oasis scorpions, their attributes comparable to the previous ghost tree. After several minutes of battle, the skeletal warriors finally ended the fight with a rampage strike. The system prompted, Killed level 25 giant oasis scorpion, XP gained 300,000. More giant oasis scorpions were already approaching. From afar, Lin saw some fruits hanging on the trees. He then summoned all the skeletal warriors, having one to grab the fruits while the rest provided cover. Quickly, the skeletal warriors brought the fruit to Lin. Lin observed the fruit carefully, wondering if this very fruit was the reason why the giant scorpion had gathered here. He checked the information of the fruit. It was a desert fruit, which could rapidly restore a substantial amount of spirit points when consumed, but would become ineffective five minutes after being picked. Lin took a bite and found the taste quite pleasant. His spirit points had already been consumed by more than half, but after eating the desert fruit, his spirit points began to recover rapidly. Seeing the tree full of fruits, Lin had a good feeling about this. He immediately summoned skeletal mages. This oasis became an excellent location for Lin to level up his skills. Lin began to summon more skeletal mages. After his spirit points were all used up, he'd consume one desert fruit and repeat the process. Skeletal mages kept appearing and quickly disappearing. He hoped to level up his newly obtained summon skill to level 20 here, so he could summon silver level skeletal mages. Three hours later, Lin's summoning speed had slowed down. Only a few desert fruits were left, and he had successfully leveled up his skeletal mage summoning skill to level 20. Lin inspected the attributes of the skeletal mage, and his eyes shone with satisfaction. Standing before him was no longer the initial black iron level skeletal mage, but a silver level ice element skeletal mage. The mage had spirit points as high as 8,000, but its other attributes were at 2,000. The skeletal mage was covered in ice, and cold light shimmered in its bony hands. It also had a new skill, Ice Storm. Allow the skeletal mage to create an ice storm within a certain range, inflicting ice elemental damage to all targets in range. The damage will scale with the skeletal mage's spirit points. Eating the last few desert fruits, Lin continued to summon several silver-level skeletal mages. The attributes of the summoned skeletal mages were the same, but the elements are random. And in the end, he summoned fire, wind, and thunder element skeletal mages. The fire and thunder element skeletal mages dealt single-target damage, while the ice and wind element skeletal warriors had AoE skills. Looking at the scorpions ahead that had just slaughtered all the black iron skeletal mages, it was time for the skeletal mages to take their revenge. Four types of skeletal mages, each wielding a different elemental power, channeled the spells in their palms. Together, they launched a wave of assaults on the desert scorpions. In no time, with the combined power of the skeletal warriors and mages, the desert scorpions in the oasis were quickly annihilated, leaving only the charred remains littering the ground. Lin picked up and savored the last piece of desert fruit. In this tyrant's desert, a large-scale dungeon meant for a 40-person raid, he could effortlessly clear it alone. Now with 130 skeletal warriors and 70 skeletal mages, a grand total of 200 skeletal army is now under his command. Lin felt that he could easily bulldoze through any dungeon of his level. Nightmare difficulty? It was a walk in the park. Even Hell's difficulty posed no challenge. Lin ventured deeper into the dungeon. Taking advantage of this moment, he rapidly grinded experience points, working in tandem with his skeletal army. Using his corpse explosion skill continuously, the creatures in the dungeon were quickly wiped out. Their monster's body can be seen vanishing into the ground. But he couldn't overuse this skill. He had to conserve some spirit points for emergencies. Time flew by, 
and the screen incessantly displayed monster kill notifications. The entire oasis became quiet, devoid of any monsters. Lin was slightly disappointed. How wonderful would it have been if these mobs would keep respawning? However, now that his skeletal mages had advanced to the silver level, it was time to hunt down the dungeon's final boss. The longer he delayed, the lower his chances of obtaining the tyrant's heart. Suddenly, Lin felt the ground trembling beneath him. Cracks started to form, spewing out clouds of dust and debris. Sensing imminent danger, he swiftly summoned his skeletal armor and scythe of Thanatos. From within, a large horde of soldier ants were stirring, seemed to be awakened only by Lin's intrusion. Hundreds of soldier ants roused simultaneously, their bodies quivering and emitting shrill cries, charging straight for Lin's direction. With a nimble leap, Lin observed the mass of soldier ants rushing in one direction. Without hesitation, he followed behind. Soon, he stepped into a large underground cavern. As he rounded a corner, he was ambushed by a swarm of flying ants. One of the flying ants hurtled straight for him, crashing aggressively against his skeletal armor. Summoning his skeletal army in response, one of the skeletal mages conjured a tornado, sending a flying ant spiraling. The hum of wings grew louder, and suddenly, another swarm of flying ants appeared. The skeletal warriors and mages reacted swiftly, immediately engaging with the flying ants. Lin took the high ground, leaving the skeletal mages to continue fighting off the flying ants while commanding the skeletal warriors to search for the queen ant. In an instant, Elemental chaos ensued, with spells flying haphazardly. The cavern was filled with resounding booms, radiating with prismatic lights. As the skeletal warriors charged the soldier ants, many ants were already slain or grievously wounded. The skeletal warriors continued their relentless search for the queen ant. Before long, Lin received a notification. The skeletal warriors had located the queen's lair. Quickly arriving at the location of the ant queen, Lin saw a colossal ant appear before his eyes. This ant stood at a staggering ten meters tall, its body bulky and seemingly cumbersome. Four other giant ants' bodyguards stood beside it. These ants were equally massive, their limbs resembling enormous scythes, looking particularly terrifying. Through his detect skill, Lin checked the attributes of the desert ant queen and her bodyguards. This queen before him was indeed a boss-level monster. Its attributes weren't notably high. The four bodyguard ants, apart from their high vitality points, had quite unimpressive attributes. They possessed a carapace hardening skill, making them nothing but meat shields. The skeletal army gradually assembled, and as Lin sized up the boss in front of him, he felt somewhat bored. He had expected some challenges, but this one seemed unexpectedly weak. The ant queen's wings vibrated, releasing a piercing shriek. This was her first skill, sound wave attack, its dreadful resonance echoing throughout the queen's lair. A silvery light erupted from Lin's skeletal armor, warding off the attack. Both the skeletal warriors and mages were simultaneously struck. It was an indiscriminate area of effect skill with a large range. Thankfully, its power wasn't particularly high, and Lin's skeletal armor successfully defended against it. At Lin's command, the skeletal warriors lunged forward, and the mages at the back immediately unleashed their spells. Obeying Lin's orders, they targeted a single bodyguard ant, then pinned it down, allowing the skeletal warriors to close in. Even though the bodyguard activated its carapace hardening, it couldn't withstand the onslaught of hundreds of skeletons. Soon, Lin saw a system notification. Level 27 bodyguard ant of the Ant Queen was defeated. Experience gained 390,000. Witnessing her bodyguard's death, the Ant Queen unleashed another wing attack, and suddenly, she flapped her wings again. Her massive wings whipped up a furious gust. The gust, akin to a raging storm, surged forth. A multitude of skeletal warriors were sent flying, with the nearest two skeletal warriors getting obliterated instantly. Unexpectedly, the Ant Queen's body began to shrink, curling into a defensive posture. This was the Ant Queen's third skill, curl up. Simultaneously, a translucent membrane enveloped her body. The membrane boasted incredible defensive capabilities, so much so that the skeletal warrior's great words couldn't pierce through. 
Lin recognized this as some sort of limitless defense skill. All skills of this nature have a time limit, and the stronger the attack they face, the shorter their duration. An array of diverse assaults relentlessly bombarded the Ant Queen. Once she curled up, her shrieks never ceased. The piercing screams echoed throughout the ant chamber. Soon, the sound of countless crawling legs filled the chamber. Turning his head, Lin saw swarms of ants rushing from various tunnels. It seemed the Ant Queen had called forth every ant in the chamber with her skill. Witnessing this scene, Lin remained unperturbed, even showing a hint of excitement. Spotting the corpse of a bodyguard ant, Lin triggered corpse explosion. One explosion led to another. The Ant Queen screamed in agony and shortly after, a system notification appeared. Desert Ant Queen defeated. Experience gained 800,000. Two silver grade equipment pieces were acquired, along with Desert Ant Queen's egg and intermediate monster core, inspecting his current level. Lin was just shy of reaching level 21. Holding the Desert Ant Queen's egg in his hand, he mused about the good money this might fetch. Sad that all of the monsters in this area have been cleared out. Reluctantly, Lin left the ant chamber behind, heading toward his next destination. He continued upwards until sunlight greeted him once more. Two hours later, the coolness from underground faded, replaced by the scorching heat from above. Endless stretches of golden sand filled the horizon, seeming infinite. His skeletal warriors tirelessly hunted and killed new creatures that crossed their path. Soon, a massive structure came into view. It resembled a fortress. Surrounding it were rows of huts, meticulously aligned. It almost felt as if it was a military encampment, and even from a distance, countless lion-headed beastmen could be seen bustling about. Hundreds of lion-headed beastmen knelt on one knee fully armed, all awaiting orders from a majestic silver lion seated upon a grand throne. This was the tyrant of the lion tribe. It seemed Lin had found the right place. Atop the city, the wall was blanketed with bowmen from the Desert Lion tribe, whose attributes far surpassed the monsters encountered previously in the Ant Cave. From afar, a military camp was visible, bustling with innumerable beastmen. Inside the camp, there was even a training ground, with troops drilling in formation. Lin also observed peculiar beings within the camp. Creatures with heads akin to lions and bodies fully covered in fur, all donned in armor and standing over three meters tall. They moved with meticulous coordination. Upon checking the attributes, these desert lion tribe warriors were equally powerful. Here, a moment of carelessness might require facing more than ten monsters at once. These were no ordinary monsters. Each one was a super-enhanced elite monster. Even for a forty-man raid party, Battling them would prove very challenging. However, Lin had his legion of skeletons. He summoned his scythe of Thanatos and employed one of the scythe skills, calling forth the spirit general. The enormous spirit general emerged from the ground, and shortly after, Lin summoned the rest of his skeletal army. The spirit general activated a skill named Army Formation. Red sonic waves radiated outward, enveloping the entire skeletal army. The ordinarily disarrayed skeletal soldiers now formed a battle formation under the spirit general's leadership, deploying troops in an orderly manner, and the skeletal warriors launched a charge. Skeletal mages followed closely behind. The bowmen atop the city walls spotted the massive army and immediately sounded the alarm. The gates of the military camp swung open, and an army of over a hundred beastmen surged out. At the same time, arrows rained down from the sky. Numerous bowmen appeared atop the castle. They unleashed a volley of arrows toward Lin's skeletal army. Fire, ice, wind, and thunder. Four elements, four distinct skills dazzlingly burst forth in the sky, blocking all the incoming arrows, then descending upon the emerging lion tribe warriors. Under a focused barrage, several lion tribe warriors immediately fell. Unfortunately, the distance was too far for Lin to utilize corpse explosion. The first clash ensued, with the spirit general leading the skeletal warriors into collision with the lion tribe warriors. Lin commanded the skeletal mages to focus their attack on the city gates, but despite their efforts, the gates remained unbreached, while arrow showers from the lion tribe bowmen atop the walls continued to rain down. 
Had this been a 40-man raid where ordinary professionals were around, casualties would have been significant by now. Only the skeletal warriors, with their incredibly high health points, were able to withstand wave after wave of arrow showers while assaulting the city gates. Gradually, Lin sensed that something was amiss. Where had it gone wrong? Lin pondered carefully and finally understood. This place was a large-scale dungeon, likely requiring teamwork or a specific mechanic to open the gates and encounter the final boss. The castle gate was incredibly sturdy, but Lin did not believe it was impenetrable. Screw the mechanic when you can simply out-DPS it. Lin ordered the skeletal warriors to pile the corpses of the Lion Tribe warriors in front of the gate. Hundreds of Lion Tribe warriors were stacked before the entrance fate. Then Lin silently raised his palm. Boom! With an explosion, the gate shattered vehemently. The skeletal warriors stormed atop the castle walls, slaughtering the Lion Tribe bowmen. When Lin set foot inside the castle, the Lion Tribe warriors and bowmen had all been meticulously eradicated. Along the main road of the castle, the skeletal warriors rapidly advanced. In the heart of the castle, a colossal lion tribe beastman sat on a throne. A crown adorned his head, and a formidable aura emanated from him. He sat there, akin to an invincible emperor. Even when faced with the dense swarm of skeletal warriors, he remained utterly unfazed. Lin cast a detection spell, and immediately, an immense pressure cascaded toward him. This one was far stronger than anything Lin had encountered before. 13,000 points of strength, 8,000 points of agility, 12,000 points of vitality, and three unique skills. Lin knew this isn't going to be easy. Indeed, completely different from any boss I've encountered before, Lin murmured. This was the first time Lin had encountered a boss of this caliber. Though he had anticipated it, witnessing its attributes still unavoidably surprised him. Killing it would truly be no east, the better. My apologies, I'm in a hurry, Lin said. The skeletal warriors had already reached the tyrant, who finally reacted. It abruptly stood, fiercely stomping down with a large foot. With a tremendous boom, the ground cracked, and several nearby skeletons were blasted away. A strength attribute of 13,000 was not to be taken lightly, as two skeletal warriors were killed in an instant. The tyrant stood at least 30 meters tall. The skeletal warriors at its feet were mere black dots, inconspicuous and seemingly irrelevant. More skeletal warriors charged forward, leaping high and landing on the tyrant. One hand clung to the fur on the tyrant's body while their blades madly slashed away. As the tyrant prepared to unleash another skill, the skeletal mages constantly cast theirs, hurling a kaleidoscope of abilities onto the boss. Abilities landed furiously onto the tyrant. Flames generated violent explosions. Bolts of thunder struck down, interrupting the tyrant's skill and causing the tyrant to unleash roars of fury. A gigantic axe materialized in its hands. Swinging the axe horizontally, dozens of skeletal warriors were sent flying. With one whirlwind attack, it instantly obliterated 24 skeletal warriors. Lin observed silently. He didn't know how a 40-man raid party would deal with this tyrant boss, as it was way too powerful. If the skeletal warriors couldn't withstand it, those knights wouldn't last much longer under the tyrant either. A faint light emanated from Lin's palm. Lin used slow curse. A red glow enveloped the tyrant's head. A red shackle appeared above the tyrant, and its speed abruptly diminished. With the speed of the tyrant reduced, the pressure on the skeletal warriors lightened instantaneously. Sensing the change within itself, the tyrant suddenly threw its head back and let out a furious roar. Tyant skill, hellish roar. The roar transformed into a shockwave, spreading out in every direction in an instant. The ground collapsed amidst the resounding rumbles. Lin was also struck by the impact. His skeletal armor barely lasted two seconds before completely shattering. At this moment, the tyrant suddenly leaped high, pouncing towards Lin. Observing this, Lin's expression subtly shifted. If he were hit by this attack, he wouldn't die or even get injured. The damage would be transferred to the skeletal warriors and mages. But Lin was sure that all of his skeletal army would probably sustain massive damage. Lin dodged the strike, and a blue flame ignited within his palm. A spark fell atop the tyrant's head. 
Lin used the skill Soul Flame. The tyrant immediately emitted an earth-shattering scream. Even a boss of this caliber could not bear such an attack that reached directly into its soul. Lin took advantage of this moment to once again reposition, creating distance between himself and the tyrant. The skeletal warriors returned en masse, once again entangling themselves with the tyrant. Dozens of skeletal warriors climbed onto the tyrant, utilizing rampage strikes, while the tyrant, wielding its massive axe, swung and slashed in return. Due to the effects of the slowing curse, the tyrant's speed was more than halved, significantly reducing its threat to the skeletal warriors. Nevertheless, it managed to annihilate several skeletal warriors. One after another, the skeletal mage's skills fell upon the tyrant like a cannonade. Lin also incessantly used soul flame to interrupt the boss's skills. While thinking if his skeletal mages hadn't been upgraded to the silver grade, Lin likely would not have been able to defeat the tyrant, regardless of how the other party might have fought. Lin's strategy was simply to overpower the tyrant. Without doing the mechanics, his skeletal army suppressed the enemy with sheer force. The skeletal warriors ceaselessly hacked away, and the skeletal mages relentlessly cast their skills. Wherever the blade fell, the tyrant's blood sprayed and flesh blurred. Its screams steadily weakened. The soul flame was unceasing, relentlessly falling upon the tyrant. The skeletal mages' spells grew increasingly fierce. The tyrant struggled to counterattack but to little avail. After twenty minutes of combat, the tyrant finally fell within its own castle. System prompt, Tyrant of the Lion Tribe defeated, experience gained two million, obtained three gold grade weapons, and acquired the Tyrant's Heart. Drop cooldown time, one year. The description of the Tyrant's Heart, special item, is essential for crafting the Tyrant Necklace. Lin exhaled a long breath, finally having dealt with it. This had been the most difficult boss he'd ever faced. Looking at the Tyrant's corpse, Lin said the Tyrant deserved his recognition. Lin was enveloped in a soft white glow. After slaying the tyrant and gaining the experience points, he is now level 21. He instinctively checked his attributes, revealing a trace of surprise. The other changes were not significant. Strength, agility, and vitality each increased by 30 points, reaching 330. Spirit increased by 200 points, reaching a total of 1500. The increment compared to before was somewhat enhanced. Lin found that not only himself, but also his newly acquired summoning skeletal mage skill, also leveled up to level 21. The skill seemingly advanced together with his own level. A thought popped into his mind. Could it be that after fully mastering a skill, it would automatically level up matching his own level? This revelation shocked him. If this was the case, Lin needed to max out several skills as soon as possible, for the higher his level, the more difficult to level up these skills. It seemed like he needed to visit the Tyrant Desert again, leveraging the desert fruits to home the rest of his skills. As Lin was engrossed in his thoughts, a commotion erupted from the direction of the dungeon hall. The bells rang, one chime followed by another. Six consecutive chimes rang out. Three chimes represented a new record in a regular dungeon, and six signaled a new record in a large-scale dungeon. Several hundred individuals crammed into the dungeon hall, all eyes riveted to the announcement board. The dungeon hall buzzed with chatter and eager speculation as more players teleported in, making a beeline straight for the hall. An arrogant voice sliced through the buzz, and a group made their entrance. Recognized among them was Mark, the grandson of the dean of the Hundred Mile Squad, his eyes alight with proud gleam. His posse sauntered in with swagger, and he chortled, confident that the record was created by the Hundred Mile Squad. Some murmurs within the crowd suggested another possibility. A lot of people also saw Lin entering the dungeon. Could it be Lin who broke the record? With a frosty voice laden with arrogance, Mark declared, This Lin you speak of, which squad does he belong to? I've never heard of him. What team did he bring into the dungeon? His voice was arrogant. He wondered how dare anyone challenge the Hundred Mile Squad for the record. A subordinate leaned in, whispering into Mark's ear, recounting Lin's accomplishments and how Lin joined the Tyrant Desert, Solo. Solo? Ha 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 ha! Mark exploded into manic laughter. 
soloing a 40-man large-scale dungeon? He nearly rolled on the floor laughing. The spectating crowd, however, cast irked glances toward Mark, countering, Why can't Lin enter a large dungeon alone? Lin is a god-tier professional who consecutively broke two dungeon records doing so. Mark shifted his gaze to the two dungeon's records, settling on the new record emblazoned beside Lin's name. Aware that Lin was only level 20, a potent sneer curled on Mark's lips, dismissing Lin as nothing but a showman. Setting two new records in a low-level dungeon with some luck doesn't prove anything, he declared confidently. This dungeon record will undoubtedly belong to the Hundred Mile Squad. Some people backed him up, especially those from the Hundred Mile Squad, whose smirks mirrored his disdain. At that moment, a brilliant gold light burst forth from the tyrant's dungeon entrance, illuminating the entire dungeon hall. The light settled on the dungeon screen, revealing a message. The tyrant's heart has been obtained, followed by the cooldown time for the next drop. The hall once again erupted into a tumult of excitement. Some whispered about how lucky it was to drop the tyrant's heart, but those who knew what they were talking about shook their heads. It wasn't luck, it was speed. The party must have killed the tyrant within an hour, otherwise the tyrant's heart wouldn't have dropped. Someone commented with an uneasy twinge in his voice. Despite being a fan of Lin, he reluctantly said that it must have been the Hundred Mile Squad who set this record. Mark laughed triumphantly. Well done, splendid. Not only creating a new record, but also acquiring the tyrant's heart. The screen flashed once again. The previous record slid down into second place. A new record officially materialized. Lin, level 21, completion time 14 hours 11 minutes 43 seconds. As Lin's name appeared, a collective stillness enveloped everyone. Mark's laughter froze on his face. His prior arrogance shattered in an instant. It was as if he had plummeted from heaven into hell. He felt an illusion, feeling as though everyone around him was laughing at him. Shame, embarrassment, humiliation, a myriad of emotions surged, bitter and overwhelming. Suddenly, a flash of light blinked before the dungeon entrance, and a figure emerged into view. Lin stepped out from the dungeon, looking around at the sea of faces surrounding him. People circled Lin, disbelieving that he had solo cleared a large-scale dungeon and even shattered the record. Mark, eyes aflame with wrath, advanced towards Lin. So, you are Lin? He questioned. Lin, perplexed, didn't recognize the stranger before him. Nevertheless, his priority was to submit his quest to White Divine. Mark witnessed Lin ignoring him. No acknowledgement whatsoever. Fury flooded him, and his face turned beet red, while onlookers continued to revel in his humiliation, their mockery unrelenting. By tomorrow, this will be all over the academy. The Hundred Mile Squad is sure to gain quite the reputation. Exactly. It serves them right for being so ostentatious, and for their inflated egos. They deserve this. Mark, devoid of any remaining dignity, no longer wished to linger here. Humiliation? discomfort, a desire to weep. As Mark retreated, the crowd in the dungeon hall commenced their chatter about Lin. Solo clearing a large-scale dungeon at level 20, is that something a human can achieve? Is there really a class as powerful as the necromancer? Upon his return, Lin immediately contacted White Divine. White Divine's lazy voice resonated through the communicator, seemingly interrupting his nap. He asked Lin what the matter was. He asked if Lin had trouble finding a team. Lin told the White Divine that he had acquired the tyrant's heart. White Divine, still speaking about how he could recommend people to Lin if needed, suddenly emitted a strange yelp the next moment. He asked Lin to repeat himself. Lin repeated that he had acquired the tyrant's heart. White Divine paused. It had not been long since he assigned the task, White Divine pondered. Rising, he inquired about Lin's whereabouts to which Lin replied that he was in front of his dormitory. Then White Divine ended the call. The communicator vibrated. Lin obtained a new message. New record set in Tyrant's Desert Dungeon, awarded 5,000 points, 30 contribution points, can be claimed only once. Upon seeing the message, Lin allowed himself a slight smile. Indeed, the rewards for large-scale dungeons were quite significant, such a pity that it could only be obtained once. At the dormitory entrance, Lin encountered White Divine. 
Before Lin could say anything, White Divine reached out to grasp Lin, and in a blink, both vanished. Using a teleportation stone, White Divine whisked Lin away. Moments later, Lin found himself outside a quaint courtyard. Positioned atop a mountain, it emanated a serene aura, encircled by bamboo groves that carried refreshing zephyrs upon every gentle sway. Now bathed under the night sky, moonlight cascading down. An elderly man was seated in the middle of the courtyard. The elderly man appeared mild and cultivated, garbed in a long robe, exuding the aura of a legendary scholar. Upon laying eyes on him, Lin instinctively bowed in respect. Taking the initiative to speak, he bowed courteously. Meng Anwen was, like White Divine, a figure renowned throughout the empire. Recognized as one of the mightiest professionals, a divine level formation array grandmaster. Meng An Wan nodded with a gentle smile, inviting them to join him for tea. Lin then took out the tyrant's heart. It bore the semblance of an actual heart, somewhat soft to the touch, appearing as though it were a living entity. Meng An Wan glanced at it, affirming, Indeed, it is the tyrant's heart. White Divine looked towards Lin, wondering if he really soloed the dungeon. Lin nodded. White Divine exhibited a peculiar expression before inquiring, what was his record? Lin answered candidly, a completion time of around 14 hours. Shocks of astonishment graced the faces of both White Divine and Meng Anwen. Such speed was astounding. This implied that Lin's individual combat power might even surpass that of a 40-member raid party. Meng Anwen maintained his composure, showing no particular reaction, saying it was a commendable performance. He then looked at White Divine, reminding him to keep the promises made to Lin. White Divine produced an amulet, tossing it to Lin. Observing the basic cooldown amulet in hand, Lin knew it would hasten his leveling speed. White Divine looked at Lin, asking if he wished to join the Creator's Academy sooner. Lin nodded, but acknowledged the substantial gap in the required contribution points. He now had 90 points, yet the Academy entry demanded 1,000. He barely had one-tenth of the requisite amount. White Divine, with gentle persuasion, inquired, asking if he had heard of the Yuan battlefield. Lin shook his head. White Divine sipped his tea, explaining that the Yuan battlefield contains numerous treasures and opportunities to earn contribution points. The Academy is also stationed there, offering tasks. Completing them also grants contribution points. In essence, if Lin seeks to amass contribution points quickly, the Yuan battlefield is the place to be. Lin's eyes glimmered faintly, promptly agreeing to the proposal. White Divine advised Lin to rest first, and following the school opening ceremony, he would take Lin to the Yuan battlefield. After Lin's departure, Meng Anwen asked White Divine if it was too soon to send him to such a perilous place. White Divine responded that since Lin could solo large-scale dungeons, and at level 20 was on par with many of those who had undergone their second professional transfer. The earlier, the better. Meng Anwen, with a stern demeanor, noted that White Divine did not inform Lin that the Yuan battlefield harbors enemies of the human race and is fraught with many dangers. Upon returning to the dormitory, Lin engaged in battles within the dungeon for over a dozen hours, enduring the scorching sun in the vast desert. Both his body and spirit points were utterly exhausted. He didn't even want to meditate and simply wanted to rest for the night. He had exchanged the basic cooldown amulet from White Divine using the tyrant's heart. He also learned about the existence of the Yuan battlefield and understood how to earn contribution points. Lin had figured out what he needed to do next. In the blink of an eye, Lin fell asleep, breathing steadily. Meanwhile, the dungeon hall was still bustling with activity. People were coming and going in large numbers. Accompanied by flashes of light, one after another, players appeared in the dungeon hall. A total of 40 people emerged from the dungeon, appearing in the hall. I'm back, baby! With an excited shout, the lead knight's face was flushed with the thrill of excitement and pride. And he wasn't the only one. Everyone on the team shared the same exhilarated expression. The bystanders watched as the 40-man, 100-mile squad emerged. The leading knight, seemingly oblivious to the conversations of the passers-by, was brimming with pride all on his own. His gaze swept over the crowd as he proudly announced 
that they had reduced the clear time of the Tyrant Desert Dungeon to 15 hours and 58 minutes, setting a new record. His companions joined in the cheering. The onlookers simply watched and laughed faintly. Those idiots! They thought they broke the record, someone said. Suddenly, someone from the Hundred Mile Squad pointed at the screen and said, Captain, something seems off. The leading knight turned his head to look at the screen. The first thing he saw was the message that the tyrant's heart had been dropped. However, they had not obtained the tyrant's heart. Just as the question arose in his mind, he saw the rankings. Their team was indeed listed, but not in the first place. They were second. The person ranked first was a level 21 player named Lin. The night captain shuddered. He thought of the person who had entered the dungeon just before them. A chill ran up his spine straight to his brain. A single person, level 21, 14 hours. This can't be possible! The leading knight let out a bizarre scream. He found it hard to believe. Their squad had made thorough preparations. The best profession combinations, the finest equipment, and the best shot caller. They had endured countless hardships to slay the boss, squeezing their clear time under 16 hours. Though they hadn't obtained the tyrant's heart, they had after all broken the previous record. This was already a remarkable achievement. Yet all their efforts were suppressed by a single person. The leading knight was in a state of frenzy, unable to accept this reality. The people in the dungeon hall watched them with taunting smiles. Everyone from the Hundred Mile Squad felt a burning shame on their faces. It was truly embarrassing. Some had already lowered their heads in humiliation. The leading knight took a deep breath, calmed himself down, and took one last unwilling look at the screen before leading his squad out of the hall. After sleeping until he naturally woke up, Lin felt great. Once he got out of bed, his spirit points have fully recovered. After eating, Lin activated his teleportation stone and arrived at the dungeon hall. Although White Divine had said that desert fruits were a matter of luck and couldn't be sought after intentionally, Lin still wanted to try his luck. If he could find a desert fruit, he was confident that he could quickly level up the slow curse and skeletal armor skills to their maximum levels. Are you Lin? A voice interrupted Lin's thoughts. Lin looked up to see a man staring at him. He didn't recognize the man. The stranger then said, Senior Mark wants to see you. Come with me. His tone carried an inexplicable arrogance. Lin glanced at him, thinking that this guy seemed a bit off in the head. He walked past him and walked towards the tyrant dungeon. The man's eyes widened as he watched Lin completely ignore him. The man repeated himself again, saying, Senior Mark wants to see Lin. Lin simply glanced at the man. If someone wanted to see him, he should come himself. The man shouted angrily, questioning if Lin knew who Mark was. Lin paid him no mind and proceeded to the Tyrant Desert Dungeon entrance, only to find that there were still nine days left on the cooldown. Resetting the dungeon cooldown and entering would cost 2,500 points. Others noticed Lin's attempt to enter the dungeon and expressed their surprise. There was a buzz of discussion about whether Lin was going to enter the Tyrant Desert again. Many were curious and speculative. Harmony was also among the crowd. Many knew that Harmony was one of the few who could talk to Lin. Some people who had unfinished quests wanted Harmony to ask Lin if he could carry them through the dungeon, promising to pay him with points. Seeing Harmony in a difficult position, those people asserted that they wanted nothing. No equipment, not even materials. All drops would be Lin's only. They just wanted to clear the dungeon. Back at the Hundred Mile Squad, the man conveyed Lin's words to Mark. Mark sat in the academy, frowning. This guy has quite the attitude, he commented coldly, seemingly concluding that Lin had grown arrogant after soloing the Tyrant Desert dungeon once. He dismissed it as a low-level dungeon, stating that Lin didn't understand the changes that occurred in professions after the second profession transfer. A profession that was strong before the second profession transfer could become extremely weak afterward. He believed inviting Lin to meet him was offering him a chance. If Lin was going to be like this, it seemed he needed to be taught a lesson. Mark's arrogance was well known throughout the academy. The embarrassment the Hundred Mile Squad suffered the previous day had already spread throughout the entire academy by morning, 
leaving Mark embarrassed to show himself. He harbored significant resentment towards Lin, wishing to regain his reputation. The best way to do that would be to have Lin join under his command. But Lin declined. Inside the academy, he couldn't really make a move on Lin. Even if his grandfather was the dean of the Hundred Mile Squad, it wouldn't save him. But if they were outside in the wilderness, hey, hey, that would be a different story altogether. Inside the dungeon hall, Harmony, accompanied by a group of people, approached Lin. Harmony briefly explained the wishes of these people, and the crowd nodded, pleading with Lin to carry them through the tyrant desert dungeon to complete their quest. Lin was somewhat surprised and asked what was the quest they were referring to. Harmony explained that it was a dungeon quest issued by the Academy, and if they didn't complete it, they wouldn't be able to join the independent squads. Therefore, they were willing to give up any rewards just to have Lin take them through the dungeon. Lin nodded, mentioning that he was a new student and wasn't familiar with these matters. It was then that everyone realized Lin was actually a new student. The crowd began to express their willingness to pay 1,000 points each. Lin thought it over. After buying the weapon, he didn't have much left, and entering the dungeon himself would cost 2,500 points. If each person paid 1,000 points, he could earn 39,000 in each run. Lin smiled and agreed to carry them, stating the price would be as they suggested, 1,000 points each. However, he had one condition. Upon seeing Lin agreed to carry them, everyone showed a smile, saying that they would listen to whatever Lin said. Lin stated that if they encountered a desert fruit, they were not to compete with him for it. Hearing this, everyone thought of the rare and elusive desert fruit. They didn't really think they would encounter it, so they all nodded in agreement. There were far more than 39 people who wanted Lin to take them through the dungeon, causing a crowd and loud shouting about being chosen. The dungeon hall became noisy until Harmony called for everyone to calm down and form a line. She shouted, If they disturb and annoy Lin, he might not take any of you with him. Hearing this, everyone immediately started to queue up, forming a neat line under a minute. Lin looked at Harmony gratefully, asking if she had completed her quest. Harmony smiled, saying that she had already finished it. Lin nodded, remembering this favor and told her that if she had any tasks and quests to do in the future, she could ask him for help any time. Harmony smiled happily, playfully saying that she hoped Lin wouldn't refuse when the time came. Forty players entered the dungeon, and the tyrant desert remained the same, sand flying everywhere under the scorching sun. Lin asked everyone to follow him. Will a chilling wind, his skeleton army rose from the ground. Although some of the skeletons hadn't fully replenished since the previous losses, it was still substantial. Lin issued a command to search for the desert oasis. Seeing nearly 200 summoned creatures, the group was momentarily stunned, having never witnessed such a large number of summoned creatures before. They soon encountered the first wave of monsters, level 25 desert ghost trees, which were almost instantly killed as they came across them. The skeletal warriors spared no effort in using their skills, and the skeleton mages launched rapid ranged attacks. The monsters were swiftly dealt with, and in just over an hour, they spotted the oasis. Seeing that killing a monster only granted 7,500 experience points, Lin sighed, realizing that leading a group through the dungeon indeed resulted in fewer experience points. However, he took comfort in the significant amount of points he earned planning to slowly grind by himself later on. The skeletal warriors collectively charged toward the oasis. As expected, they were met by a large group of giant desert scorpions. However, the skeletal warriors didn't engage them in combat. Instead, they kited the giant desert scorpions along the water channels of the oasis, running forward. The skeletal warriors controlled their speed to roughly match that of the desert scorpions, the mob chasing them grew larger and larger as more desert scorpions joined the pursuit. The onlookers realized that Lin was kiting the monsters, leading hundreds of them toward the skeletal mages. Just as everyone thought the skeletal mages would use an AOE skill to kill the monsters, they saw a skeletal warrior kill the first desert scorpion. Lin then raised his hand and with a loud boom, 
An explosion resonated. Sand flew everywhere once again. Lin had used the skill corpse explosion. Continuously casting the corpse explosion skill, Lin did not stop even when the desert scorpions were all eliminated. The people watched their experience points increase rapidly, feeling a mix of envy and fear towards Lin's powerful ability. Lin asked them to wait at the current location while he headed towards the ant cave and finished the monsters by himself. The group, left behind, stared at Lin's retreating figure. The group realized that they had progressed this far in just three hours. They found it hard to believe their efficiency, and it would probably be unbelievable if they hadn't witnessed it with their own eyes. Twenty minutes later, the group sat under the shade of palm trees, enjoying the cool area. One person suggested to a few friends that they should try pulling a monster themselves. Seeing how easily Lin dealt with them, they assumed the creatures here couldn't be that challenging. A few of them nodded in agreement, curious to try it out for themselves. After all, their levels were even higher than Lin's. Surely they could handle one monster. However, two minutes later, one of the guys accidentally pulled two desert scorpions at once. The tank raised his shield, preparing to take the aggro, and ordered the healer to start healing. But the group started to panic, realizing the monsters might be more than they could handle. The others watched as two giant desert scorpions charged towards them. Instead of watching the group and laughing at them, all of them quickly grabbed their weapons, ready to join the fight. The tanks positioned themselves at the front, adopting defensive stances. One of the scorpions rammed into a tank, nearly depleting his health bar in a single hit, leaving the group in disbelief at the strength of its attack. The healers frantically cast healing spells to keep everyone alive. Mages and melee DPS started their assault, but their combined efforts seemed to barely scratch the scorpion, making it seem like they were just tickling the beast. After a few minutes of relentless attacking, the health bar of the scorpion had hardly decreased. The DPS at the front line were running low on health, so another group took over the front lines. After an intense battle, they finally managed to take down one of the desert scorpions. Panting and exhausted, they could hardly believe how difficult the monsters in this area were. They realized just how strong Lin truly was. Watching the system prompts, Lin shook his head with a smile. These people really couldn't stay put. Seeing that some of them had actually taken a seat, a tank yelled out, reminding them that there was still another scorpion to deal with. They then remembered that there were two scorpions, but by now their health and mana bars were nearly depleted, and they were extremely tired. They regretted not listening to Lin and staying put. Just as the remaining desert scorpion broke through the tanks and charged towards the back line, skeletal warriors suddenly flew down from the sky. The skeletal warriors used a rampage strike, instantly killing the desert scorpion. The group, which had struggled for so long against one scorpion, watched in awe as a single skeletal warrior effortlessly took down the other. Fortunately, Lin had left a skeletal warrior to protect the team. Another twenty minutes had passed, and some members of the group were wondering why Lin hadn't killed any monsters yet. Another person speculated that he must be pulling mobs just like before. Soon after, the group saw a flood of system notifications. While they were still outside discussing how difficult it must be to fight the exceptionally strong Queen Ant boss inside the ant cave, Lin had already used Corpse Explosion to instantly kill the Queen Ant. Everyone received a notification for defeating the level 28 Desert Queen Ant. Lin then returned to the group, instructing everyone to prepare to head straight to the Tyrant's castle. He planned to quickly clear the dungeon to reset it and search for the Desert Fruit. As they approached the towering castle with its solid gates and hundreds of Lion Tribe soldiers, Lin didn't waste any time figuring out how to quickly open the castle gates using some specific mechs. Instead, he opted for a more straightforward and brutal approach. After all, if you can out-DPS the enemy, why bother with mechanics? Watching Lin pile up the bodies of hundreds of Lion Tribe warriors at the castle gate and then use corpse explosion, the group realized for the first time that such a tactic was even possible. They progressed through the dungeon until they reached the throne of the desert tyrant. A single roar from the tyrant made everyone tremble. They were ready to retreat even further, but the tyrant looked down at Lin, his eyes filled with mockery and disdain. 
Lin simply smiled and said, We meet again, but I'm in a hurry this time. With a wave of his hand, an army of skeletons charged at the tyrant. Lin gave the command to eliminate the tyrant while casting a slow curse on the tyrant. He continuously used soul flame to interrupt the tyrant's skills, making the powerful boss seem like a mere toy in front of Lin. One of the team members even considered joining the fight, but his friend mockingly said, Go ahead, just don't wet your pants. While they were joking, a system notification appeared. Level 31 Tyrant Defeated. The group watched as they cleared the dungeon. Some even shed tears, overwhelmed with relief and joy. They had been stuck on this quest for one or two years, and now they had finally completed it. They shouted Lin's name in gratitude and admiration, thanking him for his help before being teleported out of the dungeon. Leaving the dungeon through the exit, Lin found himself once again surrounded by a crowd. He asked Harmony to help organize the next group. Someone noticed Lin coming out of the dungeon and immediately reported back to Mark. Mark instructed him to follow Lin into the dungeon to observe how he cleared it. Inside the dungeon hall, a long queue stretched from the entrance of the Desert Tyrant dungeon all the way outside the hall. Lin was taken aback by the sheer number of people, even more than before. Harmony explained with a smile that these were all players who wanted to clear the dungeon, and they had brought friends along. They had been stuck on this quest for a long time. The team was quickly filled up, and after Lin reiterated the rules, everyone happily agreed. Moments later, Lin led a group of 39 players into the dungeon once again. This time, luck was on Lin's side. He found the desert fruit. With about a day and a half left until the opening ceremony of the academy, Lin planned to clear the dungeon as many times as possible to quickly wrap more points. The team quickly encountered the first group of monsters, and just like the previous groups, they were astonished by Lin's abilities. Soon they reached the boss, and this time it only took them seven hours, which has shattered the previous record. Everyone happily teleported out of the dungeon, except for one person who thought to himself that this was terrifying and that he needed to report back to Mark as soon as possible. Back at Hundred Mile Squad, Mark received the report. So, he's using area-of-effect skills that take advantage of corpses, he mused, and he has an exceptionally strong skeleton army. That means if we restrict his summoning spells and make sure there are no corpses around, Lin would be easy to deal with. Mark smirked, thinking every class has its weaknesses, and Lin's weakness is right here. Mark analyzed Lin's skill set with a vengeful look in his eyes. Lin had not only humiliated him, but had also tarnished the reputation of the Hundred Mile Squad. Without Lin, the new record should have belonged to the Hundred Mile Squad, and they might have even obtained the Tyrant Heart. After pondering for a moment, Mark said to his subordinate, telling him to bring Jacob from the Hidden Dragon Squad to him, tell Jacob that there's something he wants to discuss. In his heart, Mark was determined to make Lynn pay. Not long after, Jacob arrived to meet with Mark. At Xiajing Academy, in a two-person dormitory room, Charlotte looked out of the window. Unlike Lynn, she couldn't afford the luxury of a single room and chose a two-person room instead. As an elemental mage, she needed a quiet environment for meditation. A four-person dormitory would be too noisy, but a single room was too expensive. She weighed her options and chose the two-person room. Her father had repeatedly reminded her to be frugal with her points and to use gold coins wherever possible, making her realize how hard it was to earn points. Charlotte envied Lynn for having over 30,000 points right after completing the exam. She wondered how many points Lynn would have after being titled the National Top Scholar would receive, but it certainly wouldn't be a small amount. She had heard from Principal Lu that Lin had already arrived at Xiajing Academy a few days ago. She didn't know how he was doing lately, but she smiled to herself, thinking that with his abilities, Lin should be doing quite well. Lin continued to lead a new group through the dungeon, defeating the Lion Tribe Tyrant over and over again, and consuming the desert fruit to constantly upgrade his skills. Meanwhile, in White Divine's small courtyard, three people were sitting. An old man was angry and sternly speaking to White Divine, telling him, That young man White Divine mentioned earlier is causing too much trouble. White Divine showed a puzzled expression. 
Lin's personality was quite calm. How could he cause any trouble? Meng Anwen was also here. He poured a cup of tea for Ning Tairan, urging him to calm down and take his time to explain. This old man, Ning Tairan, is Ning Yiyi's grandfather and also the principal of Xia Jing Academy. Ning Tairan turned on the surveillance to show what happened in the dungeon hall, explaining that Lin had the audacity to charge people points to carry and bust them through the tyrant desert dungeon. White Divine didn't feel Lin did anything wrong, as charging people to carry them to dungeons was a common practice known as busing. However, Ning Tairan, discontented, looked at White Divine and said, But Lin took 39 people in a single run all by himself, and most of the people he carried had been stuck on this task for years. White Divine burst into laughter upon hearing this. He didn't care about the rest of Ning Tairan's words. The fact that Lin took 39 people with him was just too interesting. He even slapped his thigh, lamenting that he didn't think of doing this back in his day. But then he realized that he probably couldn't have cleared it alone either. Smiling, he asked Ning Tairan, How much did Lin charge? He better not have gone easy on them. Ning Tairan, eyes wide open in anger, slammed his hand on the stone table, almost shattering White Divine's table. He angrily looked at White Divine, questioning if he really did not understand the purpose of the Academy setting up these tasks. These tasks given by the Academy, especially for the large-scale dungeons, are meant to select outstanding talents. Those who are stuck on these dungeon tasks usually have some flaws. White Divine, sipping his tea, spoke indifferently. He was well aware of this. What Lin did was align with the rules of the Academy, since there are no rules prohibiting people from getting carried. He looked at Ning Tairan and asked, Which rule did Lin violate? White Divine put down his teacup and spoke earnestly, expressing his long-standing dissatisfaction with these tasks. He recalled the promising youngsters over the years, who due to their introverted personalities or lack of social skills, couldn't find a party and got stuck, wasting months or even years of their time on these tasks. Not just White Divine, but most of the officials of the academies were aware of this issue. White Divine believed that Lin had done a great deed and that it was time to change the outdated systems of the academy. Meng Anwen also took a sip of tea and agreed with White Divine, thinking that the academy's system was too old-fashioned. A system from hundreds of years ago needed some reforms. Ning Tairan was so angry that he was practically steaming. He suddenly stood up. White Divine, however, continued to laugh and reminded me that Ning Tairan shouldn't act so firmly at his age. He looked at Ning Tairan with a seemingly casual yet somewhat threatening demeanor. He calmly stated, If Ning Tairan dares to lay a finger on Lin, he will personally tear down the dungeon hall. Upon hearing this, the corners of Ning Tairan's mouth twitched. He knew that White Divine was someone who would indeed carry out his threats. With that, Ning Tairan left in a huff. Meng Anwen chuckled and commented, Old Ning's temper really is something that can't be changed. White Divine, unfazed, smiled as he watched Ning Tairan's retreating figure. That's the old Ning we known for years, after all. As for old Ning, there's only one person in the whole world who can handle him. Meng Anwen smiled and knew exactly who White Divine was referring to. Meanwhile, in the Tyrant Desert. Lin almost lost count, but Lin entered the Tyrant Desert once again, arriving at the familiar desert oasis. He was quite lucky, as he encountered desert fruits a few times. Using these fruits, he managed to upgrade his skeletal armor to level 21. Now, the skeletal armor could provide Lin with 2100 points in both vitality and defense. With the amplification of his talents, it could actually provide Lin with 21,000 stats. This was even more powerful than a mage's shield or a knight's limitless defense, not to mention that it could also be applied to other party members as well. Perhaps now, even standing in front of the tyrant and taking a hit, he might not get injured. With the skeletal armor maxed out, Lin then turned his attention to practicing the slow curse. As the skill level increased, the red glow became stronger and its coverage area wider. At level 21, the slow curse's maximum range had expanded to 105 meters, and its slowing effect had increased from 50% to 105%. Once cast, it could virtually turn most enemies into slow-motion figures. Lin tried using it on a desert scorpion, 
and the fast-charging creature seemed to move in slow motion. Satisfied, Lin noted that now only corpse explosion remained at a low level of three. This skill was tricky to level up because it required corpses, and once used, there wouldn't be any corpses left nearby, making it difficult to practice further. Lin swiftly carried the last group through the dungeon and then left the dungeon hall. There was still one hour left until the opening ceremony. Many students had already arrived. Charlotte and May left their dormitory together. Charlotte hadn't expected that when she chose a two-person room, her roommate would turn out to be May, whom she had taken the entrance exam with. After spending a night together, their relationship quickly deepened. Charlotte, with a smile, declared that she would treat May to meals from now on. May didn't talk much, but she was still far more social than Lynn. At least Charlotte could have a normal conversation with her, and their temperaments matched well. Standing not far from the two, they noticed Fung. He was clad in a long robe, a sword slung across his back, looking gallant as usual. Fung's demeanor was captivating, easily drawing the attention of the surrounding female students. Soon enough, Fung also noticed Charlotte and May and walked over to greet them. Charlotte responded with a smile, commenting on Fung's popularity. Fung could only show a helpless expression. He found this situation quite troublesome himself. Seeing Fung's reaction, May changed the subject, asking if they had seen Lin. Charlotte shook her head, but was confident that Lin would surely attend. Fung nodded in agreement. Lin walked slowly towards the Academy Square. After the last run of the Tyrant Desert Dungeon, he had leveled up to 22. As he expected, the previous skill he had honed also automatically leveled along with his level. Lin understood the characteristics of his profession. As long as he trained his skills to the maximum level corresponding to his own level, his skills would level up along with him. After a total of eight runs of the Tyrant Desert Dungeon, six of which he carried a group. Adding the points left after purchasing the scythe, Lin currently had 350,000 points. In Lin's eyes, this amount was far from enough. He did some calculations. An intermediate level skill scroll cost 80,000 points, and with 350,000 points, he could only afford four. Given his now extensive list of skills, the chance of acquiring new skills had significantly decreased. He estimated that even four scrolls might not yield a new skill. Lin sighed, realizing he needed to find more ways to earn points. With a thought, he checked the time, noting there were only 30 minutes left, and hurried to the Academy Square. By now, almost all the freshmen had arrived. The opening ceremony was about to begin. The three friends were getting anxious. There were less than 10 minutes left. Charlotte was worried, wondering if Lin had overslept, but she didn't have a way to contact him. Suddenly, Fung looked in a certain direction and announced, Here he comes! Lin is here! Lin walked over steadily. The moment the three saw Lin, they could tell he had gotten stronger. They could even sense the lingering aura surrounding him, leading them to believe he had just come out of a dungeon. Lin's appearance drew the attention of many people. Many recognized Lin as the national top scorer, leading to various discussions among the students. Most of the students here have seen Lin during the exam. It was also Lin who saved them from the abyssal demon. Some looked at him with admiration, some with jealousy and many others with fear. Charlotte waved her hand, signaling to Lynn to come over. Upon seeing the three, a rare smile appeared on Lynn's face, and the aura around him instantly dissipated. Lynn smiled at the group and nodded in greeting. Suddenly, May asked Lynn about his level. Lynn responded that he had reached level 22. Charlotte let out a shriek, quickly covering her mouth. Fung was also taken aback. How had Lynn reached level 22? It's only been less than a week since the exam ended. How had Lin managed to level up so quickly in just a few days? Lin explained that he had been grinding in dungeons recently, but he did not tell the three that he had been carrying groups through dungeons. If he had been soloing the Tyrant Desert, he should be at levels 24 or 25 by now. Fung was aware that the Academy had a dungeon hall, filled with numerous dungeons. Moreover, one could spend points to reset the dungeon cooldowns, allowing for repeated runs. Both Fung and Charlotte came from prestigious families, so they were well aware of the dungeon hall. In contrast, May was unfamiliar with it, so she stayed silent and listened attentively. 
Charlotte commented that earning points is difficult. Although Lynn, as the national top scorer, had received a substantial reward, he shouldn't waste points carelessly. Lynn didn't know what to say. He felt that while earning points was no easy task, but recalled that carrying a dungeon run could earn a substantial amount. As a bell tolled, the opening ceremony began. The students took their places, and on the stage, several professors and officials were present. One of them started his speech, welcoming all the new students to Xia Jing Academy. He looked at the young faces in the crowd, acknowledging that they were prodigies from their respective high schools. However, upon entering Xia Jing Academy, they would have to start from scratch. He didn't waste much time on formalities and went straight to the point. He informed the students that the academy was divided into three main sections, the General Academy, the Elite Academy squads, and the Top Academy squads. At Xia Jing Academy, they would learn knowledge they had never encountered before and experience various dungeons and battles. The resources available to students would differ across the three sections. He didn't want to elaborate too much, simply telling the students that in Xia Jing Academy, effort was mandatory. He encouraged all the students to strive and climb upwards. Observing the expressions of the students below, the speaker passionately continued his speech. He mentioned another tradition of the Xia Jing Academy's opening ceremony, a much-anticipated event, the challenge segment between freshmen and senior students. Senior students could issue challenges to freshmen, staking their own points for the challenge. Freshmen could choose to decline, but if a freshman won, they would claim the seniors' staked points. Of course, regardless of the outcome, freshmen had nothing to lose. While it might seem somewhat unfair, this tradition offered freshmen a rare opportunity to earn points and allowed both new and senior students to gauge each other's strengths. High above in the clouds, several figures stood in the sky. Among them was White Divine, who commented that they always say the same things every year and wondered if they could update the speech. Since the previous day, Ning Tyran and White Divine had been at odds, with Old Ning constantly beefing with White Divine. Ning Tyran huffed, pointing out that these freshmen were prodigies from various high schools, each with a strong sense of pride. White Divine, understanding his point, chuckled and wondered aloud if anyone would challenge Lin. At this, Meng Anwen wryly smiled and said that he doubted anyone would be so bold especially since Lin's reputation from the dungeon hall had already spread among the senior students. The freshmen, without overthinking it, mostly saw the opportunity as a win-win situation. There was nothing to lose if they were defeated, perhaps even able to learn a few things from the seniors during combat. There's also a chance to earn points if they won. Some freshmen, however, considered the likely significant level gap between themselves and the senior students. Soon enough, they received an explanation. On the dueling stage of the academy, a magical formation would suppress the levels of both parties, aligning them with that of the lower-leveled participant. Skills were similarly adjusted, with any skills above level 20 being unusable if one of the parties is lower than level 20. As for safety, there was no need to worry. A protective magical array ensured that even a potentially fatal blow would not be life-threatening on the dueling stage. With divine-level healers present in the academy, the safety of all students was assured. The academy had thought of everything. Inspired, many began to show their eagerness to fight. The senior students all smiled, clearly enjoying this traditional event. Then, a senior student, a longbow slung over his back, stepped forward and challenged a freshman, also bearing a longbow. Some recognized the freshman as the top scorer from his province in the exam. Holding himself in high regard, he readily accepted the challenge. One after another, senior students began challenging the freshmen. This was a task assigned to them by the academy to knock a bit of the arrogance and pride out of these talented freshmen. Some accepted the challenges, while others refused. Of course, as one might expect, Jacob, the infamous clown, couldn't be absent from such an event. Lin, I challenge you, he suddenly declared. Lin looked up to see Jacob issuing the challenge. Seeing Lin's silence, Jacob pressed on. Lin, you are the top scorer of this year's national exam. Do you dare to accept the challenge, or are you scared? He relentlessly pursued an answer, his taunting tone evident. Ah, it's him again, Lin thought to himself. After several more taunts from Jacob, a flash of murderous intent appeared, 
and then disappeared in Lin's eyes. Unfortunately, killing was not an option within the academy. Calmly, Lin asked how many points Jacob was willing to stake. Without hesitation, Jacob declared that he would stake 5,000 points. Lin shook his head, saying that's barely anything. Jacob frowned, taken aback that Lin would find his 5,000 points offer insufficient. After a thought, Jacob then demanded, how many points did it take Lin to accept the challenge? Lin raised a finger while saying, no less than 100,000. The entire academy hall fell silent in an instant. Even the most senior students here only have a few thousand points on them. It's rare to see anyone with over 10,000. Hearing Lin directly wager 100,000, Jacob's face was filled with disdain. What a joke. Do you even understand the magnitude of 100,000 points? Questioning if Lin even had 100,000 points. Lin didn't reply. Lin wanted to make it more interesting. Lin planned to make the stake points to whatever he had on him. Stating that if Jacob won, Lin would give all his points to Jacob. Conversely, if Jacob lost, Jacob would have to compensate with an equivalent amount of points. Lin questioned if Senior Jacob is up for the challenge. Lin emphasized the word senior heavily, which greatly surprised Charlotte. It was rare for Lin to speak so much. It seemed that Lin had an ulterior motive. Charlotte was too familiar with Lin. The only time Lin would ever speak this much is when he had a special reason behind it. It seemed there was some beef between this guy named Jacob and Lin. Jacob began to hesitate. Everyone was watching him, waiting for his answer. He was the one who had initiated the challenge, and now he seemed afraid to accept it himself. Jacob felt provoked, knowing that declining would lead to complete embarrassment. Gritting his teeth, he thought to himself that a freshman couldn't possibly have many points. Recalling his own trump cards, Jacob decided to accept the challenge. Hidden in the air, the three chuckled to themselves. Shaking their heads at Jacob, they wondered how someone could be so foolish. Jacob must have heard about Lynn bussing students through the large-scale dungeons. Accepting a challenge without knowing the depth of your opponent, he's beyond help, Ning Tyron commented. After a few battles between the freshmen and the seniors, without a doubt, all of the seniors won. The crowd cleared the arena for Lynn and Jacob. At this moment, the viewing stands of the dual arena were filled with many senior students. The moment the two entered the arena, their info was revealed. Jacob, 100 Mile Squad, Level 21, Warlock. Seems like Jacob has left the Hidden Dragon Squad and joined the 100 Mile Squad. Lynn, National Top Scholar, Level 22, Necromancer. Everyone present turned their eyes towards Lynn, National Top Scholar, Freshman, Level 22. What surprised them was not the National Top Scholar title. They had seen plenty of provincial and national top scholars in the past, but a freshman who was level 22 was something they had never seen before. Many senior students had either seen or heard about Lin in the dungeon halls, and quite a few had just been carried by Lin through the Tyrant Desert dungeon earlier. Some of them knew Lin was solo carrying large-scale dungeons lately, earning nearly 40,000 points in a single run. Who knows how many points Lin has now? Jacob was in deep trouble. The crowd in the stands buzzed with discussion. Everyone waited eagerly as if watching a good show. In the arena, surrounded by a magical array, the two of them couldn't hear the outside conversation. Jacob wore a cold smirk mockingly saying, What's so great about a national top scholar? In front of me such a title is worthless. Lin calmly responded, pointing out that Jacob's level was lower than his. Jacob's face darkened. What Lin said was true. Although he had entered the academy earlier than Lin, his level was indeed lower. Persisting, he boasted, I have had excellent talent ever since I was young. I entered the academy to cultivate my talents. Later joining the top academy squads, a genius like me is not something you can compare with. Lin, expressionless, repeated that Jacob's level was lower than his, making Jacob's expression even more sour. Enraged, Jacob shouted, So what if your profession is strong? You just got lucky. On the real battlefield, combat awareness is much more important. Lin calmly pointed out once again that Jacob's level was lower. Jacob was furious to the point of cursing Lin's family. Lin's expression changed, and a murderous intent flashed in his eyes. His family is everything to him. No one was allowed to insult them. 
Jacob was startled by Lynn's gaze. The very look in his eyes, he had seen it twice before, once during the Mermaid Dungeon Academy mission, and the second time in the dungeon hall. Did Lynn wanted to kill him? Shaking his head, he dismissed the thought. They are in the Academy, watched by everyone, and besides, Lynn relied on his summoning skill and corpse explosion skills. Smirking, he informed Lynn that he couldn't summon his creatures, and there was no corpse for him to utilize here. Lynn said coldly in a deep voice, If we weren't in the Academy, you would already be dead. After which a skeletal warrior appeared by his side. The skeleton, wielding a great sword, charged at Jacob. In response, Jacob took out a purple crystal and crushed it. Transforming into a breeze, the skeletal warrior suddenly disappeared. Lin then realized that his summoning skills seemed to be sealed. Jacob burst into laughter, telling Lin that he was now rendered helpless due to the summon sealing crystal, specifically designed to counter summoner type professions. With his staff raised, flames surged, and he unleashed his most powerful skill. Jacob was expecting to see panic on Lin's face. However, Lin remained utterly calm. From the sky, even Ning Tyran, who had some complaints about Lin, commented on Jacob's unscrupulous tactics and criticized Jacob for using this item against Lin. Meng Anwen squinted his eyes, noting that the summon sealing crystal should not be something Jacob could obtain on his own. All two of them suspected that someone was plotting against Lin behind the scenes. White Divine, on the other hand, was not worried at all. He knew that if anyone only considered Lin's summoning skills, they were gravely mistaken. They would pay a heavy price for underestimating Lin. In the dueling arena, Lin shook his head as he pressed his palm down, manifesting a layer of skeletal armor around himself. Jacob's fiery attack descended, enveloping Lin in flames and transforming the dueling arena into a sea of fire. Jacob laughed maniacally, expressing his relief that Lin had surpassed level 20. Otherwise, he wouldn't have been able to use this skill. His face contorted, and his voice grew shrill as he mockingly asked Lin how it felt to be scorched by the flames, thinking he was about to win. Lin walked out of the sea of flames leisurely, as if taking a stroll in a courtyard. The skeletal armor on his body shimmered, completely isolating the flames. Even if Lin was now one level lower due to the magical array to match Jacob's level. For the level 21 skeletal armor, Jacob's attack felt less than a tickle. Jacob was dumbfounded. The outcome was entirely different from what he had expected. He screamed frantically, How is this possible? This can't be happening! Fireballs and ice arrows shot out from his staff, striking Lin, but they were all blocked by the skeletal armor. Have you had enough? You are too weak, Lin said indifferently. Green flames flickered on his palm, and a spark fell onto the top of Jacob's head. A scream of agony filled the arena, Jacob fell to the ground, clutching his head and wailing in pain. Blood burst from his eye sockets and ears, and he began to gush out blood. Jacob looked utterly miserable. The next second, he disappeared from the dueling arena. Then, a beam of light descended from the sky, enveloping him. The divine level healer from the academy began to treat Jacob. The healer looked at Jacob's pitiful state, thinking that if it weren't for the protective magical array, Jacob would have already been dead. The audience hadn't even grasped what had happened when they realized Jacob had already lost. They were preparing themselves for an exciting and breathtaking battle, but it ended just like that. After receiving treatment from the divine healer, Jacob finally recovered. Bloodstains were still on his face, and a deep sense of fear was evident in his eyes. When Lynn's gaze swept over him, Jacob involuntarily shivered. It was only then that Jacob realized he had lost, but he was relieved to have been alive. As long as he was alive, nothing else mattered. End of the day, it was just a few thousand points. The dean came onto the stage and declared Lynn the winner. After checking Lynn's points, the dean's expression also showed a hint of surprise. Freshman Lynn had won. According to the agreement between both parties, Jacob needs to pay Lynn a total of 358,000 points the dean announced. Jacob screamed and jumped up from the ground, unable to believe his own ears. Jacob was ranting like a madman, questioning how it was possible for Lynn to have 358,000 points, and at the same time, he seemed to doubt Director Chu and said he must have made a mistake. 
Director Chu looked over with a cold gaze. Classmate Jacob, are you implying that I'm spouting nonsense? Having served over a decade at Xia Jing Academy, and now as the head dean of discipline and teaching affairs, one could only imagine the authority he commanded. Director Chu's words were like a bucket of ice water, instantly sobering Jacob. Jacob hurriedly shook his head, indicating it was a slip of the tongue and that he hadn't meant it that way. Director Chu looked disappointed. He was more angry to see his student being dishonest than to have his authority challenged. Director Chu did not erupt in anger. Rather, he calmly asked Jacob to transfer the points again, though this time his tone was not as patient as before. Jacob's face crumbled completely, and he fell to his knees, admitting he didn't have that many points. Director Chu simply instructed Jacob to transfer the 128,000 points he currently has to Lin, with the remaining 230,000 to be repaid within six months. Failure to repay would result in a violation of academic integrity and expulsion. If this happens, the Academy would personally visit Jacob's family to collect the debt. With those words, Director Chu left. This was the first time someone had challenged him in his many years as the head dean at Xia Jing Academy. Moreover, to be doubted and questioned about his authority in front of all of the students was something he found utterly unacceptable. Lin's communicator pinged with the transaction, notifying him that 128,000 points were added. Lin got off the stage, passing by Jacob who was still engulfed in a haze of shock and regret. Lin spared him a fleeting, indifferent glance, more of a silent testament to the consequences of Jacob's unnecessary pride. Jacob's gaze fell emptily to the ground, lost in the realization that this was the bitter fruit of his own making. Had he not challenged Lin, this ordeal would have never unfolded. The welcoming ceremony came to a close. On the way back, Charlotte looked at Lin with curiosity, wondering how he had become so powerful. Lin didn't quite know how to respond, and Charlotte kept pestering him, asking if she could join him on his dungeon runs in the future. Lin smiled and nodded in agreement which made Charlotte very happy. Suddenly, Lin's communicator vibrated. This time it was a message from White Divine. Lin was told to get ready, and they would depart in an hour. It was time for the Yuan battlefield. When Lin's friends saw the message from the revered White Divine, they asked if Lin had something to take care of. Lin nodded and mentioned that he was heading to the Yuan battlefield. Everyone was taken aback. They all knew that the Yuan battlefield was the front line for humanity where the professionals and the abyssal monsters had been waging war for thousands of years. Although it was fraught with danger, it was also filled with opportunities. There were many dungeons and secret realms within. With utmost respect, all three of them told Lin to take care, and then watched as he left. Lin arrived at the trading post and sold all the materials and equipment he had obtained in the dungeon hall these past few days. Though he could exchange them for points, the rate was too minimal so Lin chose to convert them into gold coins. After everything had been sold, he was now balling with two million gold coins. As for other equipment available in the trading post for purchase, Lin glanced at it but didn't see a need for any. These level 20 pieces of equipment didn't contribute much to him for now. Lin relied more on his skeletal army and skeletal armor. Lin made some preparations, purchasing potions and daily necessities. The hour passed quickly, and White Divine arrived on time. The two first returned to White Divine's courtyard, where White Divine called out, Old Meng, take us to the Yuan battlefield. Soon, Meng Anwen nodded, utilizing his ability, and then a towering structure appeared in the void. This was no other than the Divine Tower that Lin had seen before when visiting the Mermaid Island. The Divine Tower had wondrous functions. It could also be used for challenging the Divine Tower trial. As if seeing through Lin's thoughts, White Divine told Lin not to rush and challenge it, suggesting that Lin should wait until after his second profession transfer before attempting it. The Divine Tower emanated a kaleidoscope of light as myriad runes materialized in the sky. The runes formed a teleportation array that enveloped the two of them. This time, the teleportation had quite some time, and the moment they arrived at their destination, Lin felt an atmosphere entirely different from the dungeons he'd been to. A wild atmosphere, filled with evil and tainted with the scent of blood. It was also accompanied by a chilling cold. They had arrived at the Yuan battlefield. Lin furrowed his brow. 
he had felt a similar atmosphere before. It was in the battling realm, especially after the abyssal demons invaded. This felt exactly like it. The two stepped out of the teleportation array, and at the very top of the castle, a sphere floated. The sphere rotated continuously in the air, and on it were eyes that startlingly opened and closed. White Divine explained that it was the demon watching eye, specifically used to monitor the abyssal advancement to prevent surprise attacks. They soon arrived at a castle, its walls lined with soldiers, each one a powerful professional emanating a strong presence. The arrival of the two attracted their attention. When they saw White Divine, respect was evident, as they all lowered their head, placing their hands on their chest, and bowed. White Divine drew Lin's attention to the five-star purple badge on his shoulder, telling Lin that the badge was the only thing people would respect here on the Yuan battlefield. Lin didn't understand the implication. White Divine didn't elaborate, but simply mentioned that Lin would surely have one in the future. They quickly moved on to another building. Lin saw a sign that read, Military Certification Office. Inside the office, one staff was using computers and didn't notice their arrival. White Divine asked the staff to issue a certificate for Lin. The staff member's attitude wasn't great, perhaps due to the stress of recent days, and his tone was not very polite. But as the staff looked up and was about to lash out, he caught sight of the badge on White Divine's shoulder, snapped to attention with a salute, and then bent over, exclaiming, Greetings, General. With White Divine's instructions repeated, the staff's demeanor changed completely. He became very courteous as Lin handed over his ID. The staff member processed the certificate quickly, all the while looking at Lin with surprise, wondering what the background of this young man could be for the five-star general, White Divine, to personally oversee his military certificate. A few minutes later, the man handed Lin a badge that was identical in design to the one on White Divine's shoulder. The only differences were the absence of stars and its white center. Holding the badge, White Divine led him away, instructing Lin to wear it on him at all times and not to keep it in storage space. Lin was told that every time he killed an abyssal demon and monster, the badge would automatically record his merit. The badge represented military rank, white for the lowest rank of private, followed by black for corporal, silver for lieutenant, gold for colonel, and purple for general. The stars on the badge represented one's military merit within that rank. The more merits, the more stars. The promotion system worked on a ten-star basis. Surpassing ten stars allowed for advancement to the next rank. As for a five-star general like White Divine, there were no more than ten in the entire empire. White Divine's words carried pride and honor, and Lin was well aware that White Divine truly had the credentials to be proud, for he was a hero to the empire and the human race. Soon after, Lin followed White Divine to the front of a majestic hall. Here stands the Hall of Heroic Spirits. Countless plaques are erected within the hall, all surrounded by a wondrous aura. White Divine explained that this place serves to honor the sages of the Empire who had died in battle, heroes for all their lives. Even in death, they do not return to their hometowns, but continue to guard the Empire with the strength of their spirits. He then spread his arms wide, clenched his fists, and respectfully performed the ancient salute towards all the plaques in the Hall of Heroic Spirits. Lin followed suit. White Divine then loudly proclaimed, A descendant of Divine Empire earnestly beseeches the Empire's ancestors to bless our future generations. He repeated this sentence three times, each time louder and more solemn than the last. The countless plaques in the Hall of Heroic Spirits rumbled, bursting into brilliant light that illuminated the hall. A phantom tower emerged from the light. Though the tower was small, it exuded a majestic aura. This was the Demon Slaying Tower, one of the Empire's three great divine towers. White Divine instructed Lin to project his spiritual energy into the tower to leave a mark, and without question, Lin did as he believed in White Divine. After completion, White Divine slowly explained that by doing this, even if Lin were to die on the Yuan battlefield, they would have a chance to resurrect him. Hearing the word resurrect, Lin looked at White Divine in surprise. He finally understood what bless our future generations meant. Lin noticed that White Divine's five-star general badge now had one less star. It had become a four-star badge. To provide him with an extra lifeline, 
White Divine had willingly sacrificed one star. Lin was deeply moved, at a loss for words, and could only say, Thank. You. White Divine laughed heartily, patted Lin's shoulder, and told him there's no need for thanks among men. What matters is for Lin to slay more enemies on the Yuan battlefield. White Divine then got to the main point. The Yuan battlefield is the front line where the human race clashes with the abyssal demons. Unless one ventures deep into the abyss, this is the primary battleground. Every empire has established outposts here, with fortresses stretching out to form defenses. The Divine Empire is one of the strongest empires of the human race, with extremely formidable fortresses. The Empire's fortresses are known as the Eternal Great Wall. There are nine fortresses, lined up in a row, each separated by more than a thousand kilometers, forming the Eternal Great Wall. Within the Yuan battlefield, there are many dungeons, on both small and large scales, and that is where the most danger lies. Battles near the entrance occur very frequently, and the fighting is a common sight. The closer to the abyss, the higher the level of the dungeons, and the more dangerous it becomes. Lin is advised to always have teleportation stones ready, because due to the influence of the abyssal power, the teleportation stones here are single-use and prone to failure, so it is wise to carry extras. After explaining, White Divine left, and now Lin was on his own. After taking a tour of the fortress to familiarize himself with the surroundings, Lin was ready to venture out to the Yuan battlefield. However, kind-hearted guards stopped Lin at the gate, warning him that the area ahead was filled with level 30 monsters, and abyssal demons could appear at any time. It was too dangerous for Lin at his current level. Lin smiled and appreciated the two guards. Lin was polite yet resolute in his decision. The guards could sense the determination and did not attempt to stop Lin further, but reminded him to stay alert and to retreat immediately if danger arose. Lin then gradually exited the fortress, disappearing from sight. The Yuan battlefield was pervaded by the presence of the abyss. A thin mist filled the air, making visibility poor. Suddenly the skeletal armor lit up. Lin was surprised, realizing he had been attacked. Yet, as far as his eyes could see, there was no sign of the attacker. The skeletal armor shimmered incessantly, the oncoming attacks never ceasing. Lin had an epiphany. It must be an invisible enemy. Several skeletal warriors materialized by his side. Sensing their master under attack, the skeletal warriors sprang into action. Their great swords swung in unison towards a singular point. The sweep of their blades was followed by the sound of tearing cloth. A piercing scream can be heard. Only now the enemy reveal its form. Lin hadn't expected the first monster he'd encounter in the Yuan battlefield to be a ghost-type creature. A battlefield specter, although level 30, was not particularly strong in stats. Its ability to become invisible was chillingly concerning. Lin was slightly startled by the emergence of a ghost-type creature, but what piqued his curiosity even more were its skills. As this thought crossed his mind, the battlefield specter let out a shriek. Skill. Physical immunity. After being attacked by the skeletal warriors, its form became vaporous, fading even more, resembling dissipating smoke. With a thought, Lin summoned several skeletal mages. As soon as the skeletal mages appeared, they launched their assault. The battlefield specter wailed miserably as elemental attacks rained down upon it, inflicting massive damage. After a few strikes, the battlefield specter was quickly defeated. System notification. Defeating a level 30 battlefield specter, Experience points gained 300,000. Lin also received a soul essence. The item description was written, Soul Essence. Infused with the will of those fallen in battle, it could enhance weapons and equipment. After the first encounter, Lin realized that even his skeletal warriors were not invincible, and the same held true for his skeletal mages. Facing creatures with physical immunity prompted the possibility that there could be monsters with elemental or magic immunity or monsters potentially have both immunities. Such adversaries could render both skeletal warriors and mages useless. Lin became ever more vigilant. The Yuan battlefield was vast, having expanded significantly over a millennium of war. Lin had been traversing it for over two hours when a sudden surge in the mist ahead put him on high alert. Three figures burst out of the fog, running haphazardly as if desperately fleeing for their lives. The churning mist grew more intense, hinting that something more was approaching. 
The panicked knight, upon seeing Lin, cried out, Run! An abyssal demon is chasing them! The knight's warning cry still echoed as he vanished into the distance, his face etched with terror. From the mist, a horde of pitch-black creatures surged forth. Shaped like wild dogs with rows of sharp fangs bared, they sprinted with remarkable speed. Upon sighting Lin, a pack of the abyssal hounds veered almost simultaneously, charging straight towards him. The fleeing trio shouted for Lin to run as well. Lin's gaze sharply focused as he observed the gruesome remnants of flesh and tatters of clothing in the jaws of these abyssal hounds. His eyes grew cold, knowing these abyssal hounds had likely eaten someone, and Lin murmured softly, You beasts shall perish. The skeletal warriors resonated with Lin's anger, their eyes glowing as they lunged at the abyssal hounds. Brandishing their greatswords, they sent abyssal hounds flying with each forceful swing. The skeletal mages were not lacking either. They unleashed their skills, casting spells that crashed upon the abyssal hounds with lethal precision. After the first abyssal hound fell, a system prompt appeared. Level 31, abyssal hound defeated, experience points gained 310,000, plus one military merit. The badge on his shoulder began to glow subtly, absorbing the accruing military merits. As the abyssal hounds fell, the scythe in Lin's hands, the scythe of Thanatos, absorbed the souls of the slain abyssal hounds. Lin noted the scythe's experience increased by 3.3%. He estimated that about 30 more of these abyssal hounds would suffice to elevate the scythe to level 2. As the remaining abyssal hounds approached, Lin raised his palm, a faint glow emanating from within. Skill activated, corpse explosion. With a thunderous blast, the newly arrived abyssal hounds were annihilated in an instant, none were spared. The badge on his shoulder sparkled with an even brighter light. The thirty abyssal hounds brought Lin over nine million experience points, along with an additional thirty merits. With the scythe leveling up as well, Lin was pleasantly surprised to find after the scythe's level up, his spirit attribute had also increased by one hundred. A faint star now appeared on the badge. The trio who had been fleeing moments before stood dumbfounded. The very abyssal hounds that were fervently pursuing them had suddenly changed their course, hurtling towards Lin. Just when they thought Lin was doomed, the young and handsome man vanquished the abyssal hounds with a prowess they had never witnessed, striking them down with ease. Deep within the Yuan battlefield, connected into the abyss, darkness reigns supreme, a chasm as black as a bottomless pit. Suddenly a voice echoes through the gloom. Huh? A pack of my little pups has perished? Could it be the work of a high-level professional? Well then, let's release more of the little pups. As the voice fades, pairs of crimson eyes ignite within the darkness. Glowing with a bloodthirsty luminescence, hordes of abyssal hounds burst forth from the endless void. Lin, meanwhile, finally catches sight of the dungeon entrance. A colossal vortex spins slowly in the mist, the entrance to the dungeon thronged with people from numerous empires. Bonfires crackle at the dungeon's entrance, around which many professionals roast meat and revel in camaraderie, discussing strategies for the dungeon or just chit-chatting. Lin's arrival doesn't go unnoticed. His youth and the badge of a private draw particular attention. The veterans here are open-hearted, and recognizing Lin as a compatriot, they offer assistance. Some even extend an invitation to Lin to join their party. The warmth of camaraderie radiates from the many adorned with the corporal's badge. Approaching the dungeon entrance, Lin scrutinizes the details of the dungeon. The dungeon, named Dragonkin Frontier Outpost, is designated for level 26 professionals. There are three levels of difficulty to choose from. Normal, Nightmare, and Hell, each with different caps on party size. Normal allows four players, Nightmare 6, and Hell up to 12. The level requirements are flexible with a five level above and below, welcoming those between levels 21 to 31. Lin had previously conquered dungeons at nightmare difficulty, but had never encountered one at hell difficulty. He decides to give it a try. Upon seeing a young fellow, one of the night veterans invited Lin into their party and wanted to provide Lin with some help. Acknowledging the offers with gratitude, Lin politely declines, thanks the knight, and steps into the dungeon alone. As he vanishes into the vortex, some onlookers are left in a daze. 
a professional from the Sakura sneers, labeling Lin a fool, and dismissively tosses a rune into the dungeon's entrance. Provide insight into the status of a dungeon. By using one, it's possible to discern the number of teams within each difficulty level of the dungeon, and if there have been any casualties. Within the glow of the activated rune, the details of the dungeon's inhabitants are revealed. Normal difficulty, one team, total four members. Nightmare difficulty, two teams, a total of 12 members. Hell difficulty, one team, total one member. The onlookers find it hard to believe that a fresh private would dare to tackle the hell difficulty alone. Some express concern, while the one from the Sakura Empire continues his mockery, even proposing wagers on how long the private would survive. This mockery does not sit well with the others. The veteran knight, who had previously invited Lin to join his party, draws his sword in a flash, intending to discipline the insolent Sakura Empire spectator. Recognizing the disparity in equipment and levels, the person quickly claims it was just a joke to avoid confrontation. The knight sheathes his blade and steps back, perhaps regretfully, seeing Lin's youthful looks. To join the Yuan battlefield at Lin's age must have meant he was a prodigy, and it's a pity to see such potential risked on what many deem to be a foolhardy decision. Within the dungeon, Lin encounters a mountain with a fortress-like structure atop it, with a road lies before him, leading straight to the fortress on the mountain. He senses the oppressive th atmosphere of the Hell Difficulty dungeon, a sensation distinct from the Nightmare Difficulty. Lin could feel something was constrained here. Lin discovers that his storage space is inaccessible, meaning no supplies, potions or items can be taken out of the storage to use, and escape using teleportation stones is impossible. To leave the dungeon, one must either retreat from the starting point or proceed to slay the final boss and exit through the portal that appears afterward. Lin contemplates the differences between Hell's and Nightmare's difficulties as he moves forward. Soon, flickering flames and three silhouettes become visible in the distance. Moments later, Lin spots three armored creatures wielding long spears and sporting horns on their heads, marching down the road towards him. Lin's use of a detection spell reveals the attributes of the approaching creatures. Dragonkin Longspear Soldiers, Hell Level Elites. Observing their attributes, Lin can't help but narrow his eyes in caution. Even the lowest level mob in this place surpasses the attributes of his skeletal warriors. Their attributes were comparable to the bosses found in Nightmare Dungeons. This revelation sharpens Lin's focus, fully realizing the daunting challenge posed ahead. Three Dragonkin spearmen roared twice before charging towards Lin. Arise! Lin shouted, and suddenly, skeletal warriors and mages appeared from the ground beneath. The skeletal warriors, swift as lightning, sprang into action. Although their attributes were somewhat inferior to the dragonkin spearmen, they had a significant numerical advantage. The three monsters howled, their long spears sweeping across, striking the skeletal warriors with a resonant clang of spear against bone. Every skeletal warrior hit came to a sudden halt, becoming dazed by the impact. Seizing the opportunity, the three spearmen increased their attack speed, relentlessly striking the dazed skeletal warriors. Quickly, the three skeletal warriors in the very front were annihilated. Lin promptly commanded the skeletal mages to cast their spells, raining down various magical attacks. The mages' spells fell like a tsunami, each one inflicting heavy damage. With the skeletal mages' support, the skeletal warriors used a rampage strike, swiftly defeating the three dragonkin spearmen. Lin recasts his skeletal armor once again to ensure his safety, contemplating the vulnerability of the skeletal warriors after being stunned. They were becoming nothing but mere targets dummies. This was much tougher than he thought. Moreover, Lin also discovered that he couldn't recall any skeletal warriors during their stunned state. The Hell Difficulty dungeon was far more challenging than the Nightmare Difficulty. During the previous Nightmare dungeons, including the 40-man large-scale Tyrant dungeon, where Lin had been steamrolling through them without a hitch. This was the first time he needed to be more cautious and feeling more worried. However, this only fueled Lin's excitement. He advanced cautiously along a narrow path, leading into a dense forest. His silent approach caught the attention of the nearby Dragonkin patrol squad. Several Dragonkin spearmen, brandishing their long spears, charged towards him with loud battle cries. 
Skeletal warriors quickly jumped into action and met them head on. One of the skeletal warriors struck with a swift slash, drawing the attention of the dragonkin spearmen before darting deeper into the forest. Lin chose a classic but effective strategy, kiting the enemies and then taking them down in a group. The skeletal warrior dashed deeper into the forest, luring more dragonkin spearmen. Suddenly, the skeletal warrior that had run into the woods to bait the enemy suddenly halted. Lin saw several of his skeletal warriors enduring heavy attacks, and he was unable to recall them, no doubt that they were under some sort of crowd control. Deep in the forest, a few skeletal warriors were entangled in transparent chains. Lin recognized the skill immediately. This was no other than Wind Shackles, a mage-type crowd control ability. Atop a nearby hill, Lin spotted several dragonkin creatures. They were the ones using their skills to pin down his skeletal warriors. Lin hadn't expected these mobs to employ such tactics. Watching two more skeletal warriors fall, Lin shook his head. If he only had these few skeletons, it would indeed be difficult. But Lin had more than just these few skeletons. Understanding the situation, he didn't wait any longer. A flood of skeletal army surged forward. The sudden onslaught of skeletal warriors overwhelmed the dragonkin mages on the hill. Dragonkin spearmen in the middle of the path quickly retaliated, using their ability to stun the skeletal warriors. But there were simply too many of them, and the skeletal army swiftly overpowered the dragonkin spearmen, clearing the way. Following closely were the skeletal mages, who unleashed a barrage of spells, completely suppressing the dragonkin spearmen. After eliminating them, Lin noticed the dragonkin mages began to target his skeletal mages with their skills. It was a shocker that they ignored the skeletal warriors who were charging towards them and directly attacked the mages, revealing their intelligence. Lin quickly used Soul Flame to interrupt the casting of the Dragonkin Mages. Lin's army of skeletons swiftly eliminates the Dragonkin Mages on the hill. The system alerts him to the defeat of level 31 Dragonkin Mages, gaining 620,000 experience points, and six consecutive notifications pop out. One particular notification captures Lin's attention. One of the mages had dropped a dragonkin horn, one of the four materials White Divine had requested for the mission. Unable to access his storage space to confirm, Lin believes he didn't make a mistake. Considering the rarity of such a drop after slaying so many mobs, it seems the drop rate is indeed quite low. Lin retrieves several heavily damaged skeletal warriors back into the summoning space, he continues onward, spotting a patrol team on the move. Planning to employ a similar strategy, Lin prepares to use corpse explosion this time, as he doesn't want his skeletal warriors to suffer more unnecessary damage. He summons two skeletal warriors, charging towards the patrol team to lure them in. Once the mobs were close, Lin quickly cast Slow Curse. A massive red shackle appears on the approaching dragonkin spearmen. Lin then gives the command, and all his skeletal mages are ready launching their attacks on the enemies. The skeletal warriors spring into action, unleashing rampage strikes. After killing one of the dragonkin spearmen, Lin used skill, corpse explosion, with a loud boom. The entire patrol squad was annihilated. White Divine returns to his small courtyard, where Meng Anwen is enjoying his afternoon tea. Upon White Divine's arrival, Meng Anwen pours him a cup of tea and inquires, Got him there? White Divine nods in affirmation. Meng Anwen gave him a somewhat thoughtful look, noticing that one star was missing from White Divine's five-star badge. It seems White Divine has used a significant amount of merit to imprint Lin in the Hall of Heroic Spirits. While others might not understand the significance, Meng Anwen is well aware of it. White Divine seems unconcerned, remarking, The kid has potential. We can't let him die in an accident, can we? White Divine, sipping his tea, sadly notes that enough young prodigies have died. Meng Anwen sighed and didn't dwell on this topic, and continued drinking his tea. White Divine mentions that he has assigned Lin a mission at the Dragonkin outpost, considering it a form of training for him. White Divine wears a smug smile as he speaks. Meng Anwen slowly points out that the materials White Divine needs are only dropped in nightmare-level difficulties or higher, and even then the chances are very low. White Divine laughs it off, saying that's exactly what he wants. The kid has a cool-down amulet, right? A few runs should do it. 
Meng Anwen shakes his head, then asks White Divine if he ever considered that Lin might choose the Hell-level difficulty. White Divine nearly spits out his tea in disbelief, thinking incredulously, Lin isn't foolish enough to do that, is he? White Divine is filled with regret, realizing he should have reminded Lin about the vast difference between Hell and Nightmare-level difficulties. However, Meng Anwen chuckles, pointing out that Lin has an imprint that prevents death, and enduring hardship could be good for his future growth. White Divine feels a headache coming on, but then has a sudden thought. What if Lin actually makes it through the Hell difficulty dungeon? Meng Anwen puts his teacup down slowly and looks seriously at White Divine. After a moment, he speaks with a deep voice. If he really makes it through, the benefits would be enormous. Back in the dungeon, Lin tirelessly battles the creatures within, taking down over twenty dragonkin mages before finally obtaining two horns. Most of his skeletons are severely injured and have been recalled to the summoning space for slow recovery. He has only cleared a third of the dungeon. No doubt this was an unprecedented challenge. The difficulty of this dungeon has far exceeded his expectations. Gazing at the distant castle, Lin's lips curl into a slight smile. Having come this far, he's determined to see it through to the end. Giving up halfway is not in his nature. After a short rest, with his skeletons mostly recovered, Lin advances towards the fortress again. Using the same tactics, he continues to push forward. Finally, he arrives in front of the fortress and sees its entirety, with numerous dragonkin creatures, including spearmen, mages, and now archers, lining the walls. The dragonkin archers had insane attributes and also possessed two abilities, one AoE and one crowd control. Lin feels a headache brewing. Just as he is about to issue a command, the nearest skeletal warrior is instantly killed. This momentarily shocked him. The most scary part was that he didn't even know where the attack came from. The skeletal warriors also fail to spot the attacker. All skeletal warriors are then recalled to regroup around him. Lin's gaze becomes sharp, knowing that an unknown enemy is the most fearsome. Lin finds himself under stealth attack. To protect himself, he positions his skeletal mages and skeletal warriors in layers around him, creating a defensive formation. Without identifying the sneaky assailants, Lin opts not to proceed. He steadies his breathing and calms himself down. Seconds later, another skeletal warrior is attacked. Lin can't afford to remain passive. As soon as the skeletal warrior is hit, his skeletal mages simultaneously unleash their skills, Ice Storm and Thunder Tornado. Both area of effect abilities create a tempest of ice and whirlwinds, revealing several shadowy figures. Now exposed, these unknown enemies come under immediate attack from nearby skeletal warriors, who unleash their skill, Rampage Strike, lighting up their greatswords with a red glow. The previously stealthy enemies were fully revealed. They were dragonkin assassins wearing black light armor and wielding daggers. These assassin-type creatures had two skills, stealth and lethal strikes, boasting high strength and agility stats. Their extreme attributes, coupled with invisibility and lethal strikes, make them both dangerous and scary if caught off guard. However, once revealed, their advantages disappear, and their frail vitality points become their fatal flaw. Under the continuous onslaught of Lin's skeletal warriors and mages, the three dragonkin assassins are swiftly eliminated. The system announces the defeat of level 32 dragonkin assassins, rewarding Lin with 640,000 experience points and a dragonkin heart. Now, Lin only needs the essence of blood and the crystal core. Having dealt with the dragonkin assassins, Lin enters the range of the archers. Countless arrows fly towards him, but are blocked by his skeletal armor. Lin commands his skeletal warriors to throw the corpses of the three dragonkin assassins onto the fortress walls, and then he uses corpse explosion. With a loud boom, he easily eliminates the dragonkin archers on the fortress, with the system announcing the defeat of level 31 dragonkin archers, awarding another 620,000 experience points and dragonkin essence blood. Lin breaches the fortress gate, leaving only the crystal core to be obtained. He positions his skeletal warriors outside, skeletal mages inside, and himself at the core of the formation. The skeletal army advances through the fortress. As expected, they encountered many ambushes along the way. The skeletal mages react swiftly, 
using area of effect abilities to force the assassins into the open to reveal themselves, where they are quickly decimated by a barrage of attacks from the skeletal warriors. Lin employs this tactic over and over again to swiftly eliminate all enemies. Reaching the central square of the fortress, he finds a ten-meter-tall statue resembling a dragonkin creature, but no boss in sight. Suddenly, the entire fortress starts to shake. The statue cracks open, showering down a rain of rock fragments. A terrifying presence emanates from within, filling the entire dungeon. A creature with massive wings emerges before Lin, its oppressive power momentarily halting Lin's breath. The attributes of the Dragonkin Outpost Guardian were revealed under Lin's detection spell. All four attributes exceeding 10,000, along with three skills, Group Knockback, Group Stun, and Resistance Enhancement. Faced with this powerful Hell Difficulty Level 33 boss, who was 11 levels higher and far stronger than any large dungeon boss he'd encountered, Lin didn't have time to ponder. He quickly retreats to create distance, his palm glowing red. As the Guardian roars skyward, Lin casts a slowing curse, with a crimson shackle appearing above its head and over its body. The skeletal warriors charge in, repeatedly striking the boss with rampage strikes, while the skeletal mages unleash a barrage of skills upon the Guardian. Just when Lin thinks he has the upper hand, the Guardian's face contorts with rage. Its crimson eyes seem to flicker with light, and suddenly, a brilliant glow bursts forth from its body activating resistance enhancement. The slow curse's chains weaken significantly, reducing the effectiveness of the slowdown. The Guardian's movements speed up, drawing a giant sword from its back and unleashing the skill group knockback. The sword sweeps through the air like a violent storm, instantly killing four skeletal warriors in front of it. Following its initial onslaught, the outpost Guardian leaps high into the air and slams down onto the ground, unleashing the skill of group stun. The shockwave of this attack is more extensive, engulfing all nearby skeletal warriors in a powerful burst. The skeletal warriors lose their ability to fight, standing immobile like wooden stakes. With the skeletal warriors under crowd control, the Guardian turns its brutal assault towards them, its great sword relentlessly striking down the immobilized skeletal warriors. Soon, twelve more skeletal warriors were killed. The stun effect prevents Lin from recalling the affected skeletal warriors to the summoning space. Although he can continue summoning, his spirit points are limited, and he can't use consumables in this dungeon. In response, Lin summons a spirit general who then uses the skill Army Formation. Unexpectedly, the spirit general's skill mitigates the stun effect, reducing its duration. Once the stun quickly wears off, the skeletal warriors now more strategically coordinated under the Spirit General's command, charge forward again. Quickly, the Guardian's health is halved. The Guardian tries to use Group Stun again, but this time, its effect is significantly weakened thanks to the Spirit General. Lin breathes a sigh of relief, having found a method to counter the Guardian. But in the next moment, Lin's hair stands on end. The outpost Guardian suddenly lifts its head, directing its gaze straight at him. With a thunderous crash that splits the ground, the outpost guardian leaps high and pounces directly at Lin. Its speed is so fast that Lin can't evade, and the guardian's sword glows brightly with the skill of group stun. Fortunately, Lin's skeletal armor blocks the shockwave, preventing him from being stunned. Lin, in a rapid response, continuously uses soul flame, attacking the guardian alongside his skeletal mages. Surprisingly, he finds a tank, something he... The skeletal warriors turn to face the Guardian, relentlessly hacking at it with their greatswords. In intense combat, the Guardian falls before Lin, defeated and unwilling to accept its fate. The Guardian let out his last howl before falling to the ground. The system announces, Defeated Outpost Guardian, experienced gained 3.3 million, obtained three pieces of golden tier equipment, and two dragonkin crystal cores. Additionally, Lin acquires a class transfer certificate, and the title of War Emperor of the Dragonkin, when obtained, increases all attributes by 500, and all skill costs are reduced by 50%. This title is awarded for solo clearing the Hell Level difficulty of the Dragonkin Frontline Outpost Dungeon. Lin is somewhat taken aback by these rewards. The class transfer certificate is a crucial item for the second class transfer at level 40, 
which he didn't expect to obtain so early. Moreover, the attributes provided by the title are exceptionally high. After defeating the Guardian Lin, his body shimmers with the white light indicating that he has leveled up. System prompted. Notifying Lin had reached level 23, Lin had also completed about a third of the task assigned by White Divine. He just needed to run the same dungeon two more rounds, and he would finish the mission. Although he was surprised to get the class transfer certificate, but that's not something he'd be thinking right now, as he would need to wait to level 40. Lin was delighted that just less than a day since arriving at the Yuan battlefield, he had progressed from level 22 to 23. Curiously, he opened his stat window and checked his attributes. With the addition of the title War Emperor of the Dragonkin, his attributes had increased by 500 each. He then checked the skeleton's attributes. The skeletal warrior's four attributes had reached 5,500, and the skeletal mage's spirit had soared to a staggering 9,200. Satisfied, Lin left the dungeon, planning to rest outside before returning once his skeletons had fully recovered. Obviously, he will keep grinding the hell difficulty. This was Lin's first foray into the hell difficulty. Though quite challenging, the experience points and loot were significantly better. And since he had to use a cooldown amulet anyway, why not use it on a hell-level dungeon? As soon as he stepped out of the dungeon, an intense, acrid smell of blood assaulted his nostrils. The once bustling entrance was now deserted. The ground was littered with severed limbs and torsos. The overwhelming stench of blood was almost too much for Lin, and the roars nearby signaled danger. He quickly enveloped himself in skeletal armor. His arrival drew the attention of nearby abyssal hellhounds. They stopped feasting on corpses and charged at Lin. The three nearest hellhounds reached him instantly, although unable to breach his defenses, but Lin noticed countless others behind them. Unsure of what had happened, Lin immediately summoned his skeletal warriors. Using Rampage Strike, the skeletal warriors sent the three hellhounds flying. Lin then summoned his skeletal mages, whose varied elemental attacks swiftly dispatched the hellhounds rushing at him. In the distance, Lin saw the hellhounds surrounding a wide area not far from the dungeon entrance. Many people were trapped, outnumbered, and desperately fighting for their lives against these abyssal beasts. Upon seeing Lin emerge from the dungeon, a group of struggling human professionals nearby shouted for him to come over. Among them was the knight who had earlier invited Lin to join his party. The moment they saw Lin being attacked by the abyssal hellhounds, they rushed over without a second thought, seemingly very concerned about Lin's safety. In truth, Lin was merely observing the entire battlefield, trying to get a sense of what happened. With his skeletal armor and damage transfer, even if he stood still and let the hellhounds attack, Lin would unlikely be injured. However, he was genuinely touched to see these people breaking through the encirclement in an attempt to save him, especially since it included the knight who had invited him to his party earlier. The group stood in front of Lin, fending off the hellhounds. The support from the group checked Lin for injuries. The knight insisted that they would hold off the hellhounds while Lin should use the teleportation stone to return to the fortress. He didn't ask how Lin had survived the dungeon. It wasn't the time. Lin looked at the leading knight, wanting to understand what had happened. With a grave expression, the knight clenched his teeth and explained that the bastards from the abyss had released a large number of hellhounds, trapping them. Lin then thought to himself that this veteran team was very strong, well-equipped, and had the perfect class balance. Although, they couldn't possibly kill all these hellhounds. But if they wanted to flee, there was no way for the hellhounds to stop them. He wondered if they decided to stay behind to protect the people who just come out dungeon and were unaware of the situation outside. Soon, another party fell. The knight, unable to bear the sight, told Lin that many had already died at the jaws of the hellhounds. The support in the group used a dungeon detection rune and found that there were no more people left inside the dungeon. The knight nodded in acknowledgement and told everyone to prepare for a breakout. However, the support looked at Lin, puzzled, and asked why he wasn't using his teleportation stone. Lin merely smiled, then stepped forward. Suddenly, a chilling wind blew, and a small horde of skeletons materialized beside him. The skeletal warriors immediately joined the fray, their great swords clattering against the abyssal hellhounds. 
The skeletal mages also cast their spells. Rampage strikes slashed viciously at the enemies, while tornadoes lifted the hellhounds into the air, tearing them apart. Lightning struck down, leaving the hellhounds with gaping wounds. What in the world? What's happening? The group, ready to break out, were startled. How did so many skeletons suddenly appear? Lin didn't deploy all of his skeletons as some were in poor condition with low health, but the ones he sent out were more than enough to handle these ugly puppies. As the abyssal hellhounds charged towards them, they were effortlessly cut down by Lin's skeletal warriors. Soon, a large area around them was cleared. The group looked at Lin in disbelief. Stand behind me, Lin instructed them. Though initially confused, they instinctively followed his command. Lin stepped forward, raised his hand, and warned the group that he was about to use an area of effectability and that they needed to stay behind to avoid being accidentally harmed. Skill, corpse explosion. An explosion thundered, shaking the ground and sending remains flying in all directions. A fierce wind from the blast roared towards them, leaving them in shock. In the wake of the explosion, a vast area was completely cleared. The pack of abyssal hellhounds was obliterated. As numerous hellhounds lay defeated, Lin's badge gleamed brightly. He received a system notification. Military merit reached 100, promoted to a one-star private, awarded 1,000 points, and five contribution points. Lin was satisfied. He had finally been officially promoted to a one-star private. Previously, the stars were somewhat blurry, but now he understood that a complete star appeared only after accumulating sufficient military merits. He also realized that killing abyssal creatures not only advanced his military rank, but also earned points and contributions for the Sia Jing Academy. No wonder White Divine told him that to earn contribution points, one had to come to the Yuan battlefield. Lin's weapon, the Scythe of Thanatos, absorbed the souls of the abyssal hellhounds and successfully leveled up to level three. This further fueled Lin's enthusiasm. With so many benefits, how could he pass up the opportunity? He continued to use the corpse explosion, and each explosion meant a large number of hellhounds were annihilated. The surviving human professionals watched Lin in shock, speculating that Lin might be a prodigy from one of the top academies, which explained his boldness in entering the Dragonkin Frontline Outpost dungeon alone. Speaking of which, the veteran knight then remembered that Lin had entered a hell of difficulty, and he joined it solo. They all looked at Lin and wondered if he actually managed to complete the hell difficulty alone. The system prompted again, notifying Lin that his military merit reached 200, promoting him to a two-star private, awarding another 1,000 points and five contribution points. His weapon had upgraded to level four. Holding the scythe of Thanatos, Lin observed the extra spirit attribute it granted him, which had gone from 100 per level to 200. His interest in the weapon grew. He wondered if continuing to upgrade it would unlock new abilities. Lin single-handedly cleared all the abyssal hellhounds surrounding the dungeon entrance, eliminating over 200 of them. Gazing at the charred remains scattered around, Lin mused that it would have been even better if there were more abyssal creatures. After the battle, the surviving human professionals collapsed on the ground, exhausted and relieved. Many wondered why so many hellhounds had appeared and whether this signaled a major offensive from the abyss. As people began to heal, and some teleported back to the fortress, the knight approached Lin with a smile and extended his hand for a handshake. He introduced himself as Xu Xing'an, a level 31 holy knight from the Xia Jing Academy. Lin, a sense of camaraderie with this veteran knight, reciprocated the gesture and introduced himself as Lin, a level 23 necromancer, also from the Xia Jing Academy. Upon hearing they were from the same school, Xu Xing'an's smile broadened and he curiously asked which year Lin was from. Lin glanced at the time, noting it was past midnight, and informed the knight that he was a freshman from this year, having just attended the opening ceremony the day before. Shi Xing'an's shield dropped to the ground with a clang. His eyes, and those of his teammates, widened in disbelief. They were astounded to learn that Lin, who had demonstrated such formidable strength, was merely a freshman. In their perception, Freshmen weren't supposed to be only around level 15 or 16? According to tradition, the freshmen from the opening ceremony would have the chance to receive a bit of a lecture from their senior peers. 
After having their pride shattered and knowing how strong their seniors were, they would head to the dungeon hall to level up, before finally making their way to the Yuan battlefield in a group. The night captain, taken aback for a moment, then laughed heartily and patted Lin on the shoulder. Saying for a freshman to possess such strength right at the start is indeed remarkable. No wonder Lin could venture into the Yuan battlefield alone and survive so long in the hell-level difficulty Dragonkin outpost dungeon. Lin, a man of few words, simply nodded and modestly responded, It's nothing. Lin then inquired about the group's plan, or whether they planned to enter the dungeon soon. The mage stood up and jokingly pointed at their captain, laughing and blaming him for not being able to tank the mobs inside the dungeon. While telling Lin that last time in the nightmare level difficulty, they almost got wiped out because of it. This caused the knight's face to turn a shade of red, protested saying back then, he was only level 29, and his gear wasn't up to par wearing all silver level gears. The knight then sighed, lamenting that he only lacked an outpost shield. Unfortunately, there weren't any listings in the marketplace as it's a very rare drop, which can only drop by the final guardian boss in the dungeon. The mage expressed concern that their entire team was at level 31, nearly hitting level 32, which would exceed the dungeon's level limit. The knight reassured his group that if necessary, he would settle for another gold-tier shield to ensure they could conquer the nightmare-level dungeon at least once. The mage nodded in trust of their captain. Then, turning to Lin, the mage asked if he needed any gear, offering to bring back some items for Lin once they cleared the dungeon. The captain explained that the Dragonkin outpost set had exceptionally high attributes for their level bracket, being the best gold-tier equipment. Although Lin was only level 23, it would be wise to prepare in advance for when he reached level 30. Lin was unsure of the properties of the Nightmare Outpost Shield. Having only encountered the Hell Outpost Shield, Lin was aware of its great stats and attributes. Curious, he asked the captain if equipment from the Hell and Nightmare Outpost gears could form a set together. The captain affirmed, but noted the rarity of Hell Outpost gear. Even in the top elite squads of Xia Jing Academy, only a few members had obtained it. The captain wanted to say more, when suddenly his eyes bulged and he leaped up in shock. The others, too, rose abruptly, speechless, and their eyes focused on Lin. In Lin's hands, a massive golden shield appeared out of thin air. Lin then turned to the captain, inquiring if this was the shield he was looking for. The shield was no other than the Hell Outpost shield, which shimmering with a dazzling golden light. The captain's eyes widened in disbelief, struggling to regain composure, cast a detection spell, and checked the stats window. The shield's attributes were astonishing. A 300 increase to all attributes, a 50% increased resistance to crowd control, and a 50% reduction in crowd control duration. Whispering, the captain asked Lin where he had acquired the shield. Lin calmly replied, It dropped from the Dragonkin outpost guardian just before he left the dungeon. The entire group was incredulous, questioning if Lin meant it was from a hell-level difficulty boss guardian. Lin nodded, puzzled by their expression, wondering why they were reacting this way. The mage looked at Lin, staring as if at a monster, and again asked Lin if he had soloed the hell difficulty outpost dungeon. Lin nodded once more and a chorus of disbelief echoed in the group's minds. Impossible. How could someone solo a Hell Difficulty dungeon? Yet the Hell Outpost shield in Lin's hands was undeniably real. Without missing a beat, Lin tossed the shield to the captain, suggesting he try it on and check the set bonuses. Excitedly, the captain equipped it. Instantly, a golden pillar of light soared into the sky, dissipating the dense fog around them. Dozens of onlookers were drawn to the spectacle. This was the unmistakable glow of a complete set. They gazed enviously in that direction, knowing someone had assembled the outpost set, a set with attributes even stronger than some platinum-tier equipment. The captain eagerly asked Lin to sell the shield to him, offering ten million gold coins. Lin shook his head. The captain grew anxious, insisting it was all he had. As the captain began to look disappointed, Lin mentioned that ten million was too much for mere gold-tier equipment, and it was not worth that much. Lin then sold it to the captain for a much cheaper price. 
The group then regarded Lin with newfound respect. This further bridged the relationship between them. Lin had unwittingly done the others a favor. Thanks to him, their group could now attempt to run the nightmare level difficultly, a goal they had long desired. Deciding to restock on supplies and replenish their spirit points at the fortress first, they crushed their teleportation stones, activating them, and soon they vanished from the dungeon entrance, reappearing back at the fortress. Meanwhile, in the depths of the abyss, an evil, bloodthirsty eye focused on a specific location. Sensing that all his pups had vanished, it grew angry. The pair of eyes commanded its underling to investigate the situation. A massive abyssal creature, with one notably thicker arm and three horns protruding from its back, knelt respectfully on one knee. Acknowledging the order with a simple, as you command, it then disappeared. After returning to the fortress, the group enjoyed a hearty meal, replenishing their energy for the upcoming dungeon runs. The night squad, now ready with their dungeon cooldown ending, prepared to tackle the nightmare level difficulty. Suddenly, their attention was drawn to a commotion nearby. Passersby pointed towards a group that had just emerged from the fortress gate, immediately capturing everyone's attention. Auras! That's a holy light night! Someone exclaimed loudly as a team of five emerged from the swirling mist, the leading knight, surrounded by shimmering auras. Many recognized this as the legendary profession of Holy Light Knight. Among them, someone recognized the leader as a member of a top elite squad. Whispers of admiration for the legendary profession spread among the onlookers. Lin glanced over, a slight smile forming on his face. Ignoring everyone, including the Holy Light Knight within the group, he spotted Ning Yi. It was a pleasant surprise to encounter her here. His smile widened, a rare occurrence for him. Ning Yi, seeing Lin, showed a look of delight. She quickly broke away from the group and darted towards Lin. She happily asked Lin what had brought him here. Lin, smiling, replied that he was here on a mission assigned by White Divine. Ning Yi laughed, saying, What a coincidence. She is also here on a mission. Her gaze towards Lin carried a hint of affection beyond mere friendship. Upon seeing this, the night captain and his groups exchanged knowing smiles, understanding the situation all too well. A man who stood not far from them with blue hair watched Lin intently, his eyes betraying confusion and a hint of jealousy. Before Lin said anything else, Ning Yi Yi excitedly started guessing the nature of his mission. She first speculated it involved obtaining dragonkin materials, like horns, but quickly dismissed it as too simple for him. She then guessed it must be about acquiring a crystal core. Lin chuckled and nodded in agreement. Ning Yi Yi hadn't guessed entirely correctly, but she wasn't entirely wrong either. The mission assigned by the White Divine needed all four materials. Ning Yi Yi, thrilled to have guessed correctly, beamed with happiness, revealing that her mission also involved collecting the crystal cores. At that moment, the blue-haired knight walked closer, coughing a few times and approached them, saying, Yi Yi, want to introduce him to me? The blue-haired man approached, his gaze fixed intently on Lin. Dressed as a knight, Lin then recalled him as the holy light knight onlookers were previously talking about. The knight's eyes held a trace of wariness as he looked at Lin. Ning Yi Yi smiled and introduced Lin as a great friend who had helped her numerous times. The holy light knight, Logan, introduced himself with a solemn voice. Logan, level 30, holy light knight legendary profession. Although unsure if he was trying to show off, following the courtesy, Lin also introduced himself. Lin, level 23, necromancer. Logan's brow furrowed slightly. A necromancer? That was a class he hadn't heard of. Before he could inquire further, Ning Yi Yi, surprised, turned to Lin, asking how he had reached level 23 while she was only level 21. Lin chuckled at Ning Yi Yi's exaggerated and somewhat playful demeanor. Lin smiled and asked if Ning Yi Yi wanted to run some dungeons together. Ning Yi eagerly agreed. Hearing this, Logan's expression changed. He interjected, offering to carry Ning Yi Yi instead. But Ning Yi Yi, with a giggle, thanked Logan for bringing her into the fortress. She appreciated the generosity, however. With Lin on her side, she didn't need anyone else's help. Logan's face darkened with obvious hostility towards Lin. Him, he said, pointing at Lin disdainfully. 
A level 23 weakling would probably need to be carried. How can he possibly carry other people? Logan refused to believe Lin could be of any help in the dungeon. Ning Yi Yi, sensing Logan's hostility towards Lin, grew somewhat unhappy. She thanked Logan again for bringing her to the fortress, but insisted that she no longer needed his assistance. Logan, clearly displeased but unable to retort, glared at Lin. After a deep breath, he told Ning Yi Yi to stay safe and that she could come to him any time. Looking at Lin one last time, but Lin simply ignored him, Logan felt even more displeased, thinking to himself that Lin was just a show-off and a worthless level 23 who dared to ignore him and try to steal his woman. He isn't going to let Lin get away with this. Ning Yi Yi then joyfully pulled Lin towards the fortress's outskirts. Along the way, she looked at Lin curiously, knowing Lin was extremely powerful. She was sure that they could handle the normal difficulty and perhaps even the nightmare level difficulty. She asked him which one they would attempt, to which Lin simply said, Hell level difficulty. Ning Yi Yi was initially startled, her hands covering her mouth in surprise. She wondered if she had misheard, or perhaps Lin was joking. But knowing Lin as she did, she was aware that he was not one to make such jokes. What followed was a surge of joy. Are we really going to run a hell difficulty dungeon? She asked. Lin calmly nodded. What followed was Ning Yi Yi leaped up in excitement, exclaiming, That's fantastic! I've been longing to take on the hell level difficulty. She seemed to give no thought to the potential dangers. Nor did she consider whether Lin could actually solo the hell level difficulty. Nevertheless, she believed in Lin's words. Logan, observing the two, although he couldn't hear their conversation, when seeing how close they were, couldn't help but scoff derisively, saying no way a useless level 23 with a trash profession could carry any dungeons. He was certain that tomorrow Ning Yi Yi would come back to him, seeking his assistance to carry her through the dungeon. While thinking about it, he returned to his own party of five and entered the dungeon. The pair walked towards the dungeon entrance. Lin used the cooldown amulet to reset the dungeon cooldown. Together they selected the hell difficulty and entered the dungeon. Their conversation wasn't exactly quiet, catching the attention of many nearby professionals. The professionals nearby initially thought they were bluffing, but when they saw the pair actually choosing hell-level difficulty, onlookers thought they were out of their minds. One of them remarked that the last party to clear the hell-level difficulty was from the Creator's Academy. Another nodded in agreement, particularly remembering a female professional in the party. She was strikingly beautiful and gorgeous, wielding dual swords. Her professional was known as the Blade Dancer. Thinking about this, many shook their heads dismissively, presuming it was just two youngsters going on a date and checking out the scenery inside a hell-level difficulty dungeon. The crowd buzzed with talk and laughter, as if they were making fun of Lin and waiting for him to make a clown out of himself. The atmosphere in the hell-level dungeon was oppressively tense. Upon entering, Lin immediately cast skeletal armor on both himself and Ning Yi. Ning Yi, observing the skeletal armor materializing on her, was filled with wonder. She was curious and questioned if this was Lin's new skill. Lin nodded, remarking this would keep her safe. He then summoned his skeletal army. Ning Yi, twirling her hair, commented in her heart, it always feels so secure around Lin. This being Lin's second time running the Dragonkin Outpost dungeon, Lin knew exactly what he should do. He knew that as long as they avoided being hit by crowd control skills, navigating the dungeon would be much easier. Along the path to the small forest, three Dragonkin spearmen brazenly appeared again. Lin's skeletal army swept forward, swiftly eliminating the three spearmen blocking their way. Ning Yi's eyes sparkled with excitement. This looks so effortless, she exclaimed, almost in disbelief at the ease with which they were handling what was supposed to be a hell difficulty dungeon. Lin smiled modestly and said, It's not that difficult. Ning Yi stuck out her tongue playfully. Maybe not for you, but for others, it's as hard as climbing to heaven. Even tackling a nightmare level dungeon has people on the brink of death. This is a breeze in comparison. With Lin's skeletal army paving the way, they continued to clear their path effortlessly. Ning Yi Yi thought to herself how Lin had become much stronger, even noting the increased attributes of the skeletal warriors and the new addition of skeletal mages. 
The dungeon echoed with Ning Yi's crisp, joyful laughter, lightening the oppressive atmosphere of the hell level dungeon. Lin, a man of few words, spent most of the time listening to Ning Yi. Ning Yi seemed to have an endless stream of stories, enthusiastically sharing everything that had happened in the past few days. Soon, they had passed through the forest, and they could see the fortress lay ahead. After a brief rest at the fortress's entrance, Lin inquired if Ning Yi needed anything besides the Dragonkin Crystal Core. Ning Yi removed a ring from her finger. Lin immediately recognized it had the Goblin King's Crystal Core. She explained that she had successfully completed her first mission and received her reward. Now, she was on her second mission. All she needed was one Dragonkin Crystal Core, also needed to reach level 25 and become a one-star private. Looking at the Goblin King's ring in her hand, Lin was surprised at how quickly Ning Yi Yi had managed to craft it. Ning Yi Yi chuckled and explained that the ring was made from the Goblin King's crystal core, which Lin had gifted to her earlier. After completing her first mission and acquiring some support materials, she found a blacksmith to craft it. Although it wasn't easy, she was super satisfied with the ring. The ring, possessing the attribute of plus one level to all skills, was indeed very powerful. Suddenly, Lin pulled Ning Yi back, but they couldn't completely dodge an attack. The skeletal armor on Ning Yi flickered, blocking a fatal strike. She wasn't harmed, but was nonetheless startled. Lin's skeletal warriors attacked the invisible dragonkin assassin, while Ning Yi clung to Lin, shaken by the close call. She was unaware of the presence of invisible creatures, as an assassin-type profession. She realized just how dangerous the situation was, and without Lin's skills, she would have been severely injured or worse. But Ning Yi Yi quickly recovered, patting her chest and remarking, No wonder it's hell-level difficulty. Her professional skills allowed her to see through invisibility, and she was ready to assist Lin. Using her ability, her eyes glowed red, and she pointed out the location of another dragonkin assassin. Following her direction, the skeletal army attacked, revealing the hidden dragonkin assassins behind a tree trunk. With the help of Ning Yi Yi, they swiftly dealt with the nearby threats. Normally, clearing these monsters would require using the skeletal warriors as bait, but this will result in them taking large amounts of damage. This time, the help of Ning Yi Yi and her skills made the task much easier. Hearing Lin praise her, she beamed with pride, flexing her arm, and said she was quite powerful too. It was then that Ning Yi noticed Lin's badge now had two stars. Lin mentioned he had defeated a couple of abyssal hellhounds before. Ning Yi playfully tapped him and acted annoyed, saying she had fallen too far behind and insisting Lin carry her from now on. Lin smiled and agreed. Entering the fortress, they cleared all the mobs along the way, heading towards the middle to the final boss. The Dragonkin Guardian statue stood there, imposing and terrifying. Lin reapplied skeletal armor to both himself and Ning Yi, then instructed Ning Yi to stand back as far as she could and not to come close. She agreed, though puzzled why Lin would change the strategy. She thought they were always safe when surrounded by the skeletal army, but she trusted him and quickly jumped onto a high tree far away. As Lin approached the statue, he beckoned the old friend, it was time to wake up. The statue shivered its exterior, cracking and falling away. The entire plaza thundered, and the fortress trembled. Ning Yi, perched on a distant tree, took out a piece of sweet potato from her pocket. In the hell-level dungeon, storage spaces were locked, but she had come prepared. She carefully peeled the sweet potato, pouting and lamenting it was her last piece. Suddenly, the guardian emerged, and Lin stood at the forefront his hand emanating a red light. Red shackles appeared above and around the Guardian's body, followed by a shout by the Guardian, and instantly a brilliant glow burst forth from its body, activating resistance enhancement, diminishing the slowing curse. The Guardian then stomped the ground, launching a group stun skill. Ning Yi Yi, startled by the tree, accidentally dropped her sweet potato, scrambling to catch it as this was a gift from Lin. Lin's skeletal armor blocked the attack, but the rest of his skeletal warriors were stunned. He then used Soul Flame to interrupt the Guardian's follow-up attacks and summoned the Spirit General, using Army Formation Skill, 
which then cleansed the stun from the skeletal warriors. The enraged guardian leaped high, sword crashing down. Just before the guardian could unleash another skill, Lin recalled his skeletal army back to the summoning space to avoid a second group stun. He stood firm, the massive sword falling upon him, but the skeletal armor shone brightly, absorbing the blow without a scratch on Lin. Ning Yi Yi was amazed. She hadn't anticipated such a tactic. She couldn't believe that she would ever see a summoner-type class act like a tank. She smiled, realizing how much stronger Lin had become. No wonder he could solo a hell-level difficulty dungeon. Perhaps even her grandfather wouldn't believe it. Lin then resummoned his skeletal army. Seizing the moment during the boss's skill cooldown, the skeletal mages relentlessly unleashed their abilities from a distance, while the skeletal warriors leaped onto the guardian, hacking away tirelessly with rampage strikes. The formidable dragonkin outpost guardian, under Lin's relentless assault, eventually succumbed. As the guardian fell onto his knees in defeat, the system announced a triumphant message. Defeated outpost guardian. Experience gained 1.65 million, obtained three pieces of golden tier equipment, two dragonkin crystal cores obtained, and teammate Ning Yi Yi has received a class transfer certificate. Ning Yi, glowing with the light of leveling up, raced towards Lin. She was startled to see the notification about the class transfer certificate, and in a burst of excitement, rushed behind Lin and hugged him. Lin was taken aback, not fully understanding why is she so excited. When Ning Yi Yi explained she got the class transfer certificate, Lin commented that it was a guaranteed drop in this dungeon, puzzled by her exhilaration over an item with a 100% drop rate. Realizing her previous reaction, Ning Yi Yi quickly released Lin, stepping back with a flushed face. Trying to cover her embarrassment, she quickly changed the subject. She said, even though it's a guaranteed drop, it's not that simple. She then explained that in Hell difficulty dungeons, only one certificate drops per run. Hell level difficulty parties were extremely rare already, and it would always take a full party to run it. She smiled, saying only Lin would act so nonchalantly towards such valuable items. Lin then remembered something and mentioned he had a special item for her after they left the dungeon. Outside the dungeon entrance, Lin presented Ning Yi Yi with the Hell Outpost dagger, part of the outpost set. Ning Yi Yi was enamored with the dagger. The golden tier weapon had a plus 500 to all attributes and a 50% boost to all assassin skills. Delighted, Ning Yi Yi asked if she could really keep it. Lin nodded and casually handed her a dragonkin crystal core as well. Overjoyed, Ning Yi Yi beamed, Thank you so much. Lin suggested they rest for a while before continuing their dungeon runs. Ning Yi Yi eagerly agreed. Outside the dungeon, the air was filled with the sounds of barking and intense combat. The abyssal hellhounds, having reappeared after several hours, regrouped in even greater numbers than before. The dungeon entrance was now completely surrounded by the abyssal hellhounds, with an abyssal demon looming overhead. Many professionals had already fallen to the ferocious hellhounds, and those who remained gathered together, fighting back with all their might. Small squads formed defensive lines, and a party led by the knight captain, who just come out from the dungeon, immediately joined the fray. His party quickly became a central force in the battle, greatly assisted by the power of their outpost set. Thank God for the outpost set, or we would have been in real danger. The knight captain breathed a sigh of relief recalling how his party had barely stepped out of the dungeon when they were ambushed, with every member sustaining some level of injuries. And being surrounded, they knew breaking through was impossible. They were aware that Lin had entered the dungeon a few hours earlier, and their only hope was to hold out until Lin came out, believing that with his arrival, they could turn the tide of the battle. Gazing upon the party led by the night captain, the abyssal demon hovering in the sky swept his chilling gaze over them, his voice tinged with disappointment. That's not them, the demon murmured, noting the absence of his child's smell among them. With a cold laugh, the demon decided, then they shall all be devoured. Commanding his horde of abyssal hellhounds to attack, the small band of less than 30 professionals faced an overwhelming onslaught from hundreds of these ferocious beasts. The hounds pounced, unleashing a frenzy of savage biting, Screams of agony echoed through the air. 
Logan had just emerged from the dungeon, still regaining his footing, when he heard the terrifying screams. In an instant, he and his party member were bitten. What the hell is happening? he shouted, quickly activating his resisting aura skill. As the golden aura flared to life, the previously snarling abyssal hounds were repelled backward and sent flying. A protective circle of golden light formed around each member of his party, creating a small radius that the hellhounds could not get close to. With the aura shielding them, Logan ignored the abyssal hellhounds, his gaze sweeping the surroundings. He was shocked at the sheer number of abyssal hellhounds, easily numbering in the hundreds, a sight he'd never seen before. The night captain, spotting Logan's group coming out from the dungeon, yelled a warning. Be careful! There's an abyssal demon lurking above! Logan's head snapped upwards, his vision momentarily darkening, only to see a black silhouette charging towards him. He looked closer, and it was no other than the abyssal demon swooping down at him. With a spiked mace in hand, the demon swung with vicious intent. Logan, the legendary professional Holy Light Knight, sneered at the abyssal demon, confident that no one could breach his protective aura. He then readied himself for battle. The abyssal demon, grinning maliciously, roared, Die! As the spiked mace swung towards him, Logan's expression changed drastically. Never had he thought someone could penetrate his protective aura with ease. With no time to react, he quickly raised his shield, but the spiked mace struck it with a thunderous crash. Logan was sent flying, rotating in the air, his shield completely shattered, and he tumbled several times before slamming heavily into a wall. The wall was dented inward, and blood spurted from his mouth as he coughed violently, with bloodshot eyes his face etched with shock. He couldn't believe how his aura became ineffective against the abyssal demon. His party mates yelled out, holy shit, no pun intended as they rushed to his aid, the healer quickly applying healing spells. Logan's eyes, bloodshot and wide open, as he gasped for air, realized he had narrowly escaped death. The night captain, clutching his head, scoffed. All show and no strength. What a disappointment. The others shook their heads in agreement, lamenting how weak Logan was despite being a legendary professional. The night captain, using a detection spell on the abyssal demon, discovered to his horror that their adversary was level 36. Other than that, no information was provided. The only time when a detection spell will be rendered ineffective is when the enemy is way too out of their league. Drenched in cold sweat, and with a look of despair, he knew they stood no chance against this abyssal demon. As the party grappled with the dire situation, one of them asked what they should do next. The night captain shook his head, now silently hoping that Lin wouldn't come out and fall into this trap. Meanwhile, the abyssal demon, with its chilling, bloodthirsty presence, circled above, its voice sinister and mocking. Ah, a holy light knight, a legendary profession. To kill one would be a great triumph. It sneered. At that moment, Logan, driven by desperation, activated a beacon. A beam of light shot into the sky and exploded in a brilliant display. The beacon was visible for miles away. Hold on, everyone, he yelled. Help is on the way. Despite his rallying cry, Logan felt despair. He knew they were no match for the abyssal demon, but he also didn't want to die here. He wants everyone here to buy some time, and maybe he could be saved. The abyssal demon with a cold laugh charged at Logan. Suddenly, the dungeon's entrance lit up as two figures came out. All eyes turned to Lin and Ning Yi Yi, who had just appeared. The abyssal demon, mid attack, halted abruptly its attention shifting from Logan to Lin. It's you! You killed my pups! It bellowed, swinging its massive spiked mace at Lin. Lin, be careful! The night captain shouted. Lin, who had just stepped out, barely had time to react when he saw the abyssal demon rushing towards him. Ning Yi Yi, startled, tried to push Lin out of the way, but it was too late. The demon's mace struck, but then a brilliant light erupted from Lin's skeletal armor leaving both of them unharmed amid a cloud of dust. Lin stared coldly at the demon and taunted, Did you not have lunch? The demon, dumbfounded, continued its frenzied attack, but to no avail. Why, why, why can't I destroy him? It screamed in frustration. At that moment, Lin's palm ignited with a flickering flame. Lin used the skill of soul flame. 
A ball of green flame appeared on the abyssal demon's forehead, scorching into its soul, and the abyssal demon screamed in unbearable agony. The abyssal demon clutched its head, screaming in pain, its spiked mace falling from its grasp as it attempted to flee. Lin's hand glowed red, and he used another skill, slowing curse. Suddenly, the abyssal demon's movements became sluggish, and chains materialized, binding it tightly. Not only the abyssal demon, but all the abyssal hellhounds at the dungeon's entrance were suddenly bound by red shackles, their movements slowing to a crawl as if in slow motion. The night captain, exhilarated, exclaimed, This is Lin's skill! The screams of the abyssal demon also slowed down, stretching into a long, distorted whine that sounded as if it was squeaking, prompting Ning Yi Yi to burst into laughter. Rise, my soldiers, Lin commanded summoning his legion of the skeletal army. Hundreds of skeletons materialized on the battlefield. Seeing this, the abyssal demon tried to take flight, but the skeletal warriors leaped onto it, hacking away with their greatswords. Soon, the abyssal demon's wings were severed, and the demon wailed in agony. Not long after, more skeletons rushed towards the abyssal hellhounds, focusing on one target and quickly finishing it off, one skeletal warrior lifted the corpse and threw it toward a pile of abyssal hellhounds. Lin then raised his hand, preparing another spell. Skill, corpse explosion. A series of violent explosions shook the ground, startling the nearby professionals. With each blast, swaths of abyssal hellhounds were obliterated. After several uses of corpse explosion, nothing was left, other than the abyssal demon clawing backwards before Lin. Casting a detection spell on the Abyssal Demon, Lin learned it was a level 36 Abyssal Dog Demon, a lower-tier demon with two abilities, one was flight, and the other was strong attack. To Lin, its attributes are extremely low, but compared to an average level 36 professional, the Abyssal Demon was much stronger. Dog Demon, such a distasteful name, Lin mused, shaking his head. His skeletal warriors returned to his side and raising their great swords, they struck the weakened demon. A system notification appeared. Defeated level 36, abyssal dog demon. Gained 360,000 experience. Gained 50 merits. Acquired demon essence. The demon essence, a substance filled with abyssal power, was valuable to alchemists and blacksmiths for enchanting equipment. Ning Yi Yi, being at Lin's party, also received a share of the merits. Though minimal, it was enough to elevate her to a one-star private. Meanwhile, Lin's merits reached 500, promoting him to a five-star private. His weapon also led up to level seven. Is the mission complete? Lin asked. Ning Yi Yi's face brightened with a smile, expressing all thanks to Lin. All the survivors, injured or not, came forward to thank him. Without Lin, they surely would have died. In the distance, Logan watched Lin with a dark expression, envious of the admiration Lin was receiving from the crowd. That should have been me, he thought bitterly. As a level 30 holy light knight, a legendary profession, he couldn't accept being saved by a 23-level rookie. Gritting his teeth with his pride, he is unwilling to accept this stain on his reputation. A mix of complex emotions swirled within Logan as he watched Lin's back, his eyes flashing with resentment. He muttered to himself, It was only because I had just finished a dungeon and was caught off guard by an ambush attack. If he was ready, he too could defeat the abyssal demon. Yeah, right, Mr. Holy Shit, he thought to himself. He is a legendary profession, the Holy Light Knight, and he is only level 30 right now. He vowed silently, someday Lin will kneel before me, begging for my forgiveness. His gaze then shifted to the close interaction between Lin and Ning Yi Yi, adding a tinge of jealousy to his already simmering hatred. He thought bitterly, you too will be mine one day. I'll show you who is truly powerful. Lin approached Xu Xing An to inquire about his injuries. The night captain, patting his hell outpost shield, expressed gratitude to Lin saying all thanks to the shield he was able to make it out unscathed. The set bonuses provided by the outpost set were immensely powerful, boosting his overall attributes, which ensured no casualties on his team. After some friendly exchanges, they suddenly heard chaotic footsteps from behind. The fog churned violently, stirring up dust from the ground and revealing some powerful presence within. Responding to the distress beacon sent earlier by Logan, the elite guard of the Eternal Great Wall Fortress arrived. 
They were fully equipped with platinum-tier gears. Among them were various high-level professionals. Upon assessing the situation, they couldn't hide their astonishment. The ground was littered with the corpses of abyssal hellhounds, possibly in the hundreds. The elite guards swiftly reached the entrance of the dungeon. The leading guard captain, in a commanding tone, asked who had sent the distress beacon. Logan, supported by his teammates, stepped forward, admitting it was him. After inspecting Logan's severe injuries and noting his legendary profession, the knight's tone softened, asking what had happened around here. Logan recounted the recent events truthfully, fully aware that lying in front of dozens of witnesses was not a bright idea. The guard captain, surprised, turned to Lynn. According to Logan, it was this young man who had single-handedly slain all of the abyssal hellhounds and saved everyone from the abyssal demon. The guard captain found it hard to believe that a level 23 freshman could single-handedly defeat hundreds of abyssal hellhounds and even manage to slay an abyssal dog demon. However, the corpses were littered on the ground, and the testimony of the witnesses was irrefutable. Approaching Lin, the guard captain first noticed the badge on his chest. He was well aware that deception was possible, but the five-star private badge spoke volumes of Lin's accomplishments. Within the Yuan battlefield, only the strong are respected. Observing the young man, now a five-star private at just level 23, couldn't help but recall that many level 30 professionals hadn't even reached three-star private, let alone five stars. He patted on Lin's shoulder and said, Well done, young man. Lin, treating the encounter with a rare seriousness, stood at attention, showing respect to the veteran guard captain, and said it was their duty. Upon hearing this, Excellent, very excellent, the guard captain laughed heartily. His admiration for Lin had even grown bigger. Not long after, the fog churned violently once again. Another group rushed to the scene, composed of nearby professionals who would respond immediately to the distress beacon regardless of potential danger. A soft, white light pierced through the thin mist, creating almost an illusion of a hazy moon in the sky. Leading this group was a young woman riding a unicorn. Their surrounding was covered by a divine glow. This was no other than Mo Yun, the princess from the Mo family of the royal capital, who was known for her beauty, pride, and strength. Xu Xing An beside Lin introduced her as a holy summoner, also a legendary profession. Many onlookers, filled with admiration, all recognized her. To the young students around, both male and female, she appeared almost too perfect, their eyes unconsciously glued to her, causing many to blush, including Logan. The guard captain assured Mo Yun that the situation was under control. She looked around one more time, then nodded and was about to leave when her gaze briefly lingered on Lin, showing a hint of disgust. Though she had never met Lin and did not know him, the feeling wasn't towards Lin directly, but a scent, or perhaps something else within him seemed to repel her. Without saying a word, she quickly departed with her group. Lin had also been observing Mo Yun, particularly noticing the military badge on her shoulder, indicating her rank as a four-star lieutenant. Shi Xing An explained that Mo Yun seemed to be searching for something and usually operated in higher-leveled battlefields distance away, rarely visiting this area. Ning Yi Yi interjected, revealing that Mo Yun was in search of a Nirvana crystal. Shi Xing An was startled, then immediately understood why. He was well aware of the immense value of the item. It was an ultra-rare material that could significantly increase the probability of a profession's evolution during class transfers. Lin seemed a bit confused. Xu Xing'an patiently explained to Lin that during the second-class transfer, professionals have a slim chance to elevate or enhance their professions. For example, a holy knight like Xu Xing'an could potentially evolve into a holy light knight during this process, jumping from a rare profession to a legendary profession. However, the chances of such an evolution are extremely slim. The Nirvana Crystal, however, changes this dynamic by greatly increasing the likelihood of a successful professional evolution. In the Yuan battlefield, a type of creature known as the Battlefield Wraith, a creature around level 40, has a rare chance of dropping Nirvana crystals. Ning Yi Yi then added, There's also the Battlefield Ghost Emperor, who drops Nirvana crystals, and it's a guaranteed drop. 
Xu Xing'an smiled but shook his head, explaining that what Ning Yi Yi said was true. However, the Battlefield Ghost Emperor is an extremely rare world boss, almost impossible to defeat without a large group of over a hundred people. Ning Yi Yi agreed with a pout. Despite the challenges, Xi Xing An still planned to try his luck in finding a Nirvana crystal before his second class transfer. Lin gained new insights about this rare item. He started to understand that every professional aspires to a profession evolution. But why would Mo Yun, who already has a legendary profession, need it? This must have meant that professional evolution could occur twice. Occurs at level 40 during the second class transfer and the third class transfer at level 70. According to Lin's knowledge from his high school textbooks, other than the hidden professions, legendary professions were already at the pinnacle. If this wasn't the case, could it be that there are levels beyond legendary professions? Lin became more curious when Ning Yi Yi, with a light laughter, showed off her biceps, proudly stating she's a rare profession, the Shadow Assassin. She too planned to seek the Nirvana Crystal before the second class transfer. Lin smiled and proposed that once they reach level 40, they can go together and grind Nirvana crystals. Lin then wondered about the potential upgrades he could gain from his profession evolution. He then realized that he was still far from level 40. For now, he needed to focus on leveling up. Meanwhile, in the abyss, a pair of crimson eyes lit up again, shaking the ground with its emergence and fury, seeking to understand why hundreds of hellhounds were wiped out instantly and how his minion also perished. It attempted to use its abilities to see what had happened in the Yuan battlefield, but was thwarted by an invisible barrier. He screamed and cursed the humans. After a few minutes, it eventually calmed down and closed its eyes once again, this time restoring calm and peace to the abyss. Shortly after it disappeared, four human professionals appeared at the entrance of the abyss, wondering what had caused the flame demon lord to be this angry. Meanwhile, in White Divine's small courtyard, Meng Anwen and White Divine were still sitting quietly across from each other, with Meng Anwen having their eyes closed the entire time. When he finally opened his eyes, White Divine immediately asked, How is it? Meng Anwen, smiling, asked for tea, which White Divine poured with a smile but with a hint of frustration. While enjoying the aroma of the tea, Meng Anwen recounted Lin's experiences on the Yuan battlefield, including how he had slain hundreds of abyssal hellhounds and an abyssal dog demon. And now, Lin had become a five-star private. White Divine was surprised to hear that Lin had achieved five-star private in just two days. Meng Anwen then explained that the flame demon lord guarding the entrance to the abyss had dispatched numerous abyssal hellhounds to the Yuan battlefield, where Lin was ambushed but managed to defeat them, including an abyssal dog demon. White Divine, initially shocked, relaxed upon learning that Lin was safe, and then shifted the conversation to the upcoming professional competition, which both of them anticipated to be very exciting this year. Meng Anwen, with a twinkle in his eye, suddenly smiled and said, Oh goodness, look what's happening here. This time, he saw Lin and Ning Yi Yi were together partying up and running dungeons together. White Divine quickly asked what he had seen. Meng Anwen, stroking his beard with a smile, replied that he had witnessed Old Ning's nemesis. He added with amusement that he suspected Old Ning would be infuriated to death after knowing this. Hearing Meng Anwen mention that Lin and Ning Yi were together, White Divine burst into hearty laughter. He was already eagerly anticipating seeing Old Ning puffing his beard, glaring, yet utterly helpless. Back at the Yuan battlefield, the pair had entered the hell-level difficulty Dragonkin outpost dungeon once more, defeating the final guardians, and Lin leveled up in the process. Ning Yi Yi was even happier than Lin himself about his level up. Lin generously gave Ning Yi Yi any suitable equipment he found, helping her almost assemble a full set of hell outpost gear. Ning Yi Yi realized that in less than a month since they first met, Lin had already reached level 24. Before leaving the dungeon, Lin recasted another skeletal armor on himself and Ning Yi Yi, as he wanted to be extra cautious of any potential abyssal creatures luring outside again this time. This time, surprisingly, was peaceful outside the dungeon entrance. Not long after, nearby, a professional pointed towards a direction, exclaiming about a shikigami. 
In the distance, a large minotaur, pulling a cart, emerged from the mist. Not long after a full eleven-person party from Sakura Nation jumped out, including a legendary Onmyoji professional. The crowd buzzed with chatters, speculating that the party was about to challenge a hell-difficulty dungeon. Rumors circulated about a powerful title awarded for clearing it. But only Ning Yi Yi knew that if such a title existed, Lin would have already earned it from his previous solo runs. She leaned towards Lin and quietly asked him if the rumors were true, which Lin confirmed, stating the title was the War Emperor of the Dragonkin, offering plus 500 to all attributes and reducing all skill costs by 50%. The newly arrived Onmyoji from Sakura Nation noticed Ning Yi Yi, feeling that she looked very familiar. The Onmyoji suddenly jolted when he saw Lin, and he immediately remembered Lin. This was the guy who kicked his butt back on Mermaid Island where Lin had personally killed two of his Shikigami, forcing him to flee in disgrace. The failure of that mission had caused him great humiliation. Filled with resentment, he looked sternly at Lin and then approached him with his party. Despite the bitterness simmering in his heart, the Onmyoji maintained his composure and introduced himself. Sakura Nation, Level 30, Onmyoji, Ueta Tora. In response, Lin reciprocated the courtesy, introducing himself as well. Divine Empire, Level 24 Necromancer, Lin. When the group behind Ueta Tora heard that Lin was only at level 24, they burst into mocking laughter. Some even jeered that people like Lin on the Yuan battlefield were akin to courting death. The entire team joined in the ridicule, all except for Ueta Tora, whose brow furrowed in concern. He was taken aback by how fast Lin had managed to level up. Lin was merely level 17 when they last met. Lin's swift progression sparked a sense of wariness in Weta Tora, especially recalling Lin's terrifying skeletal warriors. He vividly remembered how those skeletons had effortlessly slain his Shikigami with just a few strikes. PTSD kicked in, and the mere thought sent shivers down his spine, almost as if he was reliving a traumatic memory. Ueta Tora knew that if he didn't deal with Lin now, who knows how strong Lin would become in the future. Sensing something amiss, one of his teammates ceased his mockery and approached Ueta Tora. He could feel the murderous intent emanating from Ueta Tora and whispered to him to stay calm, reminding him that they were surrounded by the professional from the Divine Empire. The pressure of hundreds of eyes watching them was immense. Although their group was strong, they doubted they could break through a siege of a hundred professionals. Realizing the gravity of the situation, Ueta Tora took a deep breath, nodded, and then turned to Lin. He declared that they would have a rematch at the professional competition to settle everything once and for all. With these words, he led his team towards the dungeon entrance, but not without turning back to throw a final challenge at Lin. The clown had the audacity to say he hoped Lin wouldn't disappoint him. Well. We all know how this is going to end. Ning Yi, clearly annoyed, remarked that Ueta Tora hesitated because there were too many professionals around. Lin shrugged, saying he didn't care much. Even if he was alone, he wasn't afraid of them. The pair then found a spot to rest and had some food while starting to talk about the upcoming professional competition. This competition was held every five years, a prestigious competition attracting many professionals from around the globe. It wasn't just a competition for combat professions, but a stage for all to showcase their prowess. In addition to combat professions, support and lifestyle professions also had their respective competitions. This time, the event was being hosted in the Divine Empire and will certainly attract countless professionals from around the world. Ning Yi Yi mentioned that they too should participate. For the team competition, they needed to find three more members. In terms of the solo competition, Ning Yi urged Lin to take part, emphasizing the lucrative rewards for winning first place. Lin nodded, his interest in the competition growing. Suddenly, the scene shifted dramatically. The military badges on the shoulders of all divine professionals present began to glow brightly. Swirls of white light enveloped the surroundings, and the atmosphere turned tense within the luminous glow. People around started exclaiming, a divine military order, what's happening? Could it be an abyssal demon invasion? Someone shouted in alarm. The glowing military badges indicated an urgent matter. Then, a deep voice emanated from the badges, 
commanding all nearby Divine Empire professionals to return to the fortress for assembly. The message is repeated three times, underlining the gravity of the situation. Without hesitation, all Divine Empire's professionals nearby activated their teleportation stones and returned to the fortress. Those inside the dungeons also received the orders, promptly exiting the dungeon and teleporting back. Professionals from other nations were stunned by the swift reaction and unity. Lin and Ning Yi appeared together in the fortress. Beams of light flickered as more and more people teleported back. Every face was etched with solemnity. Shi Xing'an had also returned, and upon spotting Lin and Ning Yi, he led his team towards them. Lin's expression was serious as he inquired about the situation. Ning Yi, usually whimsical in her playful demeanor, now bore a rare, serious look. Shi Xing'an pointed towards the demon watch eye atop the fortress, directing their attention there. Lin and Ning Yi simultaneously looked up to see the eye ceasing its rotation and shining a bright light in a specific direction. This only meant one thing. The abyssal demons were approaching from that direction, likely a massive horde of abyssal demons launching their attack. Lin grasped a crucial piece of information, the demon watch eye, which he had underestimated, thinking it merely a surveillance device for abyssal movements, was actually the voice who recalled them back to the fortress. Xu Xing'an smiled and said he too was taken aback when he was summoned by the eye first time a while back. This powerful entity, he explained, often directed and commanded large-scale battles. Even the strongest professionals must listen to its command. A deep voice resonated from everyone's badges again, ordering all professionals below level 30 to mount the city walls. Soon, they were quickly teleported en masse. The voice continued, instructing those under level 30 to not leave the city wall. The city walls were soon crowded with professionals, all below level 30, hastily forming teams. Ning Yi, confident with Lin by her side, felt no need to join another group. As the teams formed, a towering figure appeared on a high platform, clad in full armor, wielding a massive sword, and donning a red cloak. His appearance ignited a wave of excitement among the professionals on and off the wall. This was Nisiong, a level 60 legion overlord. Someone exclaimed in awe, the overlord from the Ni family of the Southwest, a legion profession. This profession would only appear in the Ni family's bloodline. The most crucial profession in the legion, someone shouted. They followed up saying, with him here, victory is certain. Ni Xiong stood under the demon watch eye, lifting his sword high. His voice boomed across the battlefield as he shouted, Follow my command! Form the Legion! Everyone's military badges shimmered as they joined the Legion. Once formed, Ni Xiong, as the Legion commander, announced that all military merits would be collectively gathered and distributed after the battle. He loudly informed everyone that the Legion was formed. Within the Legion, their attacks and abilities would not harm each other, and they were free to unleash their skills. He warned that any cowardice or retreat during battle would be severely punished. After his announcements, he plunged his massive sword into the city wall, and a giant aura emanated from him. The aura rapidly expanded, passing over everyone, whether on the city walls or beyond. Suddenly, the attributes of all the professionals, strength, agility, spirit, and vitality, were all increased by 50%. But that wasn't it. Three more buffs were added. Elemental resistance, magic enhancement, and bloodthirsty attacks. These new buffs offer 50% increased elemental resistance, 30% increased magical spell damage, and a lifesteal ability allowing physical attacks to drain the enemy's health to heal themselves. With these buffs, the entire Legion's combat power surged dramatically. Lin silently regretted that his skeletal warriors couldn't benefit from these buffs. If only they could be amplified with buffs, how great would it be? He thought. Maybe perhaps in the future. Ning Yi suddenly exclaimed, holding onto Lin's arm and urging him to look. Pointing her finger towards Mo Yun, a level 39 holy summoner, who was riding her unicorn, hovering midair, she looked proud and aloof as she surveyed the entire battlefield. She was alone, without any other professionals around her. 
Meanwhile, from a distance, dark mist accompanied by chilly winds approached. Then, a multitude of dark figures burst forth from the mist. Countless enemies appeared on the battlefield. As the abyssal demons rapidly approached, tension gripped the ranks of the professionals. Clutching their weapons, their palms and foreheads damp with sweat, they braced for the onslaught. In this critical moment, Nishiong unleashed his final skill. Skill, morale boost. This skill will remove fear and enhance the fighting spirit. For 10 minutes, increase defense by 30% and attack power by 30%. In the blink of an eye, the abyssal creatures charged forward. Mo Yun, from her elevated position on the unicorn, cast a massive purple orb, hurling it toward the densest cluster of enemies. Dozens of abyssal hellhounds were decimated in an instant, blasted away by the powerful spell. An abyssal demon in the sky taunted with a sneer, impressive little girl, and then charged at Mo Yun with incredible speed, swinging its spiked mace, instantly appeared in front of Mo Yun. Mo Yun's unicorn, reacting swiftly, dodged the attack and delivered a powerful kick to the abyssal demon, sending it flying backward. Meanwhile, on the ground, the warriors and knights roared in unison, their morale bolstered. The first clash with the abyssal hounds erupted. From the city walls, arrows rained down like a storm, and mages unleashed a barrage of elemental spells. Everyone fought with all they had. Lin pointed in a direction and said, Rise, my soldiers. Meanwhile, a legion of skeletons appeared atop the city walls. Lin directed his skeletal warriors to join the fray startling the nearby professionals who mistook the skeletons for the enemy at first. However, seeing the skeletons dive into battle against the abyssal hellhounds, they soon breathed a sigh of relief. Lin's skeletal mages continuously fired spells from the walls, while the skeletal warriors charged into the front lines, instantly alleviating the pressure on the front lines. Watching the skeletons overpower the hellhounds, many nearby professionals' spirits soared. An abyssal dog demon, holding a grievously injured human professional, cursed, damn humans, and hurled the wounded man down. The nearby professionals couldn't assist in time, and their healer was too far away to offer aid. The professional seemed destined to be devoured by the hounds. Lin, observing the entire battlefield from the city walls, witnessed this scene. He quickly realized that apart from Nishiong, who was level 60, the highest professional right now, was Mo Yun, who was level 39. There were no other high-level professionals, nor any had gone the second-class transfer. If the battle continued to drag on, the casualties would be substantial. Lin knew he had to do something. The front line was too far for him to utilize any of his abilities, and relying solely on his legion of skeletons seemed insufficient against the relentless tide of enemies. Suddenly, he looked up and addressed Nishiong, requesting permission to join the battle outside the city wall. Nishiong's gaze fell upon Lin, who took a closer look at this young man. After observing him for a moment, Ning Yi, understanding what Lin was proposing, looked at him with concern and worry, yet she did not intervene. After a brief moment, Nishiong nodded in agreement. Good luck, soldier, he said in a solemn tone. Ning Yi looked towards Lin with concern in her eyes, her voice soft as she said, Please be careful. Lin looked at her with a smile before turning away, and with a wave of his hands, he diligently leaped off the city wall. Summoning his scythe, he strode directly to the front line. Facing the incoming danger, not a single trace of fear can be seen on his face. Confident as he is, a smile appeared across his face as he thought, there's no way he is going to waste all these opportunities for merit and experience points. Many professionals saw Lin leap down from the safety of the city walls, puzzled as to why he would do such a thing. Soon, Shu Xing'an also spotted Lin. While he himself was engaged in a fierce battle against several abyssal hellhounds, he pushed the hellhounds away and turned his head to ask why was Lin here. The army of skeletons nearby and on top of the city walls began to converge towards Lin. With a calm and faint voice, Lin said he was there to wipe the entire abyssal creature out. His words seemed to carry an undeniable air of authority. Not long after, high above, several abyssal dog demons noticed Lin. They barked furiously, yelling out, It's him, the one who killed our pups! 
How dare he leave the city walls? Kill him! Instantly under the command, thousands of hellhounds veered towards Lin. One of the abyssal dog demons, who were originally engaged with Mo Yun, also changed its target and charged towards Lin. At this very moment, Lin had become the focal point of hatred for all the abyssal creatures. The abyssal demons and hellhounds were now mere steps away from him, unfazed and somewhat excited. With a slight smile, Lin pressed his palm slightly, donning himself in skeletal armor. He then unleashed his skill, slow curse, and suddenly countless shackles appeared from thin air, entangling all enemies within a radius of a thousand meters. Their speed drastically reduced, and it almost looked like they were moving in slow motion. Xu Xing'an was one of the few who had witnessed Lin's skill before. While others watched in amazement, Several other professionals were stunned to see the abyssal hounds moving in slow motion. The once ferocious and terrifying creature somehow looked awfully funny. They shook their heads and rubbed their eyes, wondering if they were dreaming, unable to believe that such a powerful skill could cover almost the entire battlefield. Looking at the corpses of the abyssal hellhounds strewn across the battlefield, Lin knew exactly what he should do now. Only a battlefield littered with bodies could truly maximize the effectiveness of his corpse explosion. His hands shimmered with a red glow as he targeted the densest cluster of bodies. Then, he used corpse explosion. The abyssal demons looked down and sensed danger, but it was way too late. Suddenly, the bodies of several hellhounds began to swell, with flames visibly expanding within them. And then, boom! With a violent explosion, swathes of abyssal hounds were blown apart. The abyssal dog demons nearby were hit hard, screeching as they were blown away. As everyone watched in horror, the explosions continued relentlessly. Wave after wave and waves of abyssal hellhounds were obliterated. One of the abyssal demons was lucky as it only got sent flying instead of getting killed on the spot. It suddenly changed direction to flee, flying as fast as it could repeatedly glancing back at Lin in disbelief, wondering, what kind of human is this? As it fled, suddenly heard a voice as if coming from the depth of hell, a chilling and cold voice rang out questioning, where do you think you're going? The abyssal demon turned towards the voice, and suddenly, its vision was engulfed in a bright red light. No, it screamed, as explosions continued to vibrate across the battlefield. The number of enemies was visibly shrinking. While enjoying this unique form of fireworks, Lin received countless system notifications, informing him of his kills of abyssal demons and hellhounds. As the explosion gradually faded, Lin swiftly moved across the battlefield. Unbeknownst to him, the human professionals had all come to a halt. Everyone was utterly astounded by what had just transpired. Mo Yun, shielding her eyes from the intense blaze radiating from the continuous explosion, struggled to open them, watching Lin, while thinking, is this what his skills are capable of? Everyone on the front line gulped in unison, some dropping their weapons, bewildered, asked a question on everyone's mind. What kind of skill is this? How can it be this terrifying? Another professional asked, could that young man be a professional that already gone through second-class transfer? Someone beside him shook his head, remarking that, not even second-class transfer professionals could do this. Hearing everyone nearby discussing Lin and the necromancer profession, Xu Xing'an proudly gazed at Lin's back, laughing as he proudly said, That's Lin, a student from our Xiajing Academy. After several minutes of continuous explosions, there weren't many enemies left on the battlefield. Lin ordered his skeletal warriors to seek out any remaining foes. As he was determined to clear the battlefield thoroughly, he wouldn't let a single enemy escape. Mo Yun, sitting atop her unicorn, watched Lin in the distance, recalling her first encounter with him just hours earlier. The uncomfortable aura she had initially felt was due to Lin's undead summons, but she never imagined Lin would be this powerful. The skeletal warriors, wielding their massive great swords, unleashed rampage strikes and relentlessly slashed at the last abyssal hellhound. Suddenly, one of the skeletal warriors was attacked from behind and was instantly obliterated. While that happened, Lin immediately felt he lost connection with one of his skeletal warriors. 
narrowing his eyes as he gazed towards the direction of the fallen skeletal warrior. A sinister voice emerged from the darkness. It was obvious as it recognized Lin. The voice, calling out Lin's name, emerging from the swirling black mist, said, So it was you who killed those little pups before. I remember you now, human of the Divine Empire, Lin, the necromancer. The voice becomes more chilling as it swears that he will make Lin pay with his blood. The voice from the black mist became crazed and venomous, wishing to kill Lin on the spot. Lin, unconcerned by the threats, to everyone's surprise, Lin walked towards the mist. All of the professionals looked on in shock, confused about Lin's intentions. One of them exclaimed that the black mist was a portal created by an abyssal demon lord, and another expressed fear, saying the mist was beyond their capability to handle. Suddenly someone shouted, Look at his skeletons! Behind Lin, dozens of skeletal warriors appeared, each dragging the corpse of an abyssal hellhound and rushing forward. They soon sprinted passing Lin and hurled the bodies into the black mist. Just as the hellhound corpses were about to fall into the black mist, Lin activated his skill, detonating them with corpse explosion. One after another, the corpses of the abyssal hellhounds exploded, creating a deafening sequence of blasts. The black mist churned violently, twisting and dissipating more intensely than before. From within, a roar echoed, I will kill you, I swear I will. Although the voice was furious, it was clear that whatever was inside hadn't been injured. Lin sighed, slightly disappointed. He lamented, even such a massive explosion couldn't land a scratch on the abyssal demon within the mist, realizing the vast gap between their levels. Not only was the abyssal demon unharmed, but even the teleportation portal it had set up remained fully intact. Lin shook his head, realizing he still had a long way to go. As Lin turned to walk away, suddenly, a pair of crimson eyes, burning with fierce flames, appeared within the black mist. The moment the eyes appeared, Lin sensed danger and quickly retreated, his skeletal warriors forming a wall behind him to protect against oncoming danger. In an instant, the eyes shot out two red lasers, almost as if they were also from planet Krypton, instantly melting the skeletal warriors like butter, annihilating several of them instantly. The laser was not stopped and it struck Lin, causing his skeletal armor to burst into a brilliant light. Lin was thrown backward, the first time he had been repelled while wearing his skeletal armor. To his surprise, he saw cracks forming on the skeletal armor, and with a crisp snap, it shattered after holding up for just two seconds. Lin let out a deep grunt. The moment his skeletal armor dissipated, his passive damage transfer was activated. The damage Lin was meant to suffer was transferred all onto his skeletons. Cracks appeared on a dozen skeletons, and in an instant, hundreds of them were instantly destroyed. At that very moment, the demon watch eye reacted, instantly transporting Lin onto the city walls. The laser flew towards the fortress instead, and an invisible barrier appeared and surrounded the fortress, protecting everyone. The impact caused the entire city wall to vibrate. However, there's no other damage. The demon watch eye emitted a brilliant light, then shot a beam directly into the black mist. A scream erupted from the mist, which began to fade and vanish. Along with a shrill cry, the voice cursed the humans and cursed Lin. It shouted saying it would not let Lin get away next time. The voice repeated Lin's name three times before disappearing. Ning Yi Yi ran swiftly towards Lin, who had just appeared on the city wall. She circled him anxiously checking for injuries, and asked with concern, Are you all right? Ning Yi Yi's face was etched with worry, her hand gripping Lin's, trembling incessantly. Lin shook his head and replied, I'm fine. He hadn't anticipated the immense power of whatever was within the black mist, most likely belonging to an abyssal demon lord. He had been too careless, perhaps even too arrogant. He got full of himself and was not expecting that the demon lord could attack him through the teleportation portal. The laser had been overwhelmingly powerful. Even through the teleportation portal, his skeletal armor could only withstand it for two seconds. Lin remarked with relief that it was fortunate he had his damage transfer ability, or he would have been in serious trouble. It had been a long time since Lin needed to use damage transfer. He realized he had been complacent, 
arrogantly attempting to destroy the Black Mist and underestimating the true power of the Abyss. He sighed, acknowledging the grave danger he had faced just moments earlier. If not for the demon watch eye transporting him back to the wall, he might have been instantly killed. The loss of a hundred skeletal warriors was a heavy price to pay. Witnessing the power of those pair of eyes ignited his fighting spirit. Squinting his eyes towards the direction where the black mist had vanished, he thought determinedly, Abyssal demon lord, just wait for me. Moments later, the protective barrier over the fortress gradually dissipated. The demon watch eye began to rotate again, signaling the end of the battle. The professionals sat down exhaustedly on the ground, while Ni Xiong, standing at the highest point of the fortress, announced in a deep voice, Now, we will begin distributing military merits. A hushed silence fell over the city walls, as everyone eagerly awaited the speech of the Legion commander, Ni Xiong. His voice, deep and resonant, reached every ear clearly. He informed everyone that in this battle, they have annihilated 10,000 abyssal hellhounds and 100 abyssal demons. The total military merit for killing enemies and defending the city sums up to 25,000 points. He looked at the thousand human professionals below. With a total of 1,052 professionals defending today, excluding Lin and Mo Yun, each person will receive 20 merits. Mo Yun will receive 500 merits, and Lin will be receiving 3,500. This outcome was expected by everyone. No one raised any objections. Mo Yun smiled while looking at Lin, almost becoming a fangirl and had no objections either. Many whispered among themselves, asserting that at least 80% of the abyssal hellhounds were slain by Lin. Without him, they doubted whether they could have made it out unharmed. And of course, there's Logan, who stood at a distance, disgruntled. He thought to himself, why does Lin get 3,500 and he only gets 20? He thought it was unfair, but remembering Lin's strength, he dared only to harbor these thoughts in his mind. Lin grasped his scythe, sensing that it had absorbed a significant number of abyssal souls during the previous battle. Though there were no system notifications this time, he could feel the transformation occurring in the scythe. Soon, the military badges of everyone began to glow as merits flowed into them. Ning Yi, holding her badge, happily announced her advancement to a two-star private, amused that she had gained 20 merits without doing much on the city walls. Lin's badge shone particularly bright. Stars kept appearing on his badge until the tenth star emerged. Then the badge vibrated intensely, and as the stars disappeared, the badge transformed from white to silver. Many noticed this change and realized that Lin had skipped corporal and ascended from a private to a lieutenant. Everyone looked at Lin with a new sense of respect. Ning Yi, observing Lin's badge, placed her right hand over her chest and bowed, saying, Greetings, officer. Lin smiled upon seeing Ning Yi's playful salute. She joyfully remarked that Lin must be the youngest lieutenant. Shortly after, Legion Commander Ni Xiong approached the crowd and continued, Lin, at 18 years old, is the Empire's youngest lieutenant. By special approval, he is hereby awarded a new title, the Star of the Empire. As Ni Xiong finished speaking, Lin's badge erupted with brilliant light and the new title appeared above his head. A system notification announced the new title, granting plus 300 to all attributes, a 20% reduction in skill consumption, and a 10% reduction in damage taken. Lin glanced at the title's attributes, noting that it was inferior to his War Emperor of the Dragonkin title. Since the two titles couldn't stack on top of each other, given the obvious choice, he had to choose the better title. Ni Xiong looked at Lin with a mix of surprise and curiosity, asking if he already had a title. His question drew everyone's attention. Lin nodded and explained that he had earned the War Emperor of the Dragonkin title from the Dragonkin Frontline Outpost Dungeon on Hell Difficulty. Ni Xiong looked intrigued, having never heard of such a title before. Lin didn't conceal anything and shared how he obtained the title. Lin's words caused a wave of astonishment among the crowd. Everyone present, without exception, was in disbelief. The murmurs began to spread, 
The legend was true. There were indeed titles to be gained from the Hell Difficulty Outpost Dungeon. To learn that Lin soloed a Hell Difficulty Dragonkin Outpost Dungeon somehow didn't make many surprises. The idea of soloing a Hell Difficulty Dungeon and single-handedly eliminating tens of thousands of abyssal hellhounds seemed to be a perfect fit for Lin. Even Mo Yun, usually the ever-so-proud, looked at Lin with a mix of disbelief and awe. She had tried to solo the dungeon herself, but had to retreat in disarray, nearly losing her life in the process. Her recollection of that near-death experience still haunted her. Since this title was unheard of, Nixiong asked Lin to share the title's attributes and the method of obtaining it, planning to record it in the Empire's database. His tone was more of a request than an order, and Lin did not hesitate to respond. Lin explained everything from the attributes and the way to obtain them. Nixiong's eyes gleamed with admiration. He laughed heartily, then patted Lin on the shoulder, joyfully declaring that their empire had gained another prodigy. He thanked Lin for providing this information, and in exchange, granted him access to the military facilities within the fortress. Lin was slightly surprised by this offer. Some facilities in the fortress were restricted military assets, generally off limits to anyone below the rank of a three star lieutenant. Lin, having just been promoted to lieutenant, would normally not qualify. Lin then noticed the badge on Nixiong's chest, a purple badge with three stars. Nixiong smiled, reminding Lin that although he could use the military facilities, it would still cost merits, advising him to use them sparingly. Lin nodded in understanding and expressed his gratitude to the Legion commander for his generous offer. Returning to the high platform, Nixiong finally issued the last command of the day. His voice resonated powerfully. This battle is concluded. The Legion is dismissed. With that, the sudden and intense battle drew to a close. Normalcy began to return as people gradually started to leave. This gave Lin a chance to finally examine his scythe. He could feel that the transformation of the scythe was nearing completion. At that moment, the dark glow emanating from the scythe began to fade, revealing its basic information. Following the battle, Lin's scythe had leveled up to level 25, with a 3,000 increase in spirit attributes. However, it had reached its limit. The scythe required the completion of a set to unlock further spirit attributes increase. Lin was somewhat surprised. He hadn't expected the attribute of his scythe to reach its limit so soon. He pondered over where he could obtain the rest of the set. It seemed he might need to revisit the trading post to gather information about the set pieces. The level 25 scythe unlocked a new skill called Soul Summoning. This skill allowed the scythe to save the souls of defeated bosses, consuming 1,000 spirit points to summon the boss's soul for combat, lasting up to three minutes. Lin found this skill intriguing. Gripping his scythe firmly, he prepared to return to the outpost dungeon to test the new ability. Not long after, Xu Xing'an approached Lin with a serious expression. He reported that other than their fortress, but also fortresses number seven and eight had been attacked. Many high-level professionals weren't present at their fortress because they had been summoned to support the other two fortresses. Xu Xing'an sighed, mentioning that the battles there had been very fierce in the other two fortresses. From Xu Xing'an's account, Lin learned about the broader situation. Not only their empire, but other nations had also faced varying degrees of attack. Xu Xing'an added that their fortress was the furthest from the abyss, and the other nine fortresses along the way had blocked the majority of abyssal forces. Additionally, the empire's top powerhouses had set up multiple defenses, preventing the transportation of overly powerful demons to their current location. However, Recalling Lin's impulsive actions from earlier, Xu Xing'an warned him that the situation wasn't completely safe. While direct transportation of powerful abyssal demons was difficult, some specialized in stealth and could potentially infiltrate for assassination purposes. He cautioned Lin to be vigilant at all times. Ning Yi Yi also expressed her concern, noting that the abyssal demon lord from the Black Mist had clearly marked Lin, urging him to be extra cautious in future battles. Acknowledging the risks, Lin assured them that he would be careful. Ning Yi's communicator suddenly rang, surprising her. She glanced at the device to find it was a call from her grandfather. 
A voice, aged yet strong, came through the communicator, asking where she was. Ning Yi, a bit puzzled, replied that she was at Fortress Number One. The voice on the other end seemed to breathe a sigh of relief and instructed her to stay put, saying he would be there soon. After the call, Ning Yi told Lin that her grandfather was coming to see her. She appeared slightly anxious, to which Lin thoughtfully remarked that her grandfather must be worried about her. Soon, an old man appeared from the teleportation array. Dressed in all black, his hair was fully white but still had a tall and robust physique. Lin looked on with a slight surprise, recognizing that this was no ordinary elder. The old man's badge was identical to that of White Divine, a five-star general. Ning Yi Yi greeted her grandfather sweetly as Ning Tai ran and stepped out of the teleportation array, visibly relieved to see her unharmed. However, his demeanor changed in an instant, his eyes narrowing dangerously as he spotted his granddaughter standing next to a man, and he recognized the man, no other than Lin. Old Ning called out sternly. Lin was taken aback by the sudden call, surprised that Ning Yi Yi's grandfather knew him. Ning Yi, hearing her grandfather's stern tone, quickly stood in front of Lin and defensively asked her grandfather what he intended to do. Seeing Ning Yi, old Ning's intimidating aura instantly dissipated, replaced by a smile as he jokingly claimed he just wanted to test the young man's courage. However, internally, old Ning was furious and somewhat irked, wondering why is Lin with his precious granddaughter, thinking to himself how annoying this was, much like the irritation he felt towards White Divine. Recognizing the badge, Lin immediately there was only one man's last name starting with Ning, the principal of Xia Jing Academy, also the hero of the empire frequently mentioned in textbooks and renowned alongside the White Divine. As Ning Yi Yi introduced Lin, he respectfully bowed to old Ning. Old Ning waved his hand, indicating no need for such formality although his tone remained somewhat stern when addressing Lin. He kept glancing at the two, and then expressed his annoyance that White Divine had allowed Ning Yi Yi to undertake missions in the Yuan battlefield this early. Ning Yi, with a hint of mischief, retorted that her task was assigned by her grandfather himself. This revelation made old Ning visibly irritated, accusing White Divine of not consulting him first before sending Ning Yi Yi on such missions. He then insisted that Ning Yi Yi returns with him, reaching out to take her hand, but she dodged him. Clutching Lin's arm, Ning Yi Yi asserted that her grandfather had always taught her to see things through to the end, and that she must complete her task in the Yuan battlefield assigned to her before returning. Old Ning's frustration grew upon seeing his granddaughter clinging to Lin. His tone carried an implicit threat, obviously wanting Lin to persuade Ning Yi Yi to leave with him. Ning Yi Yi stood her ground, defending Lin from the threat and insisting on continuing her leveling with Lin on the Yuan battlefield. Old Ning sighed and then suggested he would arrange for some people to accompany and protect Ning Yi Yi. But she quickly dismissed the idea, confidently stating, No need for that. Lin will protect her and take her for solo hell difficult dungeon runs. Old Ning was taken aback and then protested, deeming it too dangerous. Ning Yi Yi then pulled out her Hell Outpost dagger to her grandfather, clearly indicating they had already cleared the Hell Difficulty dungeon. Recognizing the dagger, old Ning was in disbelief that the two had already tackled the dungeon. Ning Yi Yi giggled and playfully stuck out her tongue, saying, Actually, it's Lin carrying her, and she simply follows along without doing much. Lin stepped forward assuring him earnestly that he would take good care of Ning Yi Yi. Recalling Lin's previous accomplishment of carrying 39 people through the Tyrant Desert Dungeon, old Ning relaxed a bit. This revelation eased his concerns about his granddaughter's safety. After pondering for a while, old Ning nodded in acknowledgement and then turned to leave, planning to have a serious discussion with the White Divine about the matter later. As old Ning turned away to leave, Yi Yi immediately waved her hands while calling out to her grandfather that they would return once the professional competition began in a few days. Old Ning nodded, casting a final glance back at Lin, thinking to himself that with this young man around, there shouldn't be much to worry about. However, he made a mental note to go back and ask the other two old folks more about Lin. 
Lin silently bid farewell to old Ning. He mused to himself, a bit surprised yet baffled, that the nemesis of this hero of the human race and the principal of Xia Jing Academy was none other than Yi Yi. Shortly after, they arrived at the military facilities located within the fortress. Lin, using the privileges given by Ni Xiong, got access to the military facilities, where he was taken to a room with a large screen to see what was available to him. He carefully examined the options on the panel. The first option was the officer's rest area, which accelerates recovery and quickly eliminates fatigue. The second option was the officer's skill training ground, which speeds up spirit recovery and elevates skill training. The third option was the officer's teleportation array, allows transportation to designated locations. Last was the military merit exchange, a place where officers can use military merits to purchase corresponding supplies. Nothing was much of a help to him right now, but Lin was particularly interested in the military merit exchange, and after selecting the last option, quickly, the panel displayed the items available for purchase. Most of these items were consumables, such as anti-curse potions, which increased curse resistance for 30 minutes, as well as instant escape talisman for instantly leaving dungeons, and basic recovery potions, which heal injuries and restore 500 spirit points upon each usage, but had a one-minute cooldown. Lin purchased two instant escape talismans, and after deducting the military merits, he examined the two talismans in his hand. He noted that the military merits in the Yuan battlefield were somewhat similar to the points in the academy, but overuse could lead to a demotion in military rank. Recalling Nishiong's advice earlier, Lin decided he should use them sparingly. Leaving the military facility, Lin returned to the entrance and handed one talisman to Ning Yi Yi, who was waiting outside for him. It's always good to have something as a precaution, and the talisman will come in handy if something bad ever happens. Yi Yi happily took the talisman pocketed and thanked him. Recalling Yi Yi's background, she probably has tons of these things to keep her safe, but every time Lin gifts her something, it always seems to make her happy. Just then, a female voice called out Yi Yi's name from behind. Yi Yi turned around to find out it was Mo Yun. She had fought alongside them on the fortress walls. Mo Yun, who also seemed to have come from the military facility, Yi Yi joyfully called her sister Yun, and from their conversation, it seemed like they had a quite close relationship. Mo Yun walked towards the pair, then greeted them, then curiously stared at the two. She glanced at Lin for a second and asked Yi Yi, with a hint of confusion, if he was her. Before Mo Yun could finish, Yi Yi, blushing slightly, walked over to her and took her arm before yelling out Sister Yun, interrupting what Mo Yun was about to say, then asked if she needed anything. Mo Yun, observing them, smiled, and then handed Yi Yi two small diamond-shaped gems, no other than the destination teleportation stones that could transport them to any specified location. Mo Yun mentioned that one of the stones was for Lin, explaining she had been searching for the battlefield ghost emperor. If she found it, she wanted Lin and Yi Yi to help her out. The battlefield ghost emperor, Lin recalled, was a world-class boss in the Yuan battlefield, known for dropping Nirvana crystals as guaranteed loot. However, this boss was elusive, appearing briefly and changing locations frequently. Even if discovered, it was challenging to assemble a team quickly enough. Mo Yun followed up by saying it was a guaranteed drop, and it usually dropped between three to six Nirvana crystals, of which she only needed one. Lin and Yi Yi could both get one. Later, Mo Yun told them the item would benefit them greatly. Without waiting for their response, she left. Lin and Yi Yi were somewhat surprised, especially Yi Yi. Lin noted that the Battlefield Ghost Emperor was a level 38 world-class boss. While he was only level 24, he wasn't sure how strong the boss was. Yi Yi giggled, saying she definitely couldn't be much of a help either. It's probably because Mo Yun had heard about Lin's ability to solo the Hell Difficulty Dragonkin Outpost Dungeon and saw him as a valuable ally. Yi Yi was sure that Lin was able to defeat the Battlefield Ghost Emperor. Lin contemplated and realized that Mo Yun probably couldn't defeat the Battlefield Ghost Emperor alone and didn't trust strangers either. However, due to Yi Yi's presence, she trusted Lin, also acknowledging his strength. After thinking for a bit, Lin nodded. 
Yi Yi then mentioned that the battlefield ghost emperor was extremely rare. It would take several days, if not weeks, to spot one. In the meantime, they might be able to level up a few more times before getting called over. After checking both of their cooldown amulets, Lin had eight uses left, and Yi Yi had nine. They decided to call it a day, rest for the night, and resume dungeon grinding tomorrow. The following morning, Lin and Yi Yi left the fortress and headed towards the Dragonkin Outpost Dungeon. In front of the dungeon entrances, one of a younger professional noticed Yi Yi. He was stunned by her looks and even whistled at her beauty, but his friends quickly stopped him by covering their hands over his mouth, warning him that the girl over there was not someone he should be messing with. Most of them here had witnessed Lin's prowess against the abyssal demons on the city wall. They slowly recounted the previous day's events, leaving the whistleblower in awe and quickly recognized his foolishness. As Lin and Yi Yi entered the area, all the professionals from the Divine Empire stood up to show their respect to Lin. Yi Yi whispered to Lin that everyone was looking at him, probably acknowledging his performance in the previous day's battle. Shortly after, the two entered the Hell-level difficulty outpost dungeon. Once inside the dungeon, Lin opened his stat window. After a night's rest, he had replenished most of his skeleton army, healing the injured and replacing those lost in battle. With the title War Emperor of the Dragonkin, providing him extra attribute boost and skill consumption reduction, and alongside Thanatos Scythe's spirit point bonus, he not only replaced the skeletons slain by the Abyssal Demon Lord, but also summoned many more. Now, he has a total of 240 skeletons under his command, including 150 skeletal warriors and 90 skeletal mages. Not long after, the grind begins. Within less than four hours, they reach the final boss. Recalling his scythe's new ability, Lin decided to test it on the outpost guardian. After commanding his skeleton army to attack, the guardian quickly fell before him. Raising his scythe, Lin used the soul-summoning skill. Instantly, a phantom appeared over the outpost guardian, slowly forming into a spectral version of itself before being absorbed by the scythe. The guardian once again dropped many loots, which Ning Yi Yi picked up and handed to Lin. This time, another hell outpost dagger was dropped, and she asked Lin if she could keep the dagger. Without a second thought, Lin handed it over to her, even knowing she already had one, but he didn't care. Yi Yi thanked Lin, and then giggled while saying she had it for other purposes. As usual, after equipping themselves with another skeletal armor, they left the dungeon, ready to re-enter it again. For the pair, battling in the hell-level difficulty dungeon was like a leisurely date, filled with laughter and ease. If anyone else sees this, imagine how jealous they'd be. Anyway, as they emerged outside the dungeon entrance, someone shouted towards them to make way. They were slightly surprised, wondering if abyssal demons had appeared outside again. Soon they realized that they were surrounded by a group of people blocking the dungeon entrance. A large red carpet lay before them, and a carriage was approaching not far from them, with over a dozen people on the side riding horses as if welcoming someone important. An orange-haired man approached Lin, not getting a response. He tried to push him aside to clear the path, but was surprised to see Lin didn't move a single step. The man put more effort into pushing Lin for the second time, but it felt as if he was pushing a non-movable object. He then shifted his target to Yi Yi, standing next to Lin, and before he could lay his hands on Yi Yi, a skeletal warrior jumped from behind, then swung its great sword fiercely at him, causing the man to retreat hastily. The sword nearly cut him in half, only inches away from his crotch almost cutting off the very two inches he was proud of. The great sword landed on the ground, shattering a piece of the carpet. The man, visibly startled by the sudden appearance of a skeleton, the horsemen on the side soon drew their weapons pointing at the pair. Yi Yi recognized them as people from the Guru church and told Lin to be cautious. Lin recognized the name and knew they were a foreign power, quite a powerful faction too. A command from the carriage halted the conflict, and the horsemen sheathed their weapons, one hand on their chest, saluting towards the carriage. A young man in luxurious shining armor stepped out of the carriage and walked onto the red carpet. The armor he was wearing was luxurious and exquisite, 
you can tell that it is not ordinary gold tier equipment from dungeon drops. These are handcrafted gold tier equipment from the most elite blacksmith. Looking at the man's jewelry, it's also handcrafted by alchemists. This equipment may not be as good as the Hell Outpost set, but they are definitely stronger than the Nightmare Outpost set. The moment he stepped out of the carriage, he was immediately drawn to Yi Yi, his expression changing slightly. Oh well, I think we all know where this is going. He reprimanded the man who had tried to push Lin and Yi Yi, and then introduced himself as rogues from the Guro Church, a level 31 fire god warrior. A <laughs> Upon hearing this, it caused a stir among the onlookers, as the fire god warrior was a powerful legendary profession unique to the Guro Church, believed to inherit the power of a fire god. However, a dismissive comment from someone in the crowd downplayed his status, suggesting he was merely a warrior with a fire attribute, no relation with fire gods or whatnot. A female professional added that only professionals like Lin, who is capable of slaying thousands of abyssal demons, are truly worthy of being called powerful. Without waiting for Lin and Yi Yi to introduce themselves, Rogues extended his right hand to Yi Yi, inviting her to join him in a dungeon run. Yi Yi showed a rare look of disdain. She didn't know why, though, but her intuition told her that beneath Rogues' exquisite exterior, she sensed that he was one of those fake people. The way his subordinate treated other people earlier had given her a glimpse of Rogues' true character. N Noticing Yi Yi's discomfort, Lin immediately stepped in between them, blocking Rogues from going anywhere near Yi Yi, while giving Rogues a reality check, bluntly telling Rogues that he's not qualified to carry anyone. Oof, go tell him, Lin. Put him in his place. I think perhaps Rogues can carry himself a pair of diapers because soon it will come in very handy. Rogues, like most spoiled brats, have never been put into his place before and are usually revered back in the Guro Church was momentarily stunned when Lin gave him a reality check. Usually, those who dared to say such a thing to him were swiftly dealt with by his subordinates. Yet, in his quest to impress the girl before him, Rogues tried his best to hold in his anger. Even though his lips kept twitching from the rage, he retorted that Lin, merely a level 25, was far less qualified than him. Lin, undisturbed, shook his head, as if Rogues was too insignificant to warrant a debate. Observing Lin's dismissive expression, Rogues let out a smirk. Pointing at Lin, he raised his voice, hoping to embarrass him before everyone. He mockingly remarked how low-level Lin was and how he should think outside the box. There are plenty of people stronger than him. He questioned if Lin even knew what dungeon he planned to tackle. Lin remained unfazed, looking at Rogues as one might regard a fool. Rogues, on the other hand, took Lin's lack of response as fear only flamed his desire to show off more. Unaware of the surrounding gazes, Rogues announced his intention to solo the infamous hell-level difficultly Dragonkin outpost dungeon and claim the legendary coveted title. Turning to Ning Yi with a smug grin, he promised to return and invite her after his triumphant solo run. Yi Yi struggled to hold back her laughter until she couldn't anymore. The crowd around them burst into laughter. Some even twirled their fingers around their temples, looking at Rogues as if he were a clown. No idea what he said was funny, but the surrounding laughter fumed his anger. Clenching his fists, he kept his cool. Then, his subordinate hurriedly whispered in his ear, telling him the title had already been claimed. With an awkward look, the subordinate glanced at Lin and quietly said the person who managed to solo the hell-level difficulty Dragonkin outpost dungeon was none other than Lin the supposedly low-level necromancer standing before him. Rogues finally realized why Ning Yi Yi and the surrounding professionals were laughing at him. They all knew from the start the title had been claimed. Thinking how he just made a fool of himself, his face shifted from red to pale. Although embarrassed, a dangerous glint appeared in his eyes, looking at Lin's back signaling his murderous intent. Holding his hands out, gestures for his subordinates to gather. After gathering all his subordinates, they dismounted and formed a circle around rogues. He whispered instructions to them, inaudible to onlookers. The expressions of his subordinates suggested nervousness. No one dared to question rogues openly, but his sidekick hesitated, asking if it was wise to do this over here, especially in the Divine Empire territory, 
dominated and surrounded by Divine Empire's professionals. Any misstep could have serious consequences. Rogues, with a sinister smile, reassured them that as long as they were discreet, there would be no issues. Even if something went wrong, no one would find out it was them. And as for that Lin guy, others would assume he perished in the dungeon. Meanwhile, Lin and Yi Yi, unaware of Rogues' sinister plot, re-entered the dungeon. As they vanished into the dungeon entrance, Rogues quickly retrieved a scroll. Activating it, the scroll shone a few times. Holding in his hand was no other than a rare dungeon-tracking scroll, capable of following others into their dungeon. Rogues, with his team, also disappeared into the dungeon entrance. The surrounding professionals, with no idea what was going on, simply resumed mocking Rogues. They jeered, questioning his earlier claim of soloing the dungeon, now that he was entering with a team. Only a few observant individuals noticed Rogues using a scroll before stepping into the dungeon. Upon entering the dungeon, Lin sent out his skeletal warriors to search for mobs to kill on their own. Suddenly, Lin sensed something and turned around to look at the dungeon entrance. Yi Yi followed his gaze, only to see Rogues and about a dozen of his men appearing at the entrance. Both Lin and Yi Yi were surprised to see Rogues and his group. With a sinister smile, Rogues asked if they were surprised to see him here. He then pulled out another scroll and activated it in front of them. The scroll glimmered twice before emitting a strange aura that enveloped the entire dungeon. Rogues glared at them with murderous intent, having learned from his subordinates that Lin had soloed the Hell-level difficulty dungeon and obtained the title. Now, Rogues believed the only way for him to claim the title was to kill Lin. Yi Yi recognized the scroll Rogues was holding as a teleportation seal scroll, which upon activation would prevent anyone from using the dungeon escape talisman. She quickly took out her dungeon escape talisman to check. No surprise to see the talisman had lost its earlier glow, and their talismans had become dull and ineffective. As Rogues approached them with a cold smirk, he was no longer acting cool and composed. Holding his arms out, he taunted the pair and asked if they were feeling despair and fear, telling them this was the consequence of angering the Guru Church. Approaching Yi Yi, he revealed a disgusting smile and said, Don't worry, beautiful lady, I won't kill you so easily. You'll make a fine toy. Yi Yi, far from being scared, felt only disgust at his perverted words. Lin, initially angered, soon let out a chilling laughter. He knew better than to kill someone from another nation in public, to avoid unnecessary trouble. Rogues, listening to Lin's laughter, felt an ominous premonition. Lin summoned his scythe, and the atmosphere inside the dungeon grew heavy and ominous. While smiling, he told Rogues, he might have misunderstood something. They were not the one being trapped. It's Rogues, who is trapped here, with him. Lin's gaze turned cold as his lips curled into a cold, cruel smile. Rogues didn't immediately understand Lin's words. Suddenly, the sound of clattering bones and footsteps echoed. A horde of skeletons, wielding giant great swords, emerged from the dense fog inside the forest, charging at Rogues and his men. Lin had summoned them to clear the dungeon but had called them back when Rogues appeared. With Rogues' intentions now clear, Lin saw no need to hold back. In an instant, the skeletons surrounded Rogues and his men. Rogues, slightly panicked and confused, obviously underestimated Lin's abilities. Lin was speechless and had never thought his opponent would be stupid enough to run to his death without knowing who he was up against. Rogues used a detection spell on the skeletons, noting their low attributes, clearly unaware of Lin's unique amplification talents. Despite being surrounded, Rogues didn't believe the skeletons could harm him. After all, he was the legendary fire god warrior. With a shout, he ordered his men to attack. What followed was his body began to emerge in flames. His blonde hair instantly turned fiery red, his body glowing with intense flames, turning red as well. Engulfed in towering flames, Rogues' body grew significantly larger. Like many typical villains, he had a lot to say, even taking the time to boast about his abilities. He introduced his fire god's body. I didn't even bother to try to translate this into some fancy name, because we all know what will happen next. Anyway, in this state, Rogues tripled all his attributes, skill attack power, and reduced damage taken by three times, 
rendering him immune to all crowd control skills. Looking at Lin's legion of skeletons disdainfully, he mocked, questioning if Lin was planning to use these ragged skeletons to fight him. Then, pulling out a golden greatsword, he laughed maniacally. Rogues's subordinates, mostly support professionals, started to apply buffs to him with various status enhancements, their confidence in him evident as they chanted, His Highness will triumph. Rogues, brimming with confidence, felt he was invincible. Lin nodded a few times, slightly impressed by the so-called legendary profession. Under normal circumstances, a single blow from his skeletal warriors should have killed rogues, but now it would take at least two, he surmised. Lin decided not to waste time and cast a slowing curse. While rogues was indeed immune to the curse, the others behind him were not. Red shackles appeared on everyone's body, and their movements drastically slowed. As the skeletal army charged, they struggled to retreat, but it was as if they were standing still. The support started to cast a cleansing spell. Rogues bellowed, swinging his greatsword at an approaching skeletal warrior. The clash of the golden sword and the skeleton's great sword resonated loudly. The skeleton remained unmoved, but rogues recoiled in pain, shocked by the skeletal warrior's terrifying strength. The other skeletons ignored rogues and charged at his subordinates. One of the knights broke free from the curse, wielding a giant shield, stood at the forefront, and was instantly overwhelmed. His shield shattered under a single blow from the skeletal warrior, and he was sent flying, screaming in terror and gushing out blood, bewildered by the strength of the attack. The other support professionals, terrified, huddled together. There was no way for rogues to reach them in time to help. Soon, his teammates' screams filled the air, surrounded by the relentless skeletal warriors. Despair quickly enveloped his entire team. Then, Lin turned his attention to rogues who was visibly enraged, veins bulging as he shouted threats. Lin, seeing rogues' intent to kill, decided not to hold back either. He could use this opportunity to test his new skills. Summoning the soul of the Hell Outpost dungeon guardian with his scythe, Lin thought it fitting to let rogues have a taste of soloing the Hell-level difficulty guardian before his demise. Confronted with the massive guardian, rogues involuntarily stepped back a few times. Before facing the real thing, rogues was certain that he could solo the Hell difficulty dungeon without breaking a sweat. However, when he actually encountered the Hell difficulty outpost guardian, his confidence was shattered in an instant. The sight of the massive guardian made him involuntarily step back, gulping hard he almost shit his pants. What baffled him most was how Lin managed to summon the Hell difficulty boss, but the guardian didn't give him time to ponder. Following Lin's command, it attacked rogues. A blade, larger than rogues himself, came crashing down. Rogues couldn't dodge in time and had no choice but to brace himself, trying to block it with his golden sword but clearly they were not in the same league. The moment they clashed, Rogues was sent flying, crashing heavily into a stone pillar behind him, breaking it in half. Rogues let out a muffled grunt, struggling to rise. His eyes were bloodshot, blood oozing from his mouth and nose. That strike alone had felt like it shattered his insides. With just a casual hit, the Guardian had dispersed Rogues' fire god body. Returned to his previous state, gasping for breath, Speaking unclearly, he mumbled, Is this the hell difficulty, boss? Only then did Rogues realize he had underestimated Lin and the necromancer profession. He had rashly engaged without even understanding his opponent's abilities and had hit a snag. Heavy footsteps brought him out of his brief stupor. Before him stood the immense guardian, its empty, eerie eyes particularly unsettling. It seemed like everything had turned red. The Guardian raised its cleaver, poised to strike Rogues, who was retreating continuously but found his path blocked by the pile of rubble. He screamed for help, but when he looked back, he realized he was the only one left standing. It was then that he realized that he had made a grave mistake. Yellow liquid flowed from his trousers as he continuously apologized, admitting his mistake and pleading for Lin to spare him. Receiving no response, he began to threaten claiming that Lin couldn't kill him as he was the holy son of the ancient Guru Church's Temple of Fire. Killing him will do no good to Lin and would only lead to Lin's death too, rogues yelled frantically. He was scared, truly scared. At this moment, 
he could no longer hold on to his earlier pride. He looked at Lin as if looking at the Grim Reaper, his scythe seemingly ready to take Rogues' life at any moment. Given another chance, he wouldn't do this again. But Lin had no intention of sparing him. The Guardian's cleaver fell repeatedly onto Rogues. Initially, there were screams of agony, the strikes causing the entire dungeon to shake. As the dust settled, the dungeon once again returned to peace. Rogues lay on the ground, his body shattered, barely recognizable as human. However, his equipment was still attached. Seeing the corpse, Ning Yi Yi picked up the arm guard Rogues had dropped, then shook her head. Wondering did Rogues, who never valued others' lives, ever think that he would meet such an end? Recalling Rogues' pleas before his death, it was unclear whether he regretted his decision. To the two of them, what just happened seemed as mundane as any other act. Lin and Yi Yi felt no particular burden over it. Yi Yi turned to Lin and mentioned that Rogues was from the Guru Church, asking if that scares him. Lin merely smiled and shook his head, saying he wasn't afraid. Even if the entire Guru Church came after him, he would not fear. Yi Yi also smiled, seriously looking at Lin while telling Lin that no matter what happened, she would always be by his side. Then, the pair continued to clear the dungeon. As for Rogues's handcrafted, top-tier, gold-tier equipment, since they couldn't use the storage space in the dungeon, Lin had some skeletal warriors strip off his equipment and hold on to it as the two continued deeper into the dungeon. Their dungeon run was as leisurely as a date, but on the other side of the world, in the Guru Church's headquarters in the Guru Nation, something unexpected happened. In a luxurious, enormous sacred building, a statue in a majestic palace began to violently shake, causing the entire palace to tremble. This alarmed the church's professionals. Looking at the statue, one of the professionals' faces changed dramatically, disbelieving, his voice trembling as he announced that Rogues was dead. Someone was immediately sent to find the patriarch of the church. Meanwhile, in White Divine's small courtyard, White Divine was leisurely drinking tea when an unexpected guest arrived. Old Ning entered with an annoyed expression on his face. White Divine looked at this rare visitor and smiled, saying, Ah, Old Ning is here. What a rare visit. He then asked why Old Ning had such a sour expression on his face as soon as he arrived, wondering who had upset him. White Divine teased him while pouring a cup of tea. Old Ning sat down, refused the tea, and bombarded White Divine with a series of questions, angrily asking why he had assigned his granddaughter a mission to the Yuan battlefield, and whether White Divine had sent Lin to seduce her. White Divine was prepared to answer the first few questions calmly, but the last question made him slam the table and exclaim, Nonsense! White Divine loudly retorted, Lin is so outstanding he doesn't need to seduce anyone. Girls would line up for him just at his word. Oof. This only fumed Old Ning's anger as his voice grew even louder. The two argued fiercely for several minutes. Meng Anwen sat nearby, closing his eyes in meditation while enjoying the drama unfold. After a while of bickering during a brief pause, or perhaps call it the halftime, Meng Anwen poured each of them a cup of tea. Old Ning looked at the cup, then gulped it down, mumbling whether Lin really could take Yi Yi to solo the hell-level difficulty dungeon. White Divine didn't know the answer either, but just smiled, saying they would know once they returned. His slightly mischievous smile only angered Old Ning more. Lin and Ning Yi Yi finished the dungeon, and then the pair repeatedly farmed the Hell Outpost dungeon. Not much happened during this time, but as Lin's level increased, their efficiency improved significantly. By the time both of their cooldown amulets ran out, Lin had reached level 26, and Ning Yi Yi had advanced to level 23. Looking at her cooldown amulet, Ning Yi Yi mentioned it needed recharging, and she planned to return to the academy to turn in her mission, asking Lin what his plans were. With his cooldown amulet depleted as well, Lin also prepared to return to the academy. Knowing that the professional contest was around the corner, he planned to sell his equipment and make more preparations. Having spent several days in the Yuan battlefield, Many things had happened. Lin had leveled up significantly, completing in days what would take others months or even years. The two then returned to Fortress and left the Yuan battlefield. Back at the Academy's trading center, 
Lin kept the materials needed for his mission and sold all the equipment from the Hell Outpost dungeon. He wasn't particularly concerned about the prices, as the Academy's trading center offered fair rates. The staff member looked at the Hell Outpost equipment with surprise, his eyes following Lin's departing figure, sensing the emergence of a new powerhouse. After selling the equipment, Lin contacted White Divine. White Divine's deep voice came through the communicator, asking what's up. Lin replied that he had completed the mission assigned by White Divine and came back to turn it in. White Divine first expressed his astonishment, then asked Lin to come to his courtyard. Upon arriving at White Divine's courtyard, White Divine instantly noticed that Lin had reached level 26, thinking to himself how quickly the young man was leveling up. Out of curiosity, White Divine asked how Lin managed to level up so fast. Lin briefly mentioned his experiences in the Yuan battlefield and how he had been continuously clearing dungeons most of the time. White Divine calculated roughly and expressed doubt, stating that even constantly soloing nightmare-level dungeons wouldn't result in such rapid leveling. Lin shook his head and explained that he had been clearing hell-level dungeons, but not alone. Meng Anwen laughed and turned to White Divine, saying he had told him that this youngster could solo hell-level dungeons. Then, looking at Lin, he added that the person Lin was with must be Old Ning's cherished granddaughter. Lin openly admitted this with a scratch of his head. After the jokes, White Divine turned serious and asked about Lin if he got the title. Lin displayed the title of War Emperor of the Dragonkin, explaining how he had obtained it and described its attributes. White Divine laughed heartily, praising Lin for his achievements, and inquired if Lin had used up his cooldown amulet. Lin took out the materials White Divine requested and also presented the used-up cooldown amulet. White Divine chuckled, remarking on Lin's directness and noting that recharging a cooldown amulet was not easy. But White Divine liked Lin's personality, took the cooldown amulet, and told Lin he would recharge it for him and notify him once it was ready. Lin bowed in gratitude. White Divine then brought up the topic of the professional contest. White Divine informed Lin that the professional contest was held every five years, and this year, their empire was hosting it in ten days. After sharing this, White Divine's expression turned serious. He didn't just want Lin to participate. He expected him to win first place in his category. Lin didn't inquire about the specific rules, but straightforwardly agreed, affirming his commitment. White Divine grew even more satisfied with Lin. At that moment, Lin presented a set of equipment, hoping White Divine could help him deal with it. White Divine recognized it as the golden fire god set from the Guru Church's Temple of Fire and questioned how Lin came to possess it. Meng Anwen also showed interest, recalling a young professional from the Guru Church last year who had been given the same set and asked Lin if he had encountered him. Lin recounted the events including how rogues and his group used two scrolls to track them into the dungeon and disable their dungeon escape talisman, planning to kill them inside. Meng Anwen, the always smiling and never took anything seriously friendly grandpa, suddenly changed his expression. First he sneered, then his aura became thick with killing intent, which filled White Divine's entire courtyard, causing the ground to shake violently. He was furious that the Guru Church dared to ambush his student on their territory. He didn't seem to care that Rogues was already killed by Lin. He wanted to teach the Guru Church a lesson. White Divine then remembered that the Guru Church might have given Rogues some means of resurrection, given he was their holy son. Seeing his courtyard about to be destroyed, he coughed twice and told Meng Anwen to calm down, jokingly remarking that he isn't a husky to wreck the house. Lin twitched his mouth slightly after hearing this. White Divine took the Golden Fire God set, advising Lin to prepare for the professional contest and leave these matters to him. He lamented and mentioned that he's been too quiet for many years, and it seemed some folks out there had forgotten his other name. While White Divine was his honorific title, when he was in his younger years, he was known as the God Slayer. Lin almost forgot about this. He remembered White Divine once stormed a nation alone his battle causing shockwaves. Many top-tier professionals tried to stop him, but none could. He almost single-handedly brought a nation to its knees, clashing with the nation's top three professionals, and managed to slain two. 
It seemed this time his killing intent was stirred again, and the Guru Church was in for big trouble. Lin bowed to both of them and then left. After Lin's departure, White Divine suggested that he won't handle this alone and planned to involve Old Ning as well. He then handed over the recharging of Lin's cool-down amulet and the crafting of Tyrant Necklace to Meng Anwen, who now had returned to his usual demeanor. After a sip of tea, he coldly remarked that since rogues dared to target Old Ning's precious granddaughter and say such disgusting words to her, Old Ning is not going to let that slide. The Guru Church was going to face severe consequences. Not long after at the Guru Church headquarters, a young professional was in the midst of prayers when he suddenly felt a bright light from behind. Looking up, he saw a massive fireball appearing in the sky, obscuring the sun, resembling a great sun itself. Nearby professionals looked towards the sky in fear, puzzled about what it could be. Was it the sun falling down, or a spell from a divine level mage? A crowd from the church rushed out, each with a face full of terror. Then, someone pointed to the sky. Next to the fireball stood two figures, no other than Old Ning and White Divine, floating in the void. The ability to stand in the void indicated they were top-tier third-class transfer professionals. Someone yelled, Quick, go call the Patriarch! Then, in the distant, a shout was heard. Gubat, you, you bastard, bastard, get the, get fuck, the fuck, fuck over here now! now. Ning Tyran roared, his echo vibrating through the entire Guru church, causing it to buzz ominously. Old Ning roared, his voice echoed vibrating through the entire Guru church, causing it to buzz ominously. Old Ning stood in the sky, with the massive fireball slowly descending, causing the professionals of the Guru Church to show expressions of sheer terror. If the massive fireball were to crash down, they would all be doomed. The fact that Old Ning directly called out the Patriarch's name was a grave disrespect, but at this moment, no one dared to contradict him. Suddenly, several figures emerged from the main hall of the church, stepping outside. Among them was an elderly man, Looking very dehydrated, the Winkle old man was no other than Patriarch Gubat himself, accompanied by several powerful church elders. The sight of the Patriarch and the elders brought a sigh of relief from the professionals nearby. They knew they were in safe hands now. Gubat, looking at the massive fireball in the sky, was somewhat surprised, followed up by shouting asking who dared to cause trouble at the Guru Church. The next second, when it was old Ning controlling the fireball, his face drastically changed, and he stood frozen like a statue. He gulped hard, sweating profusely. It was evident that he recognized old Ning, a divine-level professional from the Divine Empire, and one of the strongest professionals out there. Though Gubat himself was also a top-tier professional, there was still a gap between him and old Ning. His shock intensified when he noticed another figure next to old Ning. Upon closer inspection, his body involuntarily trembled. It was white divine. He couldn't believe it, wondering to himself, why was this god slayer also here? Then something dawned on him. Were these two crazy mofos here to annihilate the Guru Church? Gubat racked his brain but couldn't recall any instance where they had offended any of them. Confused but anxious, he immediately changed his demeanor, managing a strained smile on his withered face and respectfully approached the two in the air. He started with a friendly greeting, then welcomed them, and finally, he offered an apology for any offense they might have caused. Gubat was clueless about the specifics, but knew he had to admit fault first, considering the frightening strength of the duo. It was unexpected to see the patriarch of the mighty Guru Church react in such a manner. This scene left the professionals below stunned. Seeing their patriarch so submissive, they wondered if this was the end of the Guru Church. Old Ning wasted no time and coldly demanded to see someone named Rogues, insisting he be brought forth immediately. Gubat knew Rogues very well, the future heir to the Fire God Temple. But why was Old Ning specifically looking for him? Had Rogues offended him? But how could Rogues have possibly crossed paths with someone of Old Ning's stature? Gubat didn't dare to ask, and could only instruct the elders to quickly bring Rogues. One of the elders swiftly ran towards the main hall. Seeing the elder leave, Gubat cautiously asked Old Ning how the young rogues could have possibly offended them, all the while thinking to himself that rogues, being a holy son of one of the two temples, must be protected at all costs. 
Old Ning coldly stated, He hasn't offended me. Confused, Gubat turned to White Divine and he also added indifferently, Nor has he offended me. Hearing this, Gubat and the elders around him breathed a sigh of relief, grateful that rogues didn't offend any of them. But their relief was short-lived, as Old Ning's next words plunged their hearts into despair. Old Ning's eyes flashed with killing intent. He offended my precious granddaughter, White Divine casually added, and he offended my treasured disciple. Gubat was startled, realizing that offending Old Ning and White Divine's relatives and disciples was far worse than offending them directly. He cursed rogues in his mind. He knew too well that the top professionals like them were notoriously protective, especially of their children and disciples. What on earth had rogues done to incur such wrath? Gubat can only hope for a peaceful ending. Soon, rogues was brought out, escorted by several elders, and supported by a female professional. He appeared extremely weak, gasping for breath after just a few steps, and his body was wrapped in bandages. As he walked out, he felt an unusual heat and, looking up, saw a massive, sun-like fireball floating in the sky, seemingly ready to fall at any moment. Involuntarily, he muttered, Has the fire god descended? Suddenly, he was lifted into the air as if sucked by some force, a gust of wind carrying him up into the sky. Startled, rogues first saw the two men standing opposite him, but noticing the patriarch standing beside him, he didn't think he was in any danger. Then, Gubat respectfully addressed the duo, explaining that this was rogues, explaining that he had accidentally died a few days ago and had just been resurrected, still weak from the ordeal. Old Ning ignored Gubat and coldly turned to Rogues, extending a hand towards him. A beam of purple light shot towards Rogues. Without missing a beat, Old Ning then coldly asked if Rogues was the one who had used a tracking scroll in an attempt to follow and kill his students from the Xia Jing Academy, followed up with an even colder tone, as he questioned whether he was the one who referred to his granddaughter as a toy. Rogues suddenly felt a heaviness in his head, his pupils lost focus and his expression turned vacant. Gubat knew this was some sort of mental ability. He was startled but dared not say anything. Suddenly, Rogues became quite lively, regaining strength as he was never injured. With a twisted hatred on his face, he shouted wildly. He couldn't believe he was killed by Lin and vowed loudly to everyone that he would one day kill Lin, take his title, and use his woman as a toy, following up saying he would make her beg for life and death. But before he could finish his sentence, upon hearing these words, Gubat's face turned pale, and he quickly used his power to silence rogues. Gubat anxiously tried to explain, but looking at White Divine, he saw only icy, merciless eyes. Filled with murderous intent, Gubat then knew that if he dared to say anything right now, he would definitely be killed on the spot. Seeing this look, Gubat involuntarily stepped back. Hearing these disgusting words coming out from Rogues' mouth, Old Ning was furious. He would make sure this time, Rogues would not get the chance to resurrect, and make sure even his soul would be scorched by the flames of hell. With that, he directed the massive fireball towards the Guru Church. Seeing this, Gubat yelled to those below to flee. Rogues remained flowing in the air, ignored by everyone. He laughed, believing no one could kill him confident that the statue would resurrect him. Soon, the enormous fireball plummeted down, engulfing him in flames. Engulfed in the terrifying, intense heat, Rogues was instantly vaporized. After his death, the speed of the fireball's descent slowed, giving the professionals of the Guru Church enough time to escape. Soon after everyone fled, the fireball finally hit, erupting in a brilliant blaze that destroyed everything below. The Guru Church headquarters turned into burning flames, its exquisite halls collapsing and becoming rubbles. Gubat only heard a voice, warning him that if there were a next time, the entire Guru Church would be annihilated. As the duo departed, Gubat sighed deeply. The headquarters of the church had been totally destroyed, reduced to ruins. The elders looked towards him and wanted to say something. Gubat shook his head and interjected, As long as they are alive, it's fine. Considering the temperaments of those two, it's already merciful they didn't obliterate them all at once. Recalling a nation nearly destroyed by White Divine many years ago, the elders tensed up, 
Just thinking about the wrath of the white divine sent a chill down their spines. Considering the circumstances, they were fortunate. The building could be rebuilt, as long as the people were alive. Everyone cursed at rogues. If not for him, the Guru Church wouldn't have faced such a disaster. The most important statue, capable of resurrecting disciples, was destroyed, and it was uncertain how many years it would take to rebuild it. Meanwhile, back in White Divine's small courtyard, the group returned to the round table. Mung Anwen poured tea for the two, and White Divine curiously asked Old Ning why his temper had mellowed so much. Is it because he has a granddaughter now? Old Ning, with a disdainful look, retorted that White Divine used to be even more ruthless, implying that if it were the old days, White Divine would have wiped out the people of the Guru Church. White Divine sipped his tea and then remarked that he had grown older and preferred to avoid killing. He jokingly added that he had learned this from old Mung. Mung Anwen shook his head and told him to not bring him into this. He then tossed over the fully recharged cool-down amulet toward White Divine. Seeing this, old Ning also took out an empty cool-down amulet, asking Mung Anwen to recharge it. Mung Anwen rubbed his forehead, wondering why Ning hadn't given it to him earlier. Old Ning laughed heartily, admitting he had forgotten. After the brief interlude a few days later, the 100th professional contest was finally about to begin. While Lin was meditating in his room, his communicator vibrated with information about the contest. This time, the competition was divided into three formats, team battles, individual matches, and challenge matches. Competitors were grouped based on their levels, with Lin falling into the 20, 29 level category. The rewards for the winner of this contest, especially for teams below level 40, were quite generous. Each group's winner would receive a brilliant basic skill scroll, a primary magic potion, and 50 million gold coins. The brilliant basic skill scroll is an extremely rare item, unlike the basic skill scroll with a random chance of obtaining a skill. This rare scroll had a 100% chance of obtaining a new skill. The primary magic potion could permanently increase all attributes by 200 points. However, it could only be used once per person. The specific rules and rewards for the challenge matches were not yet disclosed and would be announced during the contest itself. But Lin assumed that given the secrecy, the rewards would be substantial. Opening his info panel, Lin, at level 26, had nearly 1,000 points in strength, vitality, and agility, with his spirit points at an impressive 5,500. He currently commanded 150 skeletal warriors and 100 skeletal mages, with 10 more spaces available in his summoning space. Except for the corpse explosion skill, all his abilities were leveled up to 26 matching his own level. Satisfied with the attributes of his skeletal warriors and mages, Lin headed towards the registration area for the professional contest. There, he reunited with his old friends, Charlotte, May, and Fung, who greeted him warmly. They had come to participate in the contest as a team and initially wanted to invite Lin, but unfortunately, he was already level 22 during the opening ceremony and not in the same level category as them. When they learned that Lin was now level 26, they were shocked as they had just reached level 17 and thought they had been working hard, only to find out Lin was even more ahead of them. Do you think R.I.P. rogues? Or hell nah, that's well deserved. Tell me in the comment below. When Lin's friends discovered the astonishing speed at which he was leveling up, as if he were on a rocket, they all showed a variety of expressions. Charlotte exclaimed in surprise, That fast? Meanwhile, May humorously remarked that's what she said while sizing up Lin. Men shouldn't be too fast, which left Fung, who was not used to hearing such bold words from her, shocked. He turned around to look, while half-jokingly said, No way. May just said that. At that moment, Ning Yi Yi also walked over and called out Lin's name. Everyone's attention was drawn to a beautiful girl approaching them. Charlotte curiously observed Ning Yi Yi, who first glanced at Lin, while blushing. She shyly told everyone she was Lin's friend and introduced her profession and level. When everyone learned that this girl was at level 25, they looked at her in astonishment. Ning Yi smiled and said it was Lin who had carried her through dungeons and leveled up. 
Charlotte and the others were not surprised by this. Charlotte nodded without saying much. Mei and Feng also warmly greeted Ning Yi and introduced themselves. Mei was a level 17 shadow hunter, Feng a level 17 holy swordsman, and Charlotte a level 17 elemental mage, followed up by introducing herself as Lin's high school classmate. Charlotte and Ning Yi hit it off right away, feeling like longtime friends despite it being their first meeting. Only Mei and Feng seemed to sense something, with Mei commenting that being too outstanding can also troublesome sometimes. Obviously, they were talking about Lin. Feng then glanced over to Lin, who seemed calm and relaxed as always, to which Feng nodded in agreement. Charlotte and Ning Yi exchanged contact information, added each other to the communicator, and waved goodbye before heading over to find teammates for the upcoming professional contest. Before leaving, Lin told them that once their levels were high enough, he would help them with the Tyrant Desert Dungeon. Watching the trio leave, Ning Yi's eyes sparkled as she thought to herself, hmm, high school classmates. She turned to Lin and gently commented on his seemingly good relationship with Charlotte. Lin paused before replying, yes, they were high school classmates. Ning Yi shook her head, turned and said, Lin is so dense and oblivious, while saying if she was a boy and had such a pretty classmate, she would definitely go after her. But it seemed our dense boy Lin didn't quite grasp her point. Shortly after, someone called Ning Yi's name, which broke the ice. Hearing her name be called, she looked up and saw a familiar face, then smiled again. It was none other than Tao Tao, Oliver, and Emma, whom she hadn't seen since the last Academy mission. The trio walked over, evidently happy to see Lin and Yi Yi. Ning Yi excitedly ran over grabbing Tao Tao's arm and asking if they were too here to register for the contest. Tao Tao smiled, saying that this once in five years professional contest was an event they didn't want to miss. Ning Yi then asked if they had found a team, but their disappointed expressions revealed that many were reluctant to team up with them due to their lower levels. Oliver, scratching his head, said somewhat helplessly that they weren't there to compete for top spots, but just wanted to experience it. In this group bracket for levels 20 to 29, everyone preferred a team with as high an average level as possible. Hearing this, Lin invited them to join him and Yi Yi as a team. The trio all looked at Lin in surprise. All had heard what Lin had done in the dungeon hall, especially since he had carried 39 people through Tyrant's dungeon on his own many times. Lin was already somewhat famous in the academy. Partying up with Lin, winning the championship in their group bracket seemed almost too easy. However, Tao Tao proposed a condition. Ning Yi, being very close to Tao Tao, didn't think much and told her to speak freely. Tao Tao earnestly said that winning the championship would earn contribution points as a reward from the academy, which was enough for them. Oliver and Emma also expressed that they didn't want any additional rewards, knowing that if they won, the main credit would certainly go to Lin. Lin and Ning Yi were slightly surprised by this condition, but ultimately agreed. Thus, the five of them formed a team and filled out the necessary information at the registration desk. Ning Yi turned around and gratefully thanked Lin. At that moment, Mark and his group of followers approached. Flattered by his followers, he even believed that the championship prize was destined for him. Oh, it's this dude again. I almost forgot this character even existed. Let's see what shenanigans he got this time. Mark's sidekick started pushing through the crowd to get him to the front. Initially, everyone was somewhat angry, but recognizing Mark and his ugly face as the grandson of the dean of the Hundred Mile Squad, they all held back, knowing he was not someone they could afford to provoke. Mark also noticed a familiar figure in front of him, no other than Ning Yi. He was delighted for a moment. Then the next second, he saw someone standing next to her, no other than Lin, who had embarrassed him in the dungeon hall several weeks ago. He took a closer look while squinting. Seeing Ning Yi Yi arm in arm with Lin, he displayed a jealous expression. He then jumped in front of the pair and blocked their way. Ning Yi Yi was first startled, then her face immediately showed disgust upon seeing Mark. Lin silently observed Mark, remembering he had seen this guy in the dungeon hall before. What was his name again? It didn't really matter since he never bothered asking. Mark. Looking at Ning Yi and Lin's close relationship, couldn't help but angrily question why Ning Yi was with Lin. 
Ning Yi Yi looked at Mark with flames of anger flickering in her eyes. Mark's gaze was fixed tightly on her and Lin, his breath heavy, brows deeply furrowed. Ning Yi Yi's grandfather, Old Ning, is Jia Jing Academy's principal, and Mark's grandfather is the dean of the Hundred Mile Squad. The two old men had some connections. Thus, Mark had known Yi Yi since childhood due to their grandfather's relationships. The two had often met when they were kids alongside other kids and their childhood friends, but Ning Yi had never harbored any fondness for Mark. Growing up, Mark had always been a douchebag. Nobody in their childhood friend group liked Mark either. Seeing his unfriendly gaze towards Lin only fueled her anger. She coldly told him that who she associated with was none of Mark's business. Mark, infuriated, retorted, None of my business? You are my fiancé, Ning Yi Yi. Hearing this, Ning Yi wanted to punch him in the face and sharply rebuked him, pointing and angrily telling him to not bring up this nonsense. It turned out that Mark had once proposed to Yi Yi when they were younger and was immediately rejected by her. But Mark, the ever shameless clown, had the audacity to proclaim to others that Ning Yi was his fiance. Ning Yi had tolerated him until now due to their grandfather's relations, but her patience had reached its limit. She sarcastically remarked that Mark had told the lie so often he'd started to believe it himself. She warned him that if he continued to spread such nonsense, she would inform her grandfather about this. Lin, standing aside, was somewhat surprised by the assertive attitude Ning Yi displayed. The usually smiling and gentle Ning Yi also had a resolute and bold side to her. Ning Yi's cheeks were flushed with anger, her chest heaving, clearly very upset. She occasionally cast concerned glances at Lin, relieved to see he showed no negative reaction. Ning Yi's agitation stemmed from the worry that Lin might believe Mark's lies. However, she quickly realized that Lin wouldn't care about such baseless rumors. He wasn't the kind of person easily influenced by lies. Ning Yi Yi's fierce rebuke left Mark's face incredibly embarrassed under the watchful eyes of the crowd. His face twisted with various expressions. Being humiliated in front of so many people was a tremendous embarrassment for him. He glared at Lin with teeth clenched in anger, accusing him of repeatedly standing in his way. His expression twisted into a grotesque sneer, mockingly laughing that he hadn't forgotten their beef in the dungeon hall. Lin didn't respond, only looked at him as if Mark were a ridiculous clown. Enraged to the extreme by Lin's attitude, Mark began to curse loudly and even threatened to kill Lin. Hearing such a blatant threat, Ning Yi quickly drew her dagger, while Tao Tao also gripped her weapon, ready for a fight. Oliver and Emma in the back also took up fighting stances. Green flames began to rise in Lin's palms. This Mark guy seemed to be a pain in the ass. Seeing his expression, it was obvious Mark meant everything he said. If that's the case, there was no need to hold back. Otherwise, Mark might keep harassing Yi Yi. Just then, a deep voice echoed from the sky questioning Mark, who he said he wanted to kill. Suddenly, Mark, as if struck by a heavy blow, grunted and kneeled on the ground by the pressure above, blood flowing from his nose and mouth. Everyone looked up to see a figure floating in the air, eyes burning fiercely, staring at Mark. This person, no other than White Divine, was here to check out how things were going in the registration when he suddenly heard someone wanted to kill Lin his gaze icy cold, as he again questioned Mark for the second time. Who did you say you want to kill? The appearance of White Divine elicited various expressions on everyone's faces. Tao Tao and others were surprised. Ning Yi Yi was delighted, while Mark was inexplicably horrified, wondering why was White Divine here. While Mark pondered the reason, White Divine asked Mark for the third time who he said he wanted to kill. Mark could sense the killing intent in White Divine's tone, which frightened him so much that he shook his head frantically and collapsed to the ground. At the same time, yellow liquid was flowing out of his trousers. He had previously heard some rumors regarding the relationship between Lin and White Divine before, but hadn't taken it seriously. But now, it was obvious that White Divine was seeing Lin as his disciple. At the thought of this, Mark was panic-stricken, and told White Divine that he hadn't said anything. White Divine glanced at him coldly, then told Mark to GTFO and warned that if there were a next time, 
he would personally deliver his head to the principal of the Hundred Mile Squad. This threat from White Divine made Mark shudder with fear. Without caring about his subordinates, he turned and sprinted away. Afterward, White Divine descended onto the platform, where Ning Yi and Lin greeted him. Tao Tao and the others hurriedly paid their respects to White Divine. White Divine nodded at them, then patted Lin on the back and asked if Lin had been planning to take action had he not appeared. Lin nodded without hesitation, saying that if the other party wanted to kill him, he wouldn't just sit and wait for death. White Divine looked seriously at Lin, then asked if he wasn't afraid of retaliation from the people behind him. Advised Lin that Mark's grandfather was the principal of Hundred Mile Squad, and also a top-tier professional at level 81. Lin shook his head, indicating he wasn't afraid, and that if necessary, he would return to the Yuan battlefield, where he was confident of surviving. Pleased with this answer, White Divine patted Lin's back a few more times and laughed heartily, saying Lin had the same spirit he had in his youth. One shouldn't worry too much when taking action, just like with the holy son of the Guru Church Lin had killed. If someone wanted to kill him, he couldn't just stand there and let them do it. White Divine told Lin that Old Ning had already leveled the headquarters of the Guru Church, and the other party didn't dare to even whisper a word. Then, raising his left hand, White Divine clenched it into a fist, conveying that in this world, power and strength are the ultimate truth. There is no inherent fairness. Fairness and fear must be earned through one's own strength. He then took out Lin's cooldown amulet, which was now fully charged, and threw it to him. White Divine informed Lin that the method to upgrade the amulet had been sent to his communicator. Lin would need to gather the materials himself, and when ready, White Divine would someone assist him in upgrading the cooldown amulet. Lin nodded and thanked White Divine. White Divine grew more pleased with Lin day after day. He instructed Lin to check out the new mission he had sent and to complete it promptly. After speaking, White Divine glanced at Tao Tao, Oliver, and Emma, giving them a thumbs up and noting their commendable actions. In his mind, he praised them for having the courage to stand up to Mark and protect their companions. This commendation from White Divine left the three of them overjoyed. Tao Tao and the others were relieved and then turned to Lin, having heard the conversation between him and White Divine. She wished Lin good luck on his new mission and mentioned that the upcoming competition would be held in Nanhong City. There was still some time before the competition began and they could meet there. Lin checked his communicator. Ning Yi, curious, peered over with her big eyes to see what new mission White Divine had assigned Lin. The mission seemed straightforward. White Divine wanted Lin to go to Fortress Number 3 to kill Abyssal Demons and get promoted to at least a two-star lieutenant. Ning Yi tilted her head, wondering if it was really that simple. Lin shook his head, explaining that the mission also mentioned the appearance of what is known as the Elemental Mystery Dungeon outside the fortress. White Divine had instructed him to retrieve the elemental crystals from it. Ning Yi thoughtfully recalled the Yuan battlefield outside Fortress Number 3 which had become known as the Elemental Plains. This area was transformed after a massive battle where nearly a hundred third-class transfer elemental mages unleashed over a thousand forbidden-level magical spells. The land was entirely elementalized, leading to the birth of many elemental creatures. This battle was what led to the area being named the Elemental Plains. Ning Yi expressed her fascination with the idea of encountering elemental creatures something she had never seen before. She curiously asked what the place was really like. Seeing Ning Yi's apparent lack of fear, Lin smiled and said they would find out when they visited. After saying goodbye to Tao Tao, Oliver, and Emma, they arranged to meet in Nan Hong City in a few days. Lin and Ning Yi headed to the Academy's teleportation array and teleported to the Yuan battlefield. After some time, they arrived at the teleportation platform of Fortress Number 3. As the teleportation ended, Yi Yi felt a headache and some nausea, clearly unaccustomed to such long-distance teleportation. Her body swayed, and Lin steadied her. Yi Yi nestled into his arms, eyes tightly shut. The two of them found a place to sit down for a while, and Lin took this opportunity to carefully observe any differences at Fortress Number 3. 
It seemed the setup was much the same as the others. Then, he opened the trading post and saw three different types of primary elemental crystal cores, fire, wind, and water, each valued at a 100,000 gold coins. These could be used for enchanting equipment. Lin carefully examined them, deducing that these elemental crystal cores were likely drops from elemental creatures. He then closed the trading post, as he didn't need anything from there at the moment. Once Ning Yi felt better, they prepared to go and check out the elemental creatures in the elemental planes firsthand. As Lin and Ning Yi approached the fortress gate, the guards there stopped them. They were fully armed and seemed quite leveled too. They shook their heads upon seeing the duo, cautioning that it would be very dangerous for them to go out. Noting that Lin and Ning Yi Yi were only level 25 and 26, the guards felt they couldn't let them leave, explaining that even the weakest monsters on the elemental planes were around level 33 and advised them to go back. Lin thanked the guards for their concern and assured them they would be fine, but the guards were still hesitant to let them pass. At that moment, the guard captain, a stern-looking man with a fashionable mustache in his forties, came over to inquire about the situation. After learning that Lin and Ning Yi Yi wanted to venture out, he expressed the same concern, asking where their guardians and parents were and why they were sent to such a dangerous place. Outside was extremely dangerous. The two of them could die out there. The pair were aware that the guards were concerned about their safety. Just then, a burst of fire appeared a few hundred meters away from the fortress gate, rapidly expanding into an elemental creature aimlessly wandering around. From the look of it, it was a fire elemental creature. The guards weren't surprised by its appearance, but suddenly felt a chilling wind beside them. They felt the temperature around them suddenly plummet, making even the captain sense danger. Everyone shivered as four skeletons rose from the ground and appeared beside Lin. The skeletons, with a clattering noise, rushed out at incredible speed, swiftly passing by the guards and the captain, who hardly saw their movements. The guard captain remarked, What a speed. In seconds, the skeletons reached the fire elemental creature. Their great swords turned red as they unleashed a rampage strike. Each skeletal warrior landed a blow, and with an explosion, the fire elemental creature was slain. Lin received a system notification, defeated a level 33 fire elemental spirit, earning 165,000 experience points. The guards and captain were astounded, barely believing what they had just witnessed. With just a few skeletons, they had instantly killed a level 33 fire elemental spirit. The captain turned and noticed the military badge on Lin's chest. Turned out that Lin was a lieutenant. Amazed to see how young he was, the captain recalled he had only reached the rank of lieutenant when he was level 38. This left a deep impression of Lin's strength. Then Ning Yi stepped forward, almost playfully asking the captain if they could go out now. The captain looked at Lin and his skeletons, then allowed them to pass, but still urged them to be cautious. Lin and Ning Yi left Fortress Number 3 and finally stepped into the elemental planes. Ning Yi commented that the guards were overly cautious, but Lin felt reassured, stating that it was because of such diligent professionals guarding the place that the outside world remained peaceful. Ning Yi nodded in agreement. Suddenly, Ning Yi Yi's long hair began to float and became extremely staticky, accompanied by a crackling electric sound. Startled, she exclaimed, asking what was happening. Lin, amused, let out a rare giggle, prompting a soft punch from Ning Yi. Then, a huge energy ball appeared above their heads, crashing to the ground with an explosive sound. Within the explosion, their skeletal armor blocked the damage. Both of them looked toward the center of the explosion and saw an elemental creature, which appeared to be a wind elemental. Lin cast a detection spell, confirming it was indeed a wind elemental of level 34 with quite high attributes. The wind elemental instantly launched several wind blades at them, but they were blocked by the skeletal warriors surrounding the pair. Lin looked up at the wind elemental floating in the sky and sneered, questioning if it was bullying his skeletal warriors couldn't fly. As he spoke, a green light began to glow in his hand. As the wind elemental spirit floated in the air, the skeletal warriors, despite their efforts, couldn't reach it with their jumps. It would be nice if the skeletal warriors could have a pair of wings, 
but unfortunately, they couldn't fly. No need to worry as Lin had skeletal mages. From his earlier detection spell, Lin learned that each elemental spirit had an additional special trait. The fire elemental he encountered before had immunity to fire elements, and similarly, this wind elemental had wind element immunity, meaning it was immune to any wind-type attacks or spells. Several skeletal mages rose from the ground and unleashed a barrage of attacks on the wind elemental, quickly defeating it. The system notified Lin that he had killed a level 34 wind elemental spirit, awarding him 170,000 experience points. Lin was somewhat surprised to find that these elemental beings left no corpses, recalling that the fire elemental he previously defeated also left no remains. He felt it was a pity. Without a corpse, he couldn't use corpse explosion. As Lin and Ning Yi continued forward, they chit-chatted along the way without encountering any danger, but soon they suddenly stopped, both of their expressions turning serious. The ground beneath them began to tremble. It started soft, then gradually growing stronger. This caused the both of them to become alert, with Lin sensing the elements around them becoming chaotic, assuming this was the reason that caused the ground to shake. Then, about a kilometer ahead of them, a group of people appeared, running towards them rapidly. They seemed both urgent and frightened, also shouting something while running for their lives. As the group drew closer, Lin and Ning Yi could hear them clearly. Everyone was yelling, Run! This group, consisting of around a hundred people, was fleeing at full speed. Behind them, in the sky, dark spots appeared, which became clearer as they approached. It was a large swarm of elemental spirits chasing after the group. Ning Yi Yi's eyes widened in disbelief as she looked at the swarm of elemental spirits, exclaiming in shock wondering if they had stumbled upon their nest. Lin shook his head, explaining that they likely encountered an elemental mystery realm dungeon. He detailed that these realms appear randomly, causing elemental chaos and rapidly reproducing numerous elemental spirits. In these realms, teleportation stones become ineffective, trapping everyone inside the only way to exit is to either beat the dungeon or go back to find the entrance. Lin seemed neither panicked nor distressed. In fact, he appeared somewhat pleased, possibly thinking that this situation was just what he needed to finish his mission ahead of time. As many professionals saw the pair standing still, they urgently advised them to start running, warning about the approaching elemental spirits. Despite their concern, Lin and Ning Yi didn't move, and the well-intentioned professionals had no choice but to continue their desperate escape. Some shook their head and said the two were psychopaths. After all the professionals had passed by, Lin summoned his legion of skeletons. Hundreds of skeletons charged towards the elemental spirits. The skeletal warriors led the charge, while skeletal mages relentlessly cast spells in support. In a matter of moments, dozens of elemental spirits were slain, with notifications popping up continuously as more and more fell. Suddenly, a sharp, piercing screech echoed from afar. The intense screeching grew louder and more unbearable, causing Ning Yi to cover her ears in discomfort, feeling as if her head would explode. Lin, concerned for Ning Yi, surmised that the distant cries must be coming from the ruler of the Elemental Mystery Realm dungeon, the Elemental Queen. As the screeching intensified, the Elemental Spirit's assault grew fiercer, so much that it began to put pressure on the skeletal warriors. Lin raised his palm and cast a slowing curse. Countless red shackles spread outwards, making the elemental spirit move in ultra-slow motion, alleviating the pressure on his skeleton army and turning the tide of the battle. His skeleton army rapidly eliminated the majority of the elemental spirits. The professionals, who were running earlier, seeing that the elemental spirits had ceased their pursuit, sat down visibly relieved and grateful to have survived the ordeal. They were panting heavily, and although they didn't understand why the elemental spirits had stopped chasing them, they were thankful to be alive. A professional suddenly pointed towards the distance, urging everyone to look. To their astonishment, they saw the two young individuals who had not fled earlier, now battling the elemental spirits. The powerful elemental spirits seemed powerless against Lin's skeleton army. The onlookers were amazed, Murmur went around as they began to question, Who are they? 
How can they be so powerful? Too strong, those skeletons are incredible. Is that a summoner class? I've never seen any summoner this powerful. If they didn't know Lin before, now they do. Amidst their awe, the remaining elemental spirits were completely annihilated. Soon, the screeching sound finally weakened. Ning Yi, clutching her head, let out a long breath of relief, having thought her head was about to explode from the discomfort. Lin helped Ning Yi up and asked her if she was all right. Yi Yi nodded, and the two of them then ventured towards the direction of the earlier screeching. The mission White Divine assigned him was to obtain elemental crystals. To obtain these elemental crystals, they would need to defeat the elemental queen within the Mystery Realm dungeon. Not far away, they saw an aurora, or rather, a beautiful display made up of four types of elements. Ning Yi was mesmerized by the sight, but Lin sensed danger, feeling something lurking within. Suddenly, a dungeon entrance appeared not far from them. Without a doubt, this must have been the entrance to the Mystery Realm dungeon. The two exchanged glances and nodded, without missing a beat. They entered together. The scenery inside the Mystery Realm was starkly different from the outside, a desolate land composed entirely of elements, existing independently from the rest of the world. Unlike typical dungeons, a Mystery Realm is unique, with all who enter existing under the same sky. Lin cautioned Ning Yi that they might encounter others inside and advised her to be cautious. Lin summoned his skeletal warriors to scout the area as they first entered the ice palace. The skeletal warriors dispersed in different directions, quickly forming a mental map in Lin's mind. Lin and Ning Yi stayed put, waiting for the skeletons to find the correct path before proceeding. Surprisingly, the skeletal warriors encountered no monsters along the way, making the area seem more like a labyrinth than a battleground. If the skeletal warrior ever runs to a dead end, Lin would summon it back to the summoning space. Not long after, one of the skeletal warriors found the path to the final room. Lin located the room and was ready to venture towards it. Following Lin, Ning Yi chuckled. That was fast. Skeleton babies are amazing. I wonder what the skeletons have to say when they hear this. At the exit, they encountered a massive creature sitting on a throne made of ice blocks. Unlike other elemental spirits, this one had limbs. Lin's detection spell revealed that this creature was the water elemental general, one of the bosses in the mystery realm. At level 37, its strength, spirit, and vitality stats were all over 10,000, but its agility was zero. The moment Lin and Ning Yi appeared, the water elemental general let out a fierce roar. Instantly, Numerous ice pillars flew out from the top and sides of the ice palace, hurtling towards them. The water elemental general had three skills and an additional special trait. Immunity to ice elements and reduced physical damage taken by half. This was its first skill, Pillar Strike. The massive pillars shot toward the duo. Despite the massive ice pillars attacking them, both Lin and Ning Yi managed to dodge them. They were surprised to find that the boss's agility was zero. Lin speculated that the water elemental general might be fused with the ice palace itself, rendering it immobile. Is that it? He wondered. Nonetheless, Lin commanded his skeletal warriors to launch an attack on the water elemental general. The 150 skeletal warriors rushed towards the general, who, with his trait of taking reduced physical damages, was not significantly harmed by individual skeleton attacks. However, Lin wasn't concerned as he had over 150 skeletons at his disposal. The skeletal warriors raised their giant swords and struck at the water elemental general, each hit resulting in a dent in the general's body. The general then used his second skill, and his body then erupted in a pale blue glow. The glow transformed into countless ice arrows, followed by a vortex of chilling wind. With their immense force, the general's skill repelled the skeletal warriors, sending most of the nearby skeletal warriors flying backward. The skeletons at the front received significant damage, prompting Lin to quickly recall all of them back into the summoning space. He then took cover with Ning Yi Yi behind a stone door. The water elemental general's attack had a massive area, covering almost the entire room. The sound of ice arrows hitting the walls of the ice palace created a loud, crackling noise. When the attack ceased, Lin peeked into the room where the water elemental general was. He noticed the general's body flickering. Seems like it was gradually healing the wounds inflicted by the skeletal warriors. 
The previously damaged areas in the dents were rapidly regenerating. Lin realized that the general had a strong, self-healing ability, compensated by its zero agility. Smiling, Lin then summoned his Thanatos Scythe, saying that he just needed to outpace the general's healing. How did he do it? It's simple, just out-DPS it. He raised his hands high and used the Scythe's skill, Soul Summoning, and a giant Hell Outpost Guardian appeared in the Ice Palace. Its massive figure towering Lin, from the looks of it, it was more terrifying than the Water Elemental General. Despite being only level 33, this Guardian's attributes were not inferior to the level 37 General. Lin then resummoned his skeleton army, with the Guardian leading the charge and the skeletal warriors following behind, slowly advancing towards the Water Elemental General, ready for some gangbang. All right, that wraps up our weekly dose of Necromancer for this week. Did you get a chance to watch the first episode of Solo Leveling? What did you think of it? And are you also hoping to see this manhwa adapted into an anime? I sure do. Anyway, thanks to everyone for tuning in. And as always, I'll catch you in the next video.